Chapter 1002 An Awkward Scene At this time, Sebastian was busy with Jackman Group's work, and there was only Scarlet at home. She was drawing the design, and when she heard Richard say that Lance's parents had come, she quickly put down the pen in her hand. When she got up and went to the living room downstairs, she had been thinking that Lance's parents had no interaction with her. Why did they suddenly take the initiative to look for her? Vivian came from a good background, and her background could not be underestimated. She was also very good-looking and she exuded the aura of a noble lady. Even though she was old, she was still graceful, elegant, and intellectual. Her words were gentle and soft without the strength of a noble lady. When she saw Scarlet, she also smiled and praised her for her good looks, her dress, and taste. She also said that Blue Bay Island's indoor design was even better than that of the internationally famous designers. As she spoke, she also introduced a business deal with Scarlet, saying that her younger brother had a manner to renovate and asked her to design it. Scarlet heard that Vivian wanted to ask her for help, so she took the opportunity to agree to this favor. Then thank you for taking care of my business. I accept your younger brother's manner design. However, you are not here just for this matter, right? Is there anything else you want to tell me? I do have something to ask you for help. After chatting for so long and drinking several cups of coffee, Vivian was embarrassed and said the key point, Scarlet, why don't you go to KING to talk about the matter about Lance? Hearing this request, Scarlet was stunned for a moment, fifth and, I, am not very familiar with KYNG. It is not appropriate for me to talk about it, and it is useless. She subconsciously refused, but Vivian got up and sat next to her. She held her hand and patted it gently on the back of her hand. Good child, fifth aunt knows that it is very inappropriate to ask you to plead for leniency. However, Kwanji said that he wanted you to take care of him because he felt that Burke family did not treat your mother well. He felt guilty for the elders, so he wanted to use the opportunity to get closer to you and compensate you. So I thought that it might be useful to plead by you. Of course, it doesn't matter if you don't want to. We will think of other ways. After saying that, Vivian added, Jackman family was aware of the matter of KYNG revealing Scarlet's identity before, but they chose to keep quiet and did not tell anyone. They did this to protect her. Scarlet was grateful for this. Now Lance's mother was also euphemistic and did not force her. Since she had married Jackman family for so long, other than the old man who did not agree at first, Jackman family was still very good to her. Thinking of this, she nodded. Okay, I'll give it a try, but it might not be useful. It doesn't matter just try it. This matter was actually easy to solve. The main problem was that the other party was KYNG and his power was not small. It was very troublesome to solve it. If Scarlet could convince him, then Sebastian would not need to return Asia Pacific Region's project to KYNG. After Scarlet agreed, she felt that it was not good for her to go, so she called Frostina and asked her to accompany her. KYNG's ward was upstairs of Lance. It was not far away, so Scarlet and Frostina went to see Lance first. She saw Lance leaning on the bed, holding a notebook, seriously typing on the keyboard, as if he was busy with work. Scarlet and Frostina did not disturb him too much. They put down their things, gave a few words of advice, and walked out of the ward. Frostina held Scarlet's arm and said as they entered the elevator, in the past few days, my brother has been working like a different person. Scarlet knew that it was related to Susan, so she did not say much. She only said, your second brother wants him to take over the position of president in Asia Pacific region. Of course, he has to work harder. Sebastian said that there were too many affairs in the group. If the vice president Caden wanted to enter the North American market, Asia Pacific region would have no one to manage it. So he could only cultivate Lance. Scarlett didn't know why he wanted to train Lance. He only knew that Sebastian seemed to be distributing important positions in the group. It was very strange. Sebastian could manage it alone, and the things he was doing now seemed like he was going to be removed soon. Scarlet couldn't figure it out. She asked, but Sebastian didn't say anything, so she didn't ask. Just let him go. As long as he was safe and accompanied her, it would be fine. The two of them held hands and came to KYNG's ward. They pushed the door open and entered. They saw KYNG standing at the door of the bathroom with his head up and his eyes looking ahead. The bodyguard Ian was squatting on the ground and helping him pull up the zipper of his suit pants. Chapter 1003 Stay Away From Me When they saw this scene, the two people outside the door were stunned. KNG noticed it and looked up. When he saw that they were staring at his lower body in a daze, he subconsciously lowered his head. At this time, Ian was still trying hard to pull up the zipper. 
Young master in the future, you should change into the patient's clothes. It's stuck. It is inconvenient for you and it is inconvenient for me. This kind of thing and inconvenient. After Scarlet and Frostina caught the two keywords, they looked at each other. It turned out that the reason why K.I.N.G. didn't fall in love or get married until now was because his sexual orientation was biased towards Ian. The strange look in the eyes of the two people, the more K.Y.N.G. looked at it, the more he felt that something was wrong, what is that look in your eyes? Sorry to disturb you, Frostina said with a smile. She pulled Scarlet and turned to leave. Continue, continue. Wait. K.I.N.G. kicked Ian away and chased after her. Like a wall, he blocked the two of them. He raised his hand and pointed to his right hand, which was covered in plaster, and then pointed to the zipper of his suit that was not fully pulled. My hand is injured and my pants are broken. I can only ask Ian for help. We have nothing to do with each other. Scarlet and Frostina tacitly looked at each other. Understood, we understand. Understand what? I already said that it's inconvenient for me because get injured, thus I asked Ian for help, K.I.N.G. said anxiously. Then let him help you first. We'll come back later, Scarlet nodded like a chick pecking rice. No. My sexual orientation is very normal. Don't let your imagination run wild, K.Y.N.G. said as he stepped forward and stopped Scarlet. After that, he frowned again. Why did he have to explain so much to her? What did it have to do with her whether his sexual orientation was normal or not? It has nothing to do with me whether you are normal or not. I definitely won't let my imagination run wild. Don't worry. K.I.N.G. choked and simply did not explain. Do as you please. Anyway, I am doing well. Scarlet did not reply. She only raised her eyebrows and smiled sweetly. Seeing this smile, K.Y.N.G.'s heart thumped again, and then his heartbeat continued to pound. He was puzzled. He raised his hand and pressed it against his chest. After pressing down on his abdomen, the frequency of his heartbeat returned to normal, so he did not take it to heart. What are you looking for me for? After asking, K.Y.N.G. seemed to have thought of something and quickly walked into the ward. Wait outside, I'll come out immediately. He went to the bathroom to change his pants before walking out. His expression was a little agitated, but he was not as cold and sinister as before. Instead, he looked a little easier to get along with. Come in. After he sat down on the sofa, he raised his chin at the two of them. His movements were still aloof. Scarlet did not take it to heart and pulled Frostina to him. Young Master Longford, we are here to talk to you about Lance. When Scarlet said this, she took a step closer to K.I.N.G., Outside the window, a slight wind blew, blowing up the waves on her waist. When her hair was raised, it swept over K.Y.N.G.'s face. It was like scratching an itch, scratching his heart and making him subconsciously raise his neck. Stay away from me. Scarlet was stunned for a moment. She clearly wasn't close to him. However, K.I.N.G. felt that she was very close to him, so close that it messed up his mood. Seeing that his expression was very ugly, Scarlet only took a few steps back and stayed far away. Even though she was very far away, K.I.N.G. still felt irritated. It was as if those strands of hair that swept past his cheeks had been sweeping his heart, making him very annoyed. But he couldn't just rush up and beat her up just because her hair accidentally swept across his face. Chapter 1004 Heart Beating Like Thunder K.I.N.G. clenched his fists and gritted his teeth. Why is everyone looking for me for the sake of Lance? Isn't it annoying? Didn't you say that you would let Lance off just because you asked me to take care of you? K.I.N.G., whose face was full of impatience, heard this and the frustration in his eyes gradually dissipated. You agreed to take care of me? Before Scarlet could say anything, Frostina tugged at her sleeve. Second sister-in-law, sacrificing yourself for my brother is not worth it. It's fine. Scarlet patted her on the back of her hand, indicating that she should be at ease. Your mother is the one of Burke family. My mother grew up with Burke family, so we should be relatives. I can also call you cousin. Moreover, you also think that we are cousins, so I have the courage to accept the identity of cousin. It is only right for cousin to take care of cousin, but... Scarlet paused for a moment, raised her eyebrows and revealed a faint smile. I am your cousin and Lance is my younger brother. Then you should also have some close relationships. Young Master Longford, can you let him go for this relationship? K.N.G. glanced at Scarlet, who was standing in the distance with a smile on her lips and a relaxed expression on her face. According to what you said, Lance can be considered my younger brother? That's right. Your cousin is Sebastian, and he can be considered as your younger brother. 
Scarlet thought this in her heart, but her face carried a foolish and ignorant smile as she nodded lightly at him. Cousin, for the sake of this relationship, don't argue with him, okay? Her voice was warm and gentle, and her voice was like a gurgling stream that had the effect of comforting people's hearts. K.I.N.G. originally wanted to be angry, but when he heard this soft voice, the anger in his heart gradually suppressed. He looked up and stared at Scarlet. As he looked, he actually felt that Sebastian's wife seemed to be really good-looking. When this thought came out, K.I.N.G. was shocked. He should go to the brain department later. His brain must be broken. You just don't want to take care of me. Don't be so glib and try to make connections with me. You said that you wanted me to take care of you. You wanted to take this opportunity to get closer to me. I came to build a relationship and you said this to me. K.I.N.G. choked on his words. He didn't expect to fight back. After a while, he said, I mean, don't pull Lance to build a relationship with me. But the truth is like this. Then I can't let him go because of this relationship. This explosive temper guy. He actually didn't circle into her pit. Scarlet stared at him. After a few seconds of silence, she nodded at K.O.I.N.G. All right, I'll take care of you. I just don't know how long you need me to take care of you, cousin. Why did the word cousin sound like Emmanuel calling him? It was weird. Just take care of me until I am discharged. K.I.N.G. glanced at Scarlet. Young master, we will be discharged in the afternoon. Ian interrupted. K.I.N.G. Before he could open his mouth, Scarlet hurriedly interjected, then it settled. I'll take care of you until you're discharged from the hospital. K.I.N.G. wanted to go back on his word, but he saw that she who had played a little trick had succeeded. She covered her mouth and laughed along with Frostina. He was originally very agitated, but because of this smile, the irritation in his heart dissipated a lot. Forget it, just take care of me until I'm discharged. Does that mean you won't argue with Lance when you are discharged from the hospital? Scarlet asked. That depends on your performance, K.I.N.G. said lazily, folding his slender legs. His tone was arrogant, but there was a hint of relief. Scarlet and Frostina heard it and were very happy while Ian was stunned. Young master, when did you become so easy to talk to? Didn't you say before that you wanted to let Seventh Brother, that kid, go to the police station? Didn't you say that it was useless to persuade you no matter whoever comes? Why did you agree when she said it? This change was too fast. This was unreasonable, very unreasonable. The one who was causing trouble was his young master, and this was most likely fake. What does my decision have to do with you? K.Y.N.G. slapped Ian on the head. Ian covered the top of his head and said in a wrong tone, Young master's decision is correct. It has nothing to do with me. Chapter 1005 Young Master, Something is Wrong with You After K.I.N.G. glared at Ian, he retracted his gaze and crooked his finger at Scarlet. Come over. Scarlet hesitated for a few seconds before walking up to him. K.I.N.G. used his left hand to tap the plaster on his right hand. I've been covering it for too long. The skin next to it is a little itchy. You scratch it for me. Didn't you say that I should stay away from you? Scarlet retorted. That was just now. Can you stay away from me now that I asked you to take care of me? K.I.N.G. choked again. As expected, her IQ was not up to much, and she only had beauty. Sebastian's vision was really bad. Scarlet did not care what K.Y.N.G. was thinking, but she could see the obvious disdain in his eyes. Frostina also saw it, and she originally thought that K.Y.N.G. would not have any thoughts about her second sister-in-law. After thinking about it, if he had any thoughts, he would not have been disgusted with second sister-in-law and let her take care of him. He probably wanted to use her second sister-in-law to humiliate her second brother. Moreover, KYNG's sexual orientation was unclear, so she was relieved and quietly stayed at the side. As long as she was there, no one would gossip about second sister-in-law. After staring at KYNG for a few seconds, Scarlet's eyes turned slightly, then she picked a seat not far away and sat down on the sofa next to KYNG. Young Master Longford, give me your right hand. When KYNG saw that Sebastian's wife was obediently listening to him, he was in an extremely good mood. He hurriedly stretched out his arm that was used to cast the cast and handed it to her. When his warm fingertips touched the sleeve on the wall of the cast, KYNG's body gradually stiffened and his heart beat uncontrollably. He was shocked. He raised his deep eyes and looked at Scarlet. Her face was clean and flawless, her skin as smooth as milk, her eyebrows curved, her delicate and sweet features. On his entire face, every point, every inch, every bit, every bit, it made him subconsciously nervous, 
even nervous to the point of not being able to breathe. Especially when the little hand touched his skin lightly, it was as if there was an electric current hitting him, causing his top body to suddenly soften. He was frightened by his own reaction and did not know what to do. How could this be? Scarlet, who was just about to scratch him, saw him suddenly jump up and trembled in fear. She thought that he had discovered her and quickly hit her sharp nails. You woman, stay away from me in the future. K.I.N.G. glared at Scarlet, who was hiding his nails. The one who wants to stay away is you. The one who wants me to be closer to you is also you. Young Master Longford, you keep go against your words over and over again. Are you sick? Scarlet was puzzled. Just as K.N.G. lowered his head and wanted to refute Scarlet, he bumped into a pair of clear eyes that were as clear as spring water. His heart suddenly trembled. When Scarlet saw that he wanted to say something, he suddenly stopped when he saw her face. She tilted her head slightly and asked him, Do you still want me to take care of you? Hearing her voice, K.O.N.G. unnaturally retracted his gaze. No need, you can go. Then, Lance, Scarlet asked anxiously. I'll find a chance to hit him next time, K.O.N.G. said impatiently, turning around and waving his hand. The meaning of this was to let Lance go. Scarlet let out a sigh of relief. Frostina, who was sitting not far away, also let out a sigh of relief. Although she did not know why Lance suddenly let go, Scarlet was still very grateful. Thank you, cousin. Come to my house for dinner when you have time. After she finished speaking, she got up, walked to Frostina's side, grabbed her hand, and left the ward quickly after saying, We'll leave first. Looking at that delicate back, K.I.N.G. revealed a knowing smile. It was only when Ian's flat face face appeared in his line of sight that his smile collapsed. What are you looking at? Ian circled around K.I.N.G. Young master, something is wrong with you. You seem to treat Miss Sales differently. Are you? What Miss Sales? That's my cousin. Ian wanted to retort, but he was kicked by KYNG. What are you still standing there for? Why aren't you going to get me discharged? Chapter 1006 Uncanny Plan After Scarlet and Frostina gossiped about KYNG's sexual orientation, they went back home. On Vivian's side, as soon as Frostina went back, she explained the situation clearly. In order to express her gratitude, Vivian specially brought gifts to Blue Bay Island. Scarlet couldn't refuse, so she accepted it and sent something back to Vivian's family. As time went by, the relationship between Scarlet and Lance's parents became much closer. It was just that Sebastian was a little unhappy. Since he came back, he sat on the sofa in the study room, not speaking for a long time. Seeing that he did not play with phone or red books, but just stared at her, Scarlet slowly lowered the measuring ruler in her hand. Hubby, what's wrong? From the moment he entered until now, he had been sitting for almost ten minutes before she finally opened her mouth to show her concern for him. Sebastian, who had been holding his breath in, raised his slender legs and placed them on his knees. What do you think? The man was dressed in a formal attire with his legs crossed and his back leaning against the sofa. He looked like a big shot. I think you're angry about what happened today, said Scarlet as she held her chin in one hand to enjoy her hubby's beauty. What happened today? Did something happen today? Asked Sebastian as he glanced at her coldly. Since you don't know, then just pretend it nothing happened, said Scarlet with a smile. Sebastian's handsome face gradually became gloomy as he sat in his original position. After dozens of seconds, he finally couldn't help but stand up and walk to her. Honey, are you trying to anger me to death? He asked as he rested his slender fingers on the blueprint. You don't know what happened, do you? Why are you so angry? She asked, tilting her head to look at him. Looks like I have to teach you a lesson in the bathroom, said Sebastian, who was still holding her chin. Sebastian walked across the desk and lit her up to his shoulder. Go to the bathroom. Who will be taught a lesson, said Scarlet, who knew that she couldn't break free. Madam, are you saying that you want to teach me a lesson? Sebastian asked with a smile. Depends on my mood. Scarlet raised her chin proudly. Only you dare to behave atrociously on my head. Sebastian laughed in anger. After the man finished speaking, he picked up Scarlet, kicked open the bathroom door, and placed her on the bathroom sink. Not long after, there came the sound that made people's imagination go wildly, while this sound lasted for a whole night. Finally, no one knew who was taught a lesson. Only at very early in the morning, the man's cold and passionate voice suddenly came out of the bathroom. After teaching you a lesson, I will find K.O.I.N.G. How do you want to do to him? I will chop off his hand that touches you. My nails scrape his arm, will you chop off my hand too? Yes. 
After a while, the voice of the woman punishing the man came again. K-I-N-G is a gay. His boyfriend is Ian. The ambiguous atmosphere in the room ended in this sentence and Sebastian's sentence. Next time, when you see your cousin, help give him my congratulations. After K-I-N-G stopped pursuing this matter any further, the matter of Lance was settled. Next was Landon. The person that Sebastian sent out to get close to Landon replied, there are only two possibilities. The first is that Landon concealed that patient's condition. Only he knows. He did not tell the patient, or he did not have time to tell the patient before this condition was used by him. The other is that Landon bought the legal medical expert and asked that expert to make a fake identification report. I personally prefer to combine these two. Otherwise, it would not be so seamless that I could not find anything suspicious. After listening to this, Lanny also agreed with this statement. Mr. Jackman, why don't we call the legal medical expert over to have a ask? If he is bribed, then we will give him more money. As long as he is willing to tell the truth, then we will deal with him leniently. Sebastian, who was sitting on the boss chair, frowned and thought for a few seconds. Then he asked Lanny, how far has Miss Croft and Dr. Scarrett progressed? Lanny was stunned for a moment and then reacted. I told Susan everything happened that day. After they went back, they had a fight because of this matter. Susan had the tendency to break up, but Dr. Scarrett used his parents to kidnap Miss Croft. He said that no matter what, they had to say these words face to face. I guess he was afraid that Miss Croft would really break up. Originally, it was scheduled to meet Dr. Scarrett's parents next month. But Dr. Scarrett invited his parents over in advance, and the time was set at this end of the month. Sebastian understood and nodded, then let's wait until they meet. Hearing this, Lanny was a little puzzled. After thinking carefully, she understood that Mr. Jackman probably was not good at dealing with Landon at this critical moment because of Susan. When Susan met his parents of the other party, he would decide according to the situation. However, Mr. Jackman, what if Susan was pressured by his parents and agreed to marry Landon? Sebastian's unruly black eyes revealed an almost flawless color. No, she won't. They could only wait for Miss Croft to let go first before dealing with Landon without any scruples in returning Asher's innocence. Chapter 1007 I'll Let You Lose Wholeheartedly The matter of investigating Landon was imminent, but Leo and Dr. Williams' wedding had to be held as scheduled. The special assistant of Jackman President was married, and the ceremony was quite big. The entrance of Haitian Hotel was full of luxury cars. Not only did the big shots in a town, but even the people who had business dealings with Jackman Group in the capital rushed over. The entire hotel was booked by Leo, so that the guests who had invitations and no invitations could sit there. Leo was born by Yan's stepmother, and Baber family had also come. The person who had come was Yen. He entered the hotel and did not say much. When he saw Lanny, he blocked her at the end of the corridor. The man was dressed in black. He had a delicate figure, an indifferent face, and thin lips. He looked cold and ruthless. I received the court summons. You guys are quite bold. You actually dare to file a lawsuit with me. His fair, almost transparent finger touched Lanny's cheek, but Lanny avoided it with a cold face. Now we are going to fight a lawsuit. You are sexually harassing me. Aren't you afraid of another charge? Yin smiled. His elegant and confident smile was like a white incandescent lamp in the hall. It was dazzling and piercing. Lanny, with our relationship, you can't win this lawsuit. Now I have a good mood and withdraw the lawsuit. Otherwise... After Yen forced Lanny back to the wall, he placed one hand on top of her head, lowered his head, and kissed her lips deeply. Originally, it was just a touch, but after tasting her taste, Yen was a little reluctant. He reached out to hold her waist and held her tightly in his arms. Lanny, I miss you so much. While he was expressing his love, Lanny pushed him away. Get lost. However, Yen grabbed her hand and placed it on his wrist. Touch it and see how many injuries there are for you. Lanny touched the densely packed scars. Some of them were scabs, some were crisscrossed, and there were crisscrossing decorations on the veins and arteries. Lanny was a doctor, so she naturally knew that it was caused by cutting wrist, but what did this have to do with her? Her face was gloomy, and she threw it away with strength. This time, Yen did not grab her hand again. He only raised his wrist and smiled. If I had known you were so heartless, I wouldn't have come to see you cut my wrist. His smile had always been handsome and bright, but at this moment, there was a hint of bitterness. It seemed that he had suffered a lot during this period of time. The truth was indeed so. After stopping the two of them from getting married last time, he was locked up by Baber family again. 
he had no choice but to make a scene. He didn't eat or drink in a row until they allowed him to go out after cutting his wrist several times. When he just came out, he received a message from Lanny who had said that she loved him and loved him very much, but now she wanted to sue him with another man and even wanted to send him in. He never thought about why Lanny, who loved him, would become so cruel and heartless. Did he deserve to be deceived and violated by her like this? Thinking of this, Yan's eyes turned red. His slender fingers grabbed her chin and raised it high, letting her look straight into his eyes. Lanny, you want to send me in and spend the rest of your life with Asher, right? He lowered his head. The hair that had been tidied up on his forehead also hung down, sweeping across Lanny's clean face. It was as if a centipede had climbed over him. It was heart-wrenching. I'm telling you, unless I die, you will never be with him. From the moment you, Lanny, deceived me, you are destined to be mine. After the man finished speaking, he shook off Lanny's chin, turned around, and left without a trace of reluctance. I will make you lose wholeheartedly in the case of the lawsuit. When the proud figure disappeared at the corner of the bend, this sentence came, which made Lanny stand unsteadily and slowly squat against the wall. Asher was framed. Landon had not yet solved. Now, with the addition of Yen, this poisonous snake, how could she continue this battle that had not yet begun? Chapter 1008 I will definitely cure his legs. Scarlet held Sebastian's arm and when they entered the banquet hall, they happened to meet Yen who came out from inside. Both sides stopped in their tracks. Yen looked at the jade-like man and woman in front of him and could not help but sneer. Miss Sales, long time no see. He directly ignored Sebastian and only greeted Scarlet. The disdain in his eyes were displayed on his face. Scarlet did not reply and wanted to pull Sebastian to take a detour. However, when the two of them took a step forward, Yen suddenly let out a mocking laugh. Miss Sales, the last time I saw you, you were not as rosy as you are now. It seems that your life after marriage is quite happy. The other person had already picked up the topic so she could only take this topic. Whether I am happy or not is none of Dr. Baver's business. The corners of Yan's lips curled up as he revealed a contemptuous smile. It has nothing to do with me. I just happened to know that there was someone who sacrificed his life to fulfill your happiness. Scarlet's hand that held Sebastian's arm suddenly stiffened and her expression became a little unnatural. The man who was being held by the arm noticed it and hesitated for two seconds before turning around and coldly staring at him. Did Liam ask you to say these words? Ah, dash. Yin sneered. He chose to fulfill your two. Why would he let me say such words? Sebastian, dressed in a black suit, slightly curled the corners of his lips. His deep and cold eyes hid a sacred and inviolable aura. Since he didn't let you say it, then are you fighting for him in his name? or declaring that Mr. Gatsby is narrow-minded? The neither cold nor indifferent rhetorical question made Yen stun for a moment. It seemed that he realized that not only would he not provoke them, but he would also ruin his good friend's gentle and refined reputation. I just felt that Dev was living a life worse than death. I couldn't bear to see it, so I said a few words of ridicule. It has nothing to do with Dev. You are Mr. Gatsby's friend. It is understandable for you to speak up for him. However, Mr. Gatsby's name cannot withstand repeated consumption. I hope that next time you will not use his name to speak nonsense to my wife. Yin frowned and wanted to say something, but when he saw Scarlet's eyes full of guilt, he remembered Dev's warning. He said, next time if you would use my matter to hurt Scarlet, we would not even be friends. Yin was afraid of losing Dev, so he gritted his teeth and endured. He glanced coldly at the two of them and left. He came here to take the opportunity to meet Lanny. After seeing her, there was no need to stay. Anyway, that bastard's wedding was not qualified for him to be the witness. After Yen left, Sebastian grabbed her hand and squeezed it hard. You didn't let Liam down. You don't have to blame yourself. Ten years ago, in order to save him, she crawled and cried on such a rainy night, begging for help everywhere. Ten years later, even if she fell in love with him, she placed Liam first in her heart, including now. Sebastian held her hand tightly, as if he was holding onto his life love and was unwilling to let go of her. I know that your guilt towards him stemmed from the pair of legs that lost his love for you. He lowered his star-like eyes and looked into Scarlet's clear eyes. Don't worry, I will definitely cure his legs. He would definitely cure Dev, just like how he kicked away the gun in his hand without hesitation back then. Only by curing Dev would the guilt in his wife's heart completely dissipate. Feeling his strength and determination, the guilt in Scarlet's eyes gradually dissipated and was replaced with emotion. Hubby, thank you. Thank you for your generosity, and also thank you for willing to do everything you can to help Liam. 
just like how you saved him back then, you were still willing to give up money, manpower, and material resources to protect him. You even helped him take revenge for his parents and even helped him take back Gatsby family. Some time ago you also invited experts to treat his legs. Scarlet always remembered all of this. Seeing tears in her eyes, Sebastian slightly curved the corners of his lips. You look exactly the same as last night. Last night? Scarlet blushed. Last night, she was pressed against the floor-to-ceiling window. She was so tired that tears came out. It was not because it's uncomfortable, but... There are so many people in the banquet hall. What nonsense are you talking about? Scarlet said with embarrassment. After a smile, Sebastian took the opportunity to hold her fist, walked to the main seat and sat down. Then he asked the waiter for a shawl. What do you want to do with this shawl? As he put it on her, he leaned close to her ear and said, didn't the old man tell you to keep warm? It's too cold here. I'm afraid you'll be cold. In addition, the man's eyelashes moved from top to bottom and fell on the faintly discernible V-shaped collar. Dr. Herring said that we should exercise more. Didn't Madam want to thank me? You should reward me for doing it a few more times every night. Chapter 1009 to see Landon's parents. When he said this, someone happened to pass by and seemed to have heard him. Strangely, he glanced at the two of them. Scarlet's round and moist little face suddenly turned red. Quickly close your mouth. She covered his thin lips and shouted in the past you didn't talk much. Why are you so long-winded now? Sebastian opened his thin lips and wanted to reply, but she held him back. Don't speak again. Close your mouth. As the couple was playing, Leo welcomed the bride to the hotel, and the people in the banquet hall also sat down. The MC went on stage and congratulated them on their wedding ceremony before getting to the point and letting the two newcomers on stage. When the light shone on the bride it gave off a gentle light, making Dr. Williams look as beautiful as a fairy descending from the heavens. She stood on the other end of the red carpet with a smile on her face. She was also dignified and generous as she waited for the handsome groom to welcome her. Leo, who was holding a rose in his hand, was wearing a black tuxedo. His hair was combed behind his head, revealing his smooth and full forehead. He walked towards Dr. Williams, full of energy. After he handed the flowers in his hand to her, he held her hand and walked step by step across the red carpet to the stage in the soothing and solemn wedding song. Countless colorful lights swept through the guests in the hall and landed on the new couple, chasing them to exchange rings, make vows, kiss, and pour champagne. Then Leo's best men went up to the stage to tease Dr. Williams' companions. Among them, the ones who were most happy were Zed, Jesus. The two of them were so happy that they even rushed off the stage, wanting to pull Sebastian onto the stage to perform. Sebastian glanced over with a cold gaze and the two of them quivered, not daring to do so. Keanu, who was sitting next to Scarlet, looked at the golden brick on the stage and was somewhat eager to give it a try. He pulled up a symmetrical mile, how about I go? This brat Keanu had tricked Leo several times and Jesus knew that. You go, aren't you afraid that Leo will punch you down? Today is a good day for him. He won't do anything to me. Don't worry, Keanu said with a stiff smile. It's just a show to drink a whole row of champagne. What is there to be afraid of? Just give that little gold brick to him as a prize. After making up his mind, Keanu ignored Jesus and Zed's obstruction and rushed onto the stage. Originally, there was a group of people on the stage. After he went up, it became him and Leo fighting to the death. The two of them finished a row of champagne, added another row, and added another row of little gold bricks. Keanu put his life on the line and drank Leo down. He held a pile of little gold bricks and staggered off the stage. Leo directly fell down. Finally, the bride helped him up the car. It was said that the wedding night was not perfect due to Keanu's disturbance. Dr. Williams hated Keanu for her entire life. When she saw him again, she would choke him a few words. However, this was the afterword. After the wedding ended, the guests dispersed. Lanny looked at the vast crowd and heaved a sigh of relief. She could not marry and have children peacefully, but her cousin could. This was the happiest thing. Lanny did not ask for anything else. She only asked her cousin Leo to stay by Mr. Jackman's side for the rest of his life and be happy and healthy forever. Susan was still thinking about her business. After greeting Scarlett and Lanny, she planned to leave first. When she got up, she passed the crowd and saw the man sitting on the wheelchair on the other side of the VIP seats. Today he was wearing a white shirt with his hair combed back, making his handsome face look much more mature and steady than usual. 
in the past he was the one who had the most fun in such occasions, but this time he did not show his face once. He just sat under the stage and watched quietly. He was much thinner. His tall body and bones looked a little thin. Although his face was much more spirited, it was still a little pale. When Lance saw that most of the people had left, he pushed the wheelchair and turned around, just in time to see Susan, who was waiting for the front row of people to leave. Their eyes met, and when they met, they wanted to pretend that they didn't see it, but it was not easy to avoid it. Susan wanted to quickly look away, but Lance nodded at her. Compared to the previous several times of entanglement, the eyes this time were much clearer, as if he had put her down. Lance politely nodded, pushed the wheelchair, and left for another safe exit without looking back the entire time. Watching the figure disappear into the group, Susan withdrew her gaze, raised her pace, and walked out of the marriage banquet hall step by step. After Leo's wedding, Scarlett was busy with Sarah's lawsuit, Lanny was busy investigating the truth to prove Asher's innocence, and Susan was busy meeting Landon's parents. The location of the meeting was at the most expensive restaurant for a town, and it would take a month to get to the inner area. Mila said that this meant that Southworth family valued her very much, so they invited her to meet at such a high-class restaurant, so that she could dress up well and leave a good impression on Landon's parents. Susan said good, but she did not dress up particularly carefully. Just like usual, she put on light makeup, changed into a conservative dress, and went out. Chapter 1010 Interrogate the Past When Susan entered the restaurant, Landon, who was sitting on a round and elegant seat, saw her and immediately got up and waved at her. Susan here. Looking at the imposing figure, Susan was a little timid and wanted to retreat, but the person had already come in, so no matter what, she had to bite the bullet and go up. She clenched her fists and walked towards Landon. Only then did she see the middle-aged couple sitting in the innermost room. The man was in a suit and wore a black tie. His body was cold and his appearance was dignified. He looked somewhat similar to Landon. The woman was dignified and elegant, with a graceful figure and an elegant appearance. She looked gentle and kind. When the two saw that she had come, they hurriedly greeted her with smiles. Miss Croft, come in and sit. They were quite enthusiastic. They invited Susan to sit down and ask what she wanted to eat. They asked her to order it herself while Landon was busy calling the waiter. The three people's friendly attitude made Susan's nervous mood slowly relax. She asked for some drinks. Miss Croft, how long have you been with Landon? Landon's father was very silent while his mother, Kylie Ford, asked a lot. Susan looked at Landon, who was eagerly cutting the steak. It's been two months and it's just not very long. Kylie had a gentle simile on her face. Although it was not very long, I heard from Landon that he had a crush on you since high school. The love of a student was quite romantic. After cutting the steak, Landon put it on Susan's plate. Susan said thank you. Then she raised her lips and replied to Kylie, I only found out about this two months ago at the blind date. When I was studying I didn't know his thought. The simile on Kylie's face became ugly. Landon said, that was my one-sided love. At that time, Susan probably didn't even know that I was there. Kylie smiled. If that's the case, then Miss Croft was already an influential figure in school. You couldn't be the number one genius in the school, right? The hand holding the knife and fork froze slightly. Susan wanted to say no, but Landon interrupted, Mom, don't mention the past anymore. It's all your son's wishful thinking. It's embarrassing to mention it too much. All right, all right. I won't mention it anymore. Give my son some face. Kylie looked at Landon with a doting smile. Only then did Landon's brows relax. He also cut some goose liver for Susan and placed it on her plate. His actions and expression were very considerate. Susan originally wanted to bury herself in eating. After only eating a few mouthfuls, she heard Kylie ask, Miss Croft, aren't you and my son planning to get married? There are some things that I want to clarify in advance. Don't mind. Susan put down the knife and fork in her hand and looked up at Kylie. Auntie, you can ask whatever you want to ask. I won't mind. She was quite polite to his elders. Kylie was satisfied and nodded. I heard that you were an orphan. How did you spend these years without parents? When I was young, I relied on the orphanage. When I grew up, I worked on my own. I worked in convenience stores, small restaurants, and wherever there needed workers. That's not easy for you. You just worked in a small restaurant. At most, you could only make ends meet. How did you become the big boss of the entertainment center at such a young age? After asking these two questions, Susan understood that Kylie was questioning where she got the money from. 
with her background she would indeed be questioned. Susan did not blame Kylie and only truthfully said, after I graduated from high school I sold wine in the entertainment field and saved up some money. Later, my two relatives had some trouble and left some money for me before they left. I took a portion of the money and bought Earthly Paradise. After returning to the capital I returned the money to my friends. This is my past. After Kylie heard this she was deep in thought and nodded. So that's how it is. But you are a little girl. You can find a stable job and live a peaceful life. Why do you want to be in this line of work? Is there something else? Chapter 1011 Superior Her question was quite obscure. If it were any other young girl she would definitely not be able to understand it. However, Susan was different. There is no other secret story. I just want to make a name in a city. In this place, if one wants to have his name, he must be rich. I don't do any sex and power trade, so I can only save up money by drinking with customers and then buy an apartment for myself. At first, I felt that this was quite satisfying. Later, when I was bullied by rich and powerful people, I felt that the steadily and peaceful job couldn't bring anything to me. Susan's words dispelled the doubts that Kylie thought that she was selling herself to get to the top. I understand. What happened to you is a little similar to mine. However, my grades are a little better. I took exams all the way to the foreign country and entered a high school. Only then did I gain a firm foothold. It is indeed not easy to be a woman. Auntie can understand you. Kylie did not show a particularly obvious rejection, but there was always a superior sense of superiority in her words. It made Susan feel uncomfortable. She looked up at Landon again. He seemed to not understand his mother's meaning. He did not speak up to help her and only buried his head in picking up all kinds of food for her. Susan used a knife and fork to play the dishes on the plate. She did not eat. Landon noticed it and asked with concern, what's wrong? You don't like these dishes. Susan shook her head. Kylie glanced at the two of them and quickly found a waiter. After ordering the menu, she handed it to Susan. Miss Croft, don't eat the dishes that are not to your liking. Change to a few dishes that are to your liking. Your Uncle Scarrett also has some money overseas. We can afford it. Don't be so polite. Hearing this, Susan looked at the noble woman, then at the middle-aged man who was sipping red wine and not saying a word. Finally, she looked at Landon. Seeing that Landon agreed, he nodded at her. Susan smiled. Then order a few more dishes. After choosing two dishes of medium price, Kylie felt that it was too cheap. She asked for a few more signature dishes and a bottle of Lafite. After the waiter left with a smile, Kylie raised her hand and tidied up the long beige dress made of silk. Every stitch of the long dress was hand-drawn. Susan recognized it, but she didn't care about Kylie's little tricks showing her rich in front of her at any time and place. Seeing that she didn't want to cling to her and curry favor with her, Kylie also took back her hand to touch her clothes. Miss Croft, I may offend you if I say this, but you also know my son. He hasn't any girlfriend before. And he hasn't been married. Therefore, I'm quite curious about your history. I wonder if you can tell us why you divorced your ex-husband. Didn't you tell your parents about this? Susan asked Landon. He told us. After you confirmed the relationship, Landon told us about it. But he didn't tell me the details. I just wanted to talk to you when we met. Since she had already said so, Susan had no reason to question Landon. After hesitating for two seconds, she uncovered her scar and spread it out on the surface. I divorced my ex-husband because he cheated on his sister. When I knew about it, the child was already more than nine months old. As if she had heard a huge gossip, Kylie covered her mouth and said, Biological sister? Their family adopted her, not his biological sister. Susan shook her head. Kylie chased after her, then, How did you find out? His sister lives in my friend's hospital. I happened to pass by and accidentally caught them doing illicit things. This is too strange. How can they do such a thing in the hospital? Kylie asked. What happened after that? She asked holding Susan's hand. If it was anyone else, they would not ask until the end, but it was obvious that Kylie wanted to dig out all her secrets and then kill her in front of everyone. She did not take her feelings seriously at all. Susan glanced at Landon again, hoping that he would stop Kylie from continuing to gossip. However, Landon was focused on picking fish bones. Susan had no choice but to explain the matter of the lawsuit against Cosmo in detail. Chapter 1012 The Gossip Behind the Back After carefully understanding Susan's past, Kylie smiled and said, Miss Croft, this is how I am. I am always more concerned about Landon's matters. In addition, he is a bookworm who only knows how to read. 
As for the ways in the world in chasing girls, he doesn't understand at all. As a mother, I will worry more. But all parents in the world are like this. You should understand. She didn't have parents, so what would she understand? Susan couldn't sit still. She casually smiled and found an excuse to get up. Uncle, auntie, excuse me. I'll go to the bathroom first. After Susan left, Kylie maintained her elegant smile and suddenly collapsed. Landon, although what she said is quite convincing, I don't believe that a person who is crawling and rolling in the entertainment center will be clean. In the round and elegant seat next door, the man who was leaning on the Cartier sofa slightly tilted his head. His black hair fell down with his sharp eyes, staring at the red wine in the cup that was illuminated by the light. Raven, who was beside him, seemed to want to hear it clearly, so he quickly took out phone and placed it on the seat of honor, aiming the receiver in the direction of the next door. Landon hid the things that Susan and Lance had been together before. He did not tell his parents. Now that he heard Kylie say this, he remembered that Susan and Lance had slept together. He felt a little uncomfortable, but it was not to the point where he had a grudge. If she is not clean, she can't stand your interrogation. Why do you suspect her? Kylie frowned and said, look at her appearance and figure. Even when she walks, she is sexy and charming. How can such a beautiful and seductive woman be completely clean? I won't believe it no matter what. Landon's father, Zion Scarrett, followed Kylie's line of sight and looked at Susan, who was heading to the bathroom. She is indeed not bad looking. Generally, men will have some thoughts, let alone a man who goes to the gold-consuming lair for entertainment. Any powerful man can make her submit. Her words are more or less a bit fake. Kylie nodded. That's right. Whether she is a good girl or not, your dad and I can tell at a glance. This Miss Croft is not an honest person. If you get married in the future, she might even make you a cuckold. Susan is not that kind of person. She would never make me a cuckold. Landon disagreed. Even if you believe in her character, I still do not approve of her. Mom, didn't you nod your head? Why are you not acknowledging her now? Landon asked anxiously. Kylie patted Landon's arm. Son, she is an orphan and graduated from high school. She has no background and no culture. She probably doesn't even know a second language. How can she live abroad with you in the future? If she goes out to see the friends of your father and me, she will disgrace our family. Landon wanted to refute, but he felt that Kylie was right. Susan really did not know a second language. Could she have a good life with him abroad? Seeing that Landon had nothing to say, Kylie added, and she was married and worked in the night field for many years. You were born in a literary family, and your family is in academic research. Let's not talk about these backgrounds, just talk about yourself. You became an excellent doctor at such a young age. Not long after, you will go to get the Nobel Medical Award. Once you get that award, your status will be as high as the sky. How can someone like Miss Croft be worthy of you? No matter how outstanding I am, I only want Susan. She was someone I liked since high school. How can I be satisfied if I haven't gotten her? Landon refused to listen. Seeing that he was so stubborn, Kylie sighed, I know your personality. If you don't get her, it will be difficult for you to let go. But with Miss Croft's talent, it is a bit shameful to marry her. Why don't you choose Bernice? She and the child. At this time, Zion coughed and Kylie immediately changed her words. She is still waiting for you abroad. Mom, Bernice and I are already in the past. Don't mention her in front of me in the future. Seeing his son's cold face, Kylie could only follow him helplessly. Okay, okay, okay. I won't mention her. Anyway, after you get the medical award, there are countless outstanding talents in the foreign academic community waiting for you. I hope you don't be in such a hurry to get married. You can decide after you get the award, okay? Yes, I will make my own decision. You don't have to worry about it. Also, Mom, when you questioned her just now, Susan felt uncomfortable. I didn't say anything to stop you because I respect you as my mother and give you a chance to show off your strength. But when Susan comes out later, you should say something good to her and be polite. Kylie heard that her son still wanted to marry Susan. Even if she was unwilling, she could only do as her son wanted. After that, she would think of a way to force the two of them to break up. Okay, my proudest son. I will listen to you. Chapter 1013 Don't Meddle in Other People's Business Susan just wanted to find an excuse to come out and take a breath. After washing her hands repeatedly, she came out. The restaurant was relatively large. The waiter took her around several corners before returning to the elegant seat that Landon had booked. When she came back, she thought that Kylie would continue to interrogate her, but she did not expect that Kylie did not ask anything. 
She only took her hand and said with heartache, Good child, you have suffered for the first half of your life. In the second half of your life, you will follow Landon at home. You just have to enjoy at home. You don't have to rush about for your livelihood. You will definitely be happy for the rest of your life. Susan was a little uncomfortable. She wanted to pull her hand back, but when she met Kylie's distressed look, she endured it. Auntie, even if I marry my senior, I will not give up my career. She did not want to be a housewife, so she made it very clear. Not only did Kylie not object, she even supported her. Of course, you run such a big entertainment center and earn such a high income every year. This belongs to you. I just want to tell you that my Landon will always be your backing. Auntie changed quite quickly. Susan smiled awkwardly. What do you mean? Kylie's face stiffened. Auntie asked so many questions just now. I thought that Auntie was not satisfied with my background and career. I did not expect that Auntie would agree to it when I washed my hands. Did you tell Auntie something? The last sentence was to ask Landon. Landon nodded with a smile. She interrogated you so much. It was a little too much. I only said a few words to her. I was sorry. When my mother asked, I did not interrupt her. I was afraid that the two intellectuals would catch me being impolite and disrespectful to the elders and then scold me later. Landon had always been like this. When others talked about her in front of him, he would not say anything. After that, he would find a suitable time to apologize to her. However, the excuses he found were also reasonable. It made Susan feel that she was too suspicious. Later, Susan learned that this was a high-level PUA. The current Susan was not clear and only thought that Landon had finally helped her. Kylie was afraid that Susan would not be full, so he ordered two more dishes for her. While picking up food for her, he asked with a smile, Miss Croft, when do you plan to get married? My family will prepare the betrothal gifts, set up a hotel in advance, and invite relatives and so on. Susan raised her clear eyes and looked at Kylie and Zion. Uncle, Auntie, I haven't been with Landon for long. I still don't know much about each other's character, values, thoughts, and so on. I want to have more contact with him and then talk about marriage again. Susan could see that Landon's parents looked down on her. It just so happened that she and Landon had an inappropriate thought because of the previous conflict. It was better to listen to Scarlett's advice and talk about it again. Don't get married in a hurry. It would be too late if she found it inappropriate. Hearing this, Kylie was quite happy in her heart. However, Susan said this kind of rejection first, which made her feel injustice for her son. Miss Croft, Landon has been secretly in love with you since high school. Don't you understand it well after such a long time? Senior knows much about me, but my understanding of Senior is only more than two months. Susan said with a bright smile. Kylie and Zion were instantly embarrassed. Susan did not care about their feelings and only smiled at Landon. Senior, what do you think? If not for Lance, Susan would have directly agreed him. Landon suddenly had a bit more hatred for Lance, but he did not show any generosity on the surface. Instead, he was generous. He picked up the fishbone and put it on Susan's plate. You decide it. I will listen to you. She wasn't forced to get married just because she met his parents. Susan breathed a sigh of relief. Even she herself did not know that she became relaxed. After the four left the restaurant, Raven raised his hand and touched his phone. When I go back to edit the clip, I will send this recording to Miss Croft. Don't meddle in other people's business. The man in the main seat glanced at him coldly. Hey, Lance, do you mean that you don't intend to meddle in Miss Croft's business? Raven, who was stuffing phone into his suit pocket, suddenly paused. Chapter 10 14 1 fell into the pit. 1 gained wisdom. Lance picked up the glass of red wine and took a sip. You care so much. When the time comes, they will blame you instead. Forget it. I have a recording as proof. It's not like I have no evidence. Raven said lightly. Lance said lightly, Landon refuted his mother and helped Susan speak up. What does a recording count for? Raven rolled his eyes at him. What did Landon refute? He allowed his mother to interrogate Miss Croft. There was a woman waiting for him abroad. Moreover, from his tone, he did not have much love for Miss Croft. It was just that he had never gotten it and was unwilling to accept it. The amount of information contained in this recording was enough for Miss Croft to see through Landon's true face. Why don't you see such a good opportunity to let them break up? With Landon's glib tongue, he can even turn black into white. If you take out a recording at this time, Landon will definitely say that I deliberately forged it in order to destroy them. Don't make fool of my. Then do you mean to just leave it like this? Raven was stunned. Lance, this is not like you. 
You were very willing to go all out for Miss Croft. Raven raised his eyebrows. Just now, Landon's parents had slandered Miss Croft. According to Lance's past personality, he would have already rushed up to beat him up. Today, not only was he able to keep his cool, but he also told him not to meddle in other people's business. Was he really bitterly disappointed? Lance put down the wine glass in his hand and said lightly, a fall into the pit and a gain of wisdom. I don't want to go to the hospital for another month. Raven looked at the wheelchair beside him. His spine was damaged. Although he's out of the hospital, he still had to rely on the wheelchair to move around. The price he paid was indeed quite big. However, did you hear that Miss Croft was going to postpone her marriage so you pretend not to be in a hurry? What's there to pretend about? I've already done what I have to do. I can't get her back, then let her go. What's the big deal? Lance said with a self-deprecating smile. He seemed to have really put her down from his indifferent tone. Raven stared at him. After pondering for a few seconds, he opened his mouth and said, I don't care what you think in your heart, but I'll keep this recording for now. Maybe it will be useful someday. Lance did not reply. It counted he agreed. Raven quickly put phone into his pocket and looked up at the direction of the door. Speaking of which, the representatives of Hardville Country are quite arrogant. I wonder how your fourth brother can stand it. The representative over there doesn't dare to put on the airs of my fourth brother. It is only because he knows that Asia Pacific Region's CEO has changed to me that he deliberately neglected me. Lance thought about how the entire group was not willing to submit to him and then he was quite distressed. Later you must help me look carefully at the contract given by the representative of the other party. Don't let my second brother deal with the aftermath when something happens. Don't worry. As soon as he finished speaking, a woman wearing sunglasses and a custom-made long dress, holding a Chanel bag, walked over with a swing waist. Which one of you is little Mr. Jackman? Raven and Lance looked at each other. Me. Who are you? Lance asked. The woman gently put the bag in her hand on the sofa. The representative of Hardville Country, Esther Green. Esther walked up the stairs, walked to Lance, and stretched out her slender hand. Little Mr. Jackman, there was a traffic jam on the road. Sorry for you to wait me for a long time. Chapter 1015 Very Good Esther was a cold-skinned person. Her hand was white to the point of shining. In the past, when Lance saw such a beauty, he would definitely be very excited. Now he only glanced at her lightly before withdrawing his gaze. It doesn't matter. Please take a seat. Esther saw that he was not like the rumored good for nothing. On the contrary, there was a chill in his bones, which made her a little confused. Little Mr. Jackman, we should change to a high-level entertainment center to discuss the project and the contract. This kind of elegant restaurant is not suitable, right? Lance pointed to the wheelchair at the side. I am injured. I can't just sit in a wheelchair and go to the entertainment center. Others will laugh at me. Besides, it is just a matter of signing. There is no need to go to that kind of place. The alienation in his words made Esther stunned. The company sent her here to make her use her beauty to confuse Lance and make Jackman Group's headquarters gave her company some benefits. Unexpectedly, the legendary playboy did not even look at her and refused her hint. This made Esther a little unable to hold back. After staring at Lance for a while, she slowly sat down. Little Mr. Jackman. Did you bring the contract? Take it out and show it to my lawyer. I'll sign it right away. Lance interrupted her. Do you have something urgent? Esther twitched the corner of her mouth. I just took over Asia Pacific region's matter. It's too messy. I don't have time to waste here. Lance nodded. The meaning of these words was that he did not fancy her, so he hurriedly sent her away. In Hardville country, Esther was a first-rate beauty. She had never been so disliked by others. Feeling unreconciled, she picked up the goblet and moved it in Lance's direction. Little Mr. Jackman, there is no hurry to sign the contract. Let's have a drink first. Miss Green, if I remember correctly, your company is a strategic cooperation company with us, Jackman Group. In other words, if your company wants to expand, you have to rely on Jackman Group to throw resources and give projects to you. As the president of the Asian region, I will give you some face when I just took office. I agreed to sign the contract outside and waited for you for an hour patiently. Does Miss Green want to make use of the wine to make your company more benefits? The tone of his voice was exactly the same as that of Sebastian. Esther, as a representative, came to the headquarters for a meeting. She had seen Sebastian several times and he was also so serious. Even when she met him deliberately approaching, he saw through her mind at a glance. 
Well, this Jackman family person was really not to be trifled with. Esther did not say anything more. She took out the contract from her bag and handed it to Raven. Seeing that Raven was reading it word by word, Esther sneered, Little Mr. Jackman, the legal affairs of both sides of the contract have been reviewed. You even brought a lawyer to do the examination. Could it be that Jackman Group's legal affairs can't compare to your lawyer? Raven pointed at the number on the contract indifferently. Miss Green, I compared it. This paper contract is different from the contract approved by the legal system. There are a few words missing. Lance took the contract and made a comparison. This contract indeed have some problems. Miss Green, since you are not here to talk about cooperation, then forget it. Jackman Group does not lack this project of your company. After glaring at Raven, Esther quickly took out the other three contracts from her bag and handed them back to them. This contract is exactly the same as the legal documents on both sides. There is no problem. Raven took it and glanced at her. Even if there is no problem, we have to check it again. Maybe you have a third different contract in your bag. You. Don't be noisy. I want to focus on the contract. Esther wanted to argue with Raven, but he raised his hand and interrupted her. Esther couldn't breathe, so she simply picked up her glass and took a sip. A moment later, Raven handed the contract to Lance. The two of them had been good friends for many years and they knew what the other meant with just a look. Lance took out a pen and signed his name on the contract. He took out his company seal and stamped on the three-piece contract. Esther also signed and stamped the seal. Then she put the contract back into her bag. Just as she looked up to say something, she saw Raven smiling at her. Miss Green, the lawyer is indeed inferior to me. In the end, Esther was driven away by two people. As soon as she left, Lance and Raven picked up their wine glasses and clinked their glasses. Esther walked out of the door and looked back at Lance. Her depressed mood faded, but she was full of interest. Seventh young master of Jackman family. He was not bad looking and his temperament was very to her liking. Chapter 1016 met halfway. As soon as Lance saw Raven off, he immediately ordered his assistant in a cold voice, go to full ant country and investigate a person called Bernice. Kylie wanted to say something, but was interrupted by Zion's cough. The two must have hidden some secrets that even Landon did not know. Lance guessed that what Kylie said at that time should be a kid. If that was the case, then Susan was really unlucky. Lance thought about it carefully. After all, they had known each other for a long time. Even if she did not love him, he could not watch her fall into the tiger's den. He understood now that his impulsive nature would not bring him any benefits. Instead, he would be used by someone with ill intentions. It was better to learn from his second brother and find out everything clearly. When he got the evidence, he would use others to expose everything. Susan sat in the car and looked at her home. Suddenly, she did not want to go in. Once she went in, Mila would definitely ask how the conversation was going and when they would get married. The word marriage was a huge pressure for her. She did not know why it became like this. She was clearly prepared to get married. Susan let out a long sigh, started the car, and drove towards Blue Bay Island. While waiting for the traffic light, she lowered the window to take a deep breath, but she unexpectedly saw Lance. He was sitting in the front passenger seat and had just lowered the window. The two of them met face to face just like that. It was very awkward. Lance stared at her for two seconds, then quickly shifted his gaze away and closed the window again. His movements were smooth. Susan slightly blinked her thick, curly eyelashes, then turned her head to look at the red light ahead. This was the result she wanted, but when he really treated her as a stranger, he actually felt a little sad. Susan hooked up her red lips and smiled. She did not expect that one day, she would also become so hypocritical. Lance originally wanted to go to Blue Bay Island, but seeing that Susan's route was also headed in that direction, he asked the driver to change the way. Susan glanced at the rearview mirror. Seeing that luxury car changed its way, her expression was a little changed but she didn't do any other reaction. This was also pretty good. Scarlett was still working day and night, driving away the designs left by Rebecca. When she heard Richard say that Susan was here, she stopped writing and stood up. Today was the weekend. Gianna was at home. She was sitting on the living room carpet following the servants. She was enjoying herself. As soon as Susan came in, she saw Gianna, who was a few pounds fatter, sitting cross-legged on the blanket like a meat pier. She went up and picked up Gianna, but she did not carry her. How much did your auntie feed you? Gianna was embarrassed and covered her chubby little face. Aunt Susan, I have grown up now. I will definitely be a little fatter. When I grow up, I will become as slim as you. 
When you grow up, I don't know how long I will have to wait. Susan touched her round belly. When I get fatter for another ten years, I will grow up. Gianna stretched out her hands and gestured in front of Susan. Susan was amused, but she did not attack the child. She only pinched her small round face. You are quite cute like this. Gianna tilted her head and said with infatuation, Teacher Hua also said that I am quite cute. It seems that he did not lie to me, his future wife. What future wife? Susan was shocked and widened her eyes. Her teacher. She said that she will marry him when she grows up. Scarlet came down from the stairs and said with a smile. That's amazing. She wants to marry at such a young age. Isn't that so? Scarlet walked in front of the two of them and stroked Gianna's little head. If not for her class teacher being good looking, she wouldn't have been willing to marry him. Gianna imitated an adult and snapped her fingers. Bingo. Auntie guessed correctly. I wanted to marry him because I saw that teacher Hua was handsome. Susan deliberately put on a straight face and taught Gianna a lesson. You have to change this habit. The handsome guy may not necessarily be a good person. Gianna thought about it for a while and retorted Susan, although the handsome guy may not a good person, there are also bad people who are ugly. Between ugly and handsome, picking a handsome bad person is at least not spicy. Susan. She has a lot of fallacies. You can't beat her. Scarlet laughed. Chapter 1017 Don't Move. Susan did not believe it and insisted on making things clear with Gianna, but Gianna would pop out a few reasonable sentences from time to time, making Susan speechless. Kids these days are not easy to fool. They are clear in their hearts and their brains are spinning fast. I tested Gianna's IQ before. She is higher than you. Don't treat her like a child. Lanny walked in and just happened to hear the sentence. Susan asked whether it was true or not. Lanny smiled and said, her parents are so outstanding. Of course she is definitely not that bad. When Scarlett saw that Lanny and Susan had come, she waited for them to play with Gianna for a while before bringing them to the leisure area. Did you go to see Landon's parents today? What do you think? Scarlett asked after she had the maid make coffee and put on the sweet. Susan came here to talk about this matter with them. His father didn't say anything. His mother looked down on my background in work. She didn't reject me too much, but I still understood what she meant. Scarlett and Susan were both orphans, so they naturally knew how it felt to be spoken in such a slow manner. Then did Landon help you to speak up? Susan shook her head and nodded. He didn't say it when I was here. When I came out of the bathroom, his mother changed her attitude. He should have said it. Lanny, who was more concerned about the result, saw that Susan herself was not sure, so she asked them what do you plan to do? Are you going to get married or... I see that his mother is not so satisfied with me and I don't want to get married so soon. I just postpone the marriage in front of his parents. Susan waved her hand. Landon agreed as well? Scarlet asked. Yes, he agreed. He said he'll listen to me. Susan agreed. Scarlet and Lanny looked at each other. They didn't know how to evaluate this matter. In the end, it was Lanny who spoke first. It's fine to slow down a little. After all, you haven't spent too much time together. What kind of personality and character the other party has yet to figure out? Don't be in a hurry to get married. If not for Landon framing Asher, Lanny might have thought that Landon was a very good candidate for marriage. Now she only hoped that she wouldn't harm Susan. Fortunately, Susan met Landon's parents and planned to postpone their marriage. It was still not too late. However, the two of them had not broken up yet. How could they investigate Landon without any scruples? Lanny did not dare to make a decision privately. After leaving the medicine that Dr. Herring gave to Scarlett, she used the hospital as an excuse to leave Blue Bay Island. Then she drove to Jackman Group and reported the situation to Sebastian. After the man in the president office heard this, he asked lightly, Did you find anything from the people sent out? Lanny shook her head. The only way is to pry open the mouths of Landon and the medical examiner. Sebastian frowned and pondered for a few seconds before saying indifferently, Then let's wait a little longer. Once they broke up, Sebastian would definitely appear and send people to arrest Landon and the medical examiner. Now that they had not broken up, Sebastian could only wait for the time being. First, it was because of Scarlet that he would take Susan's feelings into consideration. Second, he was afraid that this crude treatment would bring trouble to Susan, so he decided to wait. After Lanny knew what Sebastian was thinking, she did not say anything else. She responded with yes and left the president's office. On Scarlet's side, just after sending Susan away, she saw a Maserati parked in front of her. 
Then the car window slowly lowered, revealing a refined and beautiful face. Chapter 1018 You can't be trying to kidnap me again, right? Miss Sales, long time no see. When she saw that the person in the car was Frida, Scarlett was subconsciously nervous. She looked around and did not see any suspicious cars following her. Only then did she heave a sigh of relief. Miss Jefferson, last time you and your brother came to find me, you were seen by KYNG. How dare you come openly? Frida took off the sunglasses on her face, revealing a pair of soul-stealing fox eyes. I won't get out of the car. KYNG won't be able to see it. Don't worry. After saying that, Frida took out a package from the passenger seat and handed it to Scarlett. I feel bad about kidnapping you before. I bought something and I hope you can accept it. Scarlett didn't care about what happened in the past, but for Frida, the last time she forced her to jump into the sea, it's better that she was fine. If something happened, it would be a life. How could she not care about it? Most importantly, if Scarlett died in her hands, Sebastian would have already cut her into eight pieces. Therefore, Scarlett was still alive. It was the same as saving her life. This apology and gratitude, no matter what, had to be personally said. You were also forced by Mr. Jefferson. You can't blame it all on you. Scarlett reached out to take the gift box she handed over. My adoptive father only told me to keep you, but he didn't ask me to force you to jump into the sea. The responsibility is still on me. Frida shook her head and took all the blame. Seeing her blaming herself so much, Scarlett did not try to persuade her. She only opened the gift box in front of her. Inside were two pieces of pure gold that had the same knot in their hearts. Under the sunlight, they shone with golden light. Scarlett stroked the same knot and said to Frida with a smile, I like this gift very much. In the future, don't come to apologize for this matter. The woman's bright and sweet smile infected Frida. It's good that you like it. I hope that you and Sebastian will be united forever. Hope your love be strong and firm as gold. Wish you have a baby early. Frida was quite arrogant. Scarlett was quite happy to receive her blessing. Don't worry, I will be fine with him. Oh yeah, how are you and your brother? Have you confessed to him? Scarlett asked, thinking about the relationship between Frida and Joseph. Frida's face, which was as smooth as water, gradually turned unnaturally red. Why did you mention him all of a sudden? Didn't you ask me to help you chase after him before? Why don't you let me bring him up now? Scarlett asked, holding the gift box. It's hard for you to remember, but I don't need your help. My brother, this blockhead, probably has no interest in me. Frida smiled. How did you know? Scarlett asked. A Miss White came to our headquarters. She was even more beautiful than me. When she took off her mask, all the members lost their souls. My brother was dumbfounded. When I saw him like that, I couldn't be bothered to talk to him. Miss White. Why haven't I heard Sebastian mention her? Scarlett asked. Do you think your husband is my brother? In front of him, even if there were a hundred Miss White, he wouldn't even bother to look at her. Frida rolled her eyes at her. Miss Jefferson, it seems that you have met a rival in love, and a rival in love who looks better than you. Scarlett smiled. I have thought it through. With my appearance, why should I cling to my brother? I should go to the romantic district to find some youth, right? Frida smiled and nodded. Frida raised her eyebrows at her. I heard that your sister, Miss Croft, runs a nightclub. Why don't you accompany me to pick a male model? Don't tell me you want to take the opportunity to kidnap me again? Scarlet looked. Chapter 1019 Why did you lie to me? I swear if I kidnap you, I'll be struck by lightning and die a horrible death. Frida said, pointing out the window of the car. Even if you swear, I can't go with you. If he finds out that I went to the nightclub to pick a male model, I'll die a horrible death. It was better not to do such a dangerous thing. It was more important to save her life. However, Frida said, other people are afraid of their wives. Why are you afraid of your husband? Don't you think he is scary, Scarlet said with a gentle smile. Terrible, Frida nodded. The two of them suddenly looked at each other and smiled. I'll send you Susan's phone number. If you really want to play, then call her and ask her to leave you the best private room. Scarlet took out phone, and after sending the number, she looked up and smiled strangely at Frida. But the male model at her place is just singing with you, feeding you food, and so on. You don't have the kind you want. I'm looking for a male model just to sing and eat. What do you think I want to do? Scarlet smiled but did not speak. Frida glanced sideways at her. After marrying, why is your brain full of unhealthy thoughts? I... Before Scarlet could explain, a limited-edition luxury car drove over. When she saw who was driving the passenger seat, 
Frida stepped on the accelerator and drove quickly to the front of the mountain road. The limited edition luxury car was instantly pulled out a large part of the road. It was not safe to drive on the mountain road. After half a chase, the luxury car retreated and stopped in front of Scarlet. The window rolled down, revealing a handsome and deep face. Scarlet, is the person in the car just now the woman who came with Joseph last time? Scarlet was a little flustered when questioned, but she still maintained her calm on the surface. Who is Joseph? When did he come here? Kwenji pushed open the car door and got out of the car. He walked around the car and walked quickly to Scarlet. Don't pretend to be stupid. They have come here twice, so they must be looking for Sebastian. Tell me, is Sebastian the member of S? Scarlet held the box and pretended to be frightened by him. She took a step back. Cousin, are you crazy? Why are you so scary? Hearing the word cousin, KYNG felt uncomfortable. He frowned and growled, don't call me cousin. I am not your cousin. Scarlet said timidly, didn't you say that my mother grew up in Burke family and could be considered your cousin? Why didn't you let me call you cousin again? This sentence choked KYNG until he could not find a retort for a long time. This, this is different. From now on, we are no longer cousins. Scarlet raised her eyes and looked at him in a while, let me be your cousin, and then turned hostile. Young Master Longford should not be learning how to change you face in opera, right? She spoke softly, without any hint of anger, but every sentence was harsh. Don't interrupt, who was that woman just now? K-I-N-G understood. Do you still remember what Frostina looks like? Scarlet asked, tilting her head. She suddenly asked this question. K-I-N-G was subconsciously drawn into it. After thinking for a long time, he could not remember what Frostina looked like. Why should I remember what she looks like? K-I-N-G asked. That woman just now was Frostina. She came to give me a gift. Scarlet smiled. After saying that, Scarlet handed the box in her hand to K-I-N-G. Look, it's the knot. She's here to bless my husband and I to have a child early. K-I-N-G glanced at the knot in her hand. His good-looking thick eyebrows furrowed unnaturally. Are you preparing to have a child with Sebastian? I've been preparing all this time. Scarlet nodded. It was unknown what sentence made KYNG unhappy, but his face instantly darkened. Scarlet asked, what happened to you? That woman was clearly brought here by Joseph. It can't be Frostina. Why did you lie to me? KYNG turned his head away. He could not remember the appearances of these people, but he would remember the people who appeared around Joseph with his heart in mind, and he would be able to remember most of them. That woman had a pair of unique fox eyes and there was no unique feature on Frostina's face. It was very blurry so it was definitely not Frostina. Scarlet knew everything and just hid it from him. Why did she hide it from him? There was only one possibility and that was that Sebastian was a person of S and she was protecting. Chapter 1020 Young Master Longford was upset. Scarlet was a little surprised. Didn't KYNG have face blindness? Why did she remember her appearance after seeing Frida once? As she was thinking about how to dispel KYNG's doubts, he suddenly took a step forward. When she was a little close, Scarlet subconsciously took a step back. Her foot accidentally stepped on a stone and her center of gravity tilted to the side. When she was about to fall to the ground, a white hand reached over and held her waist, then stabilized her body. Scarlet used KYNG's strength to stabilize herself and said to him, thank you. However, KYNG quietly placed the hand that had touched her behind him. It was unknown whether it was because the weather was too hot or because he was too nervous. Fine sweat slowly seeped out from his palms. The person who came just now was really Frostina. If you don't believe me, I will call her in front of you. Scarlet explained softly. KYNG's gaze was always on the slender waist, and his mind was filled with images of him hugging her just now. What his fingers touched was not only the soft waist, but also the fragrant long curly hair. The smooth and delicate hair felt as if it was stepping on his heart. Even though it was only a few seconds, he had fallen into it, and even after he steadied himself, he could not bear to let go. He replayed this scene in his mind again and again, causing he did not hear Scarlet say anything. It was not until she raised her delicate hand and waved it in front of his eyes that he slowly came back to his senses. It seems that you did not listen to anything, causing me to explain for nothing. Scarlet sighed helplessly. Explain what? K-I-N-G asked. Young Master Longford, are you looking for trouble? Scarlet tilted her head and looked at him. Only then did K-O-N-G remember that he had come to investigate the whereabouts of S, but he was upset by Scarlet. He instantly disliked her and said, I told you to stay away from me. You were the one who approached me just now. 
I didn't mean to get close to you. Why did you tell me to stay away from me instead of yourself? Scarlet was stunned. KNG choked and was speechless. Scarlet took the opportunity to say you are also very strange. You always ask me to stay away from you. You have to shout with a loudspeaker from a hundred meters away when someone talks to you. You have a smell. I am not used to it if you are too close to me. KYNG's face gradually became unnatural. A smell? Scarlet subconsciously turned her head and sniffed her shoulder. Impossible. I wash clean every day. Even my clothes are scented. It was very clean. When these words fell into KYNG's ears, it was another scene. Even his ears were red. I'm leaving first. However, Scarlet stepped forward to stop him. Tell me clearly, what is the smell? I can clean it up. K-I-N-G. He thought for a long time and said, the fragrance of pollen, I am allergic. In fact, it was a smell that attracted him. Every time he smelled it, he could not help but want to approach her. However, this was not right. He could think of any woman. He absolutely could not think of Sebastian's woman. It was too shameful. When Scarlet heard that it was the fragrance of pollen, she heaved a sigh of relief. Since you are allergic to pollen, then we won't meet again in the future. I don't mean that. What I mean is your body. Sigh, forget it. I won't see you later. KNG was stunned. He couldn't explain it clearly, but he actually said that he was angry. He said angrily and went to open the car door. He sat in the car and waited for a few seconds, but no one drove. Only then did he realize that he was sitting in the front passenger seat. He pushed open the car door and in front of Scarlet went around the car and sat in the driver's seat. After he drove the car away in one go, Scarlet retracted her gaze and muttered, Crazy. Chapter 1021 I'm out of my mind. When she received the news that Frida had arrived, Sebastian, who had turned on the surveillance camera, saw this scene and his handsome face turn cold. KYNG's glare on his wife seemed to be some feelings hidden. That man who could not even remember other people's face, could he really like his wife? Sebastian sat in the swivel chair with his chin propped up. After thinking for a while, he called Frida and sent a message to Frostina. Soon, Frida's car appeared in KYNG's telescope. This time it was clearly visible, revealing a pair of fox-like eyes on the ends of the eyes. KYNG was extremely excited. Just as he was about to put down the binoculars and get ready to catch the person, he saw the owner of the fox eye slowly turn her head to the side. In the mirror, although that face had fox eyes, it was not the same appearance he had seen before. He searched for Stina's hundred subjects online, pulled out the photo, enlarged it, and compared it with the person in the telescope. The person in the photo was wearing light makeup. The person in the binoculars was wearing thick makeup. The makeup felt different, but it was the same person. Was he really mistaken just now? He held the telescope again and carefully looked at the car card and clothes exactly the same as before. If it was the same person, why did she run away after seeing her car catch up? She was clearly feeling guilty. Just as he was suspecting this, the owner of the car threw something to the security guard and ran towards the mountain road at the speed he had just now. Could it be that this was just a habit of driving, not because she saw him come and drove crazily? After such a series of operations, KNG was completely confused. He raised his binoculars and looked again, just in time to see Sebastian get out of the car. Before the man entered the manor, his footsteps paused for two seconds. Then he turned his body and glanced coldly at the other side. When his eyes, which were as cold as snow, appeared in the mirror, KYNG's heart suddenly skipped a beat. As if he had done something wrong to him, he hurriedly put down the binoculars and did not dare to look anymore. In fact, he really had the bad thought. Sebastian looked away and walked into the castle with a cold face. Scarlet was sitting in the living room thinking about the design. When she saw him come in, she hurriedly got up and greeted him. Hubby, why are you back so early today? Is the company not busy? She reached out and wanted to take the coat that he had taken off. She saw him turn to the servant. Scarlet's hand paused in midair. Sebastian pulled off the tie at the collar of his shirt revealing his sexy and sharp Adam's apple. After the man relaxed, he sat down on the soft sofa, then raised his slender legs and crossed them lazily. Scarlet thought that he would wave at her like usual, let her come over, hug her on his lap, and kiss her. Unexpectedly, after Sebastian leaned back on the sofa, he suddenly closed his thick and straight eyelashes and did not even look at her again. Scarlet could not stand this indifference. After being stunned for a while, she gathered her courage, walked over, and pulled his sleeve. Darling, what's wrong? 
It was unknown what the man was betting on, but he held back his anger and ignored her. Scarlet stared at that beautiful face for a long time, then turned and walked towards the kitchen. She personally cooked chicken soup for him. She wanted to wait for him to go home and scoop up a bowl to let him warm stomach. Now she gave up her thought. The moment Scarlet turned around, Sebastian opened his eyes. When he saw that thin figure disappear in front of him, he immediately regretted it and quickly got up. He ran to the kitchen, hugged Scarlet from behind, and rested his chin on her shoulder. Honey, I'm sorry, I'm out of my mind. Don't be angry. Chapter 1022 Chasing His Wife for a Night Scarlet ignored him, did not push him away, and did not ask why he was out of his mind. She just minded her own business and poured soup into the bowl. Sebastian, who was completely ignored, knew that he was too cold just now and made her angry. He quickly apologized. Honey, I know I was wrong. Don't ignore me. Scarlet still ignored him. Sebastian panicked and quickly took the spoon from her hand and pressed her against the wall to kiss her. Honey, I was a little jealous when I saw KYNG hugging your waist. That's why my brain wasn't clear. I won't dare to ignore you again in the future. Don't be angry with me, okay? He said softly. It turned out that the reason he had put on a face for her as soon as he came back was because he was jealous of KYNG. However, this jealousy was too baffling. It wasn't like she had intentionally moved closer to KING. Sebastian's personality was no different from before. When he was angry, he liked to be cold and violent. She had to correct his this habit. Otherwise, every time he was jealous, he would vent his anger on her. She could not bear it. Thinking of this, Scarlet pushed Sebastian away calmly. I'm not angry anymore. Go wash up and prepare for dinner. Although she said that she was not angry, her face did not show any expression of forgiving him. Honey, I feel like you're still angry with me, Sebastian said as he hugged her tightly. How would I dare to be angry with Mr. Jackman? In fact, it's Mr. Jackman who has the final say in this family. What do I count for? Scarlet sneered. Honey, I realize that cold violence is wrong. I won't do it again. Don't be like this, Sebastian said. It was scary. Yes, whatever Mr. Jackman says, Scarlet pushed him away. Honey, those two words make me heart hurt. Don't call me that. This kind of Scarlet reminded him of the time when he broke up with her a few years ago. She also called him Mr. Jackman and did not take him to heart at all. Scarlet turned her head and ignored him. Sebastian reached out, pinched her chin, and lowered his head to kiss her. This kiss was more urgent and passionate than usual. Scarlet, who was pressed to the side of the stove, could not resist his kiss. She pinched her palm with her sharp nails and stabilized her gradually limp body. She did not respond and allowed him to kiss her. After Sebastian felt her coldness, his heart felt like it was being held tightly by a big hand. It was very painful. He slowly released her. Somewhat weakly, he touched her cheek with his tall nose. Honey, tell me, what do you want me to do? Scarlet remembered Frida's proposal and said bravely, I want to accompany Frida to Susan's nightclub tonight. Do you agree? No. Sebastian's face darkened subconsciously. There were many new male models in Miss Croft's nightclub and they were even better than nightclubs. Let her go to that kind of place and there were so many youth if she was abducted at that time, then he. Seeing that he did not agree, Scarlet did not say anything and turned to serve the chicken soup again. Richard, the chicken soup is ready. Let the chef cook it. Yes. Sebastian, who still wanted to hug her, suddenly retracted his hand when he saw Richard walk in. Second young master, you're back. After Richard came in and saw Sebastian, he immediately greeted him with a smile. However, he received a cold look. Richard was immediately confused. Second. Just as he was about to ask, he saw that straight figure turn around and walk out the door. Richard stared at it for a long time before he slowly came back to his senses. Madam, are you have a quarrel? After filling all the soup in the pot into the bowl, Scarlet put down the spoon and went to wash her hands while looking back at Richard. Your second young master is starting to be cold and violent to me again. I will think of a way to correct him. So that's how it is. After Richard came to a realization, he supported Scarlet. Then you should think of a good method. Scarlet smiled. His stomach is not very good. Don't forget to ask him to drink more soup. Seeing that she was so concerned about the young master, Richard also smiled, don't worry. Even if the second young master loses his temper later, I will chase after him and feed him a bowl of Chapter 1023 He chased after Gianna's room. In the kitchen, there was laughter and smiles, but the man in the living room could not sit still. 
When he was annoyed, he saw Gianna with a bun on her head, holding a bag of potato chips, jumping around and running downstairs. For the first time, the man raised his slender hand and beckoned to the meat pier. Anastasia Weber, come here. I only ate a small piece. Uncle, don't punish me. Gianna thought that she had been discovered stealing snacks, so she quickly hid the potato chips behind her back. I won't punish you if you help me with one thing, said Sebastian, raising his chin at her. Tell me, what do you want me to do for you? asked Gianna, running to Sebastian with his chubby little legs. Go help me say something good of me to your auntie, said Sebastian, glancing in the direction of the kitchen. Uncle, did you make auntie angry? asked Gianna. Don't ask what you shouldn't ask. Sebastian glanced at her. Uncle, you are begging me now, but you are so fierce to me. I won't help you. Gianna stretched out her hand and grabbed her bun. Do you want to be punished by me or do what I tell you to do? Choose for yourself. Sebastian glanced at the snacks in her hand indifferently. Uncle, you are so annoying. When the smug Gianna heard this, the corners of her mouth instantly collapsed. There are a lot of people who hate me. You're not the only one. Sebastian raised her eyebrows indifferently. Gianna felt that talking to him was really suffering, but he had caught a small handle on her. Damn it! After grinding her sharp teeth, she stuffed the potato chips into Sebastian's hands. I'll help you do it. You help me watch the potato chips. After the matter is done, feed them to me. Looking at the valiant and spirited back, Sebastian smiled and then threw the potato chips to the servant without any expression. Throw it away. Auntie, auntie, are you angry with uncle? Gianna, who knew nothing, ran into the kitchen and hugged Scarlet's thigh. Scarlet did not expect that Sebastian would call for help from Gianna. She smiled and reached out to touch her nose. It's useless for you to help him. I'm not here to help uncle. I just feel that uncle is a little pitiful. Don't be angry with him. Gianna rolled her eyes. Gianna tugged at the corner of her clothes again. Auntie, did you steal some snacks again? Gianna usually wouldn't come to her for Sebastian. No, no, I definitely didn't steal snacks. I just wanted to help uncle. Gianna stretched out her chubby hands in fear. It's good that you didn't steal food. If I find out, I'll beat your ass. Gianna nodded desperately. Okay, don't worry. I won't steal food. Hurry up and go out. Get ready to wash your hands and eat. Then auntie, are you still angry with uncle? Gianna turned around and asked. I'm not angry anymore. Hurry up and get out. Scarlet said with a gentle smile. Only then did Gianna smile happily and run out of the kitchen. However, just as she returned from her mission, she was told by the servants that the potato chips were lying in the trash can. Gianna was so angry that she sat on the ground and kept howling, liar, big liar. Sebastian's cold eyes swept over the fat baby. Cry louder so that your auntie can hear you. If not for the fact that I ate snacks secretly, I would have cried for the whole night and made you so noisy. Gianna immediately shut her mouth. The man raised his eyebrows indifferently. Eat less. It will be difficult to lose weight when you grow up. Although it was a good word, how could it be so unpleasant to hear? Uncle, you're so annoying. Gianna found it hard to accept this. Sebastian still wanted to persuade her, but he saw Scarlet coming out of the kitchen with the dishes in hand. He quickly got up and went to the dining room. Honey, are you still angry with me? He asked. Scarlet didn't say that she was angry, nor did she say that she wasn't angry. She only said to him, let's eat. After that, she went to call Gianna, not giving him the chance to speak alone at all. After dinner, Scarlet held Gianna's hand and taught the child to do homework and tell the bedtime story. Although the child was still young, Sebastian always held on to the fact that men and women were different. He never entered Gianna's room and only waited at the door obediently. Chapter 1024 Chasing Up to Susan's Nightclub At around 10 o'clock, Scarlet came out of Gianna's room. Sebastian, who was leaning against the escalator, quickly stepped forward and carried her in a princess hug. He carried her out and coaxed her in a low voice. Honey, you want to go to Miss Croft's nightclub? I'll take you there. Don't be angry with me, okay? The man's voice was low and hoarse as if he had been wronged, but he had to give in. It made Scarlet feel more insatiable. I want to go myself. Scarlet, you know, I just care too much about you. The hands that were holding her suddenly paused, and his handsome and deep face was instantly filled with a bit of anger. Care me that every time you use cold violence against me? Scarlet's rhetorical question made Sebastian frown subconsciously. I am changing. Give me another chance. The man leaned over and kissed her lips. 
the line of defense in Scarlet's heart had been broken, but she still forced herself to endure it. I have made an appointment with Frida. Sebastian's thin lips slowly pursed into a straight line. His face was also visible to the naked eye and gradually gloomy. He stared at Scarlet's face. After a while he put her down and went straight back to the study without saying anything. The moment the door was slammed shut, Scarlet's heart also jumped. His temper was quite terrible. However, Scarlet still committed the crime against him and turned to call Jesus. After driving out of the manor, Jesus persuaded her earnestly, Madam, if you go to the nightclub this late, sir, he will go crazy. Scarlet also knew that he would be very uncomfortable, but she would also feel uncomfortable if he was cold and violent to her. I'm just pretending. I won't do anything rash. Seeing that he could not persuade her, Jesus retracted his gaze and looked at the rearview mirror outside the window. He just happened to see more than ten luxury cars following behind. Jesus shook her head. The little couple was in a conflict, but the drivers were the ones who were implicated. Unlucky really unlucky. Scarlett and Frida met in the super VIP hall and happily ordered a pile of food. On the other side, Susan came in from time to time. Seeing that there were only two people, she felt that there were too few people and called Lanny over again. Frida had dealt with Frostina once and felt that Frostina was not bad. They were chatting very well so she called her along. The meeting between the two women had turned into five women. They were singing and playing games so there was no need to mention how lively it was. At the entrance of the nightclub, the man sitting in Carrie extended his slender hand and placed it on the car window. His clear and cold eyes stared fixedly at the red and green lights in the room, but from time to time, he would glance at his watch, and the hands on the top would turn continuously. Seeing that the person inside had yet to come out at three in the morning, he became anxious. He pushed open the car door and rushed into the VIP room on the top floor with extremely fast steps. The sudden appearance of the figure shocked the people inside. When Frida, Susan, Lanny, and Frostina saw who it was, they looked at each other. Sebastian's cold eyes quickly swept across the sofa area. Seeing that there was no male model inside, he subconsciously let out a sigh of relief and then stepped forward to grab Scarlett's wrist. You've had enough fun. It's time to go home. Scarlett, who was grabbed, slightly raised her eyebrows. It hasn't ended yet. There's no rush. Is that so? When the four of them saw the look in Sebastian's eyes, they hurriedly got up in fright. It's over, it's over. Everyone can go home. Hey, didn't we agree to stay up all night? Scarlet grabbed Frida's hand and motioned for her to resist Sebastian. However, Frida shook her head like a rattle drum. No, no. Scarlet was speechless. Frida shook off her hand and ran faster than a rabbit, as if there were wolves chasing behind her. Scarlet could only look at Susan, Lanny, and Frostina. What about you? The three of them did not even say goodbye and ran away. Their speed was comparable to a chapter 1025 after chasing for an entire night, he still hadn't caught up. Once the four women left, only she and Sebastian were left in the entire room. The man stared at her for a while. After a while, his tightly pursed lips gradually turned into a deep and meaningful smile. Honey, if you want to play all night, I'll accompany you. He raised his well-defined fingers and slowly undid the collar of his shirt, revealing his sexy Adam's apple and deep collarbone. Facing the dim light in the private room, the man bent his waist slightly, his slender hands propped up on both sides of the sofa, wrapping her under his body. His thin lips moved close to her ear, turned his head slightly, and asked in a low voice, Tell me, how do you want to play? Scarlet was most afraid of being tempted by him. Her fists were clenched tightly, but her face pretended to be unaffected. I don't want to play anymore. Let's go home. Sebastian did not care about her. He lowered his head and wanted to kiss her, but she avoided him. A sense of loss crossed his heart. He could not seduce her anymore. What should he do? He stared at the cold Scarlet. After a few seconds, he helplessly buried his head in her shoulder and rubbed it. Scarlet, stop messing around. This was the first time she had seen the high and mighty Sebastian acting spoiled towards her like a little kitten. Scarlet couldn't help but feel warm in her heart, but she forced herself to keep a straight face. In Sebastian's eyes, her silence was like ten great tortures, making it difficult for him to die. Honey, can you say something? Let's go home, Scarlet said lightly. Sebastian's face was full of helplessness, but he had no choice but to pick her up and put her into the car. After returning to Blue Bay Island, Scarlet still ignored him and went to the bathroom to take a shower. Then she slipped into Gianna's room. Sebastian wanted to catch her, but he failed. He was so angry. 
This was the first time they had gotten into an awkward situation and slept in separate rooms. Sebastian felt uncomfortable. He stood in front of the floor-to-ceiling window and stared at the villa opposite him. His malicious and cold eyes wished he could rush over right now and cut K.O.N.G. into eight pieces. But his subconscious mind was very clear that Scarlet was angry because of his indifference and it had nothing to do with K.O.N.G. After Sebastian controlled his emotions, he sat down on the sofa and stared at the villa, but he did not move his eyes away. On Scarlet's side, she hugged the fleshy Gianna and slept soundly. The next morning, the man who had been staring at the villa for the whole night received a message from Raven. After reading the news, he remembered that he had asked Raven to discuss the lawsuit today. Scarlet would definitely pay attention to Sarah's case of snatching the child. Thinking of this, Sebastian quickly closed phone, got up and walked into the bathroom. Scarlet originally wanted to continue going against Sebastian, but she remembered that they had agreed to meet Raven today. Sarah sued them too, they would go to the court together, so they naturally had to go to see the lawyer together. She had no choice but to go upstairs and come to the master bedroom. Seeing that he was still in the bathroom, she sat at the side and waited. After waiting for a long time, the person inside did not come out. Scarlet sighed, got up and knocked on the frosted glass door. Sebastian, we met Raven at 10 o'clock. It will be too late if you continue to shower. As soon as she finished speaking, the bathroom door was pushed open. A hand covered in water reached over, grabbed her wrist, and pulled her whole person in. The man's strong arms held the petite her in his arms and sat her on the sink. One hand held her waist and the other on the water vapor mirror behind him. Scarlet, who was trapped, lowered her eyes and stole a peek at the man's abdominal muscles. The crystal clear water beads were slowly rolling down along the firm in strong lines. Drop by drop. It would be impolite to continue watching. Scarlet looked away and turned her head, only to see the strong and powerful arms of the man. Perfect muscle lines, smooth skin like water, every part, every inch, was bursting with intense tension. Scarlet felt that the more she looked, the easier it was to imagine, so she raised her head and looked at the ceiling, thinking that she would not be seduced by sex. Who knew that the moment she raised her head, the man's thin lips suddenly kissed the slender neck that was raised up. At the same time, the hand holding her slender waist suddenly exerted force and lifted forward. Her soft chest pressed against his chest just like that. His body was covered in water, and in an instant, his clothes were wet and dry. They stuck to his body and felt very uncomfortable. Scarlet reached out to push him. The man who was sticking to her did not let go. He bit her neck and asked in a hoarse voice, Madam, what did you call me just now? Chapter 1026 It had already begun. Warm kisses fell on her skin as if they were cut by an electric current, crisp and numb. Scarlet's tense body gradually softened and the fingers on the man's shoulder also tightened a little. Sensing the subtle changes, the hands holding her waist became more and more forceful as if they were going to break her waist. The kisses that fell from the side did not stop at all and densely packed, hitting the neck and collarbone. What did you just call me? Scarlet held on and did not answer him. Speak. She still did not answer. The gentle kiss suddenly turned into a hot kiss. The woman who was pressed on the sink gradually became limp, but her mouth was still very unyielding. Call, call you Sebastian Jackman. Don't you call this name? Sebastian laughed in anger. He held up her body with one hand and let her climb up his waist. Then he carried her under the lotus canopy. The warm water smashed down and the thin lady shirt on her body was instantly drenched. Her milky white skin appeared in front of the man in a flash. He stared at her chest and after a few seconds he suddenly lowered his head and bit down on the snow fragrant tit through the thin fabric. With just a touch, Scarlet surrendered. I won't dare to call you by your full name anymore. Let me go. The man who was kissing her snorted coldly. It's too late. As if he was deliberately taking revenge, he repeatedly grinded against each other. Scarlet's whole body softened. If her back was not pressed against the cold wall, she would have already fallen down. She was obviously trying to find a way to cure him, but how could he easily grasp her after just one night? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sebastian raised her blurred eyes and glanced at her. It has already started. I can't wait. As soon as she finished speaking, she felt that a certain place had been pierced through. Scarlet subconsciously clung to his neck and lowered her head to focus on the man's beautiful face. But I am still angry with you. The man who was hugging her slightly raised his thin lips and held her in his mouth. Be good, I won't later. Scarlet buried her head in his neck. Every time you look at me coldly, you always make me feel very scared. 
The sense of grievance in her tone made Sebastian hold the woman in his arms. I'm sorry I won't do this again in the future. I promise. Like a kitten, Scarlet gently rubbed the man's neck. All right, I'll forgive you again. If you do it again, I'll ignore you for a month. She had just ignored him for a night. It would make him uncomfortable. A month he was afraid she wanted to make him go crazy. The man opened his thin lips and wanted to say something to her. His thin lips suddenly softened and Scarlet took the initiative to kiss him. A fragrant kiss came, swallowing everything he wanted to say and also making him forget what he wanted to say in an instant. Accompanied by the pattering sound of water, their breaths blended and their kiss was inseparable. A moment later, the woman's soft legs wrapped around his waist and the more she wrapped around him, the tighter it became. She thought that it would be over once, but in the end, she wiped it clean and was thrown back onto the bed by him. Ah, that's enough. It was early in the morning and she was already so energetic, so annoying. The man who didn't feel tired at all tried to calm her down. I have to make up for what happened last night. Scarlet was too lazy to care about him. She struggled to crawl away, but her legs were caught by the man. He exerted a little force and pulled down, falling back into his arms. When the man pressed down from behind again, Scarlet turned back and glared at him. We have to see Lawyer Raven at 10 o'clock. We can't be late. Let him wait. Sebastian grabbed her hand and placed it above her head. Then his broad hand slid down her arm and covered the back of her hand. He separated her fingers, clasped them together, and used the other hand to lift her slender waist. The moment he entered her body from her back, Scarlet felt crazy. She really married a great stud horse husband and wanted her at all times. As long as the two of them were alone together, they would not stop for a moment. Chapter 1027 Miss Sales, You Are Sick It was quite a long time for him to do this matter this time. By the time it was over, it was already noon. Raven had give her a lot calls, so he simply came to her house. With a flushed face, Scarlet cleaned herself up and walked over to sit down opposite Raven. Seeing that she was walking unsteadily, Raven asked, Miss Sales, are you sick? Scarlet wanted to reply, but the moment she opened her mouth, her throat was very dry. Her original words suddenly turned into a violent cough. Seeing that she was so sick, Raven could not complain anymore and only choked. The time of a lawyer is quite precious. Be punctual next time. Scarlet came back to her senses and apologized with a red face. Sorry, I will be on time next time. It doesn't matter if you are not on time. Just inform me when you are sick. At the end of the day, Raven glanced at her. Is your illness serious? Will it affect the court? Scarlet blushed again and shook her head. No, it will be fine tomorrow. Standing upstairs, wearing a watch and staring at the man in the living room, when he heard this, the corners of his lips suddenly curved up, revealing a doting smile. Where's your husband? Scarlet raised her head and just happened to see Sebastian smiling. She suddenly glared at him again. He's having epilepsy. Ha! Huh. Raven looked up at her as he tidied up the documents. Scarlet waved her hand awkwardly. I was just joking. Raven was a fox. With these few words, he knew what the two of them had done at home. He looked at Scarlet's clothes carefully. It was summer. She had long sleeves and pants. She also wore a scarf. If he did not understand, he would be silly. He clenched his fists and placed them to his lips. He coughed lightly. Hurry up and call him down. After we finish chatting, I will go back and sort out the case. Just as Scarlet was about to get up and call for someone, she saw a neatly dressed man slowly walk down. Staring at his fair neck, Scarlet felt that it was such a loss. Next time, next time, she would also bite on it a few times. The man, who did not know what she was thinking, sat down next to her and grabbed her little hand, placing it in his palm. The man raised his slender legs, crossed them, and lazily leaned on the sofa. Let's begin. He said this to Raven, his natural cold voice, his innate noble feeling, was quite oppressive. Even Raven, who spent most of his time in the nightclub, had to be a little nervous when facing such a Sebastian. Fortunately, the content of the conversation involved his professional field, so he didn't show any fear at all and even had a bit of pride. Looking at Raven who was boasting, Sebastian suddenly remembered that when Vivian forced him to break up with Frostina, he was kneeling on the ground and begging. No one had expected that the people who used to only hang around women would one day grow up into a strong tree, shining brightly and shining. People's prejudice was a mountain. After being deeply rooted, it was difficult to change it easily. Little did they know that there were two sides to the mountain. However, once one's thinking was fixed, one was not willing to look at the back. 
After Raven asked about the ins and outs of the story and explained what he would encounter in court, he looked up at Sebastian. Seeing that he was sizing him up, Raven asked a little uneasily, Mr. Jackman, did I say something? No, continue. Sebastian said indifferently. Only then did Raven pass the information he had sorted out to the two of them. This is a question that the lawyer of the other party will ask. I have already listed it out. You should take a look too. He did things very carefully. Not only did he analyze the case very clearly, but he also prepared the answers from the lawyer. It meant that he really wanted to win this lawsuit because the person involved was the relative of the woman he silently loved for many years. Sebastian and his wife worked very hard to cooperate. Raven quickly collected the information and recorded it in his notebook before he got up to leave. Chapter 1028 KYNG gave Scarlet a present. After Raven left, Richard walked over. Madam, KYNG is looking for you. Looking for me? Scarlet, who was flipping through the documents, looked up in surprise. She did not have much interaction with KYNG, so every time she met him, it was always a coincidence. But this was his first time to take the initiative to look for her. Did he say anything? No, he just asked you to go out for a while. The fingers of the man sitting next to her holding the document stiffened slightly, and his face gradually darkened. When Scarlet noticed this, she quickly grabbed his arm and coaxed him softly, Hubby, come with me. Go ahead. I still have something to do. Sebastian twitched his stiff lips and forced a smile. This time, when KYNG came to find her, he was not angry, nor was he cold and violent. He even smiled at her. Scarlet also thought that he really had something to do, so she did not force him. She directly got up and walked out. Looking at the petite figure gradually disappearing from his sight, Sebastian exerted force and clenched the information in his hand. In the summer afternoon, especially hot, Scarlet held a black sun umbrella and looked at KYNG outside through the big iron gate. He was dressed quite well with a white shirt and gray suit pants. He looked clean, but he was a little silly. Standing under the sun, the shirt on his back was sweating, but he refused to sit in the car and insisted on waiting at the door. Seeing KING like this, Scarlet could not help but frown, young Master Longford, why are you looking for me? When KING heard the voice, he turned around. When he saw Scarlet's face, he suddenly remembered the dream he had last night, and then unnaturally, his ears reddened. Why are your ears so red? Scarlet noticed. Thinking that she had discovered it, KING hurriedly covered his ears in fright. Just as he covered his ears, he heard Scarlet say, if you continue to bask in the sun like this, your ears will peel off. She originally thought that his ears was because of the sun. KYNG's pounding heart gradually relaxed. It's fine, I'm not afraid of the sun. Scarlet was too lazy to care about whether he was afraid of the sun or not. She only continued to ask, tell me, what exactly are you looking for me for? My sister and Zet went to a tourist attraction and sent something over. She asked me to send you a copy. Although Zed was with Paisley now, Zed was still a member of Sebastian. He would send things directly to Sebastian. Why would he ask KYNG to send them? Scarlet glanced at KYNG suspiciously. Why didn't Zed send them directly to us? As if he could understand her eyes, KYNG quickly explained, it should be my sister. She wants me to be on good terms with Sebastian. After saying that, as if he was afraid that Scarlet would not believe him, he proudly added, but I must not be on good terms with him, so I came to find you. It made sense, so Scarlet did not ask if you are not willing to be on good terms with him, just send a bodyguard over. When KYNG received the things sent by his sister, he also wanted to send someone to send them away. Who would have thought that in the end, he would actually send it over in person? Even he could not figure it out, no matter how suspicious Scarlet was, he would not be able to come up with an explanation, so he casually made a panic. The bodyguard quite. Are they all angered away by you? Scarlet asked. He impatiently rolled his eyes at her. Let me ask you, do you want the thing? He asked. Seeing that he had become irritable again, Scarlet stopped wanting to gossip and extended her hand towards him. Give it to me. Only then did KYNG turn around and open the car door. When he bent down to pick up something, he felt the cold from the air conditioner. The cool breeze swept over his body, setting down the heat of his body, making him feel even more sick. Not only did he send the gift off personally, he even stood at the door and waited, as if he was looking forward to seeing her. When he thought about how he had had that dream last night just because he had touched her waist, he wanted to strangle himself to death. Chapter 1029 Sebastian invited KYNG to dinner. In the past, he had looked down on Sebastian's woman the most. Now, he was actually thinking about Sebastian's woman. K 
K.I.N.G. was annoyed to death by his own self. Holding back his anger, he went to the front passenger seat, took the gift box, and stuffed it into Scarlett's hand. He had originally left after stuffing it, but because he was in a hurry, his fingertips accidentally touched her hand. The warm touch came, and K.Y.N.G. bounced off as if he had touched a hot potato. However, even after leaving the source of the fire, his fingertips still seemed to be burning. He took two steps back, then quickly bypassed the front of the car, sat in the car, and then stepped on the accelerator to the end. Just as Scarlett was about to raise her head and say, thank you, she saw KYNG's car crash into a big tree on the side of the road. She widened her eyes in shock, and before she could react, she saw the car fall out with a whoosh and drive away quickly. In just a while, the car crossed a few roads and drove to the side of the road, halfway up the mountain surrounded by the sea. Looking from afar, she could still see the white figure. After getting out of the car, he angrily kicked the door a few times. Scarlett felt that K.I.N.G. was extremely abnormal, but she did not take it to heart. She held the gift box and turned back to the castle. Sebastian was still sitting on the sofa, staring at the information with his deep eyes, quietly looking at it. Scarlett put the gift box in front of his eyes, the travel souvenir sent by Zed, do you want to open it and see what it is? The man didn't really want to talk to her, but he remembered the lesson from last night. He quickly raised his eyes and nodded at her. Open it. Scarlet quickly opened the ribbon in the gift box. There was a picture frame and a thin glass sheet inside. In the picture frame was a photo of Zed and Paisley sitting on the grassland. The two of them had happy smiles on their faces. In the thin glass sheet, there was a bunch of flowers of eternal life embedded. The names of her and Sebastian were written in the lower right corner and the handwriting that wished them to love each other forever. Seeing these two things, Scarlet felt very cured. She smiled and said to Sebastian, Hubby, next time we go on a trip, we should send them gifts too. The man, who was completely absent of gifts, nodded absent-mindedly. Okay. Scarlet was used to his coldness. She picked up the photo frame and the eternal flower, went to her study, and placed them on the desk. The man sitting on the sofa stared at the gift box. After looking at it for a long time, he called Richard over. Go invite young Master Longford over for dinner. Richard was stunned. Second, second young master, you want to invite KYNG for dinner? He is your enemy. Thinking over. His sister sent us a gift. As a thank, shouldn't we treat him to a meal? Sebastian glanced at Richard coldly. Richard was old and could not understand the twists and turns in his words, but she knew that her young master was jealous. Okay, I will call him now. Hearing that Sebastian wanted to treat him to a meal, KYNG's deep eyes gradually widened. What does he mean? I don't know. The old man who came only said that he wanted to thank your sister for the gift, so he invited you to dinner. How could Sebastian care about these formalities? He must be up to no good. Ian said cautiously, young master, this dinner is definitely a Hongmen banquet. Why don't you reject it? K.I.N.G. sneered, refusing what? Can he eat me? I'm afraid he might poison your bowl, Ian said. K.I.N.G. He kicked Ian away and got up to go upstairs. He took a bath and changed his clothes. He wanted to see what Sebastian was. Chapter 1030 Sebastian Swore This was the first time K.Y.N.G. had entered Blue Bay Island. He was slightly surprised when he saw the environment inside. Richard followed behind and introduced, Young Master Longford, what you saw was designed by my madam. After saying that, Richard deliberately emphasized it's a wedding gift she specially gave to my second young master. Wedding gift. K.Y.N.G.'s thin lips gradually pursed into a straight line. It's none of my business. Richard smiled. Of course it's none of your business, young Master Longford. I'm just introducing this to you. KYNG ignored him and walked into the castle on his own. As soon as he stepped into the door, he saw the wedding photos of the two people hanging on the wall. Both of them stared at each other with happy smiles on their faces. After he looked around one by one, his gaze fell on Sebastian, who was standing by the spiral staircase. The man in a white shirt was looking at him with his head slightly tilted. The expression in his eyes was somewhat ambiguous. Just as K.O.N.G. was about to ask why he was invited to dinner, he saw Scarlet rush over and hug Sebastian's waist from behind. Hubby, Keanu sent me another construction question. That formula is so difficult. I can't calculate it. Help me quickly. In front of him, Scarlet always had a cold face. This was the first time he saw her liking a little girl to hug her husband and act like a spoiled child. Her husband. K.I.N.G. seemed to have realized something. 
He suppressed the crazily growing feelings in his heart and took a step forward. Didn't you want to eat with me? Where's the meal? Hearing KYNG's voice, Scarlet poked her head out from behind Sebastian. Um, young Master Longford, why are you here? I called him here. Sebastian raised his large hand and grabbed Scarlet's wrist. Then he followed her fingers and intertwined with her fingers. Young Master Longford, dinner time is not up yet. Why don't you sit for a while? KNG also did not know why he subconsciously glanced at the hands of the two people who were tightly clasped together. When he noticed that something was wrong and looked away, he immediately met Sebastian's probing and malicious eyes. He immediately felt a sense of guilt. Young Master Longford, this way please. He thought that Sebastian had noticed something, but he saw that he turned around and walked to the sofa area as if nothing had happened. K.I.N.G. heaved a sigh of relief and followed him. Scarlet looked at Sebastian and then at K.I.N.G., feeling a little confused. Two great enemies were actually going to have a meal together. Was this going to be a big reconciliation in the century? She was a little confused, but she did not ask much. She only said to Sebastian, you guys talk, I'm going to solve the problem first. She did not want to disturb their reconciliation, but Sebastian held her hand tightly and pulled her to sit down on the sofa. After we are done, you can solve the problem. What are they busy with? Soon, Scarlet knew what he was busy with. In front of KYNG, Sebastian held her waist tightly. He did not speak and just hugged her. Behind her, KYNG stared at him. KYNG was probably a little uneasy. After glancing at the two of them several times, he said coldly, Why do you want to treat me to a meal? Thank her for your sister's gift. Sebastian said indifferently. No matter how he looked at it, Sebastian did not seem to want to thank him. Instead, he seemed to be using this as an excuse to declare his sovereignty. But why did he declare his sovereignty in front of him? Could it be that Sebastian had really seen through something? Was his heart so obvious? Thinking of this possibility, KYNG became even more upset. He clearly knew that the other party was a married woman. Why was it that every time he saw her, he would be moved? Until now, he had not realized what this feeling was. He just looked at Sebastian's hand that was holding Scarlet's waist and felt uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. He wanted to rush over and take away Sebastian's hand. Yes, that's right, he wanted to take that hand away, and then Scarlet. Taking her back, when the three words came out of his mind, KYNG gradually felt that his mood was not right. Just as he was pondering over how he could have such thoughts, Sebastian suddenly spoke up, Young Master Longford, you haven't visited my wedding room yet, right? What's so good about visiting your wedding room? KING put away his messy state of mind and glanced at him coldly. You'll know when you see it, Sebastian curled his lips into a dark and obscure smile. Regardless of whether KING was willing or not, Sebastian let go of Scarlet and let her go to solve the problem first. Then he directly got up and led the way. KYNG followed behind him with a dark face. After visiting the study room, the second bedroom, then looking at the garden, he did not take him to the private place. However, when he passed by, KYNG still saw traces of the inside. It was a mark he had imagined himself. He felt that if he were Sebastian, he would definitely carry Scarlet everywhere at night. Chapter 1031 So, this was liking. After a moment of shock, K.I.N.G. slowly lowered his eyelids and stared at his hand that was holding Scarlet's waist in a daze. So, this is liking? Paisley had once told him that if he liked a person, his heart would pound and he would be happy when he saw her. If he couldn't see her, he would feel uncomfortable. He would also want to crazily possess her and not allow anyone else to be tainted. This was the feeling he had for Scarlet, but... The first person he liked was actually Scarlet, the woman he had once looked down on, the woman that Sebastian cherished. He was somewhat unable to accept it. He took a step back and then turned around to leave. I remember that I still have something to do. Let's meet next time. He wanted to escape quickly, but Sebastian's cold voice sounded behind him. Young Master Longford, this dinner, no matter what, you have to eat it. Why? KYNG turned his head and looked at the noble and elegant man. Sebastian did not answer him. He only asked Richard, are you ready? It's all ready. You can eat now. Richard nodded. Young Master Longford, let's go, Sebastian said with a smile. After entering the restaurant, KYNG, who was like entering a tiger's den, looked at the bodyguards guarding outside the door and followed him into the restaurant. Scarlet had already sat down in the dining room. When she saw the two of them come in, she quickly greeted them to eat. Sebastian naturally walked to Scarlet's side and raised his hand to touch her hair. 
The intimate actions in KYNG's eyes made him feel a little bitter when he just realized what was liking. He forced himself to endure this astringent feeling and sat opposite the two of them. As soon as he picked up the knife and fork, he saw Scarlett scooping up a bowl of soup and placing it next to Sebastian. Then she took out the polite words of the hostess to entertain the guests and asked him to enjoy it. Now how could KYNG have the appetite to enjoy? He could not eat anything. Sebastian had a good appetite. Honey feed me. If those were just testing him first, then this sentence had officially entered the main topic. KNG couldn't figure out what Sebastian was thinking and only felt that he was doing this on purpose. But when he saw Scarlet pick up the spoon and naturally feed it to Sebastian's lips, he also felt that this was the normal interaction between husband and wife. KNG pursed his lips and said bitterly, the relationship between the you two is really good. Sebastian's cold gaze moved from Scarlet's face to KNG. Twelve years. 12 years. What a long time. So KNG on what do you think you can take Scarlet away? While he was in a daze, he suddenly saw Sebastian reach out and grab Scarlet's chin, lowering his head to kiss her lips. KNG subconsciously clenched his fists, his enlarged pupils, and stared blankly at the lips that were pressed against each other. For some reason, his heart ached. When Sebastian kissed Scarlet, he glanced at KYNG's face from the corner of his eye. When he saw that his face was pale, his lips suddenly curved into a sneer. In front of KYNG, he slowly let go of Scarlet, leaned close to her ear, and said gently, Thank you, honey. The thanks he said was referring to the soup she had fed him just now. Scarlet was already used to it. However, there were outsiders present today. She was a little shy, so she glanced at Sebastian and said, Behave yourself. Okay, I'll listen to you, honey. Sebastian obediently nodded. What was wrong with this man today? His mouth seemed to have been smeared with honey. Scarlet looked at K.I.N.G., who had an ugly expression on his face. Her husband wouldn't be angry with a single dog, right? Scarlet, who had no idea what the two men were fighting over, glanced at Sebastian, then at K.I.N.G. Finally, she was tired and buried herself in eating. Young Master Longford, aren't you going to continue asking? Sebastian looked at K.I.N.G. with a deep smile. K.I.N.G. snapped back to reality and frowned. What do you want me to ask? For example, how did my wife and I get to know each other and how we fell in love? The man leaning on the back of the chair smiled. Scarlet, who was focusing on food for a while, felt that Sebastian wanted to abuse this single man, so she pushed him with her elbow. Why are you telling this to outsiders? Have your meal. Even though it was just a casual word, the word outsider still hurt K.I.N.G. It was very strange. Why did he care so much about her opinion? It's fine to say it. I think young Master Longford won't mind, right? Sebastian's cold eyes gradually turned warm when they touched Scarlet. His eyes were looking at Scarlet, but he was asking K.I.N.G. The man in front of him, who is as stiff as a wooden sculpture, nodded stiffly. Whatever. This is your home. You can say whatever you want. Anyway, the purpose of Sebastian calling him to dinner tonight was not to take revenge for business, but to declare his sovereignty. K.I.N.G. saw through his thoughts. He then relaxed his whole body, crossed his arms around his chest, leaned on the back of the chair, and waited for Sebastian to give a long speech about their love history. In the end, Sebastian did not say anything and only asked Scarlet, the air conditioner doesn't work. Is it hot? Chapter 1032 His First Love Wasn't everything fine just now? Why did it suddenly break? Scarlet looked up at the central space. Blue Bay Island's equipment was the best. There had never been a problem. Why did it break tonight? Sebastian said lightly, Richard, go and take a look. Richard answered and left, but he did not ask anyone to repair the air conditioner and only waited outside the door. The air conditioner was broken and it was quite hot. Scarlet, who was dressed a little too much, quickly could not take it. She was so hot that she could not help but raise her hand to pull the scarf wrapped around her neck. K.I.N.G., who stole glances at her from time to time, accidentally saw the hickeys on the top. Green, purple, densely packed, just like what he had seen in his dreams. Yes, his first sexual fantasy was actually the wife of another man. Soft, hot, crazy, violent, everything was used on her. However, what he had was just a dream. As for Sebastian, it was real. Realizing this, K.I.N.G. was a little annoyed and lowered his head. The man who had changed his mood and had a panoramic view of him quickly confirmed K.Y.N.G.'s thoughts. Since he was a child, he had fought with him for everything. Now he even took a fancy to his woman. How dare he? 
Young Master Longford, my wife and I have been betrothed to each other for a lifetime, Sebastian said. The man's eyes were fixed on KYNG's face as if he was warning him not to dream about it. Young Master Longford's first love stopped abruptly in the words for a lifetime. His love started in a ridiculous way and also ended up in a ridiculous way. Even though he felt a little uncomfortable, he still pretended not to understand. He looked at the two and smiled gently, is that so? Then I wish you to grow old together. Seeing that he was tactful, Sebastian raised his delicate chin proudly. Thank you. Scarlet could not understand the tacit understanding between the two men, but she vaguely felt that it was a little strange. It seemed that Sebastian invited K.O.I.N.G. to dinner not to reconcile, but to tell him about their past history. As for K.I.N.G., Scarlet did not pay attention to him, so she did not know what he was thinking, but... When Scarlet heard his words, she felt a little bitter and subconsciously looked at him. He quickly looked away, put down the knife and fork in his hand, got up, and said, I have something to do, so I'll be off first. Since he had achieved his goal, Sebastian naturally wouldn't stop him. Take care, I won't see you off. After K.O.I.N.G. walked out of Blue Bay Island, his legs were a little weak. He hurriedly supported himself against the wall and stabilized his body. He raised his head and looked up at the starry night sky. With the healing of the beautiful scenery, his heart was not so messy. He eased for a long time before he raised his heavy footsteps and sat in the car. Then he drove back to his home. When Ian saw that he had returned, his face looked bad. He hurriedly panicked and asked, Young master, Sebastian didn't really poison you, right? It's even more serious than poisoning. K.I.N.G. pushed him away. After staggering down on the sofa, he raised his soulless eyes and stared at the crystal chandelier on the ceiling. Young master, did you get hurt somewhere? He asked. I was injured here, but it's not a big deal. K.O.N.G. pointed to his chest. No, your heart is injured. It will be very serious. You have to go to the hospital to treat it. Ian thought. Can it be cured? K.Y.N.G.'s eyes gradually lit up with hope. Of course, what disease can't be treated in the hospital? Ian nodded fiercely. However, was it an illness to like someone? After K.I.N.G. asked this question in his heart, he turned around and faced the sofa. Ian chirped in his ear, clamoring for him to go to the hospital, but he pretended not to hear it. In his heart, he kept asking, What should I do if I like someone I shouldn't like? After asking, he bounced up from the sofa with great annoyance. F. Asterisk C.K., what a shame. Not only did he fall in love with her, but Sebastian even saw through it. Thinking about tonight, he felt that he was a big fool in front of Sebastian. K.I.N.G. was both angry and painful. In the end, he lay on the sofa and beat the pillow crazily to vent his anger. Ian, who was watching everything from the side, silently sent a message to Paisley. Miss, your brother is crazy. Chapter 1033 Landon's mother cut her wrist. After Sebastian finished observing K.Y.N.G., he put down the binoculars and closed the curtains. Scarlet was sitting in front of the dressing table and wiping her hair with fragrant oil. Such a quiet and obedient appearance made Sebastian unable to resist going forward and hugging her. Honey, you can only be mine. No one else can covet you. For some reason, Scarlet found it funny to suddenly say such words. I'm already married. Who would covet me? It seemed that she didn't know at all. Sebastian was quite bad and didn't intend to tell Scarlet. He only hooked up her chin and lowered his head to kiss her lips. Honey, does it have any news recently? What? Sebastian's hand touched her lower abdomen. At the mention of this, Scarlet was in a bad mood. No, there's no any news. I'm afraid it really can't give birth. Even Dr. Herring prescribed the medicine for me, there was no reaction. It should be because I didn't work hard enough. He didn't work hard enough? He cultivated day and night and almost tied her to his belt, but... Why did you suddenly ask about the child? He had never cared about the child. Before he often advised her not to give birth but he suddenly mentioned it tonight. It was so strange. Sebastian did not answer her. He carried her in a princess carry and walked towards the bedroom. At four o'clock the next afternoon, Scarlet received a call from Susan, saying that Landon's mother had slit her wrist and committed suicide. How could she suddenly commit suicide? What happened? Scarlet was shocked. Landon's mother didn't want us to be together, so she used this method to force us to break up. Susan sighed. When they met, she even pretended to ask when they were going to get married. It had only been a few days since they met each other, but she immediately made a mess. Is that person all right? Scarlet frowned when she heard this. She didn't cut it deeply. It looked like she was pretending.
Susan rolled her eyes. Hearing her act, Scarlett had a bad impression on Landon's mother. However, she did not care about Landon's mother. She only cared about Susan. What did Landon say? Leaning against the wall of the hospital, Susan looked back in the direction of the ward. He has been accompanying his mother all this time. I haven't had the time to say anything to him yet. Scarlett was stunned for a few seconds before sighing. What are you going to do now? Susan thought for a moment and replied, What else can I do? Since his mother is forcing him with her life, then I will naturally help her. I can't just watch her die. To be honest, with Landon's mother forcing them like this, it seemed the huge pressure in her heart was moved away. No one knew that when Kylie said the words, I want you to break up or I will die, Susan actually heaved a deep sigh of relief. At that time, she wanted to agree, but when she saw that Landon was holding her hand and was unwilling to part no matter what, the words that were about to come to her mouth were forcefully swallowed back. She was very conflicted and wanted to ask Scarlett for her opinion, I do want to break up, but Landon, I always feel sorry for him. After a moment of silence, Scarlett calmly said, Sister Susan, respect your heart. Only by respecting your heart can you make the right choice. Even if Landon doesn't agree, you have to tell him your thoughts. Otherwise, it will be very painful to be forced to be together. Susan also thought this way, but I don't know how to speak, and I'm afraid that after I open my mouth, I don't know how to answer his words. You know I can't beat him many times. Susan, I'll go find you. Let's talk face to face, Scarlett said, understanding that Susan was afraid to break up with Landon. She couldn't clear it out on the phone, so she bought something along the way and went to visit Landon's mother to see what this family really wanted to do. After Susan replied with OK, she hung up the phone. Just as Scarlett put down phone, teacher Hayden from the school suddenly called. Scarlett thought it was the usual home visit call, but who knew that the teacher Hayden said that there was a woman who called herself Gianna's grandmother who wanted to take the child away. Hearing this, Scarlett panicked and said, I'll come to school right away, then rushed downstairs at an extremely fast speed. She told Jesus to drive to school as soon as possible. She took out phone and called Sebastian in a hurry. The man who received the call was preparing to go to the branch company of Jackman Group. The car just happened to pass by the school, so he told her not to worry. He would go first. The man's cold voice revealed maturity and steadiness, which made Scarlett gradually less panic. After she stabilized her mind, she picked up phone again and called Susan back to explain the situation. Chapter 1034 Sarah Snatched the Child At the entrance of International Primary School, Sarah squatted in front of Gianna, trying to trick her. Gianna, I am your daddy's mother. It is right for you to follow me. The chubby Gianna was biting on a lollipop as she tilted her head to look at her. Are you daddy Cassie's mother? The smile on Sarah's face froze for a moment. She was not the mother of that bastard. No. Then you are not my daddy Cassie's mother. You also say that you are my grandmother. Are you lying to me? After saying that, Gianna tugged at teacher Hayden's trousers. Teacher Hua, she is a human trafficker to kidnap the kids and sell them away. Hurry up and call the police to arrest her. When Sarah heard this, she was stunned. After she reacted, she hurriedly waved her hand. Sai, I am not a human trafficker. I am really your grandmother. We met at your father's funeral. Is that so? Gianna raised two thick eyebrows. Why don't I have any impression? You really have a bad memory. I'm just a kid. I can't remember too much things. Gianna helplessly spread out her fatty palm. It's not my fault. When Sarah saw such a mischievous child, she immediately became a little angry. You. Gianna put her hand under her lips and pulled on a funny face. Ha ha. Sarah, who was originally angry, was even more angry when she saw her like this. Is this a young lady should do taught by Yoru auntie? She looked at Gianna up and down in disbelief. She actually taught you to be like this. After sizing up, Sarah grabbed Gianna. Come, go home with Grandma. Grandma will invite the best teacher for you. Even if I have to beg the royal family, I will teach you well. Although Gianna was a little fat, she was still young after all. With Sarah pulling her so hard, her whole body fell forward. Just as she was about to fall to the ground, a well-defined hand grabbed her body in time and then pulled her up with force. As the world spun in Gianna's hazy vision, a cold but beautiful face that seemed to be carved gradually appeared. Uncle-in-law. When she saw Sebastian, Gianna was extremely excited. She hurriedly opened her arms and hugged his neck. Today, uncle-in-law was just as handsome as when he kicked open the door of the small black room and pulled her out of the cage. 
When Gianna hugged Sebastian, the lollipop in her hand rubbed against his clothes. The man endured for two seconds and could not bear it anymore. He grabbed her collar and pulled her down. Gianna's starry eyes suddenly collapsed. Sure enough, uncle-in-law was still that annoying uncle-in-law. What? You think you can't win the lawsuit so you want to rob her first? Sebastian looked at Sarah coldly. Hey, she's my biological granddaughter. Do I need to snatch her? Sarah sneered. Gianna pointed at Sarah and complained to Sebastian, this bad woman said that I should choose her when I go to court. The man who had already guessed Sarah's thoughts lowered his eyes and looked at Gianna indifferently. Then did you promise her? Of course I didn't. So she wanted to pull me away. Fortunately, Teacher Hua stopped her. Teacher Hayden, who was standing at the school gate, subconsciously gulped when he met Sebastian's cold eyes. Fortunately, he reacted quickly and did not let Sarah take the child away. Otherwise, this man would definitely cut him into eight pieces. Don't ask him why. The look in his eyes is too scary. He feels like he will eat people at any time. Sebastian just glanced at him casually. He did not know how scary he was. He even felt that the way he looked at his teacher was quite friendly. After the man withdrew his friendly gaze, he did not even look at Sarah. He directly said to Gianna, let's go home. After making two sounds of agreement, Gianna stretched out her chubby little hand, wanting to hold Sebastian's hand, but was frightened by his gaze and shrunk back. All right, she forgot that the only one person could touch uncle-in-law was her auntie. No other woman could touch him, including her. Seeing Gianna jumping around and following Sebastian, Sarah was so angry that she clenched her fists. All right, I'll let you guys take her for a few more days. When the lawsuit is over, let's see how you can be arrogant. Chapter 1035 Please Don't Give Up On Me Scarlet, who was already halfway there, suddenly breathed a sigh of relief when she heard that Sebastian had brought the kid back. She hurriedly told Jesus to turn around. She went back and asked Gianna about it. Only then did she know the purpose of Sarah looking for the child. She wanted Gianna to choose her when she was in court. Raven had said that in the international court, the judge would ask the child for her own opinion. As long as the child replied that she would follow her, then she would be directly sentenced to her. Fortunately, Gianna was very clever and knew what it meant to go to court. She also knew what Sarah meant. Otherwise, she would definitely be cheated by Sarah and then cheated away. Scarlett was afraid that it would be unsafe for Gianna to go to and from school before court, so she decided to pick her up personally during this period of time. Sebastian wanted to send someone. Seeing that she was worried, he nodded. I will go with you. Sebastian was worried about her going out alone. Fortunately, Lance had been helping him recently. After the company affairs were gradually reduced, he would come to accompany her when he had time. Scarlet reached out and hugged Sebastian who doted on her. She did not know when it started. As long as he was there, even if the sky collapsed, she was not afraid. After hanging around with Sebastian for a while, she got up and went to look for Susan. Gianna was very safe at home at this time, so she did not have to worry at all and dared to go out. Sebastian accompanied her to the hospital and just went to find her best friend to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. He was not a good man, so he did not go upstairs and waited in the car. Just as Scarlett walked to the door of the ward, she saw Landon holding Susan's hand and begging her bitterly, Susan, don't break up with me. I beg you. Hearing this, Scarlett immediately reacted. Susan had made her own decision. So she mentioned breaking up with Landon. But she just didn't know how to say it. Senior, your mother doesn't want us to be together. Landon was reluctant to part with her. Susan, my mother is not me. She doesn't want to, but it doesn't mean that I don't want to. Don't break up with me because of her. I can't bear it. Landon grabbed her hand tightly and begged with red eyes. But your mother has already slit her wrist and committed suicide. Do you not even care about her life? Susan shook her head. I don't care anymore. I just want to be with you. I don't want to lose you. Susan knew that Landon would not ignore his own mother. It was only because she wanted to break up that he said such words in a moment of desperation. After a moment of silence, she advised, You and your mother are inseparable. You can't always ignore her. When such things happen several times, you will be tired and then you will compromise. Since you still have to compromise in the end, it is better to break it from the beginning so that your mother will not commit suicide again and again. In this way, Susan no longer spoke tactfully. In front of Landon, she directly revealed Kylie's thoughts. If you break up with me like this, I'm afraid I'll be the next one to cut my wrist. Landon did not seem to understand. Senior, what are you saying? Susan was shocked. Landon hugged her tightly. 
Susan, although we have only been together for a short time, I have liked you for a long time. My love to you is true. If not for you, I don't know what to do in the future. He really liked her. The crush he had when he was young was true. When he met her again, he loved her again. It was just that he had used some methods to keep her. Moreover, he had never gotten her before. He was really unwilling to be ruined by his mother just like that. Faced with such a Landon, Susan did not know what to do and was at a loss. Senior you. Leave my mother to me. Don't worry, I won't let her make a scene in front of you again. Landon interrupted her. I? Susan. Landon suddenly let go of her and knelt down in front of her. Please don't give up on Chapter 1036 She Should Not Have Dreamed About Marriage. Susan was shocked. She was stunned for a long time before she reacted and tried to pull him away, but he pushed her away. If you don't agree, I can't get up. Seeing this scene, Scarlett suddenly understood why Susan did not dare to speak. Facing such a lowly man, it was not that she didn't want to, but that she could not. Because his behavior gave you a feeling that he didn't do anything wrong, and why did you have to treat him like this? It's unfair to him. Scarlett did not know if Susan felt this way. Anyway, she was feeling this way now. It was a bit like being kidnapped by morality, making it difficult to make a choice, and it was quite uncomfortable. People came and went in the hospital. Landon kneeling like this attracted the attention of countless people. Susan's heart was weighed down like by a heavy mountain and she did not know what to do. Landon did not speak. He just raised his head and looked at her quietly with red eyes. Looking at Landon like this, Susan had no choice but to suffocate and nod. Seeing her nod, Landon relaxed his whole body. Susan, thank you. Susan shook her head and bent down to help him up. She did not say anything. After Landon got up, he said to Susan, I will go to my mother now and tell her not to meddle in our matter. Susan grunted and did not follow him. When she turned around, she saw Scarlet standing not far away. Susan felt her nose sour. For some reason, she suddenly wanted to cry, but because of her stubbornness, she forced herself to endure it. Scarlet walked over and just happened to see her eyes covered by mist. She quickly reached out and hugged her. Sister Susan, it's okay. No matter what Susan encountered, Scarlett would always be her strong backing. They were friends who had depended on each other for many years. Scarlett's embrace gave her a bit of strength. It was as if she had found someone to rely on. Susan removed her fatigue and rested her head on her shoulder. Scarlett, I'm a little tired. Then let's go back and rest. Scarlett didn't say anything. She didn't ask anything. She just helped Susan into the car and sent her home. After sitting down in the living room, Susan touched a box of cigarettes. She took out a thin cigarette and lit it. She wanted to smoke it, but she suddenly remembered that Scarlett was preparing for pregnancy and put it out again. Scarlett, who just came over with warm water, saw her put out the cigarette in the ashtray and said, You can smoke if you want. I may not be able to get pregnant yet. Susan shook her head. Scarlett's biggest wish was to give birth to a child for Sebastian. Whether she could get pregnant or not, she could not smoke in front of Scarlett. Scarlett knew that Susan had her own mind, so she didn't try to persuade her anymore. She just handed her the warm water in her hand. Drink some water. Susan reached out to take it and took a sip. It's my fault. I shouldn't have dreamed to find a reliable man to marry. I shouldn't have dreamed to build a family that belongs to me. Now everything I ask for it. Sister Susan, you don't do anything wrong to build your own family. Don't take everything into your own hands. No one expected that Landon's mother would cut her wrist and force you to break up. No one expected that Landon would kneel down and beg for help. This is indeed very difficult. No one can blame you. When I was with Cosmo in the past, it was because he treated me very well, so I thought this was love. I did everything for him without hesitation. Later, I was betrayed and thought that I had experienced it and could understand everything. Now I know that I was just too self-righteous. She was so self-righteous that she thought that if she married her senior, she would be able to live a peaceful life. She could also take this opportunity to break away from her identity as an orphan. She did not know that when the concept of being an orphan was suppressed, she was not worthy at all. A woman like me who had been married should not dream about marriage anymore. Chapter 1037 They Divided Scarlet stepped forward and grabbed Susan's hand. Susan, don't say that. Everyone has the right to dream about marriage. It's just that you are unlucky. Susan's eyes were full of helplessness. Why am I met with kind of thing? Scarlet didn't know how to answer these words. What Susan met was indeed unfortunate. His ex-husband, Cosmo, cheated her money and her house. 
Lance was just playing around. When it came to Landon, she thought they were a good match. Who knew that it was a bunch of things? Staring at Susan's gradually thinning face, Scarlet sighed, you didn't reject Landon just now. His mother will definitely make trouble again. How could Susan not know that Kylie would make trouble again? In that situation, I really don't know how to refuse. It seems that I can't be ruthless when I see him like that. After saying that, Susan thought of Lance again in her heart. It seemed that when he asked to get back together, he had never cut his wrist and knelt to force her, but Landon. Why did she think of Lance again? She had already agreed to break up. Why did she compare them? Did she not let go? Susan was annoyed. She put down the cup in her hand and lied on the sofa. Her eyes were dull as she looked at the ceiling. In Scarlett's impression, Susan had always been straightforward and decisive, but she was hesitant about Landon's matter. She could not help but ask Susan, why are you not ruthless enough to refuse Landon? Yes, why can't she be ruthless? When she rejected Lance, she didn't hesitate at all. She was very ruthless. Why did she hesitate when it came to Landon? She lowered her head and thought for a long time, but she couldn't figure it out. Scarlett reminded her, sometimes I can't be ruthless when I'm kidnapped by morality. Susan suddenly raised her head, yes, cutting wrist, committing suicide, kneeling, how can these not be considered a morality kidnapping, but Senior doesn't look like that kind of man. Landon really didn't look like it, and Scarlett couldn't rely on her own feelings to insist that Landon was kidnapping Susan, so she changed her words and asked, what will you do after that? Susan said without any hesitation, when Landon is annoyed by his mother, he will compromise. There is no one couple in this world who can't be separated by their parents. Susan was telling the truth. If it was the girl's parents, perhaps it would not be able to separate them, but if it was the man's parents, it may not be. Since she could not reject him now, so be it. After chatting with Susan for a while, Scarlett remembered that Sebastian was still waiting outside. Have a good rest at home. I'll come to see you after I send Gianna off tomorrow. Susan got up to send her off while asking, is Gianna okay? It's okay. When Sarah wanted to snatch Gianna away, Sebastian arrived in time. Susan knew that with Sebastian around, everything could be settled, so he nodded, it's good that you're fine. I'll go with you on the day of court. Scarlett agreed, then sat in the car and waved at Susan. Only then did she take back her gaze and look at the man beside her. Are you tired after waiting for so long? Sebastian put down phone, picked up Scarlett, and let her sit on his lap. Did Miss Croft and Dr. Scarrett separate? Ha! Huh. Scarlett hooked her arm around his neck and asked suspiciously, you didn't care about these things in the past. Why are you so concerned about them this time? Sebastian's expression was indifferent and it could not be seen that he was very emotional. It's just a casual question. It doesn't matter if you don't want to say it. Anyway, he could find out. Scarlett pinched his cheek, since my husband is so gossipy, I will reluctantly tell you. Susan and Landon have not broken up. Sebastian's eyes darkened. He seemed to be impatient to wait for something. And then she said, Miss Croft really has a good temper. Scarlett did not understand what she meant and thought that she was praising Susan. Of course. My sister Susan has been famous for her good temper since she was a child. Sebastian smiled and did not speak. In the three years that Scarlett left, Lance's neck and arms were often scratched by Susan. Was this called having a good temper? Chapter 1038 With him around, there was no need to worry. On Susan's side, Landon drove his parents back to the country. Susan calmed down and concentrated on taking care of the night scene. Scarlett was preparing to start the court. On the night of the court session, she could not fall asleep no matter what. When she went downstairs to drink water, Gianna walked to her with a small pillow and pulled the hem of her nightdress. Auntie, don't worry. I will definitely choose you. Scarlett's heart warmed. She put down the cup, squatted down, and looked at her. It's so late. Why aren't you sleeping yet? Gianna tilted her head and smiled. Like you, I can't sleep. The child's innocent smile was the most healing. Scarlett also smiled gently. Are you also nervous? Of course. Gianna expressed her thoughts without hesitation. Although sometimes I also miss the time in England. But compared to Auntie, those are not important. Apart from teaching her how to shoot, Dad Cassie had always been good to her, allowing her to grow up without worries. Sometimes he even spoiled her very much. Of course, when she was with her biological father, she was very happy. She liked Strange Uncle from the bottom of her heart. Thinking of Strange Uncle, Gianna's eyes gradually turned red. Auntie, if Strange Uncle was still alive, you and my grandmother wouldn't have to go to court. 
When Scarlet heard this, she was stunned for a moment. Then she suddenly remembered Travis' careless appearance. Her heart suddenly tightened. No matter what this person did before he died, after he died, his bad will always fade away. What she remembers is his good. The facial features and appearance of the Travis in her memory had already faded, but before he died, he grabbed her hand and let her take good care of Gianna. She would never forget it. She could not think of Travis. It was easy for her eyes to turn red when she thought of him. Just like at this moment, her eyes could not help but turn red. In order to not let Gianna see her, she reached out and hugged her. Gianna, separation is something everyone has to deal with. Your father just left first, but his love for you is still there. Gianna seemed to understand. She nestled in Scarlet's arms and nodded lightly. Then Auntie, will you and uncle-in-law leave me like this in the future? Scarlet raised her hand and touched her little head. We are older than you, so it is normal for us to leave first. Tears suddenly flowed out of Gianna's eyes. Then in the future, isn't there only me left in this world? It won't. When Scarlet noticed that the child was crying, she quickly let go of her and helped her wipe her tears. Auntie will give birth to a child in the future. The child will grow up with you. You are not alone. Her words made Gianna stop crying. Her tearful eyes slowly moved to her belly. Then Auntie, when will you have a child? As they chatted, they talked about the child. Don't worry, there will be. Gianna grunted and nestled into Scarlet's arms, seeking a hug. Looking at them hugging each other, the corners of Sebastian's lips curled up slightly. Actually, with him around, there was no need to worry about anything. The lawsuit to compete for the custody of the child was held on time. Raven had made all the necessary preparations to defeat the lawyer. Originally, the first order of this case should belong to Sarah. No matter how she fought, her odds of winning were higher. However, Raven used the last words of the deceased as an excuse to take out the evidence that Sarah refused to let her daughter-in-law in, even breaking up the parents of the child, and persuaded the judge with all his might. In addition to Raven, there were also George and Keanu who came out to testify that Sarah did not treat Rebecca well. After death, they were not even allowed to be buried together. They said that such a mother would not be good to the child. In addition, the child herself wanted to choose Auntie, so this lawsuit was a very beautifully success. The judge soon announced that the custody of Gianna belonged to Scarlett and her husband. Sarah, who did not get the custody, looked at Scarlett who was happily clapping with Gianna, and her eyes gradually darkened. When everyone left the court, Sarah suddenly rushed over from behind, grabbed Gianna from Scarlett's hands, and held her in her arm. Chapter 1039 Respect Gianna's Choice Sarah, what are you doing? Scarlett was so scared that she rushed over but was stopped by Sebastian. Let her go. The man's cold eyes were filled with anger. In fact, Sarah was also a little scared. She trembled and said, This is my granddaughter, the child my son left behind for me. Seeing this, George stepped forward and accused Sarah, the court has already declared that. But you are still fighting for the child. Have you considered the feelings of the child? Hearing this, Sarah lowered her head to look at Gianna in her arms. Seeing her blinking her big eyes and looking at her with a disappointed face, Sarah felt extremely complicated. Seeing that she seemed to be hesitating about whether to take the child away forcefully, Scarlett advised, Miss Southworth, Gianna wants to follow me, not you. If you really love the child left by Travis, then respect her choice. Sarah was still a little reluctant. She hugged Gianna and shook her head at Scarlet. This is Travis' kid. With her here, I won't have to hold Travis' photo day and night to miss him. Miss Sales, you are still young and can still have another child. You will have your own children in the future. As for me, I only have her. But Miss Southworth, Travis' last words were to entrust the child to me. Gianna's will is also with me. You have to stand from their point of view and think for them, right? Sarah said with a slight frown. Sarah looked at Gianna in her arms again. Before she could reply to Scarlet, she saw Gianna grimacing at her. Bad woman, you only know how to force me. I don't want to go with you. Let go of me or I will bite you to death. After saying that, Gianna really took a bite on the back of her hand. After her son passed away, Sarah lost her appetite and lost a lot of weight. Gianna bit hard, but she only bit a layer of skin. Looking at her skin that was bitten, Sarah did not know what was going on and suddenly slowly let go of her. Everyone didn't care why she let go of the child. Anyway, as soon as she let go, George immediately rushed over and carried the child over. The group of people glanced at her and got into the car. Only Scarlett turned around and glanced at Sarah. It was also because of this glance that Sarah mustered up her courage and stopped Sebastian's car. Sebastian thought that she was going to snatch the child again. 
Just as he was about to order Leo to get off the car and drive her away, she saw her bend down and look at Scarlet in the car. Miss Sales in the future, can I come to your house to see the child? When George and Keanu accused her in court just now, Sarah had already realized that she was very harsh to her son and daughter-in-law. When Travis was young, the most she did was force him to study and become the heir of the Southworth family and the Weber family, but she never really cared about him. Especially when she realized that her son was in love, she would not be happy for her son. Instead, she felt that people like Rebecca could not help her son at all, so she tried to separate them. Back then, when Rebecca and Travis were in such a mess, she contributed a lot. So when George questioned her in court, she could not answer a word. She really did not treat Rebecca well. During this period, every time she thought of Travis, Sarah's heart would feel a dull pain. She thought that she could heal the wound if she snatched the child away. However, until now, she realized that even if she snatched the child away, Travis would not be able to come back. Her son could not come back. Could it be that she had to be selfish again to ignore his last words? It could be said that for this bit of conviction, Sarah finally gave up struggling. However, the little girl in front of her was actually Travis Kidd, her own granddaughter. She could not let go. When Scarlett first met Sarah, she was quite energetic. This time, she saw that her face was full of vicissitudes and the corners of her hair were white. As a mother, no matter how cruel and harsh she was, the child she lost was the child she had given birth to in ten months. Looking at Sarah like this, Scarlett, who was moved by compassion, asked Gianna and Anastasia, do you agree? She called out Gianna's real name, which meant that she admitted that Gianna was Southworth family's child and respected Gianna's choice at the same time. Chapter 1040 I'm sorry about your mother. Gianna stared at the skinny old lady outside the window. After hesitating for a while, she nodded, as long as you don't force me to leave like you did just now then. I agree. Child, don't worry. I won't be so impulsive in the future. Sarah said. After making a sound of agreement, Gianna turned around and went to pick up the snacks that she had secretly hidden in the back seat. When Scarlett saw this, she gently patted her butt. Gianna, how many times have I told you? These snacks are unhealthy and easily broken teeth. Why don't you listen? There was some blame in her tone, but her voice was warm and soft. When Sarah heard this, she remembered that in Travis' childhood, it seemed that she had never used such a gentle tone to talk to him. Thinking of this, Sarah looked at Scarlett again. Since she repeatedly refused to listen, why didn't you rob her snacks and throw them away? After Scarlett stopped Gianna, she turned to look at the person outside the window. When I was in the orphanage because my heart was not good and my body was too thin, I walked and ate very slowly. However, the nurse who took care of me had never been fierce and had always been very patient. Maybe it was because of this that I would not be fierce to children. It turned out that a good environment could really nurture a gentle and virtuous person. Sarah gradually let go of it. Gianna will definitely be a good girl when she grows up with Auntie who has such a temperament like you. Scarlet smiled but did not speak. Sarah said again, Miss Sales, I want to leave the Southworth family and the Weber family to her, is that okay? Let's talk about it when she grows up, Scarlett disagreed. I mean after she grows up. Sarah explained. Then you can ask Gianna for her opinion in person, Scarlett said. She would not make any important choice for this child. Everything would be in her hands. Sebastian, who was sitting at the front, was a little impatient. He turned back and glanced at her. Scarlett did not say anything more to Sarah. Miss Southworth, it's getting late. I'll take the child back first. Sarah said yes and then seemed to think of something. She said with some embarrassment, about your mother, I... I'm very sorry. Atsuma was her best friend since childhood, but she couldn't figure it out at that time. She was provoked by a few words from Juliet and actually ruined her face. This matter had been in Sarah's heart for many years. When she found out that Rebecca was Hatsuma's daughter, she did not dare to face Rebecca, nor did she dare to let her enter her family. She felt very guilty towards Burke family and her mother. If not for her, Rebecca marrying Travis would be a match in social status. Scarlett would not have been left in the orphanage. In the end, it was her own fault. Only God would return her son's life. Scarlett already knew that it was Juliet who had hit Sarah's hand. Sarah's medicine would splash on Hatsuma's face, and her resentment towards her would not be as great as before. However, it was not possible to ask her to replace her mother. She could only nod at Sarah to express her apology. Sarah also knew that the other party would not forgive her. If not for because of Gianna, she would not even talk to her anymore. Fortunately, Gianna was there, so she had the opportunity to apologize to Hatsuma's only daughter. 
This way the sins she had towards Hatsuma would be left. Chapter 1041 Lance After bidding farewell to Sarah, Lance agreed to Raven's request and set up a meeting to invite all the people who had been to the court. Except for Susan. When they were in the court, Lance and Susan were sitting very close but they did not look at each other. Even when they got up and left the court, they accidentally bumped into each other. The two of them were polite and said sorry to each other, then they parted ways. With the current situation between the two of them, everyone understood that Lance did not invite Susan, but Raven felt that Lance still felt very uncomfortable in her heart. He picked up the wine glass and touched Lance's cup. Are you really going to let go just like that? I've worked hard for it. I'm tired now, Lance replied without much emotion. He was tired and did not want to beg Susan anymore. It was meaningless and it was pretty good now. When Raven wanted to persuade him again, he looked up and saw Frostina walk in from outside the door. Her black eyes were gradually dyed with color. When he saw Simon who was following behind her, the color that had been lit up with great difficulty gradually became gray. Lance followed his line of sight and glanced at the door. When he saw Simon, he immediately frowned. Why did you bring him here? He had clearly told Frostina that this was a meeting to thank lawyer Raven, not to call our cider. Why was she so disobedient? Second brother, you don't mind having more people, do you? Frostina asked. Sebastian didn't mind, but Scarlet. He turned his head but didn't see Scarlet. He was slightly surprised. Simon, do you still remember me? Keanu, who was next to him, raised a symmetrical mile, stood up and stretched out his hand to Simon. Samuel Family's project was accepted by Rebecca. Keanu, who had wanted to go to the construction site before, naturally met him. Simon had a good memory. After recognizing Keanu, he politely shook his hand. Rebecca Company's chief designer. His father had met Rebecca once and had always been very interested in her. He had asked her for a long time before he invited her to design a house for the family. Seeing that Simon still remembered him, Keanu's smile became more and more symmetrical. It seems that I have a bit of memory. Otherwise, a big shot like you definitely won't remember it. Looking at the extremely stiff smiling face in front of him, Simon forced the corners of his mouth to twitch, it does have a bit of memory. I will remember it at first glance when I see you. He had never seen a person who would pursue balance even when smiling, so how could he not remember? Simon, come here, sit here. Let's have a drink. Keanu was extremely happy to be praised. Before Simon could greet Sebastian, he was dragged to sit down by the enthusiastic Keanu. Just as Keanu sat down, he saw Sebastian staring at him coldly. He was immediately shocked. Mr. Jackman, why are you looking at me like that? I didn't kidnap your wife. She just went to the bathroom. When Simon came in, Scarlet ran into the bathroom. She was afraid that if she was caught, her identity would be exposed when she went to Samuel Family Survey Site. Sebastian naturally knew that she was hiding, but he couldn't bear to see Keanu's flattering look. After coldly glancing at him, he nodded at Frostina. He had already been dragged down by Keanu, so he had to nod, but... The man's gaze was as cold as snow. He looked indifferently at Raven who was facing him. Letting Lance form this meeting was to find an opportunity to talk to Frostina, right? Unfortunately, the always intelligent Frostina was not even willing to give him this opportunity. After Frostina sat down next to Simon, she generously picked up her wine glass and toasted Sebastian, second brother, congratulate you and second sister-in-law winning the lawsuit. After saying that, she looked at Gianna who was sitting next to George, eating a big lobster, Miss Anastasia Weber, congratulations on joining my second brother's family. Gianna lifted her oily little face and grinned at Frostina. Other than uncle-in-law's family, I'm also a member of your big family. You're right, let's have a drink, said Gianna in a soft voice, healing Frostina. Chapter 1042 Mr. Yeah, you must have a way, right? Gianna put down the lobster in her hand, stretched out her oily claws, grabbed the juice in front of her, and touched it across the big table. I'll drink it, you can do whatever you want. The people on the table were all amused by Gianna's generous gesture. Who did you learn this from? George touched Gianna's little head. Gianna pointed at the iPad on the table. I learned it from the movie. How's it, Grandpa George? Do I have any talent in acting? I told you I'm only 40 years old. I haven't reached the age of being your grandfather yet. Call me uncle. But you look like you're 70 years old, Gianna said, tilting her head. You do look like it, Lance said with a rare smile. George. He turned to ask Keanu, do I like so? Do you want me to pee for you to look? George. 
He shouldn't have asked so many questions. It was simply asking for a beating. Simon looked around at the people on the table and felt that it was quite interesting, but... Simon looked at the bathroom in the private room. Why did Mr. Jackman's wife not come out after entering for so long? Scarlet, who was in a panic inside, took out phone to send a distress message to Sebastian. Hubby, quickly think of a way to invite Simon away. Sebastian, who was thinking about how to send Simon away, saw this message and revealed a doting smile. Do you want me to go in and accompany you? What is this? Scarlet typed Mr. Yeah, you must have a way. Sebastian replied, wait a minute. Putting phone down, Sebastian looked up at Simon. Mr. Samuel, I have a project to discuss with you. Would it be convenient for you to go upstairs and have a talk with me? The place where they were was located happened to be nightclub. The entire building was Sebastian's territory. The first floor was a regular restaurant and the rest were entertainment venues. He knew that Samuel family's project was not under his control, but Sebastian still wanted to discuss the project with him at this time. He knew that he was deliberately sending him away. He just did not know whether it was for his wife who did not want to meet him or for the son of the Rodriguez family. Perhaps both were. Simon knew everything, but he did not point it out. He stood up elegantly. Let's go. After the two of them left, Frustina's expression changed slightly. She seemed to know that her second brother had deliberately sent Simon away. She felt a little uncomfortable. She knew that Raven had helped her second brother in court because he wanted to take this opportunity to build a relationship with her again, so she had specially brought Simon here. She originally wanted Raven to back off on his own, but who knew that second brother would actually help Raven? She picked up the wine glass and took a sip of wine. She said to Lance's brother, my studio still has some matters to attend to. I'll be leaving first. Frostina did not enter Jackman Group. After returning, she opened her own studio and designed all kinds of handicrafts. It was close to the exhibition, so it was indeed a little busy. Lance naturally knew that she was also very busy, but he could not let her go just like that tonight. You saw it just now. Second brother made a statement, so you should give him another chance to explain. What should be said, many years ago we made it clear. What else is there to talk about? Frostina never looked up at Raven. Raven's eyes gradually reddened. He seemed to be able to feel that she had completely let him go. He felt extremely uncomfortable, but he pretended to be indifferent. He patted Lance on the shoulder. Forget it, don't make things difficult for her. Frostina, he had no choice but to break up with you. At least listen to his explanation. Lance saw how Raven had been doing all these years and said. Frostina slowly raised her eyes. When she saw his pale face, she let out a sigh of relief. All right, let's go outside. She put down her wine glass and got up. Raven looked at her back and was stunned for a few seconds. After being reminded by Lance, he hurriedly followed her. After the two of them left, Keanu asked nosily were they lovers before? What has it got to do with you? Lance rolled his eyes at him. It has nothing to do with me. Can't I ask? Keanu asked innocently. Lance. It has nothing to do with me. Can't I gossip about it? It's none of my business. Don't I deserve to know? Lance. Forget it. This is his second sister-in-law's master. Bear with it for a while and the meal will be over. Outside nightclub, Frostina walked along the street. Raven stared at her back and followed her at a moderate pace. When she reached the ramp, Frostina stopped and turned back to look at him. Speak Chapter 1043 Raven Ever since she had seen Raven sleep with other women several times, Frostina had locked herself up in her room all day and night, without sleep or rest, not eating or drinking. At that time, she had hoped that Raven would come to see her, even if not for to get back together just to comfort her, but he did not care. From then on, Frostina had never seen Raven again. Even after many years, when Raven suddenly came to her door and said that he could be with her from now on, she had ignored him. Lance said that Raven had no choice but to break up. Frostina knew it clearly in her heart, but she didn't care, so she never asked for the reason. She didn't know, and she didn't want to know. As if he could read Frostina's mind, Raven, who was standing on the lower slope, faced the dim streetlights and smiled at her. There's nothing to say. She had already put it down. If he said it out loud, it would only cause a rift between her and her parents. Why? Just let her know nothing and live a happy life. When Raven thought of this, tears welled up in his eyes and he subconsciously turned around. If you don't say it tonight, you won't have a chance in the future. Will you forgive me if I tell you? I won't. A hint of bitterness appeared on Raven's face. 
Then let's not talk about it. He waved his hand elegantly. Looking at the thin figure, Frostina remembered the first time she saw him. At that time, Raven was sitting in nightclub's private room, lazily leaning on the sofa, smoking alone. The man hidden in the dim light was completely different from the noisy crowd around him. He seemed to be full of loneliness. A good girl, she always can't resist this kind of man. Even if her friends all advise her, that man is very playful and must not fall in love with him. But she still smiles brightly and says in her heart, I'm sorry, I was moved at first sight, your advice is late. Later, Raven got close to her brother and she often saw him coming and going in and out of her house. At such a young age, every time Frostina sees him, her heart feels like honey, always hiding behind the door and peeking at him. After she grew bolder, she carried coffee, fruits, snacks, and so on, pushed open her brother's door and went to get close to him. At that time, Raven, who was playing games, would occasionally look up at her. Her gaze was neither cold nor indifferent as if he was not very interested in a little girl like her. Frostina chased after her big sister and asked her how to grow faster. Rosie nodded at her little head and said, You are only 16 years old. You just entered high school. Why are you looking forward to growing up? Frostina smiled and did not speak. She went online to search for information. She had done all of it. From the age of 16, she had paid special attention to her image management. Later, when she learned that he had received an admission letter from a foreign high school, she had even worked hard to learn. She wanted to follow Raven's footsteps and let him see her shining and burning. She was full of love. She finally got into the university he was in and finally got together with him with her own efforts. It was only after she was with him that she knew what her little sister said. A man who was very playful would not care too much about his girlfriend. But at that time, she loved Raven very much. She loved him so much that she had no dignity and no bearing. She pushed away all the women around him. She was often like an ill-bred shrew who fought with the rich and beautiful women. She could even say all these dirty words, such as whores, fuck you. She didn't know how Raven fell in love with her. Perhaps it was because he saw that she loved him so much that she went crazy. When she was having a fight with another woman, he suddenly hugged her in his arms. With red eyes, he told her that he would never let these women be angry with her again. He would definitely love her well. He also did it. He loved her to the extreme and treated her very well. Even her underwears were washed by him. When the period came, he didn't let her get any cold water. Sometimes, when she was hungry and wanted to eat domestic food, he ran all over the United States. He didn't find it and flew back to the country. He bought it and learned how to make it for her. He knew that she was cold in winter. He even hugged her in his arms and let her sleep on his arms. For the whole night, he maintained a posture. Even if his arms were completely numb, he was reluctant to let go. In the years they were together, Raven spoiled her to the bones. He would say that he loved her every day. He would hug her every day, kiss her, and even touch her carefully. He was afraid that she would hurt. If any man looked at her more, he would be jealous. He was afraid that she would be snatched away by others, protected and spoiled, and not let anyone bully her. However, Raven, who loved her so much, suddenly broke up with her two years after graduation. He said that he was tired of her and did not want to be with her. Frostina was used to being pampered by him and spoiled by him. How could she leave him? She was unwilling to leave him no matter what. She even forced him by committing suicide. When he saw her cutting her wrist in the bathtub, he still hugged her and cried. Why did he still want to break up with her not long after? Chapter 1044 You Lied to Me, Right? At that time, Frostina really couldn't figure it out. No matter what, she couldn't figure it out. She kept looking for him, forcing him, asking him if he still loved her. Raven said that he didn't love her anymore. Frostina didn't believe him and went to cut her wrist again. However, this time he didn't cry again. He didn't save her. He even left with his things. He moved away from the house they lived in and lived in a remote place. Frostina searched for a long time before finding him. But she saw him with another woman. Yes, even if that was the case, Frostina never gave up. She sat in the living room like a fool and waited. After they finished, he helped them clean up the room. At that time, she picked up the messy clothes on the bed, comforted herself, and cleaned it up. Her brother Raven, when he was tired of playing with other women, he would think of her good and return to her side again. This was how she came over again and again. The last time it was Raven who shouted at her to stop being so cheap. Only then did she hold the clothes of another woman and slowly squat down by the bed. She remembered that she did not cry anymore at that time. 
She only asked him if he really did not love her anymore. When she got the answer that he did not love, she woke up. Some people changed their minds and really could not come back. After that, she locked herself up and advised herself to put him down while looking forward to him coming to see her. In the end on such a day, she gradually suffered from depression. How did she come out? She relied on fantasies, self-redemption, and the company her parents gave her. That road was so long and painful. Every time Frostina thought about it, her heart would ache. She warned herself not to try this kind of pain a second time. Fortunately, as time went on, it actually slowly stopped hurting. She knew that she had completely walked out. She had already walked out. Looking at that lonely back, she said lightly, Raven, make it clear. This way you can let go and I can also be peace. He had been chasing after her all this time. He just wanted to make things clear. After all, they had no choice but to separate, so how could he not be reconciled? Once he vented this unwillingness, he would be satisfied and he would be able to let go. Just like her, wouldn't she also let go of the people she loved so much? Raven's footsteps slowly stopped, but he did not turn around. In his tearful eyes, he stared at the silhouette projected by the street lamp on the ground. Do you still remember? You asked me before why I would hang around women at such a young age. Yes, I remember. He was just a third-year student, but he actually went in and out of all kinds of entertainment venues day and night. It was very abnormal. She was very curious. She held his arm and gently asked him many times, but he never told her the answer. My stepmother asked me to go. Because she was his stepmother, she was afraid that he would block her son's path, and she was afraid that he would separate his father's love. So she forced him to be a playboy and lose his image. That was why his father gave the inheritance rights to the second young master. Did you not resist? Raven turned back and smiled at Frostina. My grandmother is in her hands. It was said that a child without a mother was the most pitiful. No one would love him. This was how Raven was. When I was young, I didn't have the ability to resist. Looking at Raven's calm smile, Frostina didn't say anything else and quietly waited for him to continue. Two years after graduation, I knelt down and begged your mother. I hope she doesn't mind my identity. Frostina was shocked, as if she didn't expect that it was her mother who forced Raven to separate from her. But at that time, your mother still looked down on me. The smile on the corner of Raven's lips was a little indifferent. In fact, it's nothing for her to threaten me by using the Rodriguez family, but she knows that I have a grandmother. When he mentioned his grandmother, the expression in Raven's eyes slowly dimmed. After I forced you to leave, my grandmother somehow learned of the news. In order to no longer drag me down, she hung herself up and committed suicide. Later, I became a lawyer and helped your mother win an international lawsuit. She told me that if I still love you, I should chase you back. When he said these words, he seemed to be indifferent, as if he did not care. He turned around and walked in front of Frostina. His slightly red eyes looked at her quietly. Frostina, don't blame your parents. I have led your brother astray and left a bad impression on them. It is normal that they are afraid that I will harm you. Frostina thought that after she knew the truth, she would no longer have any reaction. At this moment, she was still in disbelief and took a step back. That's impossible. My parents are so good to me. They will do anything for me. How can they force you to break up? Raven did not reply. He just raised his head and forced back the tears in his eyes. Frostina looked at Raven and grabbed his collar. You lied to me, didn't you? Raven laughed. He laughed so hard that he burst into tears. He could not stop it from rolling down. Yes, I lied to you. Frostina did not believe it because she remembered that when her parents flew over to accompany her, the first thing they said was that they were afraid that she would be too sad and would not be able to come out. They, they clearly knew what had happened, but they acted as if nothing had happened and stayed by her side, watching her crawl in the mud. Chapter 1045 Love Me Again, Okay If it was said that Raven's abandonment, injury, and betrayal had given her a fatal blow, then her parents had hurt her invisibly. Frostina was unable to accept it. She released Raven's clothes, covered her face, and slowly crouched down. Fool, I was trying to keep you. I deliberately lied to you. You believed me too. Raven squatted down and comforted her. Your grandmother was indirectly forced to death by my family. Frostina couldn't hold back her tears. Seeing her crying like this, Raven's heart ached to death. No, it assess not. I lied to you. You know there is no truth in my mouth. Don't cry. Frostina looked at him with tears in his eyes. Then, what about those women? 
Raven reached out his hand, wanting to help her wipe away the tears on her face, but she avoided it. The frozen hand made him understand that Frostina, who loved him so much that she was willing to die, could not come back. He retracted his hand, looked at Frostina, and lightly curled his lips. I slept with them all. Frostina, it's fake. I haven't slept with any of them. In order to force you to leave, I lied to you. Raven's eyes turned red, and he forced himself to hold back his tears. He straightened up and turned his back. Frostina, who was squatting on the ground, looked up at his broad back. She seemed to understand something and got up to hug him from behind. This was the first time she had taken the initiative to hug him after so many years. The pain in Raven's heart that was trembling had eased a little. He raised his hand and caressed the back of her hand. After separating forcefully, he turned around and hugged the woman behind him tightly in his arms. Frostina, I've missed you so much all these years. I missed you so much. Frostina, who was nestled in his arms, felt the cold liquid fall into her neck and hit her skin, making her cry too. Raven, I'm sorry. I don't love you anymore. The injury he gave was really too painful. Even if she knew that he was helpless now, Frostina could not forget those painful times. But she also knew that it was because she was unwilling to let go that he would find so many women to force her. It was obviously fake. It didn't matter. She could forgive him again, but she found that she really didn't love him anymore. She was crying because of the feelings that she had chased after since she was 16 years old. It ended so absurdly and felt sad. Her mind was clear that she had no feelings for Raven. It turns out that after a long time, the human heart will really change. It's just that she didn't expect that the person who changed was her and not Raven. I'm sorry for making you fall in love with me, but I don't love you anymore. The man who was holding her gradually stiffened. Even though he knew that it would end like this, his heart still ached so much that he couldn't breathe. Frostina. Yes. Frostina nestled in his arms and nodded gently. The man who called her name did not speak again. When she looked up, she saw the tears in his eyes flowing down her cheeks. Love me again, okay? In this world, no one loved him again. Could she love him again? Seeing Raven like this, Frostina couldn't bear it. She reached out and helped him wipe away his tears. There is a painful past. When we are together again, we will still be separated. I don't want to become your enemy. Once a person has a grudge in his heart, it will be deeply rooted in his heart and he will never be able to pull it out. Rather than this, it is better to end it here. At least, we can leave a beautiful memory for the time we love each other. Raven understood what she meant. Don't make things too embarrassing. Maybe we can be friends. He slowly released her. You've lost a lot of weight. Don't be picky in the future. Eat more. Raven raised his hand and stroked Frostina's hair. His movements were very slow as if after he stopped, there would be no more chances. The truth is indeed so. After this, there will be no more chances. Frostina smiled with tears in her eyes and nodded. You too. Raven looked at her. After a long while, she opened her arms again. Embrace me again. Frostina did not act coy and took the initiative to hug his waist. Just like before, after crying enough, she nestled in his arms and rubbed her tears on his clothes. Raven hugged her like this, really, very reluctant, but she did not love, not at all. The girl who loved him so much that she was crazy, after he pushed her away, she would never come back again. In the past, when watching a movie, there was a line that was quite impressive. No one would wait for you in the same place forever. With his hard work, he took off his label and became a shining person in the political world. He was finally seen by her mother and recognized. But she couldn't see it because he was late. Raven smiled and turned his reluctance into a final hug. He used all his strength to hug her. Goodbye. Goodbye. After they made their final farewell, they let go of each other and turned to leave. From now on, they would never meet again. Chapter 1046 Unfortunately, You Are a Man Looking through the floor-to-ceiling window at the two people who had parted ways downstairs, Simon shook the wine glass in his hand. They still break up. Sebastian followed his line of sight and looked out the window. His eyes changed slightly, but it was also expected. This sister of mine has always known what she wants. She would do everything to get what she wanted. When she didn't want it, she would simply give up decisively, whether it was items or feelings. Simon picked up his wine glass and took a sip. There was a faint smile on his lips. You know that I'll see it, but you still brought me here. What is Mr. Jackman planning? He was going to discuss marriage with Frostina now. 
Shouldn't he help his sister cover up everything at this time? There is nothing that can hide from you. Rather than knowing it from others, it is better to let you know in advance. Sebastian's gaze fell on the figure who opened the car door and sat in the car. As for whether you want to continue the marriage with her after you know it, it is up to you. The smile on Simon's lips deepened. My decision is not important. Everything depends on your sister. After saying that, Simon looked at Sebastian thoughtfully. To be honest, your temperament is quite to my liking. It's a pity that you are a man. Sebastian frowned slightly. His eyes instantly revealed a look of disgust. When Simon saw this, he laughed loudly. I was just teasing you. My sexual orientation is normal. With a cold face, Sebastian slammed the cup in his hand on the table. Last time, the person who said that his sexual orientation was normal took a fancy to my wife. Ha! Huh. Simon immediately became interested. He put down his legs and leaned forward. Who is it? How dare he thought about your wife? The man who was leaning against the sofa glanced at him coldly and ignored him. Simon was not angry and said to himself, Your wife must be very beautiful. So you hit her and did not let me see her, right? Sebastian could tell what Simon was referring to, but he did not put him in his eyes, let alone explain. He retracted his cold gaze and stood up, Wait until you and Frostina have a successful marriage. How interesting. I have to marry his sister before I can see his wife. He really cherishes his wife. Looking at the arrogant and unruly back view, the corners of Simon's mouth rose and a curve appeared. In the private room downstairs, Raven did not come back. The only person who came back was Frostina. When Lance saw it, he knew that the two had not reconciled. He greeted Scarlet and picked up his coat to chase after Raven. He thought that Raven would drive away, but he saw him sitting on the ramp and looking up at the sky. Lance walked over and sat down beside him. Did you tell her everything? He asked. Raven nodded. My sister didn't forgive you? Lance asked. She did, Raven said with a hint of pain in her scarlet eyes. Frostina forgave him, but she didn't love him anymore. Lance still wanted to continue asking, but he was interrupted by Raven. Lance, if you really love Miss Croft, don't go to her after her heart becomes cool. After a long time, her that bit of love for you will be worn out. Lance was stunned for a moment and said stiffly, I don't love her anymore. Don't love her. Lance, ask your heart. Raven smiled. Lance felt that he didn't chase Frostina back and wanted to vent his anger on him. He was too lazy to pay attention to him. He got up and left, but Raven's voice came from behind him. You have investigated Bernice. Hurry up and hand the evidence to Miss Croft. Don't delay any more. He had lost his love in this life. He did not want his only good brother to end up like him. Also, after you chase Miss Croft back, remember to settle your parents. Don't let her be like me. After Raven finished speaking, he got up and left. The lonely back made Lance feel that he would fall at any time. But he was strong and walked forward step by step, without any intention of turning back. Perhaps even if he turned back, no one would be there waiting for him. What are you going to do in the future? Raven did not answer him. He only raised his hand and waved at him. It seemed that he was saying that life was long and everything was set in stone. If he stopped struggling, he could do whatever he wanted. Lance lowered his lonely eyes and looked at his reflection under his feet, lost in thought. Raven and Frostina were people who had loved each other, but he and Susan had never loved each other. Their lives would not follow the path of Raven and Frostina because there was no sad love story between them. He took out phone and opened the photo sent by the assistant. For a moment he wanted to take these photos and look for Susan. However, the lesson he had learned before made him regain his senses. Even if he took the evidence to look for Susan, would she believe it? Lance could not afford to gamble. He was afraid that she would not believe it. He was even more afraid that she would forgive Landon after she believed it. It was ridiculous. He actually felt inferior in front of a doctor who was nothing compared to him. This sense of inferiority was given to him by Susan. Chapter 1047 Frostina asked in a heart-wrenching manner. Frostina's mother, Vivian, and her father, Ashton, sat down on the sofa in the living room after finishing their meal. Vivian called for the family beautician to take care of her skin, while Ashton looked down at the latest financial report. There were many servants in the vast house, busy with their respective duties. It was a light drizzle this evening and it landed on the eaves, adding a trace of vitality to the quiet house. Accompanied by the sound of rain and the sound of knocking on the door and windows, the servants who were wiping the dining table hurriedly put down the cloth to pull the curtains. 
After the curtains were pulled open, Frostina, who was completely drenched, stood outside the glass door and stared at the noble woman inside with a pair of scarlet eyes. After she grew up, she has moved out. There was only Vivian and Ashton lived there. The two children would occasionally come back to eat, but they would tell them in advance. Now seeing that Frostina was so late and still in such a sorry state, Vivian and Ashton were extremely surprised and quickly asked the servants to open the door. Frostina, what's wrong with you? Vivian and Ashton quickly got up and held her hand with concern. However, they found that her whole body was trembling and the couple were frightened. Did something happen? Vivian was distressed and used her hand to wipe the rain on Frostina's face, but she turned her head away. Vivian paused and seemed to understand something. When she looked at Frostina's tearful eyes again, her heart surged with a touch of guilt. Frostina pushed away her parents' hands. She did not even enter the door and just stood under the eaves of the eaves looking at the two with red eyes. Why, why do you treat me like this and why do you treat Raven like this? If not for them, how could she live so painfully and separate from the person she loved most? They were her parents, the parents who had held her in their hands and cared for her since she was young, but they had personally pushed her into the abyss, making her feel worse than death. She really could not accept that Raven had pushed her away so ruthlessly because of her parents. Her parents were clearly so kind and reasonable. Do you know that Raven's grandmother committed suicide by hanging herself because of this matter? Frostina clenched her fists. For the first time, she ignored her image and roared hysterically at her parents. A life. In order to break up him and me, you indirectly forced a person to die. How could you hide it from me for so many years as if nothing had happened? Such a heart-wrenching scream stunned Vivian and Ashton. At the same time, they felt extremely shocked and guilty as they stared at Frostina. Mom, you also have a son. If your son is treated like this by other people's parents, won't you feel distressed and sad? Vivian opened her thin lips and wanted to say something, but was interrupted by Frostina's bitter laughter. Mom, Raven also has someone who loves him, but the person who loves him is not his parents, but his grandmother. You used his grandmother to threaten him. You have achieved your goal, but what about him? He hurt me and even implicated his grandmother. Frostina did not imagine what kind of life Raven lived in those years when she was living a life worse than death. He pushed her away with his own hands and even lost his grandmother. However, he did not say anything. Many years later, he became a dazzling star in the political world and asked for the approval of her parents. Only then did he turn back to look for her. But she forced herself to let him go. When he was in high spirits, he bought flowers and came to her. He said, Frostina, I'm back. Now we can be together. He is very happy, but she didn't want to say anything extra to him. She directly ordered the bodyguards to drive him out of the door. And he had come to her so many times, but he had never mentioned that it was her parents who forced him. He just kept begging her for forgiveness. She had always thought that there was a problem with Raven's character. She didn't expect that it was her own parents who caused his character problem. It was ridiculous. Frostina laughed so hard that tears came out of her eyes. Mom, you obviously know everything, but you pretend that you don't know anything. You even flew over to comfort me, saying that a playboy like Raven is not worthy of being loved. Is he not worthy of being loved or do you think he is not worthy? Such a powerful question made Vivian feel a little ashamed. She reached out to pull Frostina's hand, but she shook it off. Don't touch me. Your acting and your thoughts make me feel terrible. Vivian's heart stopped. She looked at her daughter who was looking at her with hatred. For a moment, she could not speak. Tears filled her eyes and she looked at her blankly. Frostina, your mother is doing this for your own good. Raven stays at the clubhouse every day and even brings your brother around. If not for this, your mother wouldn't have thought of a way to break you up. If you want to blame someone, you can only blame him. Dad. Frostina cried and roared, you are also born in the circle of rich and powerful families. Don't you know the twists and turns here? Ashton frowned and did not speak. Frostina stared into his eyes and said word by word. Raven's mother died when he was young, and her stepmother, in order to help her son seize the inheritance rights, used his grandmother to force him to hang around with women and force him to ruin his own image. Chapter 1048 All of you are ridiculous. Ashton and Vivian seemed that they just knew about Raven's past. They were very shocked and looked at Frostina, we didn't know that he. Yes, you don't know anything, but you are self-righteous. You didn't even ask me and took over my decision. Frostina said bitterly, do you know that you did this to make me lose the person who loves me the most? See her daughter's tears, Vivian was so sad, Frostina, I'm sorry. 
it's all mom's fault. Mom was wrong. She took Frostina's cold and trembling hands and rubbed her hands while explaining to her. Mom mistakenly thought that there was something wrong with Raven's character, so I tried to break you up when I learned that you two were in love. But after I met him a few times, I felt that he was not so bad. I realized at that time, or maybe I misunderstood him, so I let go. I thought. You thought that if you let go, he could chase me back. After we were together, you would no longer feel guilty about what you did in the past, right? Vivian shook her head, but Frostina approached her step by step. Mom, tell me you saw Raven create a world of his own and felt that he was worthy of me, so you let go. Or you know that his grandmother was forced to die indirectly by you. So you let go. If it was the former, Frostina would only think that Vivian's family concept was too heavy. If it was the latter, Frostina would think that her mother did not love her so much at all. At the very least, it wasn't like how she appeared to be wholeheartedly loving her child. Frostina, how can you speculate about your mother like this? Ashton once again stood up to defend his wife. Back then, she broke up you and Raven, but later on, she saw Raven's hard work and felt that he was not bad, so she relented. Frostina ignored Ashton and only stared at Vivian with red eyes. In their family, the person who was in charge was Vivian, not Ashton. Ashton was Mr. Old Jackman's youngest son. He was raised by four older brothers. It could be said that his life was smoother than Lance's. He also married the person he liked. In addition, his temperament was not competitive. It created a gentle and refined personality. To put it bluntly, he had no mind and listened to his wife. Vivian asked him to go east. He would not go west. Whatever Vivian said was the order. Her father ranked his wife in the first. Naturally, he would speak up for his wife. Frostina used to think that the atmosphere of such a family was quite good, but women were too strong in the family. The children were destined to be unfortunate. Vivian knew that she was waiting for an answer. She grabbed Frostina's hand and stared at her eyes that were red and swollen from crying. She sighed deeply. Frostina, mom didn't know that Raven's grandmother committed suicide because of me. If I knew, I would have told you the truth back then. Why did you tell me the truth only after a person died? I? Faced with her daughter's question, Vivian felt ashamed and lowered her head. Your mother wants face and doesn't want to ruin the image of a mom in your heart, so I didn't say it. I was thinking that when Raven catches up with you again, that period of time will pass like this. She also didn't expect that Raven would keep it a secret for her, and she didn't expect that Frostina would never forgive him. Frostina, since you already know that I forced him to break up, then forgive him. In the future, be good with him. Mom will no longer oppose you, okay? Vivian sneered and shook off her hand. Frostina sneered and shaked her hands off, there is a life between us. Do you think we can still be together? Although her parents did not kill Raven's grandmother with their own hands, they were also indirect killers. Vivian could feel at ease and step on other people's bodies to let them be together again, but she could not. Frostina, mom is wrong. Let mom bear the responsibility. Don't give up on Raven because of this. Vivian looked at her hand that was shaken off and said with great disappointment. What a joke, what a joke. Frostina was shaking with laughter. The one who advised me to give up on him was you. The one who advised me not to give up on him was also you. Don't you think that you are ridiculous? Chapter 1049 Brother, Don't Make the Same Mistake Again Looking at his crazy daughter, Vivian was extremely scared. She quickly hugged her and patted her back to comfort her. Frostina, I was wrong. Don't scare me like this, okay? Frostina, who was leaning on her shoulder, laughed and burst into tears. The first half of my life has been destroyed by you. In the future, don't interfere in my affairs. She weakly pushed Vivian away and took a step back. Shaking her body, she turned around and walked down the long corridor step by step. A black figure stood at the round arch door. His eyes were dark red and he looked at her with heartache. When she met that pitiful gaze, Frostina felt a lump in her throat. She felt wronged, but she forced herself to stop crying. Brother, you must not repeat my mistakes again. Lance's handsome face was filled with complex emotions. He took a step forward and walked in front of Frostina in the rain. Frostina, you and Raven still have a chance. He has always loved you. Frostina smiled, bright and beautiful like a flower, but there was endless bitterness and relief in it. Brother, I don't love him anymore. Someone once said that if you loved someone too much, you wouldn't have the strength to love someone after being severely hurt. There were also people who said that after a long time, no matter how much you loved someone, you would forget about it with the passage of time. 
Frostina forced herself not to love Raven. She forced herself to do so. Really, she didn't love anymore. She smiled like a flower. After looking at Lance with a smile, she walked away without looking back. When she brushed past him, Lance could see the determination in her eyes. For Raven, she fell out with her mother, so she left without hesitation. But he knew that he could not give up his family. Frostina would come back sooner or later. But love could be given away. Frostina helped Raven get justice, but she would not turn back for him. What she said was not love. It should be the kind of baptism after experiencing the long river of time that made her put down the other person's dislike from the bottom of her heart. It was only at this moment that Lance realized what Raven meant when he said that time would make a person's love disappear. He slowly raised his head and looked at Vivian who was walking towards him with an umbrella. For a moment he felt that this gentle face was quite strange. So you used Raven's grandmother to threaten him? Look, this is the person that Vivian and the others think has a problem with their conduct. In order to prevent him and his mother from turning against him, they didn't even tell him this. Raven is really a big fool. Helping his parents like this in the end, what was the result of losing his grandmother? It was Frustina's no longer love. Lance I. You lied to me. You said you wanted to test Raven and see if he could hold his love for Frostina. In the end, forcing his grandmother to death was your so-called test. I didn't force his grandmother to death. I just... Vivian went to pull Lance's clothes, but Lance shook him off. He was extremely disappointed. After looking at her, he turned and left. One night, the two caring and filial children left her. Holding the umbrella, Vivian looked at the back of the two, her tears flowing uncontrollably. Ashton walked over, grabbed her shoulders, pulled her into his arms, and comforted her gently. When they have children, they will understand you. Vivian just saw that Raven lingered around flowers at such a young age and was afraid to let her precious daughter follow such a man. She would rather her daughter suffer a long pain than a short pain and cut off this love with her own hands than to be severely hurt by Raven one day in the future. If Raven was not such a person, Vivian would not be so cruel. In fact, it was not that they were not open-minded, but they were afraid that their daughter would go astray and live a bad life in the future. However, they did not expect that what they thought was good was a kind of deception and harm to their daughter. When this kind of injury was formed, whether it was good or not was not important at all. Although they later realized that it was wrong to do this, things had already happened and it was difficult to recover. However, Ashton understood Vivian. Even though she had forced Raven before, he did not approve of it, but he still indulged her. Now that his wife had been misunderstood and complained by two children, Ashton felt both powerless and distressed for his wife. Vivian buried her head into her husband's shoulder. The regret and guilt in her eyes flowed out along her tears. She sat in the living room and did not sleep for the entire night. The next day, she personally came to Raven's villa. After pressing the doorbell for a long time, she opened the door just now. When she saw the drunk man in front of her, Vivian's expression darkened. Lawyer Raven, you. Raven leaned against the door with hazy eyes. When he saw who she was with his blurry vision, his eyes changed slightly. Ms. Lovell, what are you looking for me for? At this point, his tone was still calm, without a trace of hatred, even though she had said many cruel words to him and done many cruel things. The most serious one was when he saw Frostina slit her wrist and commit suicide. He collapsed and knelt on the ground to beg Vivian, begging her not to do this again. Frostina would die and be forced to death by his own hands. However, Vivian did not care. She slapped him and said that she would die if she was with him. Chapter 1050 Raven's Pattern Vivian remembered how she had beaten and scolded Raven back then, and her heart skipped a beat. As if she was afraid of his revenge, she stood outside the door and did not dare to enter. I came here to apologize to you. Vivian handed the high-grade and valuable item to Raven. I didn't know that your grandmother died because of me. I'm really sorry. Raven didn't pick up her things. He just looked at her indifferently. Seeing that he didn't pick it up, Vivian felt a little awkward and placed the things at the entrance. When she looked up at Raven, there was a trace of nervousness and guilt in her eyes. Frostina fell out with me last night. From the looks of it, she should still care about you. Why don't you? Ms. Lovell. Raven interrupted her. She fell out with you to seek justice for my grandmother, not because she still loves me. Between me and her. Raven took a deep breath. Her red and swollen eyes were full of grief. That's impossible. She loved a person very passionately, and if she didn't love a person, she would be able to escape unscathed. 
No, she had never escaped unscathed. She was forced to leave. It was him who forced her to leave in such a cruel way that she could not return. Vivian did not expect that the two of them would end up like this. She had clearly agreed, so why couldn't they be together again? Raven did not give her an answer. He only bent down and picked up the thing she had placed at the entrance of the profound pass, placing it back in her hand. You don't have to apologize to me. You are her mother. I can understand that you are afraid that she will be unhappy and do something out of line. As for my grandmother, she only committed suicide because she felt sorry for me. If she wants to blame one, then blame me for being in capacity. Vivian stared at Raven in a daze as if she could not believe that a young junior would actually say something like this. She suddenly realized that back then she was still narrow-minded. Because of this narrow-mindedness, she harmed her own daughter and other people's grandson. I'm sorry. Vivian faced Raven and bent down to apologize. Looking at the stooped back of the noble woman, Raven remembered how she used to beat and scold him, and his eyes turned red. He raised his chin, forced back his tears, turned around, and closed the door. Vivian stood up and looked at the door for a long time. Just as he was about to leave, a hoarse voice came from inside. She is very kind. It won't be long before she understands you. I hope you won't resent her. I'll have to trouble you to care more about her in the future. In my place, care more about her, love her more. When Vivian heard this, her eyes were filled with tears. She could not say anything and only quickly left this place that made her feel guilty and suffocating. Inside the door, Raven leaned against the wall and slowly sat down. Inside phone, the sweet photos of Frostina and him in the past were automatically playing. He had seen countless times and could draw out the details of each photo in his mind. Unfortunately, the mistress in the middle did not want him. Raven stared at Frostina's face and smiled. He laughed and cried again. Their story ended, but he could no longer walk out. After visiting Raven, Lance suddenly drove to Susan's villa. He stared at the living room that was lit up. After a long time, he picked up phone and was about to push the door open to get out of the car when he saw the door open. Landon walked out. Susan followed closely behind. It was unknown what she said, but Landon suddenly lowered his head and kissed her forehead. Landon's back blocked Susan. Lance could not see her expression clearly, but she covered her forehead. Lance's gaze moved from the two people to phone. The photo inside made him feel very ironic. Before Landon left, he smiled and reminded Susan, don't forget our promise tomorrow night. Susan nodded and waved goodbye to Landon. She felt that someone was staring at her. She stopped, turned around, and looked around, but she did not see anything. The next day was Susan's birthday. It was not the real date of birth, but the day of entering the orphanage. The birthdays that the dean had set for these orphans were all the same day they entered the orphanage, which meant rebirth. Susan rarely celebrated her birthday. After Landon knew about it, she booked the open-air garden on the top floor of Kimberly International Building. Kimberly International, Hotel, Restaurant and SBA is one, and it is quite expensive. Susan asked Landon not to spend so much money for her. Landon said that no matter how much money he spent for her, it did not matter. He only hoped that she could be happy on her birthday. Susan was thinking about this was the day she was abandoned by her parents. How could she be happy on this day? But she did not reject Landon. It was close to 7 o'clock in the evening when Susan came out of the nightclub, carrying her bag and driving to the top floor of Kimberly International. Before the elevator door opened, phone shook for a moment, and then a strange number came in with countless photos. Chapter 1051 Photos Recording, Chilling Heart In the photo was a European woman holding a child. The child was not very old and looked about one year old. Susan looked at these photos and thought that it was wrong. After all, she did not know who it was. It was not until she slid down and the figure of Landon appeared in the photo that she was completely stunned. What did this mean? She frowned and wanted to ask him, but she saw a text jump out of dialog box. This is Landon's ex-girlfriend, Bernice, who gave birth to a child for him. Landon, had an ex-girlfriend and a child? While Susan was shocked, the other side sent another recording. After staring at the recording file for a few seconds, she raised her trembling fingers and gently opened it. Landon's voice came from inside. If she is not clean, she can't stand your interrogation. Why do you still suspect her? Look at her appearance and figure. Even her walking is sexy and charming. How can such a beautiful and seductive woman be completely clean? I won't believe it even if said this. There was also the voice of Landon's father, Zion. She is indeed not bad-looking. 
Generally, men would have some thoughts, let alone a man who goes to the gold-consuming lair for entertainment. Any powerful man can make her submit. Her words are more or less a bit fake. The background sound of their conversation was a sax one song. The day she went to the restaurant to see Landon's parents, it was playing this style of light music. Presumably, it was the true evaluation of her family after she went to the toilet. In fact, she would not care too much about what Landon's parents said, but the two sentences that Landon said, I have never got her, how can I be satisfied, mom, when you questioned Susan just now? I did not say anything to stop you because I respect you as my mother and give you a chance to show your strength. However, it made Susan's heart cold. When she stared at the gradually darkening screen in a daze, the elevator door opened. The open-air garden on the top floor was open in a split second. In front of her eyes, there was a soft red carpet, lush green grass, long rectangular wooden tables and chairs, precious delicacies, the environment wrapped in roses, and the vast starry sky that could be seen when she looked up. Seeing this scene, Susan felt a little ironic, especially Landon. He was wearing a suit and tie. He was extremely gentlemanly. When he walked towards her, she felt even colder. The senior looked gentle and refined, and even his eyes was pure and harmless. Why would there be another side in a place she could not see? The recording in Phone's mind and the photos were played one by one, causing Susan to fall into a stiff state. Landon walked over and held her hand. Only then did he realize that her fingers were cold. Susan, what happened to you? Did you catch a cold? He asked. He was very concerned. He raised his hand to touch her forehead. After touching her forehead, he frowned slightly. You don't have a fever. Why is your hand cold? He asked. Susan slowly raised her eyes and looked at the men in front of her. The face of her ex-husband, Cosmo, suddenly overlapped with his face. For a moment, she could not tell if this was Landon or Cosmo. Or rather, their appearances and appearances were different. It was just that their natures were the same. However, if Cosmo was lying to money, then what about Landon? Seeing that she did not speak, Landon asked worriedly, Susan, what happened to you? Did something happen? Susan calmed down and raised the corners of her lips. She smiled at him. It's nothing. It's just that I'm shocked. You actually prepared such a unique candlelight dinner. Compared to the scene of Cosmo cheating with her own eyes, the surface of the river, which could only be considered calm in her eyes, was slightly stirred up. It was not that she did not care, but that she thought that she had finally met someone who loved her wholeheartedly. She did not expect that everything was just an illusion. The relaxed expression on her face made Landon also heave a sigh of relief. Since you think it is unique, then give me a chance and go eat together? Susan nodded as if nothing had happened and followed him to the center of the garden. Landon was very gentlemanly. He opened the dining table and chairs, then led Susan to sit down. All of his actions were extremely self-restraint. Just by looking at the surface, it really couldn't see through him. Susan was expressionless as she watched Landon pour some into her cup after he woke up. Susan, today is your birthday, and it's also our 100th day anniversary. Let's raise our cups to celebrate. Susan picked up the wine glass and focused on the red wine in the glass. It's such a good day. It's time to commemorate it. She touched the wine glass that Landon handed over, but she did not drink it. She only shook the wine in the glass. Under the dim candlelight, the shaking wine in the glass was scattered with a bright and dazzling dark red. Landon raised his head and drank it all in one gulp. Seeing that Susan did not drink it, his good-looking thick eyebrows slightly creased. Susan, why aren't you drinking? Today, Susan looked very strange, as if something big had happened, but she had been holding it in and did not flare up. Landon was a little flustered, but he did not rush to ask Susan. He just sat in his original position and quietly waited for her reply. Chapter 1052 The first time she protected Lance Susan put down the cup in her hand and looked up at Landon, who was sitting opposite him. Before drinking, there are three things I want to ask, Senior? Ha! Huh. Landon also put down the cup and looked at Susan. What are they? Susan took out her phone, clicked open the recording, and showed it to Landon. When he heard the first word, Landon's gentle face suddenly darkened. Susan, did you record this? Did she turn on phone's recording function after she went to the bathroom? If that was the case, then Susan's mind was not as simple as it seemed. Susan did not expect that when Landon heard it, his first reaction was to suspect that she had recorded it and not realize the mistake. She smiled. Her bright and flamboyant eyes seemed to be dyed in fog, making her look so hazy and gloomy. I don't know which kind person helped me record it. I am very grateful to him. Let me know how you and your parents think of me. 
Hearing this, Landon was a little anxious. He stretched out his slender hand to pull her, but Susan avoided him. Landon, let me ask you, what do you mean by you don't get me so you are unwilling? Seeing the disappointment in Susan's eyes, Landon knew that she would break up with him after he answered three questions. He no longer argued that the recording was fake. He just picked up the scissors used to cut the steak on the table and cut the fuse in the aromatherapy. With this cut, the light on the table became brighter and the already fragrant aromatherapy was even more fragrant. He stared at the candlelight that was blown by the wind. After looking at it for a while, he retracted his gaze and looked at Susan who was facing him. I like you and wanted to get you. It was also out of instinct. I believe that Lance would have the same thoughts. She was asking him, but he mentioned Lance. He wanted to secretly change the concept so that she could shift her suspicions to Lance. If it was before, Susan could not see through the tricks in Landon's words, but at this moment, she saw it clearly. I told you last time that I completely broke up with Lance, but you still want to talk about him? If it really broke, how did you receive this recording? Landon's question stunned Susan. You suspect that this was recorded by Lance? Landon glanced at Susan, picked up the glass, and took a sip. He should have known in advance that I was going to take you to see your parents. He deliberately followed us and then took the opportunity to record. When the time comes, he will send it to you with an unknown number. When Landon said this, it really seemed like Lance had done it on purpose. However, Susan had followed Lance for three years and knew that he was not such a person. Don't try to guess what kind of person Lance is. He is not you. He won't do these things behind his back. This was the first time that Susan had righteously defended Lance in front of Landon. The wine glass in his hand was clenched tightly by Landon. The blue veins on the back of his hand were enough to show how angry he was at the moment. In the end, you would mind what I said so much. It's just that you can't let go of Lance. He was used to shifting contradictions. The former Susan really couldn't see it. The current Susan only felt ridiculous. Whatever you say, I only believe what I hear and see. There was no trace of emotion in her tone. It seemed that she was ready to break up, so she had no scr- Chapter 1053 If you believe me, I will know. Susan did not wait for Landon to reply. She continued to ask. The second thing, you allowed your mother to show me her power. Do you think that I, an orphan without power and influence, am easy to bully? Landon did not think this way. However, in his heart, his mother was his mother. Even the girl he liked could not compare to his mother. In the recording, you also heard it. I criticized her. Yes. Susan curved her lips and smiled again. Every time, you talk about it later. Just like last time when your friend has a bad mouth to me, you also explained that you were absent-minded and didn't hear it. Landon frowned and wanted to explain, but was interrupted by Susan again. The first time I met your parents, you indulged your mother and gave me a show of strength. It shows that in your heart, your understanding of me is the same as your mother. Just like Kylie, she thought that she was not clean, had no background, no culture, married, and was not worthy of her. Before I was with you, I told you these questions. You said that you didn't mind. Why do you have to look different? Her disappointment toward him was written all over her face. When Landon saw it, he felt a little distressed and frowned. Susan, I don't mind. It's just because she's my mother, so I. As if he had realized his mistake, Landon lowered his head. This matter is my fault. I'm sorry. In the end, he apologized, but Susan would no longer forgive him like before. Actually, I don't care what you think. I asked you this question because I wanted to tell you. Speaking of this, Susan took a deep breath, and his eyes were unnaturally red. I have never been loved by anyone since I was a child. When you appeared in front of me and told me that you had a crush on me in high school, I was very happy and moved. Because in this world, there were also people who liked me. I quite cherished this love that came late, so. Even later, I knew that you had some tricks up your sleeve and I tolerated it. I have always believed in you. Even Senior would inevitably have some flaws. But it doesn't matter. As long as Senior likes me, it's good. I have been comforting myself, but I find that you don't like me that much. Susan opened the black screen again, took out the photos of Bernice and the child, and put them in front of Landon. When you confessed to me, you said that you had a crush on me since high school and never liked anyone else. You have been working hard to study medicine and have no time to have a girlfriend. You said that your body and mind are clean, your family background is clean, and you have created a very good image. But can you tell me what is going on with this mother called Bernice? When he saw the picture of Bernice and himself hugging each other sweetly, an unknown emotion flashed through Landon's eyes. 
Just as he was about to explain, he saw the automatic broadcast page, broadcasting Bernice holding a child. His pupils suddenly widened and his face was full of shock. What's going on with this child? Seeing him like this, Susan could not see through it for a moment. Was he pretending or did he really not know? This is your child. Impossible. Landon suddenly got up in excitement. He grabbed phone from Susan and repeatedly flipped through the photos. It was only when he saw the text that indicated that it was his child that the expression in Landon's eyes became dazed. Impossible, I asked her to miscarriage this child. How could she hide it from me and give birth to the child? How could this be? The way he muttered to himself in Susan's eyes was an extremely mocking scene. If you don't believe me, call your mother and ask. It just so happened that it also confirmed whether the message sent by this strange number was true. Landon seemed to be a little panicked. He quickly took out his phone and called Kylie. Susan sat in her original position, motionless. She quietly watched Landon go from shock to disbelief to anger. Finally, he became powerless and collapsed on the chair. Landon hung up the phone, raised his red eyes, and looked at the silent Susan opposite him. Suddenly, he felt that she was so far away from him, so far that he could not touch her. He was a little hard to accept. He got up and walked to Susan. After squatting down, he grabbed her hands on her legs and put them tightly on his face. Susan, I'm sorry. I really was with Bernice abroad for a period of time, but after finding that we were not suitable, we split our hands equally. But I didn't expect that after breaking up, she was pregnant and gave birth to the child without me knowing. Believe me, I really didn't know this until now. Chapter 1054 Between Us, Let's Stop Here Susan pulled her hand out and looked at Landon calmly. What I care about is not that you have girlfriends before, but that you have not told me the truth. Just like her ex-husband, he was also like this. He was very good at pretending. However, this time, he was more powerful than Cosmo. After all, if not for the photos and recordings sent by the unknown number, she would still believe that Landon was clean. Susan also saw herself clearly. Not only was she a scum attractor, but she was also a confused person. In terms of feelings, it was easy to be deceived by a man on the surface. Fortunately, when she completely saw what kind of person the other person was, she would leave decisively. Senior, your ex-girlfriend gave birth to a child for you. No matter what, you have to be responsible for her. In addition, your mother doesn't like me and you just feel unreconciled that you didn't get me when you were young. You don't really like me. It's better for us to stop here and be good to each other. Susan still gave Landon a great deal of dignity. She didn't speak too harshly, nor was she as hysterical as she was in court with Cosmo. She just said this calmly, pushed him away, got up, picked up phone who was on the table and turned to leave. Just as she walked to the elevator and reached out to press the elevator button, Landon suddenly rushed over and hugged her from behind. Susan, don't break up with me. I will give Bernice a large sum of money for support. I will completely cut off my relationship with her and will not let my parents interfere with our affairs. After we get married, we will settle in the country and will never let you go abroad with me. I will solve all the problems you are worried about. As long as you don't leave me. To be honest, Landon was quite powerful. If it was a female in love, she would probably be moved by the solution he proposed. However, after seeing everything clearly, Susan felt that Landon was quite cruel. A woman who had silently given birth to a child for him said that they would cut off their relationship and even the child would only give a pension and never come back again. What was the difference between a father like this and her parents who had abandoned her? In the past, she only thought that Landon was a little sick. Only now did she realize that his three views were completely different from hers. If Susan forgave him again and believed him, it could only be said that his bitter days were not enough. She raised her hand to break Landon's hand that was holding her waist, but the other party held her tightly and refused to let go. Susan, it's true that I have a crush on you. It's just that I liked you when I was young. When I grew up, I met some women. Sometimes I would forget about you and date other women. But that doesn't mean that my love for you is fake. Susan understood. It was true that he liked her. It was just that he didn't like her much. At least, when he didn't meet her at the blind date, Landon didn't remember her coming. It was just that it was a coincidence that he met her. It just so happened that he saw that she was not bad, so his crush returned. Thinking of this possibility, Susan smiled. Senior, if the me you saw during the blind date was an ugly and fat woman, you probably wouldn't even look at me. Susan had a good appearance and a hot body. She was famous. What Landon fancied was just her appearance. How was his heart? He seemed to have never been involved in it since they had been together for a hundred days. 
It was because he didn't care that he didn't get involved. At this moment, the hazy face that was shrouded in fog suddenly dispersed. Under the vast starry sky, a beautiful and alluring face that looked like a rose gradually appeared. After the once resolute and decisive Susan returned, he turned his head and looked at Landon. After revealing a resolute and decisive smile, he pulled his hand away. Senior Shin, goodbye. She would never see him again. She pressed the elevator button and was about to leave when Landon's cold fingers suddenly touched the back of her neck. Susan, is there no room for discussion? When his cold fingers wandered around her skin, it was as if a snake had crawled over her. Goosebumps instantly arose all over Susan's body. Chapter 1055 Unfortunately, Susan knew it too late. She turned back again and looked at Landon, who was buried under the candlelight. The gradually blurred vision in her eyes made her unable to see his expression clearly. You! She did not drink or eat. Why could she not see Landon clearly? Not only did her vision become more and more blurred, but her body also became hotter and hotter. In the beginning, she thought it was summer and it was hot outside. Now her lower body was restless, which made her feel that it was not as simple as the weather. Until now, she was still unwilling to guess Landon, but she had to grit her teeth and question him. Landon, what exactly did you do to me? When Landon saw how uncomfortable she looked, he quickly stepped forward and held her tightly in his arms. Susan, don't be afraid. It's just a bit of aphrodisiac fragrance. Aphrodisiac fragrance. Susan looked up at Landon in disbelief. So he had just cut the lavender lead line to release the aphrodisiac fragrance? Why did you do this? If Landon's past and actions had shocked her, then the current Landon made her feel afraid. Seeing the fear in her eyes, Landon raised his long fingers and stroked the back of her head, stroking her gently again and again. I thought that since we've known each other for a hundred days, some things should happen naturally, so I prepared some unique aromatherapy. In other words, his purpose tonight was not to celebrate her birthday, nor to commemorate meeting her for a hundred days, but to sleep with her. Actually, I was also hesitating whether to use it. However, seeing that you were preparing to break up, I hardened my heart. After he finished speaking, he pressed Susan against the wall and lowered his head to kiss her forehead. I'm sorry, Susan. I don't want to do this, but I really, really want you. Even when he did bad things, he was a gentleman, saying sorry, as if he was forced into a helpless situation and had no other choice. Looking at Landon like this, the last bit of filter that Susan had for her senior was completely shattered, clean to the point that there was not even a trace of pity left. Landon, let me go now. I won't sue you. If you want to force me, then prepare to be sued. The corners of Landon's lips curled up, revealing a faint and elegant smile. I know that your old lover, Lance, has a good brother who is very good at court, but he can't help you with matters of mutual consent. Landon's hand moved along his hair all the way to Susan's face. When it touched his skin, it was like snake scales. Susan resisted the restlessness in her body and pushed away Landon's hand. She turned around and frantically pressed the elevator button. However, Landon grabbed her waist and then she fell into his arms again. Then the world spun and Landon carried her on his shoulder. Kimberly International was like a hotel. This kind of top-notch open-air garden is set up alone by the side. Susan did not think that the gentle and refined man would be like this before, so she did not think too much about it. Now that she saw him carrying her into the room, Susan was completely flustered. Landon, I am not willing. No matter what, I can charge you with the crime of rape. You better let me go now. Hearing this, a meaningful smile appeared on Landon's handsome face. Susan, you are my girlfriend. It is normal for you to come to my appointment tonight and hooked up with me naturally. Who will believe you if you say you are unwilling afterwards? After saying that, Landon took the card and swiped the door. Then he carried Susan, who was struggling desperately, to the side of the bed and threw her onto the bed covered with rose petals. Susan, you have done it, and I have done it too. We are not too clean, so don't be too pretentious. Susan looked at Landon, who was walking towards her while removing the tie on his shirt. It was only at this moment that she understood what he meant when he said he could not get it, and he was unwilling. Unfortunately, it was too late for her to understand it. Chapter 1056 People Had Two Sides When Landon's hand touched her face, Susan came back to her senses. Landon, as long as you let me go, I will agree to you any condition. When she said this, the hand that grabbed the phone pressed her fingerprint frantically. She wanted to open the emergency call or open the keyboard and input the number one button. That was Scarlett's number. She only needed to press one, but... 
Landa noticed and grabbed her wrist, taking away phone. You want to call Lance? A cold smile appeared on Landon's face. Susan, he has already given up on you. He won't come to save you. Just give up. Landon picked up Susan's phone, aimed at the ice bucket next to him, and slowly threw it in. There was wine, ice, and water in the ice bucket. After phone soaked in it, the screen quickly darkened. Looking at the black screen of the phone, Susan's last hope was shattered, and her eyes gradually darkened. I never thought of looking for Lance. All of this is just your sense of inferiority. It was he who felt that he was inferior to Lance, so he mentioned Lance again and again. Whatever you say. Anyway, his woman is now lying under me. After saying that, Landon grabbed Susan, who was struggling to get up and escape. Susan, be good, be obedient, don't move around. He pressed the soft body of Susan under his body and reached out to help her undress. Susan felt hot all over her body and her mind was not clear. If not for her rational support, she would not have been able to see who the person in front of her was. She knew that she could not push Landon away with brute force and she did not have the brute force. She could only look around the room with her blurry eyes. It was a glass room in the center of the garden. There was not even a window. It was completely sealed, but it could not be seen from the outside. If she wanted to escape, she had to go through the main entrance, but with Landon here, it was impossible to leave. After she fixed her eyes on the ice bucket, her gaze fell on Landon again. If you get me, will you be satisfied? Landon, who was slowly helping her undress, raised his clear and gentle eyes and smiled at Susan. I don't know either. I only know that since I was young, I will definitely find a way to get what I want. Otherwise, I won't be able to sleep at night. Including unscrupulous means? Landon smiled and nodded. Including unscrupulous means. Susan also smiled brightly and wantonly. This smile made Landon unable to understand. What are you laughing at? Susan did not answer him. She only lowered her eyes and looked at the black tie at the end of the bed. Senior in high school, if I didn't jump off the wall and bump into you, wouldn't there be no intersection between us? Her words reminded Landon of the first time he saw Susan in high school. At that time, he was indeed tempted. While Landon was in a daze, Susan used her toes to hook onto the tie, then straightened her upper body and wrapped it around Landon's neck. Senior, if you want me, just tell me directly. You don't have to fire any aphrodisiac. Landon was stunned and looked at Susan who had taken the initiative to hug him in disbelief. You! Susan, who practiced yuga and fura all year round, stroked her back and slid down while quietly whispering in his ear. Your mother is right. I have been in the entertainment industry all year round. Who knows what kind of person I am and how many people I have followed. When Landon heard this, the expression in his eyes darkened. He seemed to be a little disgusted, but because he wanted to get it, he did not reveal any pride. I didn't expect you to have two sides. Susan turned her head and raised her long, curly eyelashes. She stared into Landon's eyes for two seconds and smiled. Everyone has two sides. The moment her voice fell, Susan raised the tie in her pocket and grabbed Landon by the neck. Her movements did not have the slightest bit of sloppiness, the strength of her entire body, regardless of everything, he firmly restrained him. Landon also inhaled the aphrodisiac fragrance. Other than the restlessness of his body, he also did not have much strength. Now that he was being strangled by Susan, he suddenly could not breathe. Susan knew that her strength could not last more than a few seconds and she would be counterattacked by Landon. Without thinking, she directly pushed Landon down and sat on him again. She used the weight of her body to press him down, and at the same time, she used her foot to step on her tie to free up a hand to touch the bottle of wine in the ice bucket next to her. Chapter 1057 A Life to a Life You Just as Landon squeezed out a word, Susan raised the wine bottle she had touched and smashed it hard on his forehead. The moment the glass shattered, the wine spilled all over Landon's face and cut the back of the hand that Susan was holding the bottle. Blood flowed down her skin and dripped onto Landon's forehead, mixing with his blood as it tumbled down. The bright and dazzling blood dyed the white sheets and Landon's eyes red. He thought that Susan was a very gentle woman, but he did not expect her to have such a fierce side. Susan, you are quite good at pretending. I said that people have two sides. It just so happens that you only see one side of me. After Susan finished speaking, she picked up the broken pieces of the wine bottle on the bedsheet and pressed it against Landon's neck. Landon was frightened by her action. He wanted to push her away, but his mind was dizzy and even his vision blurred. He had been smashed by the wine bottle and his brain was already shaken. 
He could not move, so he could only grit his teeth and glare angrily at Susan who was sitting on him. Susan, do you want to kill me? Susan shook her head expressionlessly. I just want to tell you that we are finished. If you still use dirty tricks on me, then the weapon in my hand will pierce your throat. Landon did not believe that she would dare to take on a human life lawsuit, but Susan leaned down slightly, her dark red eyes staring at him. I am an orphan. I have no father or mother. At most only this life. There is nothing to be afraid of. She knew that Landon was no longer a threat. After saying this, Susan quickly climbed out of bed. Before she left, she took back phone that was in the ice bucket. She held the phone and forced her spinning body to open the glass door. She staggered toward the elevator door and Landon also followed her with his hands covering his head. Susan, you have been with me for a hundred days. Have you never had any feelings for me? Susan looked back at him, but her hands did not stop moving. She pressed the elevator frantically. Landon walked a few steps with his hands on the wall, shaking his head. He steadied himself and wanted to chase after Susan, but the elevator door opened at this time. Susan slipped in and pressed the door button with all her might. When Landon reached the elevator door, the door closed, isolating him from the outside. Susan felt that after the elevator went down, her soft body suddenly went limp on the wall. She hugged her arms tightly and clung to the cold wall. Only then did she find a sense of security. Fortunately, Landon wanted to have a relationship naturally. The aphrodisiac used was not heavy, otherwise, she would have already become Landon's meal. Realizing this, Susan resisted the feeling of being eroded by insects in her body. She picked up phone and pressed the button desperately. Phone, who had been soaked, did not move. She had been in a black screen state. She shook hard, and the water in the water flowed out. She was afraid that Landon would chase after her. She ignored phone and stared at the elevator screen. When she reached the first floor, the door opened and she immediately rushed out. She staggered to the front desk of the hotel. She wanted to find the front desk to help her call the police or call an ambulance, but the front desk turned out to be a foreigner. Yes, Kimberly International Hotel is opened by a foreigner. The people who come and go here are also high-end business people. Everyone talks in English. Susan did not say anything more to the front desk. She forced herself to support herself, gritted her teeth, stumbled out of the hotel, and quickly walked. As soon as she stepped out of the hotel, she saw a Lamborghini parked in front of Kimberly International's door, followed by a tall and straight figure pushing the door open. In her blurry vision, she slowly saw Lance's handsome face. When she saw it, Susan's eyes gradually turned red. She held the round pillar at the entrance of the hotel and wanted to call his name, but she saw Isla suddenly rush over and throw herself into his arms. From a distance, Susan could not see what Lance looked like. She only turned around and forced herself to walk to the side path. She had to hurry to the hospital. She had to avoid male pedestrians and she had to guard against Landon. She could not hold on much longer, so she gritted her teeth and walked step by step. After swaying out of the trail, she came to the side of the horse and stared at the cars coming and going, looking for taxis. With her current state, she could not drive and could only take a taxi, but after searching for a long time, there was no taxi. At this time, a middle-aged man waiting for the bus saw that her face was flushed and her body was trembling. He quickly got up and walked in front of her. Miss, do you need help? When Susan heard the man's voice, he subconsciously took a step back. No need. The middle-aged man went to grab her hand. You look so sad. Why don't I send you to the hospital? Susan struggled to refuse. This old man, who had never taken any aphrodisiac, had great strength. He pulled Susan into the dense forest greenbelt next to him. Chapter 1058 He went crazy to find Susan. On Lance's side, after being hugged by Isla, his expression suddenly turned cold. He forcefully pushed Isla away. I told you very clearly, don't look for me again. It was not easy for Isla to meet him. How could she let go of such a good opportunity? She grabbed his hand and acted like a spoiled child. Lance, don't be so heartless. I am your first love and your savior. You don't have to abandon me for an old woman. Lance shook her hand off. Isla, I am very grateful that you saved me, but I have already repaid this favor with the project. We don't owe each other anything. As for first love, don't think that I don't know that you seduced my second brother back then. Lance paused for a moment. When Isla heard this, her heart skipped a beat. As if she did not expect Lance to know about this past that had been covered in dust for many years, her face suddenly became ugly. Lance no longer cared about her expression. 
He raised his pace and rushed to the top floor of Kimberly International's hotel. When the elevator door opened, he did not see Susan. He only saw Landon lying unconscious on the ground. He frowned and quickly took out phone to call Raven. How is it? Did Landon do something to Miss Croft? Without waiting for Lance to speak, Raven immediately asked. Yes, those recordings and photos were sent by Raven. After he sent it, he felt that according to Susan's personality, he would definitely lay his cards on the table with Landon and then break up. According to what Landon said, I can't get it, I can't accept it, he speculated that he would definitely do something to Susan after Susan laid his cards on the table. After Raven finished speculating about Landon's mentality, he quickly told Lance what he had done and asked him to quickly check on Susan's position to save her. Lance, who had already retreated back to the elevator, blamed Raven with a cold face, how many times have I told you? She has experienced an affair with her ex-husband. If she suddenly sees these photos, she will definitely be unable to accept it. You refuse to listen and insist on sending it. When Raven heard this, he thought that something had happened to Susan. He was nervous and blaming himself. Is Miss Croft all right? The moment the elevator door closed, Lance looked at Landon whose forehead was full of blood. As if he had guessed something, he quickly hung up the phone. Susan did not care about the injured Landon, indicating that there was a conflict between the two. And those photos and recordings were not enough to cause such a huge conflict between the two of them. It should be that Landon used despicable means to break Landon's head and escape. If that's the case, then Susan, who is alone now, is very dangerous. Lance thought of some possibilities, and his heart suddenly tightened. His heart was so upset and restless that he quickly rushed out of the elevator. He called the hotel manager to check the surveillance videos quickly while looking around the hotel for Susan. If she was really drugged, she could not drive at all and could only take a taxi to the hospital. When Lance realized this, he quickly rushed to the horse road on the side of the hotel and looked around, but he did not see Susan. He immediately turned around and was about to go to the other side of the road when he suddenly heard a muffled groan coming from the forest greenbelt behind the bus stop. Lance stopped walking. He slowly turned around and stared at the dense greenbelt. After a few seconds, he rushed over like a madman. Chapter 1059 Sister Susan, Don't Be Afraid The light was very dark and he could only vaguely see a cluster of thorns under the street lamp, which was dented. After stepping into the cluster of thorns, Lance bent down, shook his fingers and pushed away the thorns that were growing in the green grass. When Lance saw Susan, who was lying on the ground with ragged clothes and blood all over his body, he was stunned. He had never felt afraid before, but at this moment he was so afraid that even the blood in his body had cooled down. The heart that kept jumping suddenly fell down. It was like falling into an abyss, so painful that it was hard to breathe. Looking at Susan like this, Lance opened his thin lips and wanted to say something, but he couldn't say anything. It was like a hand holding his respiratory tract and he couldn't make a sound. He could only reach out his trembling hand to touch Susan's cold face. Feeling someone touch her, the lifeless Susan trembled. She wanted to move, but found that she could not move. The tears in her eyes slowly rolled down along with the blood in her eyes. Please don't touch me, please. Hearing her, who had always been strong-willed, begging for mercy for the first time, Lance's heart ached to the point of suffocation. Susan, it's me. Lance's trembling voice stunned Susan for a moment. She turned her dry eyes and slowly raised her eyes to look at him. Her eyes were covered in blood and were very blurry. She couldn't see clearly and didn't dare to confirm who the person in front of her was. No matter who you are, don't touch me, please don't touch me. Susan's pleading voice made Lance's eyes suddenly turn red. Susan, it's me, Lance. Lance. I know you are Lance. Because you are Lance, I don't want you to see me like this. Susan turned her head, not wanting him to see her sorry state, but tears rolled down her face. In addition to the blood, there were also wounds that were cut by thorns, densely packed and everywhere. When Lance saw the wounds, his heart ached and he slowly crouched down. He picked up Susan and buried his head into his shoulder despite the blood on her neck. Sister Susan, don't be afraid. I'll take you home. He knelt on one knee on the ground and carefully hugged her. He looked like he had never been gentle and tender. Susan didn't want him to see her like this, but she was exhausted and had no strength to struggle. She released the stone in her hand and buried her heavy head deep into Lance's arms. Let her be greedy for the warmth of this moment. Lance took off his coat and wrapped it around her. He picked her up. As he carried Susan and turned to leave the green belt, a large hand suddenly grabbed his ankle. 
The middle-aged man who pulled Susan into the green belt grabbed Lance's foot and raised his face full of blood to beg him. Sir, please call an ambulance for me. I'm dying. Seeing this man, Lance was so angry that he rushed straight to his head. It lost. He kicked the middle-aged man away with great strength. With one kick, the man suddenly fell silent. Lance did not even turn his head. He carried Susan and quickly returned to the hotel's main entrance. Then he put her into the car. He quickly started the car and called his assistant as he drove to Lanny's hospital. He asked him to deal with the middle-aged man. Seeing that he hung up the phone and looked at her, Susan felt a little inferior. She lowered her eyes and did not dare to look at him directly. As if he knew what she was thinking, Lance pursed his lips and did not ask anything. He only looked away and focused on driving. When the car stopped at the entrance of Lanny's hospital, Susan raised his eyes and looked at the man who quickly unbuckled his seatbelt. Lance, before he touched me, I smashed his head with a stone. The finger that was unfastening the seatbelt paused. Lance lowered his head and looked at the pale woman in front of him. After staring at her for a few seconds, without saying anything, he bent down to pick her up and quickly rushed into the hospital. Chapter 1060 Lance was both distressed and angry. Susan still wanted to ask Lance, do you believe me? But because he didn't say anything, he didn't ask. Lance also didn't know why he didn't answer her. Towards her, he was both distressed and angry. He was angry because she believed in Landon and she didn't want to reconcile with him, and also she didn't love him. With this kind of emotion, Lance carried her and rushed to the emergency doctor. Quick, save her. The doctor went up to check the condition of the injured and quickly arranged for the nurse to send the patient into the consulting room. The moment the door of the consulting room was closed, Lance was tired and leaned against the wall. He looked at his hands full of blood and tears fell uncontrollably. He didn't know where she was injured, but her body was covered in blood and not a single part of her body was intact. He had never doted on a woman to the point of crying. Susan was the first one. He hated himself like this, but he had to admit that deep in his heart, he couldn't let go of Susan at all. When Lanny heard the news, she quickly rushed over. She was just about to ask Lance what was going on when she saw the tears in his eyes. She frowned, walked past him, and quickly walked into the consulting room. When she saw the doctor pushing the antidote water on Susan's arm, her heart suddenly sank. Is there a lot of dosage? Not much. It's just that it has been a little long and the toxins are difficult to clear. There are also many external injuries. It seems that I have played a game with someone. At this time, Susan had already fainted. The blood on her face had also been cleaned up by the nurse, revealing a little face that had been slapped many times. The left and right sides were swollen and the clear fingerprints were overlapped together. There were also marks on the slender neck, which should have been strangled by someone. When Lanny saw these injuries, her heart tightened. She stepped forward and lifted the coat that wrapped around Susan. The clothes inside were torn and the exposed skin was green and purple. It was also covered with dense thorns. It was obvious that this was the result of being dragged into the grass and attacked. It was unknown when Lance came in. When he saw the injuries on Susan, his heart ached and his eyes reddened again. He knelt down on one knee in front of the hospital bed and held Susan's hand. He found that there was also a wound on her hand, as if it had been scratched by glass fragments, and it was still bleeding out. Lanny stopped the bleeding. Lance's trembling and angry voice woke Lanny from her daze. She quickly took out the medicine and stopped the bleeding for Susan. Then she took the tweezers and helped her remove the thorns on her body one by one. Lance, why don't you leave first? Leave this to us. Lanny wanted to do a full body examination for Susan. She needed to strip naked. It was not suitable for Lance to be here. However, he was unwilling to leave. His pair of scarlet eyes stared fixedly at Susan. When Lanny saw this, she didn't try to persuade him anymore. Lanny had personally witnessed the relationship between the two and how they had been together for three years. If not for the fact that Lance liked to play, had a stubborn mouth, had a bad temper, and refused to admit that he loved Susan, the two of them would have already been together. Lanny cleaned up the wounds on Susan's body, applied medicine, got up and went out to call Sebastian. Scarlet, who had already fallen asleep, vaguely heard the name of Susan coming from the phone. Regardless of whether she heard it clearly or not, she lifted the quilt and got out of bed. Is it Lanny's phone call? She said what happened to Susan. Sebastian originally did not want to disturb her. Seeing that she ran towards him without even wearing shoes, he quickly put down phone and picked her up. Don't worry. Something happened to Miss Croft, but she's fine. 
Hearing that something had happened to Susan, Scarlett's heart skipped a beat. Just as Sebastian placed her on the bed, she climbed down again. I want to see Susan. Sebastian raised his slender hand and held her down. Put on your clothes first. I'll go with you. After he gestured for her not to panic, he got up to get her clothes and shoes and helped her put them on. Only then did he lead her out of the room, who was burning with anxiety. Chapter 1061 Susan's life was quite bitter. En route to the hospital, Sebastian revealed to Scarlett that it was Landon who had drugged Susan. After her escape, Susan was forcibly led into the green belt by a middle-aged man who reeked of alcohol. Had she not resisted vehemently, she faced potential sexual assault. After listening to this, Scarlett was so angry that her eyes turned red. How could Landon be such a person? She thought that Landon was Susan Sr., at least a gentleman. He would not deceive Susan like Cosmo, but who knew that he was even more hateful than Cosmo? Sebastian supported his chin with one hand, his cold eyes revealed a hint of killing intent, but he did not answer Scarlett, only patting her hand to comfort her. When the car stopped at the entrance of the hospital, Scarlett quickly pushed open the car door and quickly ran to the emergency room. Susan, who slowly woke up, felt that her body was not so heavy and hot, and heaved a deep sigh of relief. She turned her eyes with difficulty and looked at the person sitting in front of the hospital bed. She just happened to bump into a pair of deep dark red eyes. She felt a little uncomfortable and looked away, only to find that her hand was tightly held by him. Her palm was sweating and he should have held it for a long time. Susan hesitated for a few seconds and wanted to pull her hand out, but Lance grabbed her. Susan looked up at him, but the man frowned and opened his mouth. How do you feel? Susan shook her head and looked at Lance's hand. Can you not touch me first? Don't touch her yet. The current her is a little dirty. Lance stared at her for a few seconds before releasing his grip. Susan turned her head and looked out the window, not saying a word. Lance on the other hand looked at her, not knowing what to say. When the two of them were silent, Scarlet rushed in. Susan! Hearing Scarlet's voice, Susan's lifeless eyes showed a trace of anger. Scarlet! When she saw that Susan's face was swollen, her neck was covered with scars, her forehead was broken, and her hand was wrapped in gauze, Scarlet felt a heartache. She rushed over and hugged Susan. She gently stroked her back and comforted her. Sister Susan, don't be afraid. It's all right. Nothing will happen. Up to now Susan had never cried. The moment she was hugged by Scarlet, her nose suddenly ached and tears welled up in her eyes. It felt as though she was gazing upon her very own family. The accumulation of long-held grievances within her heart suddenly flooded her core, reducing her to tears she found impossible to withhold. Scarlet, I thought that I would never see you again. When she was pulled into the grass by the middle-aged man, she had already made up her mind to die. At that time, she was thinking that if she could not resist and was touched by him, then she would die with him. Fortunately, she had this kind of mentality, so she touched a stone and smashed it hard on the back of his head. Only then did she manage to save her life. She hugged Scarlet tightly and buried her head into her shoulder. She did not want to cry, but tears rolled down like a dam. Susan had always demonstrated a strong will. From a young age, facing any obstacle, she would unfailingly position herself protectively in front of Scarlet. When had she ever shed tears such as these? Scarlet could not imagine how Susan had escaped from death tonight, but she could feel her grievances, her fear, and her misery. Sister Susan, her life is quite bitter. Despite being relatively young, she always took on a leadership role because she was a little older than the others. She would work to earn income, take care of her family, and handle responsibilities like a true matriarch. Even in her youth, using every ounce of strength in her small and thin frame, she served as a beacon for her and Liam, shielding them from various hardships, standing tall as their pillar of strength, their protector. When she was older, she invested heavily in an apartment. However, she crossed paths with a man named Cosmo, who took advantage of her, exploiting her for food, drink, and money. He even tried to deceive her about the child he had fathered with his mistress. If she hadn't discovered Cosmo's deceit, it is fearful to think that Susan may still have been working diligently to carry the financial burden of the mortgage for the mother and child. The accident that befell Scarlet drastically altered the course of Susan's life. Susan, once a fiercely independent woman, transformed unexpectedly into a nightclub owner. She developed habits of smoking and drinking, all spurred by a newfound debilitating illness. Having weathered a significant shift in her marriage and the death of her loved ones, it still remained a haunting mystery how she had braved through that tumultuous period. 
Perhaps during those three years, Susan had developed feelings for Lance. However, Lance, being a notorious womanizer, left her feeling apprehensive about giving her heart away. Moreover, he had never outwardly professed any love for Susan, constantly adopting an air of indifference. Such behavior left Susan hesitant to lend him her reliance and trust. For Susan, meeting Landon felt like the final destination. She didn't need to marry someone purely out of love or desire. She didn't even feel qualified to discuss love. In her mind, as long as she married a dependable man who didn't engage in frivolous behavior, all she wanted was the opportunity to create a secure family environment. Many couples interacted with a respect akin to hospitality, treating each other as if they were esteemed guests. She sought this level of peace and understanding, but was left sorely disappointed. Landon, her partner, did not share her perspective. The so-called hidden affection he professed to hold merely reflected his youthful failures in love. He struggled with acceptance, unwilling to truly come to terms with his emotions. Chapter 1062 As for Landon, leave it to me. Despite being only in her 30s, Susan has already overcome thousands of challenges and experienced various hardships. She has weathered much bitterness in life. Meanwhile, Scarlett also endured unwanted experiences, yet fortune was a bit kinder to her than to Susan. At least Scarlett was able to find her sister and watch a video of her mother. She has an idea of their appearances, whereas Susan does not even have a clue who her parents are. Thinking of what happened to Susan all these years, Scarlett is even more distressed and hugs her tightly. Sister Susan, it is my fault. I did not protect you well. It was her fault. When she realized that Landon was not so good, she did not stop them in time and cause Susan to suffer such a disaster. Susan, who had already cried, raised her bandaged hand and gently stroked the waistling curly hair on Scarlett's back, comforting her again and again in a soft voice. I'm fine now. Don't worry and don't blame yourself. It had nothing to do with Scarlett. It's her. She recognized the wrong person in this relationship. She chose this road. Only after staking everything on it did she understand everything. To be honest, a person like her should not touch marriage. She should be lonely for the rest of her life. This way she could live a quiet life. Thinking of this, Susan looked at Lance, who was still sitting in front of the hospital bed. The bitterness in her heart made her eyes red again. Mr. Lance, thank you for saving me. Her tone was calm, as if she wanted to use a word of thanks to draw out the relationship between her and him. Lance frowned slightly. He wanted to say something, but he didn't say anything. He would wait for her to walk out of this nightmare and then tell her, Have a good rest. I have something to take care of. Lance put down this sentence, got up and walked out, only to see Sebastian standing outside the sick room with his hands crossed over his chest. Where are you going? Lance clenched his fists, the veins on his strong arms suddenly popping out. Look for Landon and that old man. He wanted them to pay a terrible price. Lance was about to leave when Sebastian reached out to stop him. I have already sent someone to the police station. As for Landon, leave it to me. He still had to prove Asher's innocence, so he might as well settle all these debts. Leave it to you? The matter of Landon had nothing to do with his second brother, so why would he interfere? Remember to watch the news tomorrow morning. Sebastian did not explain and only said this. Lance wanted to ask more clearly, but he raised his slender hand and patted his shoulder. You stay here and accompany Miss Croft. When a woman encountered such a thing, she needed someone to accompany her. Besides Scarlet, it was better for Lance to be here. Sebastian did not care whether Lance agreed or not. After leaving Jesus to protect Scarlet, he turned around and walked towards Lanny. Where is he? The top floor of the hospital. After knowing the ins and outs of the situation, Lanny immediately sent an ambulance to pull Landon to the hospital. After a simple treatment, he secretly locked her up on the top floor. Where's the forensic doctor? Lanny took out the VIP card on the top floor, swiped the elevator, and replied respectfully. It's also on the top floor. The forensic doctor was not on duty tonight, but he was called by Lanny to the hospital. As soon as he entered the director's room, he was controlled by her. Has the monitoring been dealt with? It has been dealt with. Only then did Sebastian stretch out his well-defined fingers and place them in front of Leo. Leo immediately understood. He took out the sealed belt that he carried with him, tore open the outer packaging, and took out a clean pair of gloves from inside and placed them in his palm. The elevator door opened and a tall and straight man led a group of people to slowly wear gloves while walking towards the isolated and sealed ward. Chapter 1063 Don't Admit It The moment the door swung open, 
Landon caught sight of Sebastian, bedecked in a sophisticated black suit, a single white glove adorning his hand. With a procession of individuals encircling him, Sebastian advanced slowly, exuding an aura of steady composure with each measured step. His posture is upright, his figure slender. His deeply set facial features, seemingly chiseled from stone, are exquisitely handsome without a trace of flaw. The aura he emanates from head to toe is overwhelmingly commanding. Every time he saw Sebastian like this, Landon would feel fear in his heart. That fear was not brought about by a guilty conscience, but by Sebastian's eyes. It would bring about an innate fear. When looking at him, it would make people feel fear. At this moment, Landon was feeling this way. The effect of the aphrodisiac fragrance in his body had faded, leaving only the guilt and frustration he felt for Susan. If he had been patient, maintaining a semblance of friendliness, Susan may have been swayed by his calm demeanor, paving the way for him to achieve his goals. However, his impatience had led him not only to ruin his own plans, but also to incite Sebastian's vengeance. Yes, up until now, Landon still felt that Sebastian had come here to help Susan get justice. He did not suspect anything about the matter with Asher at all. He only thought that Sebastian had come to teach him a few words. Unexpectedly, after Sebastian came in, he raised his hand. Two strong men suddenly stepped forward and pressed his arm. They dragged him down from the bed and threw him to the ground. Landon, who was dragged to the ground, wanted to struggle to get up, but the strong man stepped on his back with his leather shoes. The moment he stepped down, he fell to the ground, unable to get up. He could only lie on the ground, raise his head, and look at the man who was walking against the light. Mr. Jackman, this is a matter between me and Susan. If you want to get even with me, it is also Susan who came personally. Do you have no right to do this to me? The man who had already sat down on the sofa raised his long legs, lazily crossing them over one another. Lowering his eyes, he played with a white glove, speaking in a tone that was neither cold nor warm, lightly parting his lips. Dr. Skerritt, we will talk about the matter between you and Miss Croft later. Let's settle another debt first. What debt? Landon was bewildered as he raised his gaze toward Sebastian. As far as he could remember, he had never crossed paths with Sebastian, except for the incident where he had used Liam to ridicule Sebastian, which led to Sebastian making him kneel down and apologize. They had already settled that issue. Could it be possible that Sebastian held so much grudge that he wasn't satisfied with just one retaliation and wanted to get back at him over the same matter again? When Landon could not figure it out, Lanny walked in with the medical examiner. The moment he saw the medical examiner, the doubts in Landon's eyes became clear in a split second. It turned out that what Sebastian said was the account of Asher's operation mistake. Dr. Witten, your mastermind has been confessed. As long as you tell the truth now, I can let bygones be bygones. If you don't cooperate, then... After a pause, Sebastian raised her delicate chin slightly and glanced coldly at the forensic doctor who was standing at the door shivering. Revoke your medical license? ruin your professional career, make you forever unable to raise your head in the medical field, then, estrangement from your wife and children, and the destruction of your family. When Sebastian said these words, he seemed to be talking about a small matter that was not light. The corners of his lips were dyed with a bloodthirsty smile. Dr. Witten, I can do all of this. Do you believe me? In front of him, how could Dr. Witten dare to talk about whether he believed it or not? who in the entire hospital did not know what kind of cold-blooded person Sebastian was. Who could not know? Dr. Witten could not stand it. He looked at Landon who was stepped on the ground. Seeing that he was in such a sorry state, he thought that he had really confessed. Dr. Witten immediately opened his mouth. I? Dr. Witten, don't be forced to confess. Just admit what you haven't done. Landon cut off what Dr. Witten wanted to say with one sentence. His deep and dark eyes hinted at Dr. Witten to look at the recording device next to him. When he met Landon's gaze, Dr. Witten finally understood that Sebastian was lying to him. Landon did not confess at all. As long as the two of them refused to admit it, Sebastian would not be able to get the evidence. If he could not get the evidence, he would be safe. Thinking of this, Dr. Witten immediately calmed himself down, gathered his courage, and raised his eyes again to look at the man sitting on the sofa. Mr. Jackman, I... I didn't write any autopsy reports randomly. I also don't know what you are talking about. The president personally intervened in this matter, offering assistance to Dr. Scott. If the president indeed wished to help, he could only do so by bringing to light their actions. 
Even though the president had expressed wishes to let bygones be bygones, unavoidable references to the purchasing of medical examiners would be made once the issue was publicized. When the topic arose, he who had previously served as an international autopsy specialist knew his chances in the medical field were slim. He would face rejection from scholarly peers within the medical community. Instead of being universally shunned, he considered it marginally better to face the wrath of the president alone. After sorting his thoughts, Dr. Witten declined to admit it. Anyway, I haven't done anything. I wonder why Mr. Jackman brought me here. Chapter 1064 The pressure was on Dr. Witten. Even Lanny was impressed by how stubborn Dr. Witten was. Dr. Witten, you probably don't know. After your autopsy, I sent Dr. Willett to do another examination. It's a little different from your report. Dr. Witten's body stiffened. He turned his head in disbelief and looked at Lanny, who had his hands crossed over his chest and his back against the wall. You also sent Dr. Willett for an autopsy? Lanny nodded without even blinking. I suspected that there was a problem with the patient's blood vessels, so I sent him to check again. I didn't expect that it was really a problem with the blood vessels. When he heard the word blood vessels, Dr. Witten panicked instantly. You, since you have already detected that there is a problem with the blood vessels, why didn't you immediately find trouble with me, and why didn't you take Dr. Willett's report to block the mouths of the dead students? Lanny raised her chin and raised her head towards Landon, who was on the ground. Isn't this to find a suitable time to catch him? Even Landon was stunned by these words. What did Lanny mean by this? Lanny raised her pace, walked in front of Landon, and slowly crouched down. At that time, you and Susan were still together. For the sake of Susan, Mr. Jackman and I naturally wouldn't touch you. Now the time is naturally here. After Lanny finished speaking, she stood up and faced Dr. Witten. You should know Mr. Jackman's personality. He only gives you one chance. As for whether you want to admit it or not, it all depends on you. Dr. Witten could not tell whether what Lanny said was true or not, so he looked at Landon in panic. Dr. Skerritt, didn't you tell me that you were the only one who knew about the problem in the blood vessels? How did Executive Lanny know? Landon was also stunned. He looked at Lanny and then at Sebastian. Could it be that you already knew everything? Naturally. Lanny feigned understanding, pretending as if everything was normal when, in truth, she was clueless. Her only role was conducting a blood vessel repair operation as per Asher's instructions. She believed that an issue with the blood vessels had led to the patient's accident, a deception she utilized to mislead Dr. Witten. Unbeknownst to her, it was actually Landon who had concealed the patient's true condition from Asher. Landon didn't expect that Sebastian and Lanny had already noticed the problem. Or rather, Sebastian had noticed the problem, but he had been holding back and didn't flare up. He didn't even alert the enemy. He waited for Susan to separate from him before starting to act. Sebastian did this because he was afraid that he would use Susan as a threat and would not be able to deal with him. He was also afraid of implicating Susan, so he was not in a hurry to deal with himself. The photos and recordings sent to Susan, did you do it? Landon asked Sebastian. The fear in his tone had already turned into resentment. If Sebastian had noticed the problem from the beginning, then a person with deep thoughts like him would definitely scheme against him step by step. No wonder when he wanted to hook up with Susan, an unfamiliar number sent a photo to expose him. So it was all planned by Sebastian. Sebastian, you are really sinister. Sebastian, who was inexplicably put on the sinister hat, raised his cold and bloodthirsty eyes and glanced at him coldly. Do you think I'm very free? Landon was stunned for a moment. Sebastian had always dared to take responsibility. This time, he didn't admit it. Could it be that he really didn't do it? If he didn't do it, then it must be Lance. Anyway, these two brothers had been working together to tease him and bully him. If they didn't exist, he and Susan would naturally be together. Why would he fall to the point of falling out with him? When he transferred all the reasons and hatred to the two brothers, Sebastian, who was already impatient, said coldly again, Landon, tell me how you framed Dr. Scott and I will let you go back to the country. Otherwise, you will stay here forever and don't think of leaving this door. After Landon came back to his senses, he was unconvinced and sneered. Do you think that a town is your home? You can do whatever you want. There was an unfathomable look in Sebastian's eyes. He straightened his 1.9 meters tall body and walked to Landon step by step. When his tall and straight body pressed down, Landon subconsciously blinked his eyes. Sebastian raised his slender fingers and grabbed Landon's chin, making him raise his head. Dr. Skerritt, you may not know, but in a town, I really do what I want to do. 
the condescending actions, the disdainful tone, and the oppressive gaze all made Landon feel resentful. Why did people with the surname Jackman have to be high and mighty? Just because they were born a little better than him, could they have no scruples about him? I don't care what you want to do. I will not admit it. Very good. Sebastian nodded and shook off his chin. He turned to look at Dr. Witten, who was standing to the side at a loss. What about you? When the pressure hit Dr. Witten, he instantly did not know what to do. Chapter 1065 Landon's Brain Circuit Just now when Executive Lanny said that Dr. Willett had done a new autopsy, he questioned Dr. Scared out of panic and indirectly admitted it. Now that Sebastian asked him again, he only wanted him to explain the entire process of the incident. Only when there was a detailed process would the case be exposed. If he was as stubborn as Landon and refused to admit it, then using the recording that Executive Lanny had just lured out would be enough to crush a small forensic doctor like him to death. If they cooperated now, perhaps Mr. Jackman could still be lenient. After all, he was only an accomplice and not the mastermind. The person Mr. Jackman wanted to deal with was Landon, not him. After weighing the pros and cons in his heart, Dr. Witten made a request to Sebastian. Mr. Jackman, I'm well aware of the situation. If I disclose the information to you, I'm certain that you'll utilize recordings and videos to help vindicate Dr. Scott. It's a gamble as my career is likely to suffer a heavy blow from this. I'm willing to risk providing you with the truth, but you'll need to find a way to safeguard my position. At the very least, he had to protect his identity from the outside world. This way, even if he could not survive in the country, there was still a way out abroad. Dr. Witten regretted taking Landon's money, but if he was not short of money, he would not do such a thing that went against medical ethics. However, now that things had come to this, he could only think of a way out for himself. As for Landon, the rope that bound Matzo was broken, he could not care about what others did. When Landon saw Dr. Witten raise this condition, he clenched his fists and glared at him. Dr. Witten did not even look at him, staring straight at Sebastian. Mr. Jackman, do you accept this condition? The corners of Sebastian's lips curled up. You are the first person to negotiate with me. When Dr. Witten heard this, his heart skipped a beat. He thought that Sebastian would not agree, but he nodded. Sure. Only then did Dr. Witten heave a sigh of relief. He explained how Landon had bribed him and taught him how to write a report. With Dr. Witten's confession, Landon only needed to find out why he was hiding the patient's condition from him. Sebastian returned to the sofa and propped up his slender legs again. He looked languidly at Landon, who was pressed to the ground. Not only did Dr. Witten make things clear, but he also took out the transfer record as evidence. If you don't admit it, it will be useless. Then take Dr. Witten's accusation against me and sue me. Anyway, the body had been burned. As for the autopsy report that Dr. Willett made, it was just a lie that Lanny used to trick Dr. Witten. He did not believe that he would not admit it no matter what. Just based on Dr. Witten's accusation, could it be easy to sue him? But obviously, Sebastian did not want to take the legal path. Dr. Skerritt, do you think I locked you up here to sue you? Landon's heart sank. He narrowed his eyes and looked at the man sitting in the light. Then why are you doing this? Sebastian did not reply. He only hooked his finger at Leo who was beside him. Leo quickly took out a small knife from his military boots and placed it in his palm. Sebastian used his gloved hand to move the sharp knife. I heard that a doctor's hand is very precious. What will happen to you if you break the tendons in your hand? His casual tone was filled with a bloodthirsty cruelty, causing Landon to subconsciously clench his fists. If you use private torture to force it out, it will not count in court. It seems that you still do not understand what I mean. Dr. Witten, who was standing at the side, couldn't stand it anymore. What Mr. Jackman means is that he won't go to court. He just wants to expose what you have done to the medical community. So whether he uses private torture to force out the truth is not important at all. After Dr. Witten said this anxiously, he advised Landon earnestly. Dr. Skerritt, don't force yourself. Mr. Jackman just wants to prove Dr. Scott's innocence. If you explain it clearly, he will let you go back to the country. This way you can still have a place in the country with medical skills. If your hand is destroyed, you will never be a surgeon. Then what about my Bell Medical Award? Landon roared, causing Dr. Witten to freeze on the spot. That's the result of Dr. Scott's research. What does it have to do with you? How is it unrelated to me? Landon gritted his teeth and glared at Dr. Witten. I helped him do experiments, prepared medicinal herbs for him, raised the problem, and solved the problem. Why does it have nothing to do with me? But you just helped, not developed by you. 
If he could win the Nobel Prize for Medicine, then wouldn't he be able to help Dr. Willett get autopsy, and Dr. Witten couldn't understand Landon at all. So what if I am just a help? I have to get what I want. Sebastian, who was on the sofa, put his elbows on his knees and leaned forward slightly, staring at Landon who was full of resentment and unwillingness. You want to get the medicine award, don't you? As a doctor, who doesn't want to get the medicine award? Chapter 1066 He was strategizing. Landon frankly admitted his ambition which made Sebastian smile lightly. Although you really want to get the medicine award, I'm sorry. The more you want to get something, the more I won't let you get anything. Such cruel words made Landon's face red with anger. Why? Sebastian put the knife in his hand under the sunlight, and the knife instantly glowed with a dazzling light. Your life and death, your future, are all in my hands. The light reflected by the knife pierced into Landon's eyes, making him subconsciously close his eyes. The moment he closed his eyes, Landon felt that his wrist had been cut by someone. When he opened his eyes, he only saw bright red blood gushing out from his skin. And the person who slit his wrist, upon seeing the blood, didn't even blink an eye, as if life meant nothing at all to him. Landon thought that Sebastian was just saying it, but he did not expect that he would be serious, and then he was immediately frightened. Dr. Witten was also frightened and retreated repeatedly, but he was pushed back by the bodyguard who was blocking the door. Sebastian slowly took the wet towel from Leo and wiped the knife clean in front of Landon. Dr. Skerritt, my patience is limited. If you still don't say it, then I can only cut it down one by one until you are willing to say it. The pain from his wrist made Landon realize that Sebastian's words were not meant to scare him. This man not only had a deep mind but also dared to do anything. He was blind and did not see that Sebastian was such a ruthless person. If I say it, will you let me go back to the country? Sebastian sneered but pretended that nothing had happened and nodded at him. Landon could no longer see the meaning of the smile on Sebastian's face. He only stared at his bleeding wrist and hesitated. Sebastian's patience was really exhausted. The tip of the knife in his hand was aimed at Landon's wrist and was about to pick out the meridians inside. Landon immediately begged for mercy. Don't pick my tendons. I'll tell you, I'll tell you everything. His hand, which still needs surgery, absolutely cannot be damaged. Seeing that he was afraid, Sebastian retracted his hand and slowly straightened up. After pressing down on his right wrist, Landon raised his head and looked at the man who was looking down at him. That day, when the director sought out Dr. Scott to announce that the Nobel Prize in Medicine was being awarded to him, my mind went to a certain situation. It was a peculiar coincidence that a patient who previously had a disagreement with Dr. Scott urgently needed surgery. Taking advantage of this opportunity, I asked Dr. Scott to assist me with the operation under the pretense of a hand injury. Before the operation began, when Dr. Scott was investigating the patient's body illness, I concealed the patient's blood vessels problem. Because Dr. Scott trusted me too much, he did not repeat the investigation. After the operation began, in order to remove his suspicion, I deliberately stopped him from moving his blood vessels. He did not miss anything. He had even bribed the forensic doctor, but he did not expect that Sebastian and Lanny still suspected him. Hearing what he said, Lanny's eyes turned red. Because of Landon's own selfishness, Asher was splashed with dirty water, and even his reputation was stinky. Landon, on the other hand, had a clear conscience and was waiting to receive the Nobel Prize in medicine. Lanny was a little angry. She rushed forward and wanted to scold Landon, but she was stopped by Sebastian. Have you recorded it? Sebastian turned his head and asked the man standing next to Leo. Yes. The man nodded respectfully. Send what Dr. Skerritt said to Mr. Forrest's family and his medical students. Sebastian ordered coldly. He believed that they would come to the hospital to make a fuss when they received this recording. At that time, the management of the hospital would definitely withdraw the medical award and return Asher's innocence. In addition, if the family members of Mr. Forrest found out that Mr. Forrest did not die from the operation but was murdered by someone in private, how could Landon escape? The man, who had planned everything out in his mind, leaned back on the sofa again, propped up his legs, and raised his eyes that looked down at everything, coldly looking at Landon. Dr. Scott's dead is finished, now it should be Miss Crofts. Chapter 1067 One Person Slapped What right do you have to settle Susan's score? Landon held his wrist, raised his head, and angrily rebuked Sebastian with bloodshot eyes. He recorded what he had done and sent it to Mr. Forrest's family and medical students. This was the cut of his escape route. Even if he were to return, he would not be able to escape the condemnation of these people. 
Sebastian had already done enough and now he still wanted to help Susan settle the score. What right did he have? What right? The seemingly lazy man slightly tilted his head, then spread out his white-gloved hand and hooked his finger at the bodyguard who was pressing Landon. The two bodyguards immediately understood, one on the left and one on the right, lifting Landon up and throwing him in front of Sebastian. Before Landon could get up, a palm suddenly fell from the sky. The immense palm strike, seemingly bringing a gust of wind with it, caused the cheeks to tremble as it blew past. Only when the wind's force dissipated did the tearing pain strike. The left side of Landon, who was half kneeling, instantly swelled up. The blood from the corner of his mouth dripped on the back of his hand. He was shocked and slowly raised his head. You! Sebastian took off his gloves and threw them into the trash can next to him. He took the wet towel that Leo handed over and wiped his hands clean. Then he looked down at the person kneeling on the ground. Miss Croft is my wife's sister, which is also my sister. You dare to touch her, that is same to touch me. Do you think I should be the one to settle her account? Landon's eyes were full of disbelief. He stared at Sebastian for a long time before he slowly came back to his senses. Even if you treat Susan as your sister, you are not qualified to hit me. He had never been slapped before, and he was slapped by a big man. How shameful it was. If you want to settle the score, then sue me in court and let the law punish me. What right do you have to slap me? Don't worry. Compared to Landon's exasperation, Sebastian was neither fast nor slow. I'll let you go the court. If that's the case, why did you still slap me? Cutting his wrists wouldn't make him as angry as this slap. Sebastian glanced at him indifferently. I slapped you for my wife. You bullied her sister. Of course you should be punished. It's just a slap. Mr. Jackman is already very restrained. If it was in the past, if Mr. Jackman did not clean up the other party, it would be considered that he was not decisive enough. Now that he was married and had some scruples, he did not kill Landon. Otherwise, how could he bark here? Lanny answered the question. When Landon heard it, he scolded Lanny angrily. Executive Lanny, you introduced Susan to me. You didn't help me, but stand with Sebastian. The thing that Lanny regretted the most was holding a blind date banquet to let Susan get to know this kind of sanctimonious hypocrite. If she hadn't done this at that time, then Susan wouldn't have been attacked and wouldn't have been lying in the hospital unable to get up. Thinking of the thorns all over Susan's body, Lanny felt regret and hatred in her heart. She clenched her fists and rushed towards Landon. Pa! A slap landed on Landon's face. It was the same position and the strength was different, but it also made Landon see stars. I thought you were a gentleman, at least a reliable man. I didn't expect you to drug Susan and almost make her be violated by a stranger. Landon was originally very angry, but when he heard that Susan was almost violated by a stranger, the hatred in his eyes gradually turned into worry. What happened to her? Did something happen after she escaped from the hotel? Chapter 1068 Do you believe what I said? Ignoring the knife wound on his wrist, Landon reached out and grabbed Lanny's trousers. He raised his head and looked up at the condescending Lanny eagerly. Tell me what happened? Lanny hated Landon to death now. She felt sick when she saw him. She kicked him away without thinking. Thanks to you, she almost died in the green belt tonight. Landon felt that Lanny was lying to her, but when he saw the anger in her eyes, he felt that she did not seem to be lying. Is she all right? He still liked Susan now, but his self-desire was greater than his love for her, so when he heard that something had happened to her, he would still be very worried. Does this has anything to do with you? Lanny's expressionless face caused Landon to frown deeply. Executive Lanny, you. Don't call me. You make me feel disgusted. To frame Asher and bully Susan, Landon had done everything he could. From now on in this hospital, you don't exist. After dismissing his position, Lanny turned around and faced Sebastian. Mr. Jackman, I will go and see Susan first. Sebastian nodded lightly. After Lanny left, he slowly stood up. When the tall man stood in front of Landon, he was like a mountain pressing down on him. Landon, who was curled up on the ground, felt a sense of suffocation when he saw him like this. You! What do you want to do? Compared to the little bit of worry he had for Susan at this moment, he was more afraid that Sebastian would attack him twice. He had thought that people with power and right like Sebastian would not dare to mess around with their power. After all, reputation was very important. Who knew that Sebastian would not play according to common sense at all and instead relied on his power to run amok? He really did not even want his reputation. Landon had thought it through. 
After he escaped from here, he would expose what Sebastian had done today and make him the target of public opinion. He wanted to use all the media and network resources to drag Sebastian down with him. As he thought of this, the man who was looking down on him turned around and opened his thin lips. When Mr. Forrest's family comes to the hospital to cause trouble, you can hand him over. Yes. Landon, who was still in a daze, saw that Sebastian had turned around and left, and his eyes immediately turned red. Sebastian, didn't you promise that you would let me go back to the country as long as I said it? The man who was still wiping his fingers slowly stopped and turned to look at Landon who was being held down by the bodyguard. My words, you even believe it? Landon widened his eyes in disbelief and stared at Sebastian. You! Seeing that he was trembling from anger, a faint smile appeared on Sebastian's lips. Dr. Scarrett, premeditated murder and attempted rape, you can't escape. After saying that, Sebastian retracted his cold gaze and walked away. Looking at that proud and arrogant back, Landon suddenly clenched his fists. Sebastian, Liam, you probably don't know his matter, right? Liam. This word could be said to be taboo in Sebastian's heart. Every time he heard this word, he would subconsciously panic. He had never been afraid of anyone. Anything, only Liam would make him feel fear. It was not that he was afraid of Liam, but that in the past five years, hearing her call his name in her sleep brought him a psychological shadow. Sebastian was unwilling to stop, but his footsteps still slowed down. He was even waiting for Landon to say something bad. Chapter 1069 Mr. Jackman, Don't Tell Madam He was already mentally prepared, but the moment Landon opened his mouth, he was still frozen in place as if he had been struck by lightning. He has severe depression. It's as because he misses your wife and his longing becomes illness. Landon looked at the figure that did not dare to move, raised his eyebrows, and laughed wantonly. Sebastian, if you judge me on behalf of Susan, who will judge you on behalf of Liam? You stole the woman he loved the most, living with peace and righteousness, while he is forever trapped in hell. Landon's gloomy voice sounded behind him one after another, causing Sebastian's face to gradually turn pale. Probably because Leo couldn't stand it anymore, he turned around and walked quickly to Landon. He picked up his collar and punched him until he fainted. After throwing the unconscious Landon back to the ground like throwing a chicken, Leo returned to Sebastian's side and caressed him calmly. Mr. Jackman, don't believe what Landon said. Don't take it to heart. Mr. Jackman didn't owe Liam anything. At most, he fell in love with the same woman. It was also the year when he broke up with Scarlett. But at that time, Scarlett and Liam were not boyfriend and girlfriend. When Mr. Jackman went to find Miss Sales at that time, it was not even considered a stepping in, so how could he snatch it? Later on, it was Liam who died for love and chased after her. Mr. Jackman saved him and also spent manpower, resources, and financial resources to protect him and encourage him to live. After Scarlett came back, Mr. Jackman also chose to fulfill them. He even helped him take revenge for his parents and even took back Gatsby Group. Even if he owed Liam, he should pay it back. Leo was someone who had witnessed all the grievances between the three of them. He did not think that Mr. Jackman was wrong. If one had to say that there was a mistake, it was that Mr. Jackman should not have been so cold to Miss Sales in the beginning. If not for this, even if Liam recovered his memory, it would not have mattered to him. However, it was clear that Sebastian did not think this way. He knew better than anyone what kind of weight Liam had in Scarlet's heart. If Liam really misses Scarlet, misses her so much that he suffers from severe depression, then what should he do? Severe depression? He would die. Scarlet would not watch Liam die. If she knew, would she? Sebastian's mind was in a mess. The tearing pain in his temples came as planned. It hit him and made his face pale. Mr. Jackman, what's wrong with you? Are you having a headache again? Leo asked as he saw him sweating profusely. Sebastian grabbed his hand and endured the pain. He ordered coldly, send people from the capital to find it out. Mr. Jackman, if you know it, are you going to tell the madam as Landon said? Leo frowned. Based on Liam's friendship with his wife, not to mention love, just based on the familial love at a young age, his wife would not ignore him. Then what should Mr. Jackman do? Sebastian raised his well-defined fingers and rubbed his temples hard. The pain of being unable to concentrate made him have no strength to answer Leo's words. Seeing him like this, Leo supported him with a face full of worry. Mr. Jackman, let's leave Liam alone for now. You should go for a brain check first. Although the doctor said that after the surgery, he would check again every half a year with Mr. Jackman like this, how could he wait for half a year? However, Sebastian pushed his hand away. 
It's just that I was a little nervous and anxious when I met something about her. I don't need to do an examination. Leo still wanted to persuade him, but Sebastian suddenly became angry. I asked you to send someone to ask. Go and ask immediately. Leo had no choice but to take out phone and call the people from the capital. Jackman Group's people did things quite quickly. Not long after, the other party called back. After confirming that Liam was indeed suffering from severe depression, Leo advised Sebastian, Mr. Jackman, don't tell Madam. She will be in trouble. Sebastian did not answer him. He only endured the pain in his temples, leaned against the wall and staggered towards the elevator. Chapter 1070 Why did they all think that he was cheating? In the ward on the seventh floor of the inpatient department, Scarlett took the cotton swab, dipped it in the medicine and wiped it on Susan's arm. Perhaps her strength was a bit too much, Susan hissed in pain, and Scarlett's hand immediately softened, I'm sorry. Susan wanted to say that she was fine, but Lance, who was sitting next to her, suddenly took the cotton swab from Scarlett's hand. I'll do it. Scarlett and Susan were both stunned for a moment, but he didn't care at all. He picked up the cotton swab and concentrated on helping her apply the medicine. His strength was extremely light, fearing that he would hurt her. Looking at Lance like this, Susan hesitated for a few seconds before speaking indifferently. Mr. Lance, Scarlett is here to accompany me. You can go back first. Susan had already said this several times. Even if Lance didn't leave, he didn't say much and just sat beside her silently. Second sister-in-law's health is not good. Let her go back and rest first. The man who was carefully applying medicine said this and looked up at Scarlett who was standing at the side. Second sister-in-law, I am here. Don't worry. If Scarlett still couldn't understand this meaning, she would be a little silly. Susan, Gianna is alone at home. I am also worried. I will come to see you tomorrow. Without waiting for Susan to speak, Scarlett picked up her phone on the table and turned to leave. However, when she reached the door, she stopped and looked at Lance. Lance come out for a moment. I have something to tell you. Only then did Lance put down the cotton swab in his hand. Wait for me. Susan did not know what the two were going to say. Through the thick glass, she looked at the two people standing in the corridor. Scarlet raised her fair and clean little face and looked at Lance who was much taller than her. She frowned and said, Lance, what kind of heart do you have for Susan now? Like, love or play? Lance raised his eyelashes slightly, revealing a pair of slightly tired eyes. Second sister-in-law, I love her. This was the first time he had directly admitted his love for Susan in front of Scarlet. He did not hide it at all. Looking at the sincere expression and attitude in front of her, Scarlet sighed slightly. I told you before that Susan wants a home. Can you give her a home? After giving her a home, can you guarantee that this family will be safe and secure forever? I told her that I would marry her and give her a family, but she didn't promise me. Lance turned his head and looked at the woman lying on the bed through the glass. For a moment he felt very wronged. I don't know why, but she just doesn't believe me. Scarlet followed his line of sight and looked at Susan in the ward. It's not that she doesn't believe you, it's just that she doesn't dare. Lance didn't understand. Why wouldn't she dare? Scarlet lowered her eyes. After a moment of silence, she opened her mouth. Lance, actually, I can see that Susan has you in her heart. Just because of this, she is even more afraid to bet her future on you. Hearing that Susan had him in her heart, Lance opened his thin lips and wanted to refute Scarlet, but was interrupted by Scarlet softly. If I were Susan, I would not dare to agree to marry you. Do you know why? Lance shook his head. To be honest, he did not understand the thoughts of women. It was really complicated. Looking at Lance who was in a puzzle, Scarlet sighed again. Because I can't accept the person I love will betray me one day. When Lance heard this, his eyes that were as deep as the stars were filled with doubts. Scarlet just looked at him and smiled gently. If Susan puts everything into practice and agrees to marry you, I believe that with your love for her now, you will live a happy life after marriage. But what will she do if you meet someone you love more? I won't. Don't say it so early. When you met Susan, you didn't think about abandoning Annie, did you? Scarlett's words made Lance's expression change slightly, but it was fleeting and quickly returned to normal. I don't love Annie. I don't intend to be with her for the rest of my life. In my heart, Annie and Susan are different. Scarlet nodded and did not refute Lance. I know what you mean. I just want to tell you that Susan doesn't agree to marry you because she is afraid that she will go crazy when she sees you cheating in the future. The more she loved a person, the more she was afraid of getting close. 
Rather than being hurt in the future, she might as well cut off all her inadvertent feelings in advance. That was what Susan thought. Scarlet was very clear in her heart that Lance was not Sebastian. The feeling he gave others was not so reliable, nor was he so dedicated. How could a divorce woman dare? After Lance understood what she meant, he felt a little powerless and fell on the cold glass window. Why do all of you think that I will cheat? He admitted that he was quite a bastard in the past, but he had never been out of line and had never fallen in love with anyone until he met Susan. No, at that time, he did not realize that he liked Susan, so he played with her with a cynical attitude. Who the hell could have thought that after breaking up, he always missed her and always wanted to find her because he liked her? But it was already too late. His body was covered with labels and rumors. No matter how he explained it, Susan did not believe it. What could he do? Chapter 1071 Can't You Feel It? It's not that she don't believe you, but she's afraid. If you can really guarantee that you won't cheat after marriage, then you can wait for a while before chasing after Susan. Don't force her now. Hearing this, Lance was a little surprised and raised his head. Second sister-in-law, didn't you call me out to advise me not to get close to Susan again? A quiet and elegant smile appeared on Scarlet's gentle face. Everything depends on you. As long as you treat Susan sincerely and Susan is willing to follow you, I will naturally not stop you. Lance did not expect to receive Scarlet's understanding and pursed his lips into a straight line. Thank you, second sister-in-law. Scarlet smiled and shook her head. Go in and accompany her. I'll go find your second brother. I don't know where he went. After she finished speaking, she turned to leave, but Lance stopped her again. Second sister-in-law, you just said that Susan has me in her heart, is that true? Scarlet turned back and looked at him strangely. Can't you feel it yourself? Lance recalled the words she had said to him when he carried Susan to the hospital. Was it because she had him in her heart and was afraid that he would think that she was unclean so she explained it? Thinking that Susan also liked him a little in her heart, Lance's eyebrows slowly relaxed. Then second sister-in-law you should go back quickly. Looking at Lance who was waving at her, Scarlet smiled helplessly. Was this a typical case of throwing it away after using it? After Lance hurriedly entered the ward, he saw that Susan was holding a cotton swab to apply medicine and hurriedly went forward to take it. Lie down and don't move. I'll do it. Susan glanced at him and saw a light smile on his handsome face. She frowned slightly. Did Scarlet say anything to you? Lance, who was focused on applying medicine, gradually slowed down his movements. He raised his dark eyes and stared at the pale Susan. Are you afraid that she will tell me something? Lance possessed a set of striking eyes. Whenever his gaze met hers with such intensity, she'd be left disoriented. No. She pretended as if nothing had happened and moved her gaze away. Lance suddenly raised his hand and touched her cheek. When his warm fingertips covered her face, Susan shrank her neck. What are you doing? Does it hurt? The pity in his tone and the gentleness in his movements made Susan stun for a moment. It doesn't hurt anymore. She moved her head away to escape his touch. At the moment, her heart was racked with unease. All she desired was for the wounds she bore to scab over so she could promptly heal them. Thinking of this, she turned her head again and looked at Lance, whose fingers were still in the air. Mr. Lance, there are doctors here to take care of you. You should go back early. Hearing this, Lance slowly retracted his finger. During this period of time, I will stay in the hospital to take care of you. You. I know that you don't want to touch any man now, but please believe me. I won't do anything to you. He knew that she needed time to come out. He would stay by her side and accompany her out of this nightmare. The determination in his eyes made Susan momentarily at a loss for words. Mr. Lance, you have no obligation to take care of me. They're under no obligation. There's no relationship between them anymore, and they've even had quite a few conflicts, which was pretty embarrassing. Lance did not answer Susan. He only grabbed her hand and pressed it on the back of her hand. He lowered his head and continued to apply medicine for her. After taking his medication, he put down the cotton swab, turned around, and walked out. After waiting for a long time and seeing no sign of his return, Susan thought he had left and finally let out a breath of relief. She closed her tired eyes and quickly fell asleep. The man guarding outside waited for her to completely fall asleep before he came in again and sat down in front of the bed. Because of the medicine, Susan slept very deeply and had a nightmare. Cold sweat appeared on her forehead from time to time, and her weak body also curled up. Her hands were always tightly clenched, as if she's struggling with someone in her dream. Her brows were tightly locked, as if she was pulled into the abyss. 
Seeing her in such pain, Lance hesitated again and again, then got up and sat at the head of the bed. Then he carefully carried her into his arms along with the quilt. Sister Susan, don't be afraid. I'm here. Nothing will happen to you. I will always be by your side. Susan, who was in a nightmare, seemed to grab onto a life-saving straw. She tightly grabbed the big hand that was wrapped around her waist. With this hand as support, she gradually calmed down. Seeing that she no longer broke out in cold sweat, Lance carefully released her. He wanted to get off the bed, but his hand was grabbed by her. As if his hand could bring her a sense of security, she hugged him tightly. Looking at Susan, who was like a child who had to seek protection in her dreams, Lance's heart softened. He stared at her face and carefully described it for a while. Then he lay down and hugged her from behind. Smelling the familiar scent that faintly emitted from her hair, the tip of Lance's nose felt a little sour. Susan, I miss you so much. Come back, okay? Come back. Go back to his side. He will do everything he can to love her. He will definitely not let her suffer any more grievances or hurt at all. Susan did not hear it. She only felt a ball of fire wrap around her and took her away from the garden on the top floor. She also escaped the thorn bushes. Chapter 1072 The only way to help was to get it. Jesus told Scarlet that Sebastian was going to deal with something and asked her to wait in the hospital for a while. Scarlet picked a corner and sat down. She didn't look at phone and just sat there quietly. When Sebastian came out of the elevator, he saw the beautiful figure waiting for him from afar. His footsteps slowly stopped. Scarlet noticed that someone was sizing him up and subconsciously raised her head. Only then did she see Sebastian standing far away. She quickly got up and walked towards Sebastian. When she got closer, she realized that there was something wrong with his face. Hubby, what's wrong? Staring at his clear eyes, Sebastian did not dare to look at him for a moment and simply looked away from her. Sensing his unnatural expression, Scarlet tiptoed and used both hands to hold his beautiful face. What's wrong, Mr. Jackman? Who made you unhappy? After getting married, Scarlet's eyes only reflected his face and no longer contained anyone else. Sebastian knew that the person she loved now was him, not Liam. She would never choose to abandon him for Liam. But at the same time, he knew very well that she still felt guilty for Liam. She felt guilty for his legs that could not stand up. If she knew that Liam still missed her and fell into depression because of her, she would feel even more guilty and embarrassed. Liam's depression was severe. No one could save him unless the person who caused his depression helped him. The person who caused his depression had been with him for more than 20 years. Even if there was no love, the kinship would still be there. Moreover, Liam had done everything for her when he was young. For this kindness, Scarlet would definitely help Liam when she found out. How would she help? He couldn't get her, so his longing became disease. Only if he got her could she help him. Sebastian was very clear in his mind. It was because he was too clear that he would have a headache. Seeing that he was looking at her without saying anything, Scarlet slowly put down the hand that was rubbing his face. Hubby, what's wrong with you? His facial features were too three-dimensional, and when he was silent, he was like a statue, which was quite scary. Sebastian came back to his senses, grabbed her hand, put it in his palm, and then opened his thin lips lightly. Scarlet, what would you do if something happened to Liam? What happened to him? The worry and concern in her eyes made Sebastian shake his head subconsciously. He lowered his eyes to hide his hesitation. Seeing him mention Liam inexplicably, Scarlet thought that Sebastian had no sense of security and quickly grabbed his arm to give him a sense of security. Hubby, in order to accompany Susan, Lance purposely sent me away. Now there is no need for me here. Let's go home and catch up on sleep. The sky was already bright. After a whole night of tossing and turning, even the Iron Man was tired, let alone the weak Scarlet. Seeing that she kept yawning and looked exhausted, Sebastian decided to change the time to tell her about Liam. Do you want me to carry you? It was a distance away from the parking lot. She was so sleepy that she could not even walk. Scarlet did not really want him to hug her, but in order to make her husband feel safe, she still obediently reached out her hand. Hubby hug me. Her gentle voice did not have the slightest bit of affectation, but it carried a hint of coquetry. Sebastian's tightly pursed lips curved into an arc. He bent down, picked up Scarlet, held her petite body tightly in his arms and walked towards the parking lot under the frequent gazes of the crowd. Looking at the backs of the two people, Leo heaved a heavy sigh of relief. Then, he took out phone and sent a message to Lanny, asking him to pay more attention to Mr. Jackman's brain disease. 
Mr. Jackman's sudden headache was likely an indication of a recurring brain tumor. Such recurrences are typically caused by excessive use of the brain or certain stimuli. Although he could not say that it was caused by nervousness and anxiety because he had touched Scarlet, Leo was still very worried. It was always right to keep an eye on it. After Scarlet woke up, Sebastian had already gone to the company. Richard said that there was a multinational conference in the morning and he had to preside over it. He left early in the morning, seeing her sleeping soundly, he didn't have the heart to wake her up. The group was very busy and this kind of situation was common. Scarlett did not care and nodded. After accompanying Gianna for breakfast and sending the child to the school bus, she received a call from Lance. Second sister-in-law, come to the hospital to send Susan something to eat. Before Susan woke up, Lance left the ward sensibly. Since Susan didn't want him to accompany her, it was better for him not to show his face. After knowing his thoughts, Scarlett agreed and comforted him, telling him not to be anxious and to take it slow. Lance was much calmer than before. He was not impatient at all. Instead, he could stay quietly behind her. Scarlett saw his change, but she did not say anything. After hanging up the phone, she asked the chef to cook chicken soup and prepare the food. Chapter 1073 Don't Try to Sow Discord Here When she arrived at the hospital carrying a thermos, she saw a crowd of family members blocking the entrance. People in the hospital are calming the family members down, asking them not to be too emotional. But they regardless of anything else kept on raising their banners high and shouting at the top of their lungs. Heartless doctor, pay with your life. Heartless doctor, pay with your life. Scarlett thought it was a medical accident, but when she saw the photo of Landon pasted on the banner, she knew that these family members were coming for Landon. She was a little surprised. After Landon bullied Susan last night, he was thrown to the top floor of Kimberly International. No one paid attention to him. Why did a medical accident suddenly happen? Madam, look at the news. When Scarlett was puzzled, Jesus handed phone to her. She reached out to take it and clicked on the news. When she heard the anchor's words, she realized that Landon had framed Asher for the Nobel Prize in Medicine. She thought that Landon was not a reliable man, at least a good doctor. Unexpectedly, his dissatisfaction and unwillingness to accept defeat are not only directed towards women. Hand Landon over. Yes, hand him over. Otherwise, we will never leave. After the family members made a ruckus to a certain extent, Lanny waved her hand and asked the bodyguards to push Landon out of the hospital. As soon as Landon was pushed out, Mr. Forrest's family members immediately rushed over and beat him up. Even the guards could not stop them. Landon was beaten up by these family members and only then did the bodyguard step forward and hypocritically block for him. Stop it! The police have already intervened in the matter of Dr. Scare deliberately harming the patient and framing Dr. Asher. Let's go back and wait for the results of the police investigation. Landon, who had retreated behind the bodyguard, looked at the group of family members who wanted to tear him apart, and his dark expression gradually climbed up. He clenched his fists and looked around angrily at the crowd who were cursing him. When he saw Scarlet standing in the distance, his eyes suddenly narrowed. Scarlet only stayed for a moment. When the crowd dispersed, she raised her pace and took Jesus through the outpatient clinic to the inpatient department. She came to the seventh floor and saw Lance leaning against the wall with his hands in his pockets. She thought he had left, but she didn't expect him to be so stupid as to wait here. Seventh brother, you go back first. Leave this place to me. Lance shook his head. When she falls asleep, I will go in. Looking at the exhausted Lance, Scarlet sighed helplessly. Then go to the lounge and sleep for a while. When Susan falls asleep, I will call you. Lance thought for two seconds and then nodded. In that case, second sister-in-law, remember to call me. Scarlet acknowledged. Seeing that he had obediently entered the lounge, she turned around and pushed the door open. Susan had already woken up. With the help of the nurse, she had just finished washing her and saw Scarlet walk in. Susan, do you want to drink the chicken soup cooked by my chef? Susan was not in the mood to eat, but the sweet smile on Scarlet's face made her not have the heart to refuse. She nodded. Only then did Scarlet open the thermos box filled with chicken soup, scoop a small spoon, and feed it to her mouth. Ah, open your mouth. Susan's lips rose a little. It's not like I can't move anymore. I don't need you to feed me. She took the spoon from Scarlet, scooped a spoonful, and drank it. Seeing that she was willing to eat, Scarlet knew that the strong Susan would be able to come out soon. As for what happened at the clinic, she would tell her when Susan was better. 
After Susan reluctantly ate some food, the female doctor came in, wanting to change Susan's medicine and apply the medicine. Scarlet quickly got up and made room. She was about to pack up the thermos box when she saw Jesus outside the door making a gesture for her. She hurriedly walked out of the ward and asked Jesus what's wrong. Madam, I need to go to the toilet first. Jesus was a little embarrassed and scratched the back of his head. Jesus had always been following her closely. Even when she went to the toilet he had to greet her. Scarlet felt that it was unnecessary. She told him to go directly to the toilet next time, but he did not listen and had to inform her. Then you should go quickly, Scarlet said awkwardly. With her response, Jesus turned around and rushed to the toilet. As soon as he left, a black figure suddenly appeared in front of Scarlet. Scarlet was shocked. When she saw clearly under the cap and the pair of eyes that had been beaten to a pulp, she finally calmed down. Landon, what are you doing? Landon raised his bandaged hand and took off the mask that covered the lower half of his face, revealing a sinister smile to Scarlet. Miss Sales, I came here to tell you that Liam is suffering from severe depression. Scarlet stiffened and glared at Landon in disbelief. He's fine. How could he have depression? Don't try to sow discord here. He bullied Susan and even came to stop her. What exactly was this person trying to do? Landon's gloomy eyes revealed a faint smile. Do you know why he has depression? Scarlet didn't want to believe him. She turned around and wanted to go back to the ward, but Landon reached out to stop her. After you were with Sebastian, he suffered from severe depression. If you don't believe me, go ask Susan. Her body suddenly froze on the spot, but she heard Landon's cold voice again. Also Sebastian already knew but he just didn't want to tell you Dash. Chapter 1074 is what you said true. Liam had severe depression. Susan knew. Sebastian also knew. The redness on Scarlet's face faded bit by bit. Her white hands were somewhat weak as she supported herself against the wall. Miss Sale's serious depression can kill people. How long do you think Liam can last? The shock and astonishment in her eyes, Landon did not miss it. He was very glad that Susan took him to see Liam at that time. Otherwise, he would not have found a chance to fight back against Sebastian. Landon originally did not want to say it, but Sebastian treated him like this. How could he let Sebastian live well? He wanted Scarlet and Sebastian to become estranged. He wanted Scarlet to be like Liam, suffering from depression and then die. Thinking of this, Landon sneered and took a step forward. Miss Sales, Liam is suffering from depression because he misses you too much. Yet you abandoned him and stayed with Sebastian. Have you ever thought that he would suffer a fate worse than death? Landon's words hit her heart, and the figure hidden in the depths of the dust suddenly broke out of the ground like a ray of light. She remembered how Liam ran to the construction site to help her pay for the medical expenses. At that time, he was only 16 years old. Bent and hunched, unconcerned with the scorching summer days, indifferent to the sweat soaking his back, he lowers his head, gathers all his strength, and works laboriously. When she found out, Liam smiled and said, Scarlet, I am doing this to train my body, not for money. The skin on my palm and the callus on it are all for her. The first half of Liam's life was all for her. Scarlet's hand that was supporting the wall slowly fell down. Seeing her like this, Landon guessed correctly. Miss Sales, Liam lost his legs and could never stand up. He also suffered from severe depression. He will die. He will die. Scarlet raised her pale face and looked at Landon. Is what you said true? Whether it is true or not, go ask Sebastian. He knows everything. Landon smiled, but his expression was extremely dark. But he was afraid of losing you and deliberately did not tell you. He was waiting for Liam to kill himself. He! Before Landon could finish his words, a slap suddenly fell from the sky and landed on Landon's face. Landon, whose cap had been slapped off, raised his resentful eyes and glared at the person who had slapped him. When his gaze landed on Susan's face, his resentment quickly faded and turned into nervousness. Susan! Susan forced herself to stand in front of Scarlet. In those dark red eyes, the colors revealed betrayed no more mercy or hesitation, only remaining hatred. Hatred towards Landon. Susan, don't blame me. I just told Miss Sales what I knew. Otherwise, she would be kept in the dark. Landon ignored the pain on his face and tried to grab Susan's hand, but Susan shook him off. Landon, I really regret taking you to see Liam. Landon knew that Susan took him to see Liam because she wanted Liam to recognize him. Therefore, after he saw that Liam had depression, he helped to keep it a secret and did not tell anyone. 
However, Sebastian had really gone too far. He had clearly promised to let him go back to the country, but now he had ruined his reputation. He won't submit, won't admit defeat. This is simply tit for tat. He's not wrong, absolutely not wrong. Landon clenched his fists and looked at the extremely disappointed Susan and the stunned Scarlet. He slowly curved his lips. Miss Sales, did you hear that? Susan regretted taking me to see Liam. It is enough to prove that what I said is true. You still dare to say it. Susan raised her hand in anger and wanted to slap Landon again, but Landon held her wrist. Do you dare to say that you didn't hide it from Miss Sales? Susan's pale face turned even paler. The back of her hand that had been forcefully grabbed was also in so much pain that she broke out in cold sweat. Scarlet, who had come back to her senses, saw that Landon was grabbing Susan and quickly stepped forward, pushing Landon away. Whether they are hiding it from me or not, this matter has nothing to do with you. Scarlet clenched her fists and forced herself in front of Landon. Don't even think about using Liam to deal with us. The pallor on her face had somehow dissipated, as if she had come to terms with the situation at hand, becoming fearless and resolute. Landon, you schemed to kill someone for your own selfishness, framed Asher, deceived Susan, concealed your past, and drugged her. You are dirty to the extreme. What right do you have to sow discord? Scarlet's scolding voice made Landon suddenly clench his fists. No matter what you say, Sebastian deliberately hid the truth from you. He is waiting for Liam to die. Chapter 1075 Sebastian, he knew. Scarlet felt her chest tighten. Just as she was about to say something, a black figure suddenly rushed over and kicked Landon to the ground. Then the black figure pressed down on Landon. He raised his fist and threw a punch at Landon's face with all his strength. You bullied Susan and you still dare to gossip in front of my second sister-in-law. You are simply courting death. Lance had never hated a person so much that he hoped this person die. He didn't leave any room for retreat. He focused all his strength on his fist and fiercely smashed it towards Landon. Landon had already suffered a knife wound and was beaten up by the family members. How could he withstand such a beating from Lance? Soon his face was covered in bruises and the corners of his mouth were torn apart. After a few punches, he spat out blood. Probably afraid that he would kill someone, Susan and Scarlet quickly stepped forward and pulled away the resentful Lance. At this time, Lanny rushed over with the guards. Several guards came forward, picked up the handcuffs, and cuffed Landon's wrist. Seeing that Landon was subdued by the guards, Lanny turned around, grabbed Susan and Scarlet, and checked them up and down. How is it? Are the two of you okay? Scarlet shook her head and asked Lanny what was going on. Wasn't there a police involved? Why could Landon still run to the inpatient department? Lanny explained that after she handed Landon over to the police, Landon told the police that there was evidence of Mr. Forrest's murder in the office and he hid it. The guards took him to get it, but Landon took the opportunity to shake off the guards and used the familiar terrain of the hospital to rush into the staff passage and shake off the guards. The guards looked around the hospital. When Lanny learned about it, she guessed that Landon must have gone to the inpatient department to find Susan. She hurriedly rushed over with the guards. Landon killed someone and committed an attempted rape. It was enough to lock him up for a lifetime. However, he was a foreigner and involved in the cross country. It took time to convict him. Susan did not expect that not only was there a problem with Landon's moral character, but he also killed the patient for the Nobel Prize in medicine. He even framed Asher. This was no longer a problem of moral character. Instead, this person's heart was extremely dark. He originally thought that Landon was a good doctor. After all, he was very sad because of a patient who died on the surgery table. He felt that he was very weak. It was at that moment that Susan opened her heart and accepted Landon. He felt that he was a good doctor and a good person. He would not hurt her. Looking back now, that moment might have been just a facade put on by Landon in order for her to accept him more quickly. Just like she once said, everyone has two sides. What she saw back then was just one side of Landon. Landon was locked in and it was difficult to come out again. Susan knew that the matter between her and him had come to an end. Just treat it as a nightmare. After the nightmare woke up, it could still remove the thorns and see the light. It was just that it implicated Scarlet and made her feel very guilty. After Landon was taken away by the police, Scarlet only asked Susan if Liam was serious about depression. Susan nodded and she did not say anything else. Seeing her like that, Susan was afraid that it would affect her relationship with Sebastian because of Liam, so he quickly grabbed her cold hand and advised her. Scarlet, Landon is lying to you. 
It is impossible for Sebastian to know. Liam did not intend to tell anyone. If I did not ask, he would not say it. Even Landon, he saw through by himself, so Sebastian. He knows. It was precisely because he knew that he would inexplicably ask her what she would do if something happened to Liam. Susan, who had been interrupted, was stunned on the spot. She frowned and looked at Scarlet, who had a bitter smile on her lips. How could... Seventh brother, help me take care of Susan. I'll go back first. Scarlet smiled and looked at Lance. Lance glanced at Susan subconsciously. Seeing that she did not resist, he nodded and said, I'll take good care of her. It's just that second sister-in-law, second brother, he. I'll go back and ask him. Don't worry. Scarlet interrupted Lance. After that, she turned around and greeted the stunned Lanny. She held phone tightly and walked out of the hospital quickly. Chapter 1076 Divorce, Marry Him After Sebastian was done with the company affairs, he rushed back to Blue Bay Island early. He saw Scarlett sitting in the living room with her head lowered, as if she was thinking about something. He took off his coat and handed it to the servant. He walked towards Scarlett while taking off his tie with one hand. Honey, why didn't you rush the design drawings today? When he came back at this time, she was usually in the book room, but today she was sitting in the living room in a daze. It was a little strange. Hearing Sebastian's cold voice mixed with gentleness, Scarlet slowly raised her chin. My hand is a little tired, so I didn't rush the picture. When Sebastian heard this, he didn't untie his tie. He grabbed her hand and carefully rubbed her wrist. If not for you wanting to complete the project your sister left behind before her death, I would never have made you work so hard. He only wanted to give her the best life and let her live a carefree life. Scarlet stared at the hand that was massaging her. After pondering for a few seconds, she spoke indifferently. Sebastian, do you know that Liam has depression? The finger on his wrist gradually stopped. Sebastian raised his thick and vertical eyelashes and stared at Scarlet's face. Only then did he see her face turn white and her clear eyes were dark red. She already knew so Sebastian lost the opportunity to continue hesitating and thinking. I know. Even though Scarlet already knew the answer, the moment he admitted it himself, he still felt a little uncomfortable. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Sebastian slowly let go of her hand and leaned against the sofa. There was a trace of annoyance in his cold eyes. I was afraid that you would be embarrassed and guilty, so. So you deliberately hid it from me? Sebastian's dark and deep sword-like eyebrows suddenly locked together. Are you questioning me because of Liam? The disappointment in his eyes made Scarlet feel suffocated. I'm not doing it for him. I just think you should tell me in time. So what if I tell you? Will his illness be cured immediately? This sentence made Scarlet retract what she wanted to say. Her clean eyes were slowly filled with anger. No wonder you didn't tell me you actually have such thoughts. Scarlet got up from the sofa, a little angry. When she walked past him, Sebastian stretched out his slender hand and pulled her back onto the sofa. He straightened his body and pressed down on her. After not allowing her to move, he lowered his head and asked her, Now that you know, what are you going to do? His eyes, which were as bright as the star, were now bottomless, and not a single bit of emotion was revealed. Are you going to take care of him or divorce me and then remarry him to save him? Scarlet could hardly believe her eyes as she gazed at the face before her, cold and detached as snow. Sebastian, do you know what you are talking about? If I don't know, will I ask you? Scarlet did not speak again. Her pale face made Sebastian feel very ironic. There are only two ways. Choose one. Knowing that Liam had depression, she would help Liam no matter what, so Sebastian did not ask and directly gave a choice. You are right. I will not watch Liam fall into a terminal illness and be unable to extricate himself. I will definitely help him. It was not because she could not let go of him, but because Liam had treated her sincerely, cared for her, helped her, saved and raised her since childhood. Sebastian should be clear about this, but the words he said at this moment seemed to make her very angry. As for whether to take care of him, or to divorce you and remarry him, I haven't decided yet. Her tone was very calm. It couldn't be seen whether she was angry or she was really planning to do so. Sebastian stared at the indifferent face for a moment, and the blood in his body cooled down. Especially when he saw the determination in her eyes, Sebastian was extremely desperate. I originally thought that you would not abandon me for Liam. But seeing you like this now, it lets me know I'm not very important in your heart. Regardless of whether there was love or not, she always treated Liam differently. Liam was forever a beam that separated them, unable to cross over.
Scarlet could sacrifice her life for Sebastian, but he said that in her heart, he was not very important. After experiencing so much, did he not have the slightest bit of trust to her? The fire in her heart burned more and more, but she did not say anything. She just pushed Sebastian away forcefully, got up from the sofa, picked up phone, and walked out the door. Where are you going? Scarlet ignored Sebastian. The man sitting on the sofa stared at her back. His heart was flustered and his eyes instantly turned red. Are you going to look for Liam? Scarlet, who was changing her shoes, stabbed him without turning her head. Didn't you tell me to remarry him? If I don't go find him, who else can I f Chapter 1077 Of course, there was also selfishness. Even though he knew she was just speaking out of anger, Sebastian's heart was still unable to resist the pain. Scarlet slowly changed her shoes and went to get her clothes. Sebastian did not come over. So she gritted her teeth and walked out directly. The moment the door closed, Sebastian fell on the sofa. His aching temples made it impossible for him to get up and chase her. He turned his head and looked out of the manor through the French window. He felt wrong for no reason. After Scarlet walked out of Blue Bay Island, she did not go anywhere. She only picked a cold place and sat on a tree pier, digesting the anger in her heart alone. She did not know how long she had been sitting there. Only when she saw Sebastian's car speeding past her did she raise her head. After the car drove several hundred meters forward, it suddenly stopped and then fell back. Before the car stopped, the door of the back seat was opened. Sebastian got off the car and walked quickly to Scarlet. Seeing her so hot that her forehead was full of fine sweat, he felt extremely heartbroken. He squatted down, raised his fingers, and helped her wipe the beads of sweat away. Honey, it's too hot outside and it's easy to get heat stroke. Come home with me first. When you calm down, you can quarrel with me, okay? He was obviously angry, but he endured his temper and chased after her to coax her. The anger in Scarlet's heart immediately vanished. Who wants to quarrel with you? There was a bit of grievance in her tone, but it was not as piercing as before. Sebastian heard it and quickly extended his slender hand to her. All right, let's stop arguing. Come home with me. The woman sitting on the tree stump, after glancing at her beautiful hand, stepped directly down along the extended staircase. Is there ice cream bean soup at home? A faint smile gradually appeared on Sebastian's pale face. I don't know. I have to go back and ask Richard. Then let's go back and ask him. Scarlet placed her sweaty hand into his palm and rubbed it. He pissed her off and made her run out. She almost died from the sun. She should disgust him. Sebastian, who had misophobia, did not dislike her at all. He held her hand tightly and pulled her into the car. He even sat in the car and wiped her hands with a wet towel. Looking at Sebastian who treated her so well, Scarlet felt a little guilty. Darling, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have questioned you just now. It was because of what she said that Sebastian would misunderstand, and the two of them also rushed to speak because of this, hurting each other. This was the worst part of their personalities, and they always blurted out things according to their own thoughts before saying anything clearly. Sebastian, who was helping her wipe her sweat, saw her apologize to him, and the grievance that was stuck in his heart suddenly dissipated, leaving only bitterness and sweetness. I didn't control my emotions well and I was not rational enough. The sentence divorced and remarried was indeed quite hurtful, just like how he did not trust her. She had clearly said that she loved him for the rest of her life, so how could he still question her because of the past? Scarlet had a gentle personality and was angry for a while. She would not be too vengeful. If it was any other woman, she might not forgive him. And it was also because he met her who was kind that he had the chance to save her. Otherwise, what could the current him amount to? Sebastian put down the wet towel in his hand and grabbed Scarlet who was sitting next to him. After putting her on his lap, he looked up at her. Landon told me yesterday that he was suffering from depression. I saw that you were too tired and did not tell you in time. Hearing him say this, Scarlet slowly reacted. This was a trap set up by Landon, telling Sebastian first, then telling her, and then sowing discord between the two. Just as Scarlet was about to tell Sebastian that Landon was harming them, he suddenly lowered his thick eyelashes. Of course, I also have selfish motives that I don't want to tell you. Just as she said, she would not watch Liam fall into a terminal illness and be unable to extricate himself. She would definitely help him. If she went to help him, what about him? What should he do? Should he watch his wife take care of others? Moreover, he still had a few months to go to the dark. He didn't want to give up the remaining time to others. Sebastian's dilemma was also Scarlet's dilemma, but 
Even if that youth had depression, he didn't intend to tell her, so how could he make it difficult for her? Thinking of this, Scarlet took the initiative to wrap her arms around Sebastian's neck, lowered her head, and kissed his forehead. Darling, when Susan is better, I will go to the capital with Susan to see him. Do you agree? Before she didn't know this matter, now she knew it, so she had to visit him even if they were no longer lovers, but also a former relative. The hand holding the slender waist seemed to be struggling and hesitating. It tightened a little, but after a moment, it relaxed. I will go. Chapter 1078 Don't covet it anymore, forget it. If you go, will. Scarlet was a little hesitant. She was afraid that when Liam saw Sebastian, his illness would worsen. Whether you are willing or not, you have to bring me along. The man who was holding her, with a hint of jealousy in his cold eyes. I won't see him. Scarlet felt a warmth in her heart. She reached out and pinched his beautiful, jade-like face. Darling, you are so good. Her husband looked strong, but in fact he could give in to anything for her. When she looked at him, her eyes were full of love, which made Sebastian feel inexplicably safe. He raised his hand and grabbed the hand that was touching and pinching his face. If you decide to take care of him, it's fine, but... He lifted Scarlet's chin, and his eyes showed a strong and domineering look. At night, you must return to my side. He could let her take care of Liam during the day, but not at night. He knew that when Scarlet saw the sick Liam, she would definitely feel pity for him. He fears that if they spend too much time together, the feelings from the past twenty-some years would rekindle. It was not that he did not trust Scarlet, but he knew that feelings could not be controlled, just like him. He had once thought of not loving Scarlet, but he still could not control himself and fell in love with her. Therefore, he had decided that if she wavered during the day, he would pull her body and heart back at night. He firmly believed that as long as she was by his side, her heart would be firmly tied by him and she would not be able to run to someone else. Scarlet, who had no idea that he was having a harem drama, lowered her head and kissed his thin lips again giving him a sense of security. Let's go and see the situation first before making a decision. She had to know what kind of situation Liam was before making a decision. Um, seeing that she was willing to take him, the jealousy in the man's eyes faded, replaced by a detached gaze directed at the driver in front. Get down, Dash. The driver looked at the president through the rearview mirror and immediately understood. He was tactful and quickly pushed the door open and got out of the car after pressing the automatic curtains in the car. In the mirror, the luxury car suddenly swayed a few times. K.N.G. seemed to have guessed something. He was so angry that he threw away the telescope. After he threw it away, he felt like he was being silly. Isn't it normal for married couples to do such things? What does he have to be angry about? However, a voice in his heart tells him that doing such a thing in broad daylight is detrimental to the public order, and he should report them to the police. The more KYNG thought about it, the more he felt gloomy in his heart. Coincidentally, at this time, Ian was in high spirits, holding the sunscreen clothes and rushing to him. Young master, I finally found the clothes you wanted. KYNG raised his dark eyes and stared coldly at Ian. Burn it. Ah, burnt it? Why? The young master just saw something in the telescope and is clamoring for everyone to find sun protection clothing. Ian gathered all the servants to look for it. It was not easy to find such a piece. Why didn't he want it? KONG raised his foot and kicked Ian. I told you to burn it. Why are you talking so much nonsense? Ian was very speechless. Just as KONG vented his anger on Ian, Paisley sent him a video. It was a kiss video it said, and there was a text attached to it telling him to find a woman quickly. After staring at this video for two seconds, K.I.N.G. directly blocked it and even deleted her contact information. It was better not to see. Thinking of this, K.I.N.G. kicked Ian who was desperately rubbing his legs to the side. Prepare a private jet. I want to return home. Young master, aren't you going to check on Sebastian? Check what? Check how he is intimate with his wife. After staying here for so long, there was no clue at all. Every day, he saw either him hugging Scarlet or pressing Scarlet against the floor-to-ceiling windows. It was as if he was deliberately angering him. He did not even pull the curtains. If he continued to stay here, his lungs would explode from anger. Ian wanted to say, you peeping at the couple every night with your telescope, surely you can only see their intimate moments. Day after day, you don't do anything else but focus on their private matters. What could you possibly discover? However, Ian did not dare to say anything. He clutched his thigh and limped out. After he walked out, K.I.N.G. picked up the binoculars on the ground and wanted to look again. 
In the end, he did not have the courage to look again. In the end, she was still his wife. He could not covet her any more. Forget it. KYNG took a deep breath, realizing even breathing was painful. How unlucky he was, the first person he fell in love with was someone else's wife. He couldn't steal her, couldn't watch her, couldn't touch her, couldn't even think about her, otherwise, he would be the one with improper thoughts. There probably wasn't anyone more miserable than him in this world. Chapter 1079 Depression was an illness, not emotional. Susan's injury was an external injury. She didn't stay in the hospital for long before she left the hospital. On the day she left the hospital, Lanny came to the ward to help Susan pack her things. Probably because of Landon, Lanny felt guilty every time she saw Susan. She was the one who made the connection. His character was also guaranteed by her. In the end, such a thing happened and made Susan suffer such a loss. She felt sorry. Susan didn't care too much. She also comforted Lanny not to take it to heart. Since she was a child, she had experienced all kinds of disgusting things. It was nothing. Besides, hasn't Landon also been punished? Sebastian knew that it was Landon who used Liam to drive a wedge between them, so he put a little pressure on the person in charge of this case, and soon Landon was sentenced. It was unknown whether Lance had added fuel to the fire or not, but in short, the lawyers invited by Landon's parents were all choked back by a few words from Raven in court. Landon's life imprisonment was a certainty, not because of rape, but deliberate murder of the patient. Mr. Forrest's family members and students were all people with a certain status in the world. If they refused to let Landon go, then they didn't run away. The reason why Sebastian didn't directly deal with Landon before was also because it involved the patient in the hospital. Naturally, it should be handed over to the patient's family to deal with. Lanny was also clear about this. However, because of Landon, it involved Liam's illness. She was afraid that it would affect the relationship between Mr. Jackman and Scarlett, so she was quite worried. Severe depression. It's a terminal illness. It's very difficult to cure. I wonder if something will happen when Scarlett goes to see Liam. Susan, who was changing her clothes, thought of the young man who looked calm but actually had despair in his eyes, and her expression became serious. In fact, as long as Liam puts down Scarlett, he can still come out. As a doctor, Lanny did not think so. Mr. Sage is not necessarily because of obsession. Depression is an illness, not emotions. Just as Susan was about to ask what she should do, a pleasant female voice suddenly came from outside the ward. Little Mr. Jackman, why are you here? Esther had just finished visiting her colleague and came out. She saw Lance with his hands in his pockets and his back against the wall as if he was waiting for someone. From afar, this president of the Asian region looked quite tangible. Esther had a good impression of him, so she came over to greet him. Lance did not have any impression of Esther. After thinking for a long time, he remembered that the other party was Hardville Country's representative, so he nodded lightly. Seeing that the other party did not really want to talk to her, Esther slightly curled the corners of her lips. Her skin was white and her beautiful appearance carried a sense of maturity and allure. Little Mr. Jackman, who are you waiting for? Esther's gaze moved to the inside of the ward, as if she could see the woman's figure through the curtain. She could not help but size her up a few more times. Your girlfriend. Esther's probing tone made Lance impatient. He glanced at her coldly. Future wife. Susan, who was behind the curtain, slowly lowered her head when she heard this. Lanny smiled knowingly. The current Mr. Lance seemed to have been enlightened. He actually knew how to reject the girls around him. Only Esther caught the implication in his words. So you haven't caught her yet? What does it have to do with you? Lance sneered coldly. Little Mr. Jackman, you are very much to my liking. Since you haven't caught someone else yet, you don't mind having another pursuer of yours, right? You and I have only met once. Don't talk nonsense here. Hurry up and go. Lance felt that she was sick. During this period of time, he silently stayed by Susan's side. It was not easy for him to feel that Susan did not reject him so much. He did not want to return to his original form just because of a few words from this woman. He was in a hurry to chase Esther away, but Esther calmly took out a business card and stuffed it into Lance's hand. I heard that Mr. Lance is unrestrained and does not reject anyone. Then in the dead of the night, or when you feel lonely, you can come and find me at any time. Lanny subconsciously looked at Susan. Although there was no change in her expression, the hand holding the clothes tightened a little. She quickly advised her in a small voice, Susan, don't listen to that woman's nonsense. Seventh young master has been very quiet these past few years. He did not randomly look for women. 
Susan raised her eyebrows and revealed a bright and sunny smile. Lanny, whether Mr. Lance is restless or not, I don't care if he found a woman or not. The relationship between me and him is already in the past. There won't be much of a connection in the future. Lance, who had just thrown away the business card and entered the ward, heard this and his expression darkened. He swallowed back the words that he wanted to explain. He almost forgot that during this period of time, Susan had always chased him away. If he had not found an excuse to say that second sister-in-law had asked him to stay and take care of her, he would have been driven away by her. Did Susan really have him in her heart? If she had him in her heart, why would she always refuse him? If not, why would she explain to him that she had not been touched? Even if second sister-in-law had said that Susan had him in her heart before, Lance could not feel it. In his eyes, Susan was like a fog, making people unable to see. Chapter 1080 If you take me with you, maybe you can help Mr. Gatsby. In fact, deep in Susan's heart, there was a shadow of Lance. However, she did not believe in men anymore. She also felt that a person like her was not worthy of talking about marriage. Susan did not wait for Lanny to reply. She directly pulled open the curtain and saw Lance standing there in a daze. The light from outside the window hit him, making his eyes look dark red. Susan did not dare to look at such a Lance. She quickly looked away and lowered her eyes to look at her toes. After standing there for a while, Lance asked, Have you packed everything up? Susan nodded and went to pick up the box next to her. She saw that Lance was one step faster than her and reached out to take it. Let's go, I'll take you home. He did not explain the matter of Esther, nor did he ask what Susan meant by that sentence. He directly picked up the things and left the ward. Looking at the handsome figure, Susan felt a sense of guilt. Lance would rather hold back this than to make a scene with her. He seemed to have matured a lot. Susan, people may be reckless when they are young, but it doesn't mean they won't change for the better, said Lanny. Let's not talk about him anymore. What about you? Dr. Scott has recovered his reputation. Can you still be together? Susan asked. If Asher and I can win against Yin in the lawsuit, then I will definitely be with him and spend the rest of my life with him. Lanny's eyes gradually lowered. She and Frustina's personalities were similar. They always knew what they wanted, what they wanted to do, and what they decided to do. They had always been without hesitation. However, the outcome of this lawsuit was still unclear. For the time being, she chose not to be with Asher in order to protect him and also to not implicate the Scott family. The lawsuit is held in the Capitol, right? It just so happens that Scarlett wants me to accompany her to the Capitol to visit Liam. Why don't you come with us? We can take care of each other. Susan asked. No need. I'll wait for the day before the court session and fly to the Capitol. Let Scarlett focus on dealing with Mr. Sage. Don't let her be distracted, Lanny refused with a smile. Susan knew that Lanny did not like to trouble others, so she nodded. All right, if you need anything, call me. If I can help, I will definitely help. After waving goodbye to Lanny, Susan followed Lance into the car. Originally, Scarlett wanted to pick her up, but Susan felt that it was not a big deal so she did not let Scarlett come. Now there were only the two of them in the car and Susan felt quite uneasy. She lowered the car window and wanted to take a deep breath, but Lance closed the car window and turned on the air conditioner. The moment the temperature dropped, Susan felt uncomfortable and looked at Lance who was concentrating on driving. Although he had been taking care of her during this period of time, the two of them had been silent most of the time. Just like now it was obviously awkward, but they had to get along with each other. Lance really wanted to ask if Susan had him in her heart, but when he thought of what had just happened to her, he gritted his teeth and endured it. Give her a little more time. Scarlett wanted to go to the capital. George and Keanu just happened to come back to visit Gianna, so she entrusted Gianna to the two of them. George was a little older, so he was quite safe. Scarlett was quite at ease with him. As for Keanu, Scarlett looked at Keanu who was lying on the sofa, shaking his feet and ordering Gianna to pick up darts. Keanu, if my husband sees you spoiling his sofa like this, he will definitely come from the company to strangle you. When you leave, I will be the owner of this castle. I can do whatever I want, said Keanu, biting the banana in his hand. If not for the fact that you are my teacher, I would never let you enter my house, said Scarlet, rolling her eyes at him. If you want me to not ruin your house, then make a small golden man for me according to my proportion, said Keanu with a smile. Miss Sales, it's enough for me to see the child alone. Call your bodyguard and throw him out, said George, who was picking up darts with Gianna. Lying to eat, drink, and now he wants to lie to the gold of the host's family, where is his conscience? 
Just as Scarlet was about to reply, she saw Sebastian walk in with steady steps from outside the door. She quickly turned around and wanted to remind Keanu to sit properly, but she saw that Keanu, who had not even worn his shoes just now, had suddenly straightened his suit and sat up straight. His two hands were naturally placed on his knees, and he sat upright with a solemn expression, shocking Scarlet, George, and Gianna. Sebastian looked around with his cold eyes. After not noticing anything, he looked past Keanu and placed his gaze on Scarlet. The helicopter is here. Let's go. Susan is not here yet. Let's wait a bit longer. As soon as he finished speaking, she saw Susan walk in with a suitcase. Along with her was Frost Dinah. Bring me along. Frost Dinah, who was wearing a champagne color dress, had a dignified and elegant posture as she stood at the entrance. I have also suffered from depression. I know how to get out. If you bring me along, I might be able to help Mr. Gatsby. On her beautiful and moving face, there was a clear, clean, and firm, confident smile. It was like the sunlight of the early morning able to cure all things in the world. Chapter 1081 They were alike. They are all people who have fallen into despair for the ones they love, crawled through the mire, struggled through hell, and developed depression because they couldn't get out. The experiences of Frostina and Dev were not similar, but they were also similar. They all gambled all their feelings and tried to love, but in the end they could not love. However, Frostina broke free and knew that the person she tried her best to love was helpless and had no choice but to do it. As for Dev, he had to let go reluctantly, but what's more cruel is that the person who once loved him enough to give everything, fell in love with someone else after he regained his memory. If the hell that Frostina fell into was the 8th floor of the hell, then Dev was the 18th floor. Who could accept someone who had loved her for more than 10 years falling in love with someone else? Frostina could empathize with Dev's despair at this moment, so after she heard about this matter, she packed up her things and rushed over without stopping. For no other reason, only that there was a time when she was so depressed she wanted to commit suicide, and she wished someone would help her, even if they did nothing more than lend her a hand. She didn't know how Dev managed to hold on until now and what belief he relied on to support himself. In short, she didn't want people who suffered from this illness to be powerless to die. Scarlet did not expect Frostina to come, but she had been suffering from depression. Scarlet also knew a little about it. Perhaps she could really help Liam. If you don't find it troublesome, then let's go together. Frostina tilted her head and revealed a dignified and elegant smile to Scarlet. Helping others is a pleasure, why would I think it's troublesome? She also participates in charity work, helping numerous individuals in despair. For her, this is simply doing a good deed. Her temperament was quite gentle and soft. She did not have the airs of a noble lady at all. Instead, she was approachable. Scarlet liked her very much. Blue Bay Island's hostess agreed. As the male host, Sebastian naturally had no objections. She took the three women directly to the helicopter. Around seven o'clock that night, the plane stopped at Sebastian's private villa in the capital. Scarlet saw that it was dark and invited Susan and Frostina to stay at home. When Susan saw the cold Sebastian, he was terrified. Frostina was the same. She did not dare to stay in the same room with her second brother at all. The two of them thought about it and ran away hand in hand. Frostina brought Susan back to her high-end apartment in the imperial capital. It was hundreds of meters wide and decorated with black, white, and gray. There were wine cabinets everywhere, which made Susan a little surprised. This place doesn't seem to match your style. Frostina pulled open the wine cabinet and picked up the wine. She turned around and asked Susan with a smile, what style do I have? You look gentle and elegant. I didn't expect you to be a female tyrant. Susan, who was leaning against the bar, looked at Frostina up and down. The surrounding decor and furniture are all standard for business elites, appearing cold and sterile, devoid of any warmth or comfort. Frostina smiled but did not say anything. He took out a bottle of red wine and took out two goblets with his fingers. He handed them to Susan. Sister Susan, come here and help me. The words Sister Susan made Susan reach out to take the wine. She paused slightly but quickly recovered. It's too late. It's better to drink less. What? Are you afraid that you will reveal your thoughts to me after drinking too much? Frostina smiled. What is there for me to reveal in my heart? Susan asked as she glanced at her. Let's drink a few glasses then. Let's see who will reveal their thoughts first, said Frostina as she touched the goblet in her hand with the wine bottle. Chapter 1082 Simon played along. Susan couldn't take it and immediately agreed. 
After drinking a few cups of wine, she saw that not only did Frostina not fall, but he also looked at her with a straight face and smiled. Only then did she realize that under Frostina's gentle appearance, there was a wild and unruly side. She hurriedly did not dare to drink with her. Forget it, I admit defeat. I won't drink anymore. Sister Susan, if you admit defeat, you have to reveal your thoughts. Frostina smiled and pulled her back. Susan! It was better to live in Scarlet's house, sit on the sofa with Sebastian, and stare at each other. It was a mistake. What do you want to hear? Frostina held the wine glass, turned around, leaned back on the bar, and looked at the traffic outside the French window. Tell me about my seventh brother. Susan's eyes fell. Do you think I have the right to talk about your seventh brother with my current appearance? Frostina retracted her gaze and looked at Susan, who was looking down on herself. As long as you are willing. In her tone, she was dismissive of the secular world, which made Susan feel that Frostina was older than her. Yes, after experiencing such a vigorous and heart-wrenching love and suffering from depression, how could she not mature? However, Susan did not know how to answer her question. She stared at the red wine in her hand and spoke after a long silence. I will not get married again. She did not mention Lance but used one sentence to answer. Frostina was very clear that when a woman no longer loved a man, she would clearly say that she did not love, just like her. However, Susan had some reservations in her words. She would not marry again. It was a self-restraint, but it did not mean that she no longer loved Lance. She felt that her brother still had a chance, but how to grasp it would depend on his own luck. What about you? Susan turned her head and looked at Frostina, who was leaning against the bar counter with her back against the bar counter. The two of them did not turn on all the lights in the huge apartment. They only turned on the warm lights in the bar area. A few warm lights that were not dazzling hit the top of the two heads, emitting a warm light. Are you asking about Raven or Simon? Seeing that she could talk about Raven in such a light tone, she knew that she had really let him go. Can't you give Raven another chance? After knowing that Raven's matter, Susan also felt that he was very pitiful and had nothing left. Your second sister-in-law have experienced life and death, but she still gave your second brother a chance. You and Raven are just misunderstanding why. My second sister-in-law will forgive my second brother. That is because deep in her heart, she still loves my second brother. If she is like me, forcing herself to not love my brother, then my second brother will never be able to save my second sister-in-law, let alone give him a chance. Frostina, who could see everything clearly, spoke indifferently and interrupted Susan. She looked at Frostina and after staring blankly for a few seconds, she slowly retracted her gaze. Then what about Simon? Since she had already put it down, there was no need to mention Raven. He seems to have someone he likes. Ha! Huh. Susan couldn't understand. Then he came all the way here to marry you. People who die in their hearts are the same as whoever they marry. The feeling that Simon gave her was as if he didn't care about anything. She thought about it carefully. The sentence that Simon said that the person I like is married might be true. Only when you lose your love will you feel that it has nothing to do with anyone, as long as the other person is suitable. For example, the previous her. Then this is unfair to you. Frostina looked at Susan and smiled. Sister Susan, don't worry. He doesn't like me and I don't like him. She believed that it wouldn't be long before Simon would send her a message and apologize. Am I as Jackman, why don't we think about it again? Then what were you two doing a while ago? Playing tricks. The two people's thoughts were self-evident and they were stuck in these two words. Chapter 1083 Hubby, Don't Be So Petty on Scarlet's side, she didn't know if it was because she changed the bed or something else, but she still couldn't fall asleep after tossing and turning. She simply opened her eyes and looked at Sebastian who was lying beside her. The man closed his eyes tightly and seemed to have fallen asleep. She reached out, wanting to touch his long eyelashes. But her wrist was grabbed by him and her body was lifted, only to be pulled into his arms. If you think about Liam again and can't sleep, I will punish you. A cold voice with a hint of jealousy came crashing down from above. Scarlet could not help but smile. I'm not thinking about him. Sebastian slowly opened his long vertical eyelashes. Then who are you thinking of? Think about why the moon is so big and round. It makes me unable to sleep. Sebastian followed her line of sight and glanced at the moon outside the French window. He let go of Scarlet, lifted the quilt, got up and closed the curtains, then turned off the night lights. You can't see anything now. Go to sleep. You have to see him tomorrow. 
The last sentence was clearly unhappy, and the sentence was broken through through gritted teeth. Taking advantage of the dark environment where she could not see anything clearly, Scarlet secretly glared at him. Just as she finished staring, a strong arm stretched over and startled her. She had thought that his eyesight was so good that he had actually seen it. Who knew that he would spit out these two words lightly? Pillow. When she could not fall asleep, she liked to lay her head on his arm, nestled in his arms, and then placed her legs on his waist. Every time she put on this posture, she would soon be able to sleep in peace. Sebastian also knew that her habit of sleeping would always accommodate her. Most of the time, when he was numb, he would not move at all. It was very warm. Scarlet leaned over and burrowed into his embrace. She smelled the light scent of snow pine on his body and gradually fell into a dream. Sebastian, who was holding her, listened quietly for a while in the dark night. He was not like before when he heard the word Liam and his heart gradually calmed down. Until now he still did not know why Scarlet said that she loved him for eight years but she would call Liam's name so many times in her sleep. It was precisely because he did not know that most of the time he would sit at the head of the bed alone for a night just to hear if she would still call him Liam. He admitted that he was quite stingy. Whenever he encountered Liam, he would always be nervous and uneasy, just like at this moment, when he knew that she wanted to see Liam tomorrow, he was endlessly agitated. Sebastian did not sleep the whole night. Scarlet probably had something to hide, so she woke up after sleeping for a few hours. After cleaning up, she greeted Sebastian. He ignored her. Darling, you agreed. Since you agreed, don't be so stingy. After a few seconds of silence, Sebastian looked away from phone screen, raised her delicate chin, and focused on Scarlet who had put on light makeup. It's just a visit. Why do you put on makeup? She hadn't slept well last night, leaving dark circles under her eyes. She only used foundation to cover it up. It's not like she intentionally put on makeup. Remove it. Scarlet raised her wrist and looked at her crystal watch. I made an appointment with Susan. I'll see her at 8 o'clock. It's too late. Sebastian's cold thick eyebrows were tightly locked. Then you can go another day. Scarlet had no choice but to return to her room and remove her makeup. Seeing that she had removed her makeup and looked even younger, Sebastian regretted it again. If she went to see Liam like this, wouldn't it bring up the memories of the two when they were young? He stepped forward, untied the ponytail that Scarlet had tied up high, and then casually tied her in a low ponytail. He made her look like a young married woman and then reluctantly let her go out. Just as Scarlet walked out, the man who was staring at her back suddenly got up and went forward to hold her hand. I'll drive you. Sebastian drove the driver out of the car and opened the passenger door, indicating for her to go in. Scarlet felt amused. It was not like she would not come back. There was no need to follow her so closely, right? You should press a monitor on my body instead. This way it could be monitored at any time, lest she ran away. The man holding the car door did not speak. He only raised his cold eyes and glanced into the car. Get in the car. Scarlet helplessly sat in the car. The man then closed the door. His slender figure bypassed the front of the car and returned to the main driver's seat. He started the car. Chapter 1084 Scarlet, Long Time No See The car quickly stopped under Frustina's apartment building. Susan, who was quietly waiting by the side, saw the car coming and quickly stepped forward to open the door. Seeing that it was Sebastian who was driving and Scarlett who was in the passenger seat was dressed like a middle-aged woman, she subconsciously swallowed her saliva. She carefully sat in the back seat. Scarlett asked her if Frostina was not going? Susan only replied it will be a little abrupt if she follows us now. Let us first understand the situation and she will come again. She did not dare to say anything more. Husband sent his wife to see her first love. What kind of azura scene was this? Who dared to say anything? However, along the way, the overall atmosphere was still harmonious. There was no conflict. Until the car stopped in front of Gatsby family's villa, Scarlet's face gradually turned pale. Seeing her like this, Susan remembered that the place where Scarlet knelt in front of Gatsby family's door and begged Liam not to abandon her was here. Familiar memories welled up in her heart, and it made Scarlet hold her chest. After a long time, she slowly recovered her normal expression. However, Sebastian thought that she was nervous and scared because she wanted to see Liam. That was why her face turned pale. His slender fingers, which were holding the steering wheel, were like a ball of fire. He suddenly used a bit of strength. I'll give you two hours. Come out when you're done. Why was there a time? 
Scarlet, who was still thinking about the past, heard this sentence and her eyebrows wrinkled into the shape of a caterpillar in an instant. She felt that Sebastian did not keep his word at all. He clearly said that he would let her take care of Liam in the day and come back at night, but now he had to time? In the back seat, Susan glanced at the unhappy Scarlet and then at the indifferent Sebastian and reached out to push the door in order to prevent Travis from being implicated. Just as she was about to push the door open, the cold, noble voice of the driver rang coldly in the car again. Don't touch, keep your distance. Susan was startled, retracted her hand, and sat down obediently. Scarlet turned her head and stared at Sebastian, grinding her teeth. Is there anything else? Sebastian thought that she wanted him to finish his request in one go. He actually lowered his eyes and began to think seriously. How about this, I'll take you with me. You can watch over me from the side at any time. How about it? Sebastian could hear the dissatisfaction in his tone. He seemed to realize that he had gone a little overboard, so he pursed his lips and stopped talking. However, before Scarlet pushed the door open and got out of the car, Sebastian still said coldly, don't be too engrossed. Remember to miss me. Scarlet. Susan. The creaking sound of the steering wheel scared Susan so much that she quickly jumped out of the car. Scarlet originally did not want to pay attention to him, but she felt that she could understand Sebastian. If he went to see Scarlet, she would probably let her imagination run wild. Thinking of this, she leaned against the seat of the car and leaned over slightly to kiss Sebastian's face. Hubby, don't worry. The person I love is you. This sentence seemed to have magic power. It suddenly calmed the restless Sebastian. His thick eyelashes drooped down, and the corners of his lips were smiling. Yes, I'll wait for you. Scarlet hooked his chin and kissed his thin lips before pushing the door open and getting out of the car. As soon as she closed the car door, she received Susan's big eyes. It's you. If it was me, I wouldn't coax a man. Scarlet was different from Susan, who was resolute and strong-willed. She was very flexible. Sometimes coaxing a man is more useful than quarreling. Look, the man in the car is very assured now. He let her go to see Liam. Finding the right method is quite important. Susan did not dare to agree with this, but she did not refute it. She pulled Scarlet and walked to Gatsby family's villa. The two stepped into Gatsby family's villa just like how they came to find Liam back then. They entered through the front door, crossed the high threshold, and entered step by step. The only difference was that they had risked their lives to break in back then, and now they were respectfully invited in by servants. Probably knowing that they would come in advance, Liam changed into clean clothes, sat on the wheelchair, and stood in the sea of flowers, waiting for them to come. On his clear and handsome face, when he saw the petite figure approaching him in the distance, he gradually changed into a light smile that was as cool as the wind in the moon. Scarlet, long time no see. Chapter 1085 Whatever she said, he would obediently cooperate. Looking into the distance, the man in the sea of flowers still resembles his youthful self, fresh, handsome, and elegantly profound. Familiar faces, familiar figures, gradually becoming clear in sight, Life is like a dream, as if from another lifetime. Every time she took a step closer to him, her heart sank a little. Countless memories flooded in. What she remembered was how Liam treated her. What Liam remembered was Scarlet would never come back. They gazed at each other from afar, one's eyes filled with only her, the others filled with only relief. They had once made a promise to each other for life, even in their next lives, but in the end, she no longer belonged to him. Liam's eyes were covered by clear water mist hiding the darkness deep in hell. After hiding in the water mist, a warm smile appeared on his face. Looking at that gentle smile, Scarlet immediately stopped in front of him, as if she had met an old friend many years later, and stretched out her tender little hand towards him. Liam, long time no see. Staring at the hand in front of me, I silently observed for a few seconds. I then raised my fingers from my lap, gently grabbed that hand, and the moment when it was held in my palm. The rims of Liam's eyes turned red. Mrs. Jackman, long time no see. The words Mrs. Jackman opened up the distance between the two of them. It also made him constantly remind himself that his Scarlet had long been married. Lovers who once loved, after gently touching fingers for a moment, each letting go of each other. One standing, one sitting, suddenly fell into silence. After a few seconds of silence, under the stunned gaze of Liam, Scarlet bent down and squatted in front of him, looking at his legs with pity. Liam, how's your leg now? Liam's reluctant gaze moved away from the hand that held her and landed on Scarlet. The expert that Susan recommended to me said that as long as I cooperate with the treatment, 
I will have a chance to stand up. When Scarlet heard this, a happy smile appeared on her white and clean face. Really? Liam smiled and nodded slightly. He looked at Susan, who was standing next to him. If you don't believe me, ask Susan. Sebastian was the one who found the leg cure expert. Scarlet naturally believed it, but she still turned to look at Susan. I forgot to tell you. The expert did say that as long as he cooperates with the treatment, he will have a chance to stand up. After Susan finished playing the cooperation, she was very worried and frowned at Liam. He had severe depression and lost interest in everything in the world. Would he really cooperate with the treatment? Scarlet was also worried about this, but she did not show it. She only raised her chin and smiled at Liam. Liam, then you must cooperate with the treatment. When you stand up, I will definitely give you a big gift. Liam, who was already in hell, completely did not care whether he could stand up or not, but the hope in Scarlet's eyes made him unable to refuse. Okay. It was not important what great gift it was. As long as she said it, he would obediently cooperate and work hard to do it. He would never let her down. Seeing that he was still the same as when he was young, he answered everything she said and asked for, and she felt guilty again. She raised her eyes and carefully sized up the man on the wheelchair. Although his face was just like before, he was so thin that he could only see his bones without flesh. His weakened body was so light that it was as if a gust of wind could blow him over. Pale as a sheet, with dull eyes, like a person on the brink of death, waiting to die. Tortured by disease, seeing not a glimmer of hope. He probably couldn't sleep well all night. The bottom of his clear eyes were sunken and dark, like a brand that was firmly imprinted on his face. Although Liam had already washed and tidied up in order to see her, she could still see the exhaustion and tiredness emanating from his body. He wanted to hide that he was doing very well, but his condition was not good at all. If she had known that Liam would be like this, she would have preferred that he would lose his memory forever, never to remember her, and be better than this. She lowered her gaze in shame, daring not to meet those eyes for even a second, as if she was afraid that she would burst into tears when she saw nothing but herself reflected back. Chapter 1086 How Are You and Sebastian? Scarlet, Susan told me yesterday that you would come, so I asked Yona to prepare a lot of things you like to eat. Stay for lunch. The moment he received the news, he also hesitated to refuse, but after thinking about it, if he refused to see her, it would make Scarlet think that he couldn't let go. He wanted to let Scarlet know that he let the past go and then let her live with Sebastian peacefully for a lifetime. That was Scarlet's lifelong happiness. It's just that he hasn't seen her in a long time, which makes him sleepless all night. By five o'clock in the morning, he was already sitting in a sea of flowers with his wheelchair, waiting for her arrival. When the morning sun shone down, he finally saw the person he was longing for. The moment he saw her, his heart that was like dead beat again. He understood that he would never be able to let go in this lifetime, but he had to pretend to let go. All right. Scarlet nodded with tears in her eyes. Liam led her in. When they passed by the door, the wheelchair stopped slightly. He remembered that in this position, Scarlet once knelt here, begging him over and over again not to abandon her. If he could transmigrate to that time, he would definitely carry Scarlet and answer her yes. All right, I will never abandon you. But time passes, years cannot be reversed, and some regrets, even if remedied, do not offer a second chance. After Scarlet entered, Yonu, who was already a married woman, hurriedly greeted him. Miss Sales, it's really been a long time. She pulled Scarlet and sized her up from head to toe. I didn't expect you to still be as beautiful as before. You are the same. Looking at the smiling girl in front of her, Scarlet also smiled, but her gaze fell on her stomach. Yonu's stomach was a little revealing and it was obvious that she was pregnant. This is the child of me and Philo. Yonu pointed at her stomach, then reached out to hold Philo, who was standing next to her, and leaned her little head on his arm. Yonu, congratulations. Unexpectedly, the young girl in the past was already a married woman, a mother, and married a well-known Philo. It was good like this. In the face of Scarlet's blessing, Yonu's smiling face seemed to have been filled with honey. It was rosy and glossy, looking very happy. Presumably, Philo treated her very well, so she would always maintain the optimistic mentality of a young girl and be happy. Yona pulled Philo and greeted Scarlet, then chatted for a while. After chatting for a while, she got up and went to the kitchen, saying that she wanted to cook milk tea for Scarlet. Susan wanted to make space for the two of them, so she followed Yonu to the kitchen. After they left, the living room suddenly quieted down. Scarlet looked at Liam. Liam, the atmosphere in your home is quite good. 
Liam, who had been sitting quietly at the side watching her all along, came back to his senses and nodded at her. With Yonu and Philo around, the days are not boring. After Liam finished speaking, he glanced at Philo, who was staring straight at Scarlet, indicating that he should not look at people with this kind of gaze. When Philo received the line of sight, the resentment in his eyes slightly dissipated, but Scarlet still saw it. In fact, when Yonu pulled Philo over to greet her just now, she had already sensed Philo's hostility. He was probably crying out for Liam. Scarlet could also understand and did not take her dissatisfaction to heart. Time passed in silence and Scarlet still did not know how to ask about depression. Just as she was hesitating and considering how to speak, Liam spoke first. Scarlet, how are you and Sebastian doing? Even though he knew that they were doing well, Liam still asked this question, as if he wanted to know some things about her or their deeds. Not bad. These two short words didn't reveal too much about Sebastian, but they already expressed Scarlet's cautiousness towards Sebastian. Chapter 1087 He had always been living by her track. Liam didn't ask any more questions. He lifted his fair hand, picked up the teapot on the table, poured some tea into a small cup, and handed it to Scarlet. When you were young, you saw the director cooking tea. You said that you would become a tea master when you grew up, but you didn't even learn how to taste tea. I wonder if you have learned it now. His relaxed tone caused Scarlet's tense body to gradually relax. She reached out to take the teacup, put it to her lips, slowly took a sip, then smiled. I'm sorry, but I still don't have the talent to taste this tea. What kind of tea is this? Liam's lifeless eyes gradually became colorful when he touched that familiar and sweet smile. He opened the tea box next to him and picked up a small handful of tea leaves with his clean fingers, introducing the variety of tea to Scarlet. It's the Dahonpo tea of the mother tree. There are only six stalks left now. It is definitely a rare tea type. Scarlet seemed to understand and nodded. Liam, when did you like to drink tea? I remember that you didn't like to drink it before. You said you wanted to be a tea master, so I would replace you and become a tea master. Liam, who lived in the past, gave the answer in his heart, but he smiled and did not speak. Seeing that he did not answer, Scarlet thought that the question was a little silly, so she picked up the teacup to drink tea to hide her embarrassment. The two of them were silent for a few seconds. Scarlet put down the teacup, raised her slender eyes and eyelashes, and sized up the quiet Liam. Liam, aren't you going to marry the daughter of Quincy family? Why haven't I heard the news that you are going to get married? Holding the teacup, Liam's expression dimmed, but it was fleeting. I canceled the engagement with Quincy family. Scarlet frowned. Why? Because you and Sebastian have successfully gotten married, I don't have to pretend anymore. Because young mistress of the Quincy family met someone more suitable. Scarlet stared at Liam's clear eyes as if she had seen through something and moved her gaze away. Liam, actually, I'm not very good. You don't have to sacrifice everything for me. It's not worth it. She had always avoided talking about the relationship between the two, but she found that if she wanted Liam to come out, it must involve the past. Between them, there was no way to avoid. Liam's long eyelashes slowly fell down. Scarlet, I have already let you go. What do you mean with the sacrifice? He said that he had already put it down and it seemed a little inappropriate for Scarlet to continue this topic. Liam was still the same as before, always knowing how to make her close her mouth. When Scarlet was silent, Liam revealed a light smile and smiled at her. Did you come today for my depression? She did not know how to speak for a long time. Liam simply took the initiative to talk to her so she would not be too embarrassed. In fact, he did not want Scarlet to know, but he did not expect that Dr. Scarrett would see through it. Even if he did not want to disturb her, he could only disturb her. Yes. Scarlet picked up the teacup again. After answering, she looked at Liam, who seemed to be cut like a piece of jade, with some worry. I heard that your depression has reached a severe stage. I want to stay and accompany you through this unbearable time. Liam's heart trembled. The beautiful scene of living with her appeared in his mind, but it was just a delusion. Who told you that I am severely depressed? He put down the teacup and calmly met Scarlet's inquiring gaze. I'm just a bit depressed, not severe enough to need you to accompany me through the tormenting days. Chapter 1088 Only you live do my half-life live. No matter how natural his appearance was, Scarlet did not believe it. Liam was used to lying to her. Just like when he went to work in the restaurant, she found out it, but he lied to her to help his friends. In this life, no matter what happened, Liam would shoulder it himself and would never implicate her.
Scarlet understood him well enough and knew how deep and hot he was under his ordinary appearance at this moment. Liam, Susan has already told me about your symptoms. Don't lie to me anymore. Liam pretended to think of something and looked at Scarlet with a faint smile. The doctor diagnosed wrong. I didn't have time to tell Susan. I didn't expect you to come. As if to prove the authenticity, Liam took out phone, took out the number of the depression expert, and handed it to Scarlet. If you don't believe me, call my doctor. He can't lie to you when he is unprepared, right? Who knew if he had communicated with the doctor in advance before he knew that he would come? Scarlet frowned and thought for a moment. She reached out and pushed away phone, who was handed over by Liam. Liam, I intend to accompany you every day. Do you really not need it? This could be considered to give him a re-ante opportunity. How could Liam not want it? If you come to accompany me, then what about Sebastian? Scarlet subconsciously looked at her watch. It had not been two hours and she felt relieved. I discussed it with him and he agreed to let me accompany you. Depressed patients do not require advice or warnings, all they need is companionship. Even if no words are spoken, just quietly being there will make them feel better. Scarlet felt that only the doer can untie what he did. Only in this way could he be saved and she could also atone for the guilt buried deep in her heart. When Liam heard that the couple had discussed it, the smile on the corners of his lips gradually turned from light to bitter. Scarlet, there are Yonu, Philo, and my father. There are also doctors and nurses. There are many people around me. I really do not need your company. He had always maintained a sense of justice. Even if he really wanted Scarlet to be by his side, in order to not ruin their relationship, he refused it. The so-called out of sight, out of mind, but if they see each other every day and spend morning and evening together, who could control the feelings that grow freely? He was not talking about Scarlet, but he was afraid that he would not be able to control himself. His obsession in this life was her alone. When she was close to him, how could he not want to get it? Being rejected by him, Scarlet's hand holding the teacup tightened slightly. She knew that Liam was afraid that he would give her a hard time. So she rejected her good intentions. However, severe depression was a terminal illness. He would really die. She did not want Liam to suddenly commit suicide in various ways someday. She was very afraid that she, who was in a town's own body, would receive the news of his death one day. She would definitely die of guilt for this moment. Liam, I know what you care about, but I still want to help you. She clenched her fists, rubbed her palms a few times with her fingertips, and gritted her teeth. Even though we've drifted apart, you've always been a vital figure in my heart, the one who worked tirelessly to provide for me since childhood. The love and kindness you've shown me, I've always kept them implanted in my heart, daring not to forget. Therefore, I don't want you to be tortured by depression, I just want you to live well because... At this point, Scarlet took a deep breath and looked up at Liam. Tears rolled down her face. Only you are alive do my half-life, is alive. Liam had given her the first half of her life, how could she forget it so easily? Her tears were like boiling water, smashing into Liam's heart, making his eyes red. Scarlet, don't worry. I will live well. The belief that kept him alive was Scarlet. I know that if something happens to me you will definitely be sad, so I will definitely live well. It was because of her that he was able to compete with severe depression. Otherwise, he would have been unable to hold on for a long time. Liam looked at Scarlet with tears in his eyes, revealing a faint, clean and clear smile. You promised me your next life. I have to wait until you leave this world so that I can go. Otherwise, if I were to go first, what if I get assigned to reincarnate in advance? He said his inner decision as if he was joking. I have to wait for you to cross the bridge together, forget the things of this lifetime, and then hold hands to go to our next life. Scarlet promised a lifetime to Sebastian, but before that, she promised to give the next life to Liam. He remembered, and she also remembered. You are so silly. Liam laughed again. If I am not stupid, how could I forget you? This sentence made Scarlet burst into tears. Chapter 1089 When Will You Come Out? When Liam saw this, he laughed at her for being a little crying baby. You liked to cry when you were a child. I didn't expect you to be so old and still cry so often. He complained about her, but he was very considerate. He took a tissue from the side and wiped her tears. Halfway through, he saw the wedding ring on her raised hand. Then he slowly put it down. Scarlet, don't worry about me. Good people have their own destiny. I will definitely live longer than anyone else. After Scarlet wiped away her tears with her hand, she looked at the smiling man and nodded lightly. I have a friend. She has also suffered from depression. 
but she came out. I brought her here tomorrow and asked her to tell you how to come through it. She knew that Liam was stubborn and would not easily change what he had decided. Since he did not agree, then she would change the way. Liam had refused her offer of company. If he refused her good intentions she brought, it would show that he was too sensitive and too resistant. So he agreed. Okay, I'll listen to you. Even if she arranged for him to marry someone else, he would not complain. As if they two had made their past clear, the atmosphere between the two gradually relaxed. Change to another type of tea. Let's see if you can taste it. Seeing that Liam was going to flip through the tea leaves in the tea box again, Scarlett hurriedly reached out to stop her. Mr. Sage, please spare me. I really know nothing about tea leaves. At most, she had learned how to cook tea in the video. She could not be considered as a master. She only knew how to pretend to be like a master. So please don't torture her. The words Mr. Sage reminded Liam of the year when he was in his second year of middle school. He was patient and gave her a good review of mathematics. At that time, Scarlett was at the bottom of the math test, only 27 points at the bottom of the class, holding the test paper, running to the high school and crying. Liam couldn't bear to let her cry. Every day, after finishing his job and returning home, he grabbed her, who was curled up in bed, pressed her on the desk of the book and gave her a supplementary lesson. When she was trapped by a pile of math questions, she would hold a pen and roll her eyes at him, mocking him for being very strict than a teacher. For this reason, he even called him Mr. Sage for half a year. It was only when her score went from 27 to 98 did she change back to call him Liam. Thinking of the past, Liam's eyes were filled with a gentle smile. His heavy heart that was deep in the swamp seemed to have climbed out a few points. It seemed that with her here, he would not be too desperate. But if he was selfish and occupied her, then the other man would definitely sink into the swamp. There was no solution between them, but the person who was rushing towards each other now was no longer the Mr. Sage of the past, but the Sebastian who could support her. Liam was clear in his heart. He knew it all along. It was precisely because of this clarity that he was so restrained and so unrestrained as to miss the past. Liam slowly withdrew his distant thoughts and looked back at Scarlet. Since you don't want to drink tea, then I'll take you to see the sea of flowers. All right. Seeing that she was more interested in flowers than tea, Liam smiled and put down the teacup. He called Philo to push the wheelchair, and Scarlet was one step ahead of Philo, holding the handle of the wheelchair. Let me do it. She pushed Liam and walked into the garden. Gatsby Group's villa was in the Roma I style. The house was in the middle, surrounded by sea of flowers. Scarlet pushed him from the backyard to the front yard. The man sitting in the car happened to see the woman pushing the man out as he turned his head and his looks crossed over the fence. The golden sunlight shone through the mottled shadows of the trees and on the two of them, making them look like a pair of perfect couple. Perhaps it was because Liam was not in good health, but his face turned pale when he came out to bask in the sun. Seeing that his forehead was full of fine sweat, Scarlet quickly bent down to persuade him. Liam, why don't you go back? Liam raised his bony fingers and gently waved them. I planted a pear tree that you like the most. I haven't brought you to see it yet. In his garden, he planted the flowers that Scarlet liked when she was young. In this way, he missed the past and made up for it. However, he built a wall and buried the two of them into the wall as a sacrifice. There was a wet towel in the pocket behind the wheelchair. After two seconds of hesitation, Scarlet took out the wet towel. She wanted to give it to him, but when she touched the thin figure, she slowly retracted her hand. She crouched down next to the wheelchair and wiped the cold sweat on his forehead with a wet towel. In the past, when she was sick, he always took care of her like this. He always remembered this kindness. Liam was stunned, and his eyes unconsciously turned red. When this scene fell into Sebastian's eyes, his deep black pupils suddenly tightened. The anxiety that he had finally calmed down came to his mind in an instant. Scarlet! I told you not to be too engrossed, but with your current appearance, not only are you immersed in it, you are also very selfless. Sebastian reached out, picked up phone that placed in the car, unlocked the key, and clicked open her WhatsApp. Two hours have passed. When will you come out? After he sent it, he turned his head to look at the two people in the garden. Chapter 1090A Perfect Match Scarlet did not look at phone. She only focused on wiping Liam's forehead. The man who was carefully taken care of stared at her for a while before speaking indifferently. Scarlet, you're already married. Don't take care of me like this. It's not suitable. Scarlet pursed her lips, a shallow smile appearing in her eyes. Liam, if you don't mind, let me treat you as my brother. 
It was a very cruel words, but this was the final destination of the two of them. The endless kindness, the unforgettable feelings, let it be turned into family love. Liam's eyes were instantly covered by mist and the sparkling tears made him raise his head slightly. The sunlight in the blue sky and white clouds through the dense and lush branches refracted down and pierced into his eyes. It was clearly very painful, but he faced the light and forced the tears back, pretending to smile as if nothing had happened. Then I'll have to trouble little sister to help me wipe my face again. He lowered his head slightly and moved in front of Scarlet. The joy in his tone seemed to be very approving of his younger sister. Seeing that he agreed, the smile on Scarlet's lips became more relaxed. She picked up the wet towel again and wiped his face. After that, she got up and pushed the wheelchair. The two of them came to the pear tree. Liam looked at the branch that had not bloomed and smiled. Scarlet, by next spring, this pear tree will bloom with white flowers. It will be very beautiful. Scarlet followed his line of sight, facing the sunlight, looking at the big pear tree, and nodded lightly. Then, wait until next spring, I will accompany you to look at pear blossoms. Liam turned back and looked at Scarlet with a smile. Is this an agreement? Well, of course it is an agreement. Somehow moved, Liam felt that the sentence was like a life-saving straw, suddenly pulling him out of the abyss. Then next spring, brother will wait for your arrival, you do not go back on your word. Okay. The sweet voice that Scarlet agreed with made a smile appear in Liam's eyes. Since he could not be with her together in this life, then let him live in her world as her brother. Looking at the two figures that complemented each other through the window, Sebastian slowly retracted her hand. The scene of their men and women talking and laughing made him feel that they should be like this in the first place. And he was just an outsider who had suddenly barged in during the time that the two of them had missed. As soon as this thought came out, Sebastian's thick eyelashes fell down, and his line of sight gradually became dazed. The pain from his temples made him uncontrollably lift his slender fingers and press them against his forehead. He endured the pain and raised his eyes that were as cold as snow. He looked at the two of them as if he was looking at a distant star. Liam prepared a lot of things that Scarlet liked to eat. The table was filled with a dazzling array of delicacies. After Yonu warmly welcomed Scarlet to sit down, she took Philo and the servants out of the restaurant, leaving the three of them some space to reminisce. Susan often came, but she was not polite. She took some food and occasionally gave some to Scarlet, telling her not to be too restrained. Liam also used a pair of chopsticks, picked up a piece of beef, and put it into Scarlet's bowl. I remember that you used to like beef very much, but I didn't let you eat enough. Now you should eat more. Although she looked much healthier than a few years ago, he still hoped that she could eat more. Okay. Scarlet obediently agreed, picked up the chopsticks, picked up the beef, and put it into her mouth. It was indeed tender and juicy, but she didn't know when it started, but she didn't like eating beef anymore. She remembered that when she followed Sebastian to E-Mansion, he would always let the star chef cook some delicious food for her. It was at that time that it was changed by Sebastian. She didn't expect that the human heart would change and the taste would also change. People are really a complicated specie. Thinking of Sebastian, Scarlet quickly raised her wrist and looked at the time on her watch. Four hours had passed, two hours more than the time that Sebastian had scheduled. She quickly put down her chopsticks and unlocked phone. There was no phone call, only one message. Seeing the message sent two hours ago, Scarlet felt a little uneasy and held phone tightly. As if he could read her mind, Liam's eyes changed slightly, but he said calmly, Scarlet, Susan, I have to go to the company to deal with the affairs in the afternoon. I'm afraid I can't accompany you more. He was afraid that Scarlet would be embarrassed to mention leaving, so he found a suitable step for himself. Okay, if you have something to do, you can go ahead. We will come to see you tomorrow. Liam nodded, picked up the beef, put it into Scarlet's bowl, and advised her to eat more. Susan did not answer, only looked at Liam meaningfully, but did not say anything. The three people were quiet for a while and then talked and laughed. After lunch, they got up. On the other hand, Susan did not want to take Sebastian's car. On the other hand, she had something to say to Liam, so she let Scarlet go first. Scarlet came out of the villa, but she did not see Sebastian. There was only one driver standing guard in front of the car door. She asked the driver where Sebastian went. The driver shook his head and could not tell where his president went. Scarlet's heart sank. She bent down and sat in the car while calling Sebastian. Chapter 1091 It's All My Fault Sebastian did not pick up her call. Scarlet held phone and asked the driver to drive faster. In the capital villa, Sebastian was lying on the sofa. 
The private doctor was checking his head. Doctor, how's it? Leo, who was standing next to him, saw that Mr. Jackman had such a serious headache. He was so scared that he quickly called the doctor. After the doctor finished checking, he put down the instrument, took off the sterile gloves and replied to Leo. Looking at Mr. Jackman, it should be a headache caused by excessive brain stimulation. Leo glanced at the frowning Sebastian and sent his wife to see his predecessor. How could he not be stimulated? Is there a relapse of the brain tumor there? I haven't found any signs of this condition at the moment. However, my equipment is limited, so I advise you to go to the hospital for a more thorough checkup. After the doctor finished speaking, he took out two bottles of medicine from the medicine box and handed them to Leo. This is a medicine that suppresses pain. When it hurts, take it out and eat two pieces respectively. After Leo took the medicine, he looked up worriedly. Is there anything else I need to pay attention to? After having brain surgery, aside from maintaining a light diet, it is essential to avoid any emotional aggravation, even the slightest disturbance is unadvisable. Additionally, one must absolutely avoid overusing the brain. Coincidentally, Sebastian saw Scarlet wiping Liam's forehead. He was stimulated by a bit, and because of his imagination, he overused his brain and took both. It's best to keep Mr. Jackman's mood stable. Otherwise, it's just a headache now. In the future, his blood pressure will rise, and it's easy to cause brain hemorrhage. Leo wrote it down one by one, sent the doctor away, and then returned. He poured medicine and water for Sebastian. Seeing that he had finished drinking, Leo opened his mouth to persuade him. Mr. Jackman, he, Liam, is sick and you are also sick. If you agree to Madam to save Liam, who will save you? It is better not to let Madam go again. The man who had been closing his eyes and eyelashes slightly opened his eyes and his cold, snow-like gaze fell on Leo. It is just a small problem. It can't be considered as an illness. Leo wanted to say something, but Sebastian glanced out of the window and saw a car driving into the manor. Get out and keep your mouth tight. Leo followed his line of sight and saw that the person who pushed the door open was Scarlet. Only then did he understand what Mr. Jackman meant. He stared at Sebastian for a few seconds, but in the end he did not say anything. He only sighed helplessly, raised his steps, and turned to leave. Scarlet got out of the car and went straight to the master bedroom on the second floor. When she saw the figure standing in front of the floor-to-ceiling window, she breathed a sigh of relief. Darling, I'm sorry. I forgot to look at the time. I made you wait for a long time. She walked over and wrapped her arms around Sebastian's waist from behind, pressing her face against his broad and firm back. His suit shirt was ironed by perfume and always emitted a faint fragrance. Smelling this familiar fragrance, her worried mood gradually calmed down. Darling, have you eaten? Are you hungry? The tall man lowered his thick eyelashes and looked at the white hand holding his waist. His eyes were as bright as stars. After staring at it for a moment, he raised his hand and slowly pulled away Scarlet's fingers. I'm not hungry. The cold and indifferent words showed his dissatisfaction at the moment. Scarlet thought that he was angry because she came out two hours late. She quickly reached out to hug him again. Darling, don't be angry. It's all my fault. I didn't come out in time. When she hugged him from the front and looked up at him, she found that Sebastian's face was a little pale and there were traces of suppressing the pain on his face. Chapter 1092 Who Do You Love? Darling, what's wrong? Scarlet reached out and touched the face, but Sebastian held her wrist. Her right hand wiped Liam's forehead and face. He minded it. He knew that he was a little unreasonable, but he was uncomfortable. This kind of uncomfortable feeling was like being swallowed by a trapped beast, biting him to death. He remembered that he could not lose his temper, could not be cold and violent, so he gritted his teeth and suppressed this strange and agitated emotion. I'm fine. Don't worry. But your face. Even his thin lips were pale as if he had just experienced a sharp pain. He looked extremely haggard. Tell me, are you feeling unwell? Scarlet was very distressed and wanted to touch his face again. However, he calmly pulled her wrist and went to the bathroom. He turned on the faucet in the sink and placed her right hand under the water. Your palm is covered in sweat. Wash it clean and hug me again. Scarlet raised her eyes and looked at the strange Sebastian. He clearly didn't mind that her hand was sweaty before, but now. She couldn't describe the feeling, but she felt that the current Sebastian was a little cold. Sebastian was neither fast nor slow, helping her wash her hands over and over again. In the future, if you go to see Liam, I won't accompany you. Why? Didn't he want to be by her side? Sebastian did not respond. 
His indifferent eyes were so deep that one could not see his emotions clearly. He wiped her fingers, threw away the tissue, and washed his hands with the wash. Looking at the man standing in front of the sink, silent, Scarlet frowned deeply. Hubby, I thought you were just joking when you set the timing. I didn't expect you to be so serious. Every time she faced such a cold Sebastian, she was afraid in her heart, but she still mustered the courage to hug him. I promise you that when I meet Liam tomorrow, I will stay for two hours and leave. Don't be angry with me, okay? She pounced over like a ball of hot flames. When it burned into his skin, the frost on his body melted quietly. Sebastian turned around, picked up Scarlet, put her on the sink, and raised her delicate lower jaw to look at her. You can stay as long as you want. Don't worry about me. Scarlet could still hear his angry words. She quickly wrapped her arms around his neck and took the initiative to peck his pale lips. Hubby, what should I do? Then you won't be angry. When the soft lips gently touched the thin lips, his sexy Adam's apple rolled up and down uncontrollably. I'm not angry. He was obviously moved, but he still had to be stubborn. Seeing him like this, Scarlet used her delicate lips to peck his cheek. One hour for one time. Two hours later. I'll give it to you twice, okay? Sebastian seemed to have not expected that she would take the initiative to make up for it. His cold eyebrows, like a green mountain, gently raised. I don't want it. Scarlet stared at the pale face in front of him. After thinking for a few seconds, she reached out again and touched his face. Darling, you look very uncomfortable. I take you to the hospital, okay? She wanted to come down from the sink, but Sebastian held her waist. Kiss me. Scarlet did not know why he suddenly changed his mind. After a moment of being stunned, she lifted his face and lowered her head to kiss him. When she kissed him, she saw that he had not closed his eyes. She thought that it would be fine if he just tasted it, but she did not expect him to suddenly open his lips. When the two thin lips touched her red lips, Scarlet felt his kiss. It was both crazy and strong as if he wanted to swallow her alive. He pressed her down on the sink and asked for a straightforward answer. It was a sharp contrast with the cold look he had just said, I don't want it. Sebastian opened his eyes and looked at the woman who tightly wrapped her hands around his neck and inserted her sharp nails into his back. Chapter 1093 I won't be like this again in the future. I love you. Scarlet, who was deep in lust, was not clear-headed, but her heart knew what she was going to do, so she blurted it out naturally. After getting her answer, Sebastian's agitated heart gradually calmed down, but his movements did not stop at all. Only when she cried out did he let her go. Sebastian's skills in bed were outstanding. Scarlet had already experienced it a long time ago. If he wanted her, it would be suffocating and fatal. There was no way to struggle. But tonight, he was particularly different. He was crazy enough to want her again and again without stopping. Scarlet wrapped herself in a thin quilt, raised her slender and slightly curled eyelashes and looked at Sebastian beside her. Darling, don't worry. I love you very much. She knew that he had been seeking solace in her because he was uneasy and afraid that she would be shaken when she saw Liam. She felt guilty and pity for Liam, but there was no love. She knew very well in her heart, so how could she be swayed? I know. When she was at her peak, she spoke again and again in his ear. Husby, I love you. And he knew that she loved him very much, but... My mental cleanliness is quite serious. If you see him again in the future, don't touch him intimately. I will mind it. He minded it very much. He could tolerate his wife saving a person who was suffering from severe depression. However, he could not tolerate her touching any man other than him. Rather, it should be said that he could not tolerate her touching Liam. That was her first love, who knew that when they touched each other, the old feelings would rise again. He admitted that he was a little stingy, but so what? In the face of love, there was no room for sand in his eyes. Scarlet was stunned for a few seconds and then realized, did you see me wiping Liam's forehead today? Sebastian pursed his thin lips and did not speak, but his appearance had already given her the answer. No wonder he dragged her to the bathroom to wash her hands as soon as she came back. It turned out that he had seen it. Scarlet opened his lips and wanted to say something, but Sebastian picked her up, held her legs, and let her sit on his waist. Only this once. There will be no next time. Sebastian carried her to the book table, swept away the things on the book table, and put her down. This height is just right. Let's do it again. What he said was not a question, but an affirmative sentence. He lifted her pajamas and directly rushed into her body. He used a lot of strength. After he finished, he carried her back to bed. 
When he hugged her from behind to sleep, Scarlet, who was too tired to speak, still spoke softly. I'm sorry. I saw that Liam was so skinny because of depression. I felt pity for him so. Scarlet paused and did not speak again. No matter how she explained it, she had overstepped. She did not pay attention to propriety which made Sebastian lose her sense of security. I promise that I will keep a distance from him in the future. I won't do this again. The hand that was on her waist suddenly tightened. The mind and frustration in his heart gradually dissipated because of these two words. He actually didn't know what he was doing, nor did he know why he had to worry about his gains and losses and let his imagination run wild. He clearly knew that if not for Liam, Scarlet might not have been able to grow up alive, so why would he mind so much? Hubby, I was wrong. Don't be angry at me, okay? When Sebastian heard this, he was a little ashamed. He pulled her body over and let her lie on his body. He raised his slender fingers and touched her hair. Are you tired? Um. Scarlet obediently nodded her head. Her tired eyes were suffused with a scattering light, but because she was afraid that he would be angry, she forced herself not to sleep. Seeing her like this, Sebastian was very distressed and hugged her waist tightly. She was so slim that he could hold her with one hand. But he still used so much strength to torment her. Sebastian's hand followed her hair and caressed her thin back, gently patting her and coaxing her. If you are tired, then sleep. His tone softened, as if he was no longer angry and did not blame her. Only then did Scarlet place her little head on his firm and strong chest. She closed her eyes. The man who hugged her to sleep did not fall asleep. He only hugged her and looked out of the window at the moonlight. After an unknown period of time, the woman in his arms suddenly opened her mouth and said, Liam Dash, Chapter 1094 Sorry, I should have asked you earlier. Sebastian's heart skipped a beat. The blood flowing in his body suddenly stopped. Even his hands that were holding her became cold. He lowered his eyes in disbelief. He looked at the woman in his arms. He opened his thin lips and wanted to ask her, but he couldn't make a sound. When he was holding her and doing the most intimate matter, she said that the person she loved was only him. Why would she call out Liam's name in her sleep? Did, did it mean that even Scarlet herself didn't know that deep in her heart, there was actually Liam? What about the ratio? What was the ratio? More than him, or less than him? Feeling his body stiffen, Scarlet quickly raised her head and looked at the pale man. Hubby I? Before she could finish her sentence, Sebastian grabbed her wrist tightly. Whose name did you call in your sleep just now? He was very strong and Scarlet's hand was small and thin. It was quite painful to be grabbed by him like this. Scarlet endured the pain and continued to explain, Hubby, I didn't fall asleep just now. I just wanted to talk to you about the meeting with Liam today. I was afraid that you would mind after I told you his name, so I didn't continue to talk about it. I made you misunderstand. I'm very sorry but I didn't call his name in my sleep. Sebastian's clenched fists and gradually loosened. His pale lips didn't fade. It was like many years ago when he heard her call Liam again and again. It made him very uncomfortable. It was the kind of discomfort that he couldn't control. This kind of discomfort made him push Scarlet away. He lifted the quilt and got up from the bed. His tall and straight figure casually put on some clothes. He turned around and walked to the desk. He took out a box of cigarettes from inside. When he touched the thin cigarette, Scarlet pressed her fingertips with her white hand. There was no light in the room. There was only light moonlight. Through the gaps of the curtains, it shone in and fell on the two people. In such a dark ring, one bowed his head and the other looked up at each other. In the end, Scarlet reached out her hands and wrapped them around Sebastian's waist. Have I never told you why I called Liam's name in my sleep? She asked. Sebastian did not answer her, but he was very eager to know the reason. This way he would no longer be afraid to hear her call Liam's name in the dark night. He would not have to worry and panic after hearing her call his name. She loved him very much. Similarly, he loved her very much. He loved her so much that even the slightest movement about Liam would make him lose all sense of security and he would become extremely abnormal. He could not even control his emotions. Seeing that his eyebrows were furrowed and his expression was painful, Scarlet could not help but raise her hand and touch his eyebrows. I didn't tell you before because I thought that Liam was my first love. Whether it was good or bad, I shouldn't talk about it. But now that you are so afraid, I think I should confess to you. After she put down her hand, she let go of Sebastian and then stared at his beautiful face. I separated from him because his twin brother kicked me twice and crushed my man-made heart leaving a very serious psychological shadow on me. 
Later, I couldn't escape the fate of being kicked in every nightmare. In my dream, I kept calling his name because I was begging him to let me go. When Sebastian heard this, his tense body slowly relaxed, but he looked at Scarlet in disbelief. You didn't lie to me? He always thought that the reason she called Liam's name in her sleep was because she loved him deeply, because she missed him, but she never thought that it was because she was afraid. Even later, when he knew the reason why she and Liam separated, he thought that she couldn't let go of him, so she cried and called Liam in her dream. If she was really just afraid, then didn't he misunderstand her for many years and because of this misunderstanding he was so cold to her. Sebastian was both shocked and distressed. He grabbed Scarlet's little hand and placed it in the direction of his heart, letting her touch his heart and answer him. Scarlet looked up at Sebastian, whose eyes were full of remorse, and said word by word, I didn't lie to you. After receiving her confirmation, the self-blame in Sebastian's eyes deepened. If at that time after she woke up, he would grab her and ask her clearly, if they would miss out on it for so many years? Sebastian could not find the answer, so he only took a step forward and pulled Scarlet into his arms. I'm sorry. I should have asked you earlier. I shouldn't have minded my own business and let my imagination run wild. Scarlet shook her head. Didn't she also not say anything? She was also in the wrong. It was just that. Scarlet slowly lowered her head. After hesitating for a moment, she still asked. Sebastian, we have experienced so much. I have also said many times that I love you. Why do you still feel insecure because of Liam? Today she helped Liam wipe his face, making him feel insecure. It was normal for him to be jealous and mind. But most of the time when it came to Liam, he would be very nervous. She thought that after experiencing so much between them, he would understand that she did not have Liam in her heart, but he still did not feel safe, not at all. Chapter 1095 I Will Die a Horrible Death When Sebastian, who was hugging her, heard her question, he weakly buried his chin into the depths of her neck. Because you loved Liam, loved him as much as you loved me. If it was anyone else, Sebastian would not be so afraid and would not mind, but Liam was different. For you he died of love and depression. He loved you so much that I was very afraid. Sebastian took a deep breath and endured the pain that came from his heart. He said softly, I am very afraid. You will fall in love with him again because you're soft-hearted. Just like when he begged her, begged her to pity him and begged her to be with him. At that time, he was healthy and had no depression. She was still soft-hearted and promised to be with him. Now Liam has become like this because of her. She should be even more soft-hearted. If she fell in love with Liam again because of her soft-heartedness, what should he do? He knew that he should not have such thoughts, but... Scarlet once loved Liam so much, but didn't she not love him any more later? He was so scared, so scared that one day, she would not love him like she did not love Liam. After Scarlet understood what Sebastian was worried about, she raised her delicate hand and touched his thick black hair. Her actions were filled with pity and heartache. Hubby, I don't love Liam anymore. A long time ago, when I knelt down and begged him, and when his big brother pretended to be him and kicked me, and when I was lying in the hospital on the verge of death, I had already exhausted all the love I had for Liam. I didn't love him for a long time, so why would I turn back? After I let him go, I slowly fell in love with you in my heart. Perhaps you would feel very puzzled. Why was it also a misunderstanding? Not only did I forgive you, but I was also with you, but Liam did not. That was because, deep in my heart, I always loved you. That was why I chose you. It's just that between me and Liam, it's not just a simple first love relationship. There's also a family relationship that he once helped me collect the medical fees and made me grow up healthily. If he was just an ordinary predecessor, then he was suffering from depression. Whether it was moderate or heavy, I wouldn't care. It was because of this friendship that I came to the capital to see him after learning that he was suffering from serious depression. Otherwise, there would be no intersection between me and him in this life. Although his legs and depression were caused by me, I wouldn't be soft-hearted and fall in love with him again. I only felt pity and guilt for him, including when I met him today, I only treated him as a family and a patient. I didn't think too much about it at all. After Scarlet finished speaking in one breath, she looked at the moonlight outside the window through the gap in the curtain. I heard that there is the God in this world. I am willing to swear to God that in this life, I will never fall in love with anyone except you. If there is, then I, Scarlet, will die a horrible death. I will not even have my bones left. Her last sentence was like a hammer of thunder. The heavy hammer hit Sebastian in the heart, making his heart tremble. 
It seemed that he could see the miserable appearance of her when she died. He was so scared that he hugged her tightly. Don't scare me with these words. You know what I am most afraid of in my life is to lose you. In his life, only Scarlet, and precisely because of her, he would be worried about his gains and losses, let his imagination run wild, and became anxious because of Liam. Now she told him about her feelings for Liam. She told him everything. She even made it clear when she didn't love Liam and why she didn't love him. She even made such a vicious oath. If he still didn't trust her, then his love for her wouldn't be that deep. I'm sorry. I was too sensitive. She solved the doubts that had been in his heart for many years and dispelled the speculation and uneasiness in his heart. Not only did his scarlet give him an infinite sense of security, but he also found a sense of belonging in his heart. From now on, no matter how much you take care of Liam, I will never let my imagination run wild again. Hearing this, Scarlet finally remembered what she had just wanted to tell him. Since we have already talked about it, then I am not afraid to talk more about Liam. Feeling the man who was holding her nod, Scarlet finally spoke. Just now, I wanted to tell you that Liam refused to let me accompany him, but when I pushed him to the garden for a walk, I saw that the flowers he planted were all things I liked when I was young. I knew that he was trapped in the past and could not walk out. That was why he was suffering from depression and was getting deeper and deeper. That's why I recognized him as my brother and cut off his thoughts about the past. He should know my intentions, so he agreed. I was afraid that I would be too radical and he would not be able to accept it for a while, so I made an agreement with him that I would accompany him to see pear blossoms in the next spring. When he agreed, his eyes were full of relief. He should have accepted it. After telling Sebastian what happened in the garden, Scarlet looked up at the man who was holding her. He refused me. Then I will not take care of him in the future. I will only visit him occasionally as a relative. Chapter 1096 Wife, I Have a Headache when Liam woke up after the operation and had not lost his memory, he had pinched her neck several times and scolded her for being dirty and telling her to get lost. When he saw her go to the hospital to take care of him, he kicked over the soup that she had personally made. At that time, Scarlet did not say anything and only silently accompanied him. She never intended to give up on him, but after he lost his memory, everything changed. Scarlet felt that if Liam immediately recovered his memory and came to find her to resolve the misunderstanding, then she would still return to his side. But when he recovered his memories and came to find her to explain it clearly, five or six years had already passed. At that time, she had already forced herself to not love him and let go. She also knew that Liam had been very good to her, loved her very much, and had paid a lot for her. However, she had already let go of him, so she could no longer repay him with love. She could only accompany and care for him who had severe depression as a relative. However, she was rejected by him. Even so, she still had to visit him. Not to mention how he treated her well when she was a child, just his legs and depression were caused by her. If she did not care, then she would be an ungrateful person. She deserved to die. When Sebastian heard that Liam had rejected Scarlet, he was slightly startled. It seemed that he had not expected him to reject Scarlet. However, when he thought about it carefully, it was not surprising. For Scarlet, Liam would rather suffer from depression to help her. Why would he use illness to keep Scarlet? His situation has always been noble. He is so magnanimous, but it seems that I am too selfish. Scarlet smiled, revealing a tranquil smile. When you agreed to let me accompany him, you were also very generous. These words made Sebastian feel very ashamed. He clearly agreed to it himself, but after seeing them together, he was jealous and noisy. Mr. Jackman, why do I feel like you are a little embarrassed? Sebastian was indeed embarrassed, but he refused to admit it. He quickly shifted his gaze away from Scarlet and changed the topic. He rejected you. Then how are you going to help him? He's not the kind of person who can just stand by and watch someone else die, but in this situation, he's quite troubled and doesn't know how to help the other party. After he rejected me, I proposed to take Frostina to see him. I wanted to see if Frostina has a way to help him out of depression. Hearing this, Sebastian nodded slightly. Maybe Frostina, who took the initiative to follow her, really had a way to help Liam. After everything was clear, Scarlet heaved a heavy sigh of relief. Then she released the hand that was looking at his waist and caressed his face. Now can you tell me why you turned pale this afternoon? She confessed and hoped that he would confess. Sebastian's thick eyelashes drooped down. In his dim vision, Scarlet's delicate and worried face was reflected. He didn't want her to worry, so he just pursed his lips and didn't say a word. Seeing him like this, Scarlet's eyes darkened. 
If you still keep it from me like before, then I won't tell you anything in the future. She changed her heart, drugs for heart, kept taking them, and also medicine to treat infertility. There might be problems somewhere. Sebastian always paid attention to the changes in her body. From time to time, he would ask and Scarlett would also tell him that. But if she kept it from him in the future? Sebastian, who was very concerned about her health, stared at Scarlett's little face. After a moment of hesitation, he slowly opened her mouth. Headache, Chapter 1097 He pulled him to do the examination. Hearing him say that he had a headache, Scarlett's heart stopped and she hurriedly went to stroke his temple. Did it relapse? Thinking of this possibility, she dragged Sebastian out. Go to the hospital for an examination. What she was most afraid of was that something had happened to Sebastian. If something happened to him, she would not be able to live. Sebastian grabbed her wrist and pulled her back into his embrace. Then he hugged her waist and placed her on the table. The doctor checked and said that it was just a headache caused by excessive brain damage. It did not relapse. Don't worry about me. This was the same excuse. When he had a brain tumor, he had also lied to her like this. What was the result? If you want me to not worry, then listen to me. Now follow me to the hospital for a checkup. She knew that Jackman Group had a branch hospital in the capital. No matter how late it was, Sebastian would definitely have a doctor to do a checkup for him. Thinking of this, she didn't care whether he agreed or not. She directly got down from the table and dragging him, they quickly headed towards the dressing room. Only when the checkup says it's okay can I be at ease. Looking at her anxious and nervous back, Sebastian's eyes, which were as cold as snow, were gradually tainted by a faint smile. It's enough to have your concern. I don't want you to be so tired. He had spent a great deal of effort tonight, putting her through a lot of trouble multiple times. How could he bear to have her run around for him in the middle of the night again? He took the shirt that Scarlet took out from the wardrobe and put it back. Then he carried her in a princess carry. Go to sleep first. We'll talk about the it tomorrow. Scarlet still wanted to persuade him, but she was stopped by a strong and overbearing kiss. He hugged her and kissed her all the way from the dressing room to the main bedroom. If he wasn't afraid that she was too tired, he would probably do it again. Fortunately, this kiss in the end was only a shallow taste. That night, Sebastian hugged Scarlet and had the most stable sleep for several years. The next day, Scarlet sent a message to Frost Dinah, saying that she would go to find her later, and then dragged Sebastian directly to Jackman Group Branch, forced him to have a brain examination, waited for the doctor to complete the examination report, asked clearly if there was any recurrence, only then was the suspended heart finally put at ease. When Scarlett asked the doctor about the things to pay attention to, the corners of Sebastian's lips, which were tightly pursed into a straight line, were always uncontrollable and slightly curved. When Leo saw this, he shook his head helplessly. Mr. Jackman clearly wanted Madame to care about him, but he always pretended to be like he didn't need it. It was really childish. After coming out of the hospital, Scarlett was tired and fell on the car chair. From yesterday to last night, he tormented her so much that his legs were still soft. If it wasn't for the worry of Sebastian's relapse in the appointment with Frostina, she would probably be lying on the bed and not even want to move a finger. Seeing that Scarlett was so tired and her eyelids were twitching, Sebastian felt guilty and distressed. He held her waist with one hand and hugged her to lie on his lap. Let's go tomorrow. Let's go back and rest first today. Scarlett, who was nestled in the man's arms, rubbed her head like a kitten. Your sister is also very busy. Don't waste her time. Since they had made an appointment, they should keep watch and not change it. After cursing himself in his heart, Sebastian raised his hand and patted her back. It's still a distance away from her apartment. You should sleep for a while. M.M. Scarlet nodded and moved closer to his arms. Darling, sing a song to coax me to sleep. Chapter 1098 It does not cure the disease. I don't know how to. How could a person who spoke very little know how to sing a song? Scarlet opened her dazed eyes and glanced at him. I thought you knew everything. Sebastian, who couldn't stand it, felt that these words were somewhat familiar. He didn't remember it. He only took out phone and temporarily downloaded the music software. After he installed it, he held Scarlet in one hand and scrolled through the recommended song list with the other. What do you want to hear? I love whatever you sing. After a few seconds of silence, Sebastian casually clicked a song. It was an English song. Fortunately, he had an unforgettable memory. He only listened once and remembered the melody. 
Before he cleared his throat, he lowered his eyes in uncertainty and looked at the person in his arms. Are you sure? Scarlet nodded. He tortured her yesterday, and now she also tormented him. Sebastian had to frown, helpless but spoiled, and reluctant to speak. About five seconds after he sang, Leo, who was sitting in the front seat, suddenly rose the shield. Mr. Jackman, I didn't expect you to sing worse than me. Scarlet, who was originally very sleepy, heard this and leaned on his shoulder, almost laughing. Seeing Scarlet smile, Sebastian did not care about Leo's rudeness and only looked up at the shield. You do it. Leo did not know if it was because he knew that Mr. Jackman was fine so he was in a good mood, or something else, but the usually serious person suddenly began to hum and sing. When Scarlet heard the hoarse voice, she could not help but laugh again. Even the cold Sebastian, the corners of his lips and his eyes were tinged with a smile. Mr. Baber, you're not better than me. Leo was just teasing the president and the president's wife to be happy and did not show her real skills. However, this was not important. What was important was that the two of them were fine and it was best. Leo drove the car and quickly sent the two to Frustina's apartment. After the two of them went up, Susan helped make coffee and snacks. Frustina looked for Scarlet and asked her about Dev. After a brief understanding, she began to analyze rationally. Second sister-in-law, people who are suffering from depression are very afraid of loneliness. What they need the most is to accompany them. The source of Mr. Gatsby's depression comes from you. If you accompany him and encourage him, it is the best way to help him get out. But he refuses to let you accompany him. It means he hasn't let you go. With you around, he could certainly clutch onto you, his life-saving straw, to pull himself out of the abyss. However, his love for you would only make him sink deeper. Without you, he would be stuck in the past and could never free himself. It's a hopeless situation. However, recognizing him as your brother in this way to cut off his lingering feelings is right. The only method to get him out of his rut is by letting him let go of you, to remove you from his heart, just like how I force myself to stop loving, only then could I completely rid myself of depression. They all suffer from a disease caused by unrequited love. Only by letting go can they escape. Otherwise, they will be trapped forever, unable to get out. Their only fate ultimately leads to suicide as the only form of relief. There are no other solutions because this is a disease that can control both the mind and the body and is very difficult to treat. Scarlet naturally knew this. That was why she wanted to use a accompanying method to reduce Liam's loneliness and help him out. Frostina was right. This way it would not solve the problem. He still had to let go of the past from the bottom of his heart. Then what should we do? Frostina propped up her chin and thought quietly for a while. Then she looked up at Scarlet again. To divert his attention. Ha! Huh. Isn't he treating his legs? Let him focus all his attention on his legs. If he doesn't have time to fall into the past, his days will not be so painful. But undergoing surgery for his leg involves risks and requires a long recovery time. Wouldn't such pain aggravate his illness even more? Susan, who was sitting next to him, asked worriedly. After thinking for a moment, Frostina picked up her bag, took out a medical certificate, and put it on the glass table. I usually enjoy obtaining certifications in my spare time, and I have experience in this type of rehabilitation charity work. I understand the psychology of the disabled very well. Being by his side, providing psychological counseling, encouraging him to persist, encouraging him to keep living, I would be more Chapter 1099 What Could Amias Jackman Do? Wouldn't that delay your time too much? I run a studio so I have relatively flexible hours. Coincidentally, the crafts I designed are currently on display in the capital. With Frustina's temperament, she did it as she pleased. She directly took her bag and got up to leave. Let's go. Take me to see Mr. Gatsby first. Scarlet still wanted to say something, but Frustina interrupted her. This is just my suggestion. Whether Mr. Gatsby agrees or not is another matter. Don't worry about it for now. Wasn't Scarlet afraid that it would be too troublesome for her? However, this was only a preliminary analysis and proposal. Whether it would succeed in the end would depend on Dev's cooperation. Otherwise, it would be a waste to sit here and talk about it. It was better to go and see Dev's situation first. After hearing what Frostina said, Scarlet did not ask any more questions. When she got up, she looked at the man sitting next to her with one hand supporting his chin. Hubby, do you want to go with us? Sebastian raised his eyebrows slightly. No. He had said that he would not mind how she took care of Liam in the future. Since he had decided to give her a great sense of trust, he should trust her 100. 
Then, I'll go home in two hours. Scarlet raised her watch and waved it at him. She had broken her promise yesterday, so she definitely wouldn't today. Sebastian, who had a doting smile on his face, nodded slightly. When the four of them went downstairs, Susan, who was about to get in the car, was stopped by Sebastian. Miss Croft, can I trouble you to do me a favor? Susan let go of the hand holding the car door and turned to look at the tall and strong man in a suit standing in front of the luxury car. What favor? Sebastian looked at phone meaningfully and said indifferently. Just now, Lawyer Raven sent me a message saying that Lance was drunk in the old palace last night and has not woken up yet. Lawyer Raven is dealing with an urgent case and has no time to pick him up. He asked me to pick him up. Speaking of this, Sebastian paused, raised his slender fingers, and pushed the gold-rimmed glasses on the bridge of his nose. It just so happens that I have to go to the branch company and don't have time. I wonder if Miss Croft can help me pick him up. Susan's face turned slightly stiff. She always felt that anyone could help him with this, but Sebastian was looking for her. This made her feel somewhat at a loss. I? Before Susan could refuse, Sebastian had already sent her the address. Miss Croft, thank you. Sebastian put away phone, said thank you, and then turned to sit in the car. Looking at the speeding luxury car, Susan stared at the address on phone, stunned on the spot. In the car, Frostina saw that Susan was hesitant, first locked, and then lowered the window. Sister Susan, you go to pick up my brother. I and second sister-in-law will go to see Mr. Gatsby. But? Before Susan could finish her words, Frostina stepped on the accelerator and drove away. These two siblings, why were they so stubborn that they didn't even listen to people finish talking? Looking at the two cars that were speeding away and thinking that she didn't have a car in the capital, she was so angry that she stomped her feet. You, at least send me to the subway station. Or sending me to the outside of the apartment building, it would be good to make an online appointment. When Frostina realized this and came back, Susan had already disappeared. Scarlet sent her a message and asked her where she was. Susan quickly replied with an emoji pack of, I am very angry, and ignored them. It's over. I have offended my future sister-in-law. Scarlet put down phone and turned to ask Frostina. How do you know that Susan is your future sister-in-law? The pretty and beautiful Frostina glanced at Scarlet through the rearview mirror. A woman's sixth sense. Scarlet, who propped her elbow on the car window and supported her chin with her small palm, was deep in thought. Susan was her sister. If Susan married Lance, then what was Sebastian called Lance? As her thoughts wandered, the car quickly stopped at Gatsby family's villa. Liam was still sitting in the sea of flowers, waiting for Scarlet to arrive. When he saw that the person she had brought was Frostina, his expression became slightly stifled. Without batting an eyelid, he led the two of them into the living room and then called Yonu to make coffee and sweet dishes for the two of them. After the three of them sat down and chatted for a while, Scarlet was a little embarrassed and said, Liam, am I as Jackman, you should know her. She also suffered from depression in the past, but she has already come out. I brought her to see you. Scarlet really wanted to help him. Liam felt her good intentions. When she looked at Frostina again, his expression was not as cold. Am I as Jackman should be different from me, right? If I were different from you, I wouldn't have come. Frostina took a sip of her coffee and said generously, it was precisely because it was the same that she had the confidence to convince Dev, but Dev. From the moment he entered the door his deep and dark gaze never moved away from Scarlet. He seemed to have sunk deeper than her, no wonder he had reached a heavy level. In fact, Liam didn't care about his depression. Anyway it was just that he couldn't sleep at night and would always want to die. He would just have to endure it for a while and it would be over. However this was Scarlet's intention. No matter what he wouldn't let her down. Then does Emias Jackman have any ideas? Chapter 1100 Mr. Gatsby flipped his face faster than flipping a book. Frostina nodded but did not answer him. She only looked at the tea set in the distance. Mr. Gatsby knows how to make tea? Liam followed her line of sight and glanced at her. Occasionally. Frostina nodded again and did not say anything else. This made Liam a little confused but he did not force her to say it. His gaze seemed to be indifferent as he glanced at Scarlet, who was eating the sweet food with her head lowered. After she came yesterday, Liam slept for an hour more than usual. He also had a happy dream. In that dream, he and Scarlet fulfilled the promise they made when they were young. They got married and had children. They hugged each other and lived together until they grew old. When he woke up from the dream, Liam looked out of the window at the moonlight. He changed the image of him in the dream to Sebastian. 
Then he walked out of the dream. Seeing that Frostina did not mention the treatment plan, Scarlet looked up at her slightly. Frostina gave her a no-rush look and asked Liam, Mr. Gatsby, can you take me to visit your house? The small eyes of the two people were all in Liam's eyes. He did not care and nodded, follow me. Second sister-in-law, you haven't eaten much breakfast. Eat some sweet stuff first, Frostina said as she stood up and pressed Scarlet's shoulder. Scarlet immediately understood. Frostina wanted to talk to Liam alone, so she nodded. Liam, you take her. I'll eat something first to fill my stomach. What do you want to eat? Just tell Yonu. Don't stand on ceremony. Liam, who was still chewing on the two words, second sister-in-law, in his heart, smiled bitterly and said. Scarlet answered obediently. She lowered her head and continued to eat her sweet food. She did not dare to look up at Liam. Compared to yesterday today, she was too distant. In his eyes, Liam seemed to have guessed that she had quarreled with Sebastian after returning from her place and had reconciled. His expression was unclear whether it was joy or sadness. He took Frostina through the corridor and came to the back garden. Although it was summer, he planted a lot of flowers. The hot wind blew over, bringing with it the fragrance of flowers. Mr. Gatsby, the environment in your home is like a beautiful plant park. Frostina smelled the fragrance of flowers. There were flowers everywhere. There were many varieties and all kinds of flowers. Moreover, it could be seen that every flower had been carefully taken care of. Even in summer, it was full of vitality. After leaving Scarlet's sight, Liam's gentle and refined face gradually became cold. What do you want to say, Amias Jackman? Seeing that he changed his face faster than flipping through a book, Frostina raised her eyebrows. I didn't expect that Mr. Gatsby's real face was like this. Liam, who was sitting on the wheelchair, placed his elbows behind the arms of the wheelchair on both sides. He put his hands together and raised his cold eyes to look at Frostina who was sitting under the umbrella. I have never changed. He had always been like this. It was only when he faced Scarlet and Susan that he would be gentler. He was always indifferent and distant to unfamiliar women. Otherwise, when he helped Sebastian at the wedding, why would he warn Sebastian not to use cold violence? It was precisely because he was the same kind of person as Sebastian that he used experience to remind him to cherish and not miss it. Frostina was only here to do public welfare. She was too lazy to care about his temperament and directly pointed out the topic, I want to ask you, if I have a way to help you get out of depression, will you cooperate with me? I understand my symptoms myself. It's impossible for you to help me walk out, and I don't want to walk out either, Liam said indifferently. If he walked out, it meant that he would let go of Scarlet. He had once let go of Scarlet and missed each other's lives. It was impossible for him to let her go a second time. I know you don't want to let go of my second sister-in-law, but have you ever thought about her feelings? Frostina asked with a darkened expression. My matters have nothing to do with her, Liam frowned. Frostina sat up straight and stared at the extremely stubborn man. But your legs, your depression, are all related to her. In my second sister-in-law's heart, she has always thought that this was caused by her. She has always felt guilty towards you. Even when mentioning you, she is very remorseful. If you don't come out and start your life again, she will spend the rest of her life with guilt towards you. Chapter 1101 Coming to this world was a tribulation. As soon as these words came out, Liam's cold face gradually became a bit stiff. My leg was caused by myself. I was also suffering from depression myself. It has nothing to do with her. I'll go find her and make it clear. Seeing that he was pushing the wheelchair and was about to turn around, Frostina stretched out her high heels and grabbed his wheel. Liam turned her head and looked at Frostina who raised his chin and raised his eyebrows at him. You! After Frostina stopped him from leaving, she crossed her arms around her chest and said coldly to Liam, Mr. Gatsby, have you heard of a sentence? I didn't kill Boren, but Boren died because of me. My second sister-in-law is like this. No matter what you say that it has nothing to do with her, she will take it on herself. Because you have done too much for her. She can't repay it in this lifetime. She can only live with my second brother with such guilt in her heart. Whenever they mention you, they are more or less an insurmountable beam. Only if you put it down can my second sister-in-law really remove the stone on her body. I have dragged her down, Liam said weakly. I don't mean it that way. What I mean is, if you really care about her, then you should be more concerned about your legs and your depression. They are all things that make her feel guilty. If you cure your legs, stand up again, and then defeat your depression, she will be able to relax. For Stina shook her head. Liam turned his head and looked through the long corridor in the living room at Scarlet, 
who was sitting on the sofa and drinking her coffee obediently. A gentle light came in from outside the French window and reflected on her body, emitting a golden light. It was like the first time he was moved by her when he grew up. She was always sweet and quiet, like a clear stream flowing in his heart. She had been gentle and loving to everyone since she was young. She was also too obedient and sensible. To what extent, as long as others liked her, she would like others. She would even give everything for this love. She lacked love but knew how to be grateful. If not for her fundamentally emotive understanding, why then, after suffering such harm, could she forgive him with just one explanation? It's just that he came too late. Otherwise, with her kindness, he could still have had another chance with her. How could such a gentle person not feel guilt because of him? Even though she did not cause his paraplegia or depression, she would still take all the blame onto herself out of their past friendship. It is his insistence on past issues that keeps her living in guilt. Liam's gaze slowly lowered and fell on his legs. It was because of her guilt that she asked Sebastian to find an expert to treat his legs. However, he was depressed and did not want to treat them. Did it mean that if he did not stand up, she would not be at peace? Frostina did not know what he was thinking. She only loosened her high heels that were stuck on the wheel, took back her feet, and sat upright. Mr. Gatsby, we came to the world to experience the joys and sorrows of life. There are no obstacles that can't be overcome. Just treat it as you are here to overcome the tribulation. If you overcome it, in the future, when you two meet again, you can also smile at each other. If you can't overcome it, then let my second sister-in-law accompany you to be trapped in the past of the two of you. One is in pain and one is guilty. You will live like this forever. If you choose the former, I will stay and help you. If you choose the latter, I will leave now. Which one will you choose? This could be considered that she had put the choice right in Liam's hands. But Frostina didn't know. For Scarlet, he had chosen the former in his heart. You are not an expert in depression, nor a psychologist, nor a doctor who treats the legs. What can you do for me? Liam asked. Seeing that he was showing signs of loosening his grip, Frostina took out his certificate and a psychologist as well as a pile of other certificates and handed them to Liam. I help people who lost their legs before to stand up again. I believe that as long as you are willing to cooperate, I can help you. However, I hope that you won't be too embarrassed when we get along. That is the decision of the elders. It has nothing to do with me. If she didn't mention this, he wouldn't remember it. He would never marry anyone in his life. Even if he cured his legs and cured his depression, he would only stay in the capital and pay attention to her occasionally. That was enough. Frostina didn't care if he would marry or not. She didn't answer the topic that had nothing to do with her. Since you agree, remember to call me when you treat your legs, Frostina said. She took out a business card and handed it to Liam. Liam originally did not want to treat them. Anyway, he was already used to it. However, Frostina was right. If he cared about her, he would care more about her. He did not want her to feel guilty for his legs in depression. I need surgery. It might not be so fast. I will wait for your call. Goodbye. Frostina waved her hand. Chapter 1102 If they did not know each other, they would not be lovesick. How much do you need? Liam stopped her. Frostina originally wanted to say that it was for public welfare, but she was afraid that he would not accept it, so she changed her words. One million, Mr. Gatsby can afford it, right? Other physical therapists would at most cost more than a hundred thousand. Frostina deliberately raised the cost, making it easier for Liam to feel at ease and accept her help. Liam, who did not know what Frostina meant, felt that the number of one million was extremely ironic. It was like a fishbone stuck in his throat, and his face was pale. I can afford it. The current him was naturally able to afford it. Seeing that he agreed, Frostina directly turned around. After staying in the same place for a while, Liam turned his wheelchair back to the living room. She probably wanted to say hello to him, but Scarlet had not left yet. Liam, we will go back first today. I will come to see you another day. Liam nodded and smiled. Scarlet, I am going abroad for surgery. I will not be in the capital for the next few months. You don't have to come to see me. Philo, who was waiting next to him, looked at Liam thoughtfully. The expert said that he could have surgery in the country, but he was going abroad. What did this mean? Did the expert say that you have to go abroad for a leg operation? Yes. The fingers on Liam's legs were slightly closed and clasped in his palm. The domestic medical equipment is not so advanced. The expert suggested that I go abroad for surgery. After that, he looked at Frostina who was standing next to her. 
when I come back from the operation, I will ask Emmaus Jackman to help me with rehabilitation therapy. Frostina seemed to see through Liam's thoughts and nodded at Scarlet. I have already discussed with Mr. Gatsby. When he comes back after the operation, I will help him. Scarlet looked at Liam's legs for a moment and then looked away. Which country are you in? Susan and I will visit you together. The expression in Liam's eyes was dark and unclear. It's just a small operation. It's not necessary for you to visit me. Moreover, you and Susan are here. I still have to take care of you. Wait for me to come back and we family will meet again. The address set a clear boundary, just like when they were children, sister, brother, younger sister. They were a family that relied on each other, harmonious and joyful. However, as they grew up, they went their separate ways, each with their own lives. They maintained a certain distance, but cared for each other in their hearts. From time to time, when they were free, they would meet. This was family. The meaning behind Liam's words made Scarlet, who had maintained a sense of alienation, feel a little ashamed. It was probably because he saw that she was in a difficult situation that he refused her visit. Seeing that her body seemed to be covered by a heavy stone, Liam spoke again. Don't worry. With Philo watching me, nothing will happen to me. Liam glanced at Philo who was standing at the side, and then Philo helplessly replied. Miss Sales, don't worry. Scarlet lowered her eyes slightly. After hesitating for a few seconds, she slowly raised her eyes. When her clear eyes looked at the man sitting on the wheelchair, she slowly revealed a faint smile. Okay, when you finish the operation and come back healthy, my big gift will not be absent. She had said that when he could stand up, she would give him a big gift. For your big gift, I will come back healthy. Liam smiled and nodded. He waved goodbye to her again. Goodbye, Scarlet. Goodbye, Liam. Watching the figure pass through Gatsby family's threshold and walk out of Gatsby family's villa, the sadness in Liam's eyes burst out, and the hazy mist instantly stained his eyes. After my sight became blurred, I couldn't even clearly see that charming figure. I didn't dare to blink for fear that tears would gush out. In his younger days, he read many books. The most memorable was a line of poetry from a master, it's best not to wish to meet, so as not to fall in love. It's best not to know each other, so as not to yearn. At that time, he thought that only by experiencing the eight sufferings of life as stated by Buddha, birth, aging, sickness, death, separation from loved ones, meeting those who are repugnant, not obtaining what one seeks, and the suffering from the five aggregates. Could one not live in vain in this world? Now that he personally experienced the love, separation, and unfulfilled longing, he finally understood the turbulent ups and downs, the heart-wrenching pain it brought, and he thought, if at first we did not meet, could it be we would not long for each? Chapter 1103 Susan, why are you here? In the old palace of the imperial capital, Susan picked up phone. After confirming the number of the private room door, she pushed the door open and entered. The inside was pitch black, with no lights on and no curtains drawn. Nothing was visible, only a pungent smell of alcohol filled the air. Miss Croft, Mr. Lance is asleep inside. Our people can't wake him up. Please take him away the staff member said. The total is 550,000. I'll have to trouble Miss Croft to pay for him first, the staff member said. Susan pinched her nose, took the menu and looked at it. Lance always only drank good wine, so this little consumption was not surprising. After finishing reading, she pulled out a card from her bag, handed it to the staff, then turned around, stepped into the compartment in her high heels. A live figure reclines on the couch, a blazer draped over his abdomen. The collar of his white shirt slightly undone, revealing a tantalizingly alluring Adam's apple, as well as a sharply defined collarbone. Under the light, his handsome face was dyed with a faint red glow, making his already white skin even redder. At this time, Lance was already asleep. Her closed eyelashes were long, casting a fan-shaped shadow under the silkworms. It was half-transparent, like a butterfly resting. A thick head of hair is combed back, revealing a smooth forehead. Perhaps due to tossing and turning during sleep, Strands of hair have fallen onto either side of the forehead, contributing to a sense of chaos and disarray. Looking at Lance like this, Susan found the reason why she was so excited back then. After staring at him quietly for a while, she slowly squatted down and pushed his arm. Lance, wake up. I'm here to take you home. The man who had drunk several bottles of red wine seemed to feel annoyed by the noise. With a frown of impatience, he turned around, facing the inside of the sofa, and in a daze, grabbed a pillow to hold in his arms. He was sleeping soundly. He hugged the pillow tightly and curled up into a ball like a child who had not yet grown up. 
Susan knew that he was drunk. After he went crazy from drinking, he needed to sleep a lot. No one could wake him up. Feeling helpless, Susan went out to find the staff and paid some money to make room for Lance to sleep first. She sat next to Lance, picked up phone and asked Scarlett if Liam had agreed to Frostina's suggestion. After receiving the other party's reply that he had agreed, she heaved a sigh of relief. It was unknown how much time had passed, but Lance's slender hand moved, and his closed eyelashes struggled to open a crack. The moment he woke up, his brain felt like it was about to explode. The pain caused him to furrow his thick eyebrows, his fingers uncontrollably pressing against his forehead. Sister Susan, it's a headache. Where's the hangover soup? The words he casually muttered caused him to pause in shock. And it also shocked Susan. He was clearly facing the sofa, so it was impossible for him to see her. How could he? Susan lowered her head. She recalled the first sentence Lance said when he woke up from his hangover when they were together. It was because she was used to making soup for him to relieve his stomach. It was also because he was used to drinking the soup she made that he murmured these words. Lance was stunned for a moment, then smiled. He laughed at himself. Susan didn't care about him anymore, so how could she make soup for him? It was really wishful thinking. He threw away the pillow in his hand and turned around to think about it. He saw Susan holding the water and appearing in front of him now. You. Why are you here? Lance was shocked when he saw that it was Su Chapter 1104 Mr. Lance just treated as you getting drunk. Your second brother asked me to come pick you up. After saying that, Susan bent down and handed the water in her hand to Lance's lips. There's no hangover soup. Drink some water first to relieve it. The stunned Lance looked at Susan and then looked at the water she handed over. He was a little surprised and happy. He opened his lips and slowly drank the cup of water. Strange, he never noticed any flavor in this mineral water before, but right now he could taste a hint of sweetness. Could it be that the water in the capital is better than in a town? Seeing that Lance had finished a whole glass of water, Susan put down the glass and went up to help him. Let's go, I'll take you home. When he placed his soft fingers on his arm, Lance's heart trembled. A numbing sensation swept past like an electric current, and even his limbs and bones became numb. After he stood up, he lowered his eyes to look at Susan, who was half a head shorter than her, but held onto his tall body, thank you. Where's your car? Susan shook her head. Lance, who had a headache, turned around and looked at his coat. He wanted to bend down to take the key from the coat, but because he could not stand steadily, he suddenly fell on the sofa, along with Susan, who was supporting him. Coincidentally, Lance was lying on his back and Susan was lying on his body. The moment they fell down, they brushed past their lips. It was just a light touch and it passed in an instant. The two of them were stunned on the spot. Susan was the first to react. She wanted to get up from him, but Lance grabbed her waist. Sister Susan. He called her name but didn't speak. The desire in his eyes was clearly visible, bold, and unhidden. He had wanted her for two years, but not once had he succeeded. He could only suppress this desire in the bottom of his heart. Probably because he had accumulated for a long time, or maybe because he had drunk too much wine, Lance could not control himself. He held the back of Susan's head, raised his chin slightly, and kissed her. The moment he kissed the woman's lips, Lance's heart beat nonstop, and even the hand that held her waist subconsciously tightened. Lance was both afraid and careful. He kissed Susan carefully, his fingers on the back of her head. From time to time, he would touch her ears and pass the signal he wanted to her. Susan stared at Lance, whose eyes were tightly closed, extremely sunken and frightened. His eyelashes were drooping and he was a little flustered and even at a loss. His kisses have always been gentle and flirtatious with masterful skills, bringing not just comfort, but a transcendent sensation. They were very compatible in bed. Just a kiss could let each other experience the love of men and women, but compared to desire, Susan paid more attention to reason. She stared at Lance and after a moment of silence, she gently pushed him away. Mr. Lance, just treat it as you are drunk. She got up from his body, picked up his coat, placed it at the corner of her arm, then reached out her other hand and handed it to him, go back. Lance only kissed her for a moment, the lust in his body burned to the point that even his fingertips were burning hot, but when he saw her calm expression, the fire all over his body was extinguished. He forced himself to sit up straight from the sofa, and after rubbing his temples with his slender fingers, he grabbed Susan's hand, and then used her strength to get up. Susan supported the swaying Lance out of the room. The staff saw that she had woken him up and thanked her with great gratitude. Then she handed her card back to Susan. Welcome the two of you to visit next time. 
Chapter 1105 What Was Their Relationship? Susan helped Lance to the underground parking lot. She opened the car door and helped him into the passenger seat. After fastening his seatbelt, she bypassed the front of the car and sat in the main driver's seat. Before starting the car, Susan turned her head and looked at Lance who was lying in the car chair, which was so painful that he pressed his head hard. Where's your address? Lance had a private villa in the capital, but when they were together, he had never brought Susan here. She did not know. Open the navigation, the address is on it. Lance handed phone to her with his eyes closed. Password, your birthday. He added. Her hand that took phone trembled slightly. When they were in love, Susan was also unreasonable and insisted that Lance used her birthday as phone's password. Lance didn't know whether he liked to disagree with her or not, but he refused. Now, after two years of separation, he used her birthday as a password. She frowned. After entering the password, she opened the navigation, opened the address, and drove to Lance's villa in the capital. With one hand on his forehead, Lance did not dare to turn his head to look at her. He only glanced at the rearview mirror from time to time. After looking at it for about ten times, he opened the storage box and took out a black card from it and handed it to her. This card was yours before. He had given her an unlimited amount of black cards. After they broke up, Susan returned it to him. Now he gave it back to her. It was to return the 550,000 yuan spent in the private room. No need I have money. What she lacked the least right now was money. Lance knew that she did not lack money but he still leaned over and stuffed the black card into her bag. Be prepared for a rainy day. In fact, Susan had been with him for so long and had never used his money. The card he gave had never been swiped. At most it was kept by her. She glanced at Lance and wanted to say something. Seeing that he closed his eyes again, she gritted her teeth and swallowed it back. The car quickly stopped in front of the villa. The housekeeper who was waiting at the door saw that someone was supporting Lance to come down. He quickly wanted to go forward to support him, but Lance glanced at him. The housekeeper immediately knew what to do. He turned around and quickly walked back. He pretended not to see anything. Even when Susan sent Lance back to the house, the housekeeper and the servant did not appear. Why don't you even invite a housekeeper to stay? I don't live here often. Why do I have a housekeeper? If he hired a nanny, she could leave after handing him over to the nanny. She put the coat in her hand on the back of the sofa chair and looked at Lance. Can you do it yourself? Lance, who was already sitting on the sofa, put his elbows on his knees, raised his hands, and pressed his forehead with all his might. At least make me a bowl of hangover soup, okay? Didn't she see that he was about to die from the pain? Can't she take care of him first before leaving? Seeing that he was indeed in extreme pain, Susan turned around and went to the kitchen. Looking through the glass at the busy figure in the kitchen, Lance, who was lying on the sofa, the corners of his tightly pursed lips gradually curved into a smile. Susan finished cooking the hangover soup and placed it in front of him. Lance used the excuse of having no strength to take a spoon to let Susan feed him. Susan patiently scooped up a large spoonful and fed it to him. Lance, on the other hand, drank slowly. He dragged on for half an hour before he finished the bowl of soup. When Susan put down the bowl, her wrist was stiff and she was rubbing her hands. A broad hand reached over and gently pressed the bone joints for her. Kissing, giving her black card, and touching. What was their relationship? After a moment of silence, Susan pushed away Lance's hand and got up with her bag. You have a good rest. I will go back first. Lance still wanted to call out to Susan, but she quickly fled his villa as if she was running away. Looking at the figure that quickly left, Lance still had a smile in his eyes. It was only when the butler held a black card in front of him that his smile gradually collapsed. This was left by the young lady in the kitchen just now. If she did not accept his money, did it mean that she did not accept his love? When Lance held the black card and frowned, Raven, who was holding court and helping Lanny and Asher in court today, suddenly called. Lance, bring some people over. Yin hit my client and injured me. He also took Miss Lanny away dash. Chapter 1106 I don't have this kind of illness. Lance hung up the phone and rushed out of the villa with a splitting headache. Seeing that Susan was still standing on the side of the road and hailing a cab, he remembered that she did not drive here. He blamed himself for not being careful enough and quickly walked towards her. Susan, something happened to Lanny. Susan, who was looking down at the route of the online taxi, heard that something had happened to Lanny and quickly looked up at Lance. What happened? Get in the car first. Lance handed the car key to Susan, then pulled her hand and walked back. Once the pair had settled into the car, it dawned upon Susan that Lanny and Yen were due at court that day. 
Following the initial trial, Yin attempted to whisk Lanny away. His escapade, however, was thwarted by Asher's intervention. Without uttering a single word, Yin lunged at Asher, initiating a physical altercation. Raven hurried to break it up, only to be wounded by Yan's bodyguards who had been lurking nearby. This was the capital, the territory of Gatsby family and Baber family, so Yin was quite arrogant. He took Lanny into the car. The people sent by Raven said that they got on a helicopter and disappeared in the capital. It was unknown where they flew. After Lance explained the reason, he took out phone and called a group of people. Not long after, a group of luxury cars stopped at the entrance of the hospital. Lance pulled the cold hands and feet of Susan to the ward. When he saw the handsome raven, his face was colored, and the corners of his mouth were split open. His eyebrows were also green, and he could not help but frown. Don't you bring bodyguards with you to court? Raven held his chest where the bodyguard had kicked him, bearing the intense pain. He looked at the two who came in, as well as a group of well-off young men from the capital city. I don't have this kind of young master syndrome. The Rodriguez family also didn't acknowledge his existence. Others used to call him Young Master Raven merely as a courtesy. To him, he was just a lawyer. Since he was a lawyer, his duty was simply to go to court, so why did he need bodyguards? I'm fine, but Dr. Scott is seriously injured. After wiping the blood from the corner of his mouth, Raven looked at the ward opposite him. He just came out of the emergency room. He is still in a coma. When Susan heard that Asher was injured so badly, he quickly turned around and walked to the opposite ward. The place where Asher was injured was his head. His forehead was wrapped in gauze and there were traces of being punched hard on his fair face. It looked terrible. However, he was beaten up to this extent and he even grabbed a piece of beige colored cloth in his hand. This was the cloth on the skirt, which looked like Lanny's clothes. It should be that after being kicked down by Yen, Asher, who was lying on the ground, grabbed Lanny's skirt and did not let Lanny be taken away. Unfortunately, he was outnumbered. How could he be Yen's opponent? Therefore, the cloth of the dress was torn apart, but he still could not catch Lanny. Susan asked the doctor if there would be any sequelae. The doctor said that there was no injury to the vital parts and there would be no sequelae. Only then did she breathe a sigh of relief. Dr. Scott's mind was the most precious treasure in the medical field. The medicine he developed could not only win the medical award, but also benefit patients. He was a rare good doctor. Asher needed to rest. After staying for a while, Susan returned to Raven's ward. Lance had already ordered his brothers to look for Lanny, but Raven felt that the power of the brothers in the capital was inferior to Baber family. It was likely that it would be difficult to find them. I heard that your second brother is also in the capital? Lance, who was leaning on the window platform, frowned. He seemed to be hesitating whether he should alert his second brother. However, this matter was related to Lanny. This was his second brother's subordinate. If something happened to his people, he would most likely not sit idly by. Thinking of this, he took out phone and called Sebastian. Seeing that Lance had informed Sebastian, Susan, who wanted to tell Scarlet, put phone down. Chapter 1107 Scarlet felt uneasy. In order to not let Mr. Jackman and Scarlet worry, Lanny did not tell them that she was going to fight a lawsuit with Yin, so the couple did not know about it. Now that she heard the news that Asher and Raven were beaten and that Lanny was taken away by Yen, Scarlet felt frightened and hurriedly got up. When Sebastian got up, he looked at Frostina who was still sitting on the sofa and hesitating. If you want to go, follow me. Frostina originally planned to leave after sending Scarlet home, but Scarlet invited her to have a cup of coffee at home. She thought that her sister-in-law's family also came in to chat with her. Who would have thought that something happened to Raven? She understood what her second brother meant. He wanted her to go with him to visit Raven, but with her current relationship with Raven, it seemed a little inappropriate to go with him, but... Thinking of how her parents treated Raven and harmed his grandmother. Frostina, who had always felt guilty, hesitated for a few seconds before getting up. The three of them rushed to the hospital and saw Susan standing at the door of the hospital. Scarlet hurriedly walked over and pulled Susan to understand the situation. Then he went to see Asher. Seeing that Asher, who had been so thin because of Landon's slander, was beaten to a bloody state, Scarlet's heart was also clenched. I don't know how heartbroken Lanny was when she saw Asher like this. That bastard Yen was also able to do it, and there was also Raven. Thinking of Raven, Scarlet turned around and walked to the opposite ward. When she saw that Raven, who was sitting at the head of the bed, was also bruised and swollen, she couldn't help but frown. Don't worry. Dr. Scott and lawyer Raven are both injured, but their internal organs are not injured. 
Lanny patted Scarlet on the shoulder, indicating her not to be afraid. Don't worry about Lanny. Mr. Lance has already sent someone to look for her. Now that your husband is here, I believe it won't be long before we can find out where Yin is. Scarlet nodded slightly and sighed in her heart about Lanny's fate. It seemed that as long as Yim was here, Lanny would have an extremely difficult and unfortunate life in her life. Thinking of this, Scarlet asked Susan again what about the lawsuit? Did she lose or win? Susan let out a long sigh. The first trial verdict hasn't come out yet, the incident happened too long ago. Moreover, Yan's lawyer argued that the two had been boyfriend and girlfriend for many years and insisted on changing the rape case into a couple dispute, which led to the fact that there was no immediate verdict, but it had to wait for a period of time. When Scarlett heard this, her brows furrowed even more tightly. He had just left the court and injured the lawyer and the person involved. He even took Lanny away. Isn't he afraid that the court will directly sentence him? Lanny shook her head, expressing that she did not understand. However, Scarlett felt that what Yin did was undoubtedly the truth of raping Lanny. After the court knew about it, he would definitely be sentenced to jail. However, he did not care about it and took Lanny away. A person who did not even care about his escape route, could it be that he wanted to have a life and death struggle? Thinking of this possibility, Scarlett was a little anxious. She looked at Sebastian and saw that he was on the phone to deal with the matter. Only then did she stabilize her panic. With Sebastian here, they should be able to find out Lanny's whereabouts very soon. As long as they found out where she was, they could rescue Lanny. However, if it was in the past, Scarlet would not be too worried about Lanny being taken away by Yen because she always felt that Yen would not hurt Lanny. But this time, she couldn't describe her feelings, but she felt very uneasy. This uneasiness was just like back in the day when she learned that Travis had died. It was very strange. Chapter 1108 To Grow Old Alone and Spend the Rest of His Life Sebastian, who had sent people to search for Lanny, hung up the phone and turned to look at the resentful Leo. Do you want to check it yourself? Leo clenched his fists and shook his head. Mr. Jackman, I'll go back to Baber family. Some grudges should be settled, otherwise, he and his cousin would be disturbed by Baber family forever. Sebastian lowered his eyes and pondered for a few seconds. He raised his hand and sent a team of bodyguards to Leo asking him to take people to Baber family to flip through the old accounts. After Leo left, Sebastian did not plan to stay in the hospital for long. He held Scarlett's hand. Before leaving, he glanced at Lance who was sitting in front of the hospital bed. Lance who had been worried about Raven's injury all along only looked up when he saw that his second brother was about to leave. He just happened to see Frostina standing at the door, holding her bag and looking helpless. He seemed to have just realized something and quickly got up. All right. I have something urgent to deal with. Frostina, help me take care of Raven. Then regardless of whether Frostina agreed or not, he picked up his coat and followed Sebastian out. After getting downstairs, he stopped Susan, I drank some wine and haven't sobered up yet. You can drive me back. Susan looked at Scarlet, who had already sat in the car and was waiting for her. Ask the bodyguards to send you back. I'll go back with Scarlet first and wait for news of Lanny. Lance, whose plan had failed, was a little disappointed, but he did not make trouble at this critical moment. He called a bodyguard to get in the car with him and closed the window. When the car passed by, Susan lowered her eyes. When Scarlet noticed it, she shook her hand. However, she was very considerate and did not say anything. She did not ask anything. As a friend, she also needed to give the other party some space. It was better not to listen too much. After everyone left, Frostina carried her bag and walked to Raven. Are, are you okay? Raven did not expect her to come. There was a glimmer of hope in his eyes, but he was afraid that she would feel uncomfortable. He did not dare to show it. It's just a small injury. It's nothing. Compared to the few knives that blocked for her in the past, what was this injury? Frostina looked at his bleeding corners of his lips. After looking at him for a while, she sat down in front of the bed. Your skills are not as good as my brother. Why are you involved yourself in it? She put down the bag in her hand, took out the disinfectant gauze, and handed it to Raven. Wipe it, the corner of your mouth is still bleeding. Raven subconsciously lowered his eyes and looked at the blood dripping on the quilt. He guessed that at this moment, he must be badly battered and extremely ugly. He was afraid of polluting Frostina's eyes. He hurriedly reached out to take the gauze and wiped his mouth. Seeing him wipe it randomly and rub it everywhere, Frostina frowned and reached out to take the gauze in his hand. Forget it. I'll do it. After she took it, she got up and walked to the wash basin. She dipped it in water and returned to sit down. 
She carefully wiped the blood from the corner of his lips. Looking at the woman who took care of him and placed himself in a land of despair, Raven saw a ray of sunlight shining down on the dark door, warming his heart and lungs. But he was very clear in his heart that Frostina did not love him anymore. She would come to visit him and stay here to take care of him. It was all because of the sins that her parents had committed. Although she had already made it clear with him for this sin, Frostina could not completely cut off all contact with him. At least in this kind of situation where they had to cross paths, she would never break it. Raven thought that it was good to see her occasionally. Unless she got married, he would disappear completely and live his life alone. She did not love him and he did not force her, but he knew that without her, he would not marry her in his life. This infatuation Raven buried deep in his heart and would not let Frostina know, as long as she was happy. After Frostina helped him wipe the blood, she put down the gauze on her hand and asked, When can you be discharged? Raven came back to his senses and said gently, About three days or so. Frostina nodded and turned back to look at the ward opposite him. Is there anyone taking care of Dr. Scott? The person involved is injured. I have to inform his parents, but his parents are abroad. They are coming tomorrow. Your second brother also left two people to take care of him, he added. Frostina nodded again, then sat back down, looking at Raven in silence. Raven didn't know what to say. He wanted to find a topic to talk about, but the nurse came in to measure his blood pressure. When Frostina saw someone coming, she talked to the nurse seldom. It was not as awkward as when they were alone. Chapter 1109 Didn't you think about the punishment by the god? Leo kicked open Baber family's door. Felix Baber and Zuri Seeger, who were eating at the dining table, were shocked when they saw that the person who broke in was Leo. Zuri was Leo's biological mother. After the two separated, they rarely met. When Leo was young, Zuri would occasionally visit him at a town. However, after being discovered by Leo once, Zuri did not dare to go. That time, Leo scolded her as a mistress, killed the mother of other child, and framed him as an illegitimate child. He said that she was a shameless bitch and wanted her to never come to him again for the rest of her life. At that time, Zuri had come back from a town crying all the way back to the capital. She never knew that her affair and usurpation of the wife's position would incur the hatred of her own son. She thought that as long as she married into a wealthy family and gave her child the best life, it would be a great gift to him. She never expected her child to have such strong moral values. Even though she wanted Leo to deal with Yen with the inheritance rights of Baber family, Leo remained unmoved, as if he was especially afraid of getting involved with Baber family. Not only did he stay far away, he would rather be someone else's subordinate than admit that he was Baber family's second young master. Zuri felt that such a son was very difficult to tame. From then on, she had never seen Leo again. It was only when Lanny returned to settle down with the town that she understood some things about Leo through Lanny's words. Even when Leo got married, she hid in the car and looked at the groom and bride from afar. She did not dare to get close at all. Now that she saw that Leo had boldly returned to Baber family, it was a lie to say that she was not shocked. I? Leo? Why are you back? Leo stepped on the military boots and brought a group of people to the front and back of Zuri. He pulled out a knife from his boots and inserted it into the wooden table. You unfilial son, what are you going to do? The knife was so shiny that it was inserted in front of Felix. Felix trembled in fear. Felix didn't recognize Leo at first. He only remembered the child who was sent to a town when he heard her call him Leo. A few years ago, when Felix knew that Leo had grown up, he sent someone to pick him up. However, he refused. He even said that Baber family was a big die tank and had no justice to speak of. He couldn't live in the house or be buried in the ancestral hall. These words completely offended Felix. Not to mention picking him up, even Baber family's right of inheritance was stripped away. He never thought of giving him his property. Felix was so cruel. Apart from this reason, it was also because of Suri. She also gave birth to a son for him at a high age. This son was more obedient than Yen. He was not as stubborn as Leo. He was also very smart. At a young age, he played in the financial circle. He pinned all his hopes on his third son, not caring whether his first two sons went insane or became someone else's lackeys. However, if he wanted to ruin Baber family's reputation, Felix would not allow it. For example, if Yen insisted on marrying his sister, even if they were not related by blood, it would be a laughing matter. How could he allow it? Therefore, Felix teamed up with all of Baber family's people to suppress and imprison Yen in order to prevent him from going outside and going crazy. If not for the fact that he was about to die, Felix would not let him out. 
unless he completely destroyed his mind otherwise. Before he could finish his memory, he was pulled up from his chair by Leo, your son kidnapped my cousin again. Do you think I am easy to bully? Leo didn't know what kind of relationship Yen had with Felix. He only knew one thing. No matter how much of a bastard Yen was in Felix's heart, Yen was more important than him. This bastard. Felix's face darkened when he heard that Yen had taken Lanny away again. Now that his wings are strong and he is very capable, I can't control him anymore. It's useless for you to find me. He gritted his teeth and scolded. He kidnapped my cousin, so I kidnapped you. Let's see if it works. Leo sneered. Leo carried Felix and walked out of the door. Baber family servants quickly went up to stop him, but they were pressed to the ground by the bodyguards brought by Leo. When Felix saw that Leo was so savage, he secretly cursed Suri for she sending him to Jackman family. Now he was taught like this by Jackman family. It was really too hateful. Leo, I am your biological father. Aren't you afraid of being punished by the god when you carry me like this? Didn't you think that you would be punished when you were fooling around with my mother behind your wife's back? These words rendered Felix speechless and also humiliated Suri to the point that her face turned extremely ugly. Leo, you. Leo didn't even look at Suri. After carrying Felix out of the villa, he threw him into the car. Then he took out phone and sent a message to Yen, asking him to replace Lanny. Chapter 1110 When Are You Going Crazy? When Yen saw this news, he sneered coldly, idiot. His father betrayed his mother. Would he care about his father's life or death? He actually used his father to threaten him. How ridiculous. There's nothing to eat here, only milk. Drink some first to fill your stomach. Yen threw away the phone, stirred up the milk in the cup, and brought it to Lanny's lips. Coming out of the court, Lanny, who had followed him on a long journey to a foreign country, had not eaten anything. His pretty face was also pale as if aggrieved greatly and there was no light in his eyes. Lanny spat out all the milk he had fed. She did not speak, nor did she look at him. She just sat in the cage with her eyes closed. It's not that she didn't have the strength to resist. She had been sedated, and when she opened her eyes, she found herself bound in a huge golden bird cage. Handcuffs were used, cuffing one foot in one hand, nailed next to the cage bars, rendering her unable to move. Seeing that she did not drink, Yin did not get angry. He only grabbed her chin and poured all the milk in the cup into her. Lanny choked and coughed repeatedly. Yin only watched coldly. When she stopped coughing, he took out a handkerchief and slowly wiped the back of his hand that was wet with milk. Lanny, you and Asher joined forces to deal with me, and you even wanted to send me to prison for rape. Do you think that if you lock me up, you can be together with Asher? After wiping his hands clean, Yen slowly squatted down, grabbed Lanny's hair, and pulled it in front of his eyes. It hurt so much that Lanny instantly broke out in cold sweat. Let me tell you, even if I am in prison, you and Asher can forget about being together. He grabbed her hair, pulled it hard, and like a madman, then he lowered his head to bite Lanny's lips. He was very strong, but in a few seconds, her skin was torn. After the blood broke through the skin, Yan's tongue licked over it, enveloping her lower lip. Like a storm, he crazily drew in the fragrant taste from her mouth. The rusty, bloody taste made Lanny extremely uncomfortable. She tried to push him away with one hand, but it had no effect. Instead, he ripped her clothes apart. She felt like a caged beast that had been skinned, and despite being on her last breath, she was being devoured completely. Yen, who pinned her on the birdcage, kissed her and then bit her neck. His fingers also pinched her thighs, letting her experience both the utmost pain and comfort. Suddenly, he then straddled on top of her. Yen, who had not touched Lanny for a long time, felt her body. His eyes suddenly turned dark red. Lanny, am I not good? Why do I have to unite other men and provoke me again and again? Do you really want to kill me so much? Yen felt wrong for no reason. If he were to die, would she feel heartbroken? Would she grieve? If his death could trade in even a bit of her pity and regret, wouldn't it be better if he just died? Yen raised his hand, wanting to open Lanny's eyes and let her look at himself, look at how much did he was tortured by her. But Lanny turned her head away, not letting him touch her. Even though they were doing intimate things, Lanny still had no expression, no lust, just like a pool of stagnant water, allowing him to go crazy. Lanny, since you like Asher so much, I'll let him see how you look when you are enjoying yourself under me, okay? Yen weakly reached out and wrapped his arm around Lanny's waist, hugging the thin and weak her into his arms. As soon as he said this, Lanny suddenly opened her eyes and glared at Yen with hatred. How long are you going to be crazy? 
Seeing that her eyes lit up when she heard Asher's name, the anger and hatred in Yan's heart became deeper and deeper. Isn't this your plan? He gently kissed those eyes that were always filled with vibrant light for Asher. It was you who meticulously planned for a decade, making me fall in love with you. How long will I be driven crazy for your love? Isn't it still up to you? As long as she loves him as she used to, he would no longer be tormented. He would definitely cherish her, love her, for a lifetime, or even for all eternity. Chapter 1111 Let's Settle It Lenny wanted to make Yin suffer, but she didn't expect that this kind of revenge would also backfire. What she had encountered today was also her own fault, but it had nothing to do with Asher. Why did Yin have to be so ruthless to Asher? Thinking about how Asher was beaten to the point of fainting, Lanny's heart trembled. Yen, this is a matter between you and me. Don't drag Asher into it and let him go. Yen, this madman, could do anything. If he really kidnapped Asher here, he was afraid that he would really violate her in front of Asher. If that was the case, it would be better to let her be locked up here and never see the light of day again. The man clutching her waist didn't respond to her, his gaze cold. He leaned into her ear and asked, Do you feel more comfortable with me or him? Lanny knew that if she went against Yen at this moment, she would definitely get even more crazy revenge. She lowered her eyes and gritted her teeth, Asher has never touched me. What she said was also the truth. The man who had touched Lanny was only Yen. Yen did not believe it. He thought that Lanny did not want to implicate Asher, so she lied to him. You have been with him for so long, but you have never slept with him. Do you think I am a three-year-old child? Hearing this, Lanny was too lazy to follow him, believe it or not. After saying this, she closed her eyes again, ignoring him. Enraged, Yen flipped her over, making her kneel on the ground before him and increasing his force from behind. In an extremely humiliating posture, Lanny, who was half kneeling on the ground, grabbed the railing of the bird cage, gritted her teeth, and endured the pain he brought. She once imagined Yen loving her, but she never expected that she would feel such disgust towards doing such things with him now. She always felt like a dog, being driven and controlled by him, completely without the strength to resist. She loathed herself for being this way, wishing she could go back a decade and slap herself awake from the vengeance scheme against Yen. If she hadn't provoked him, hadn't held such resentment towards him, perhaps she could have lived with dignity overseas, but she knew very well in her heart that if she did not provoke him and hate him, her past self would definitely not be able to survive. The reason she was able to hold on until now was also because she hated him. If it wasn't for her resentment, she probably would have died out in the wild long ago. There wouldn't be a her today. However, even now, Lanny still didn't understand why she chose to entangle herself with him in such a roundabout way, instead of choosing to directly kill him. Yen vented all the anger in his heart on Lanny, torturing her until she fainted. Only then did he let her go. Leaning against the railing of the bird cage, Yen lowered his eyes and stared at Lanny, who was lying on his lap with her eyes closed. He raised his slender fingers and caressed Lanny's face. Her hair was soaked in sweat. Her black hair was tied up behind his head, revealing a delicate and familiar face. He gazed at her brows and eyes. After a while, he lifted his fingers to trace the contours of her face, as if trying to etch them into his very bones. With lingering affection, he touched. It was unknown how much time had passed. When the night fell, the moonlight shone through the mottled shadows of the trees on the island and poured into the bird cage. Only then did Yen unlock the handcuffs on Lanny's hands and feet. He picked up Lanny, who was still unconscious, and returned to the bed. He hugged Lanny from behind as if he was hugging his whole world. He held her tightly in his arms. What should I do? In the bedroom so quiet that one could hear a pin drop, a sigh of helplessness and exhaustion suddenly echoed. The next day when Lanny woke up, she found the originally naked self had dressed up new clothes. It seemed that he had already been prepared to kidnap her. The clothes were very fitting and were completely made according to her size. Just that she dressed in brand new clothes was still locked in a bird cage. Oddly enough, after being bound all night, her hands and feet should have been red and sore, but she didn't feel any pain, and there was no trace of redness at all. Just as Lanny was surprised, Yin walked in from outside the door. He looked at her from above as if he was looking at a trapped beast. Lanny, let's settle this. Chapter 1112 You Really Want Me Dead For Yen, Lanny did not love him and did not want to return to his side. Then his whole world was dark. Rather than being sent to prison by her own hand, it would be better to end this relationship for both parties, to spare him the pain, as well as her own. How? Lanny looked up and coldly stared at Yen. It was naturally good to be able to settle it, but Yen would definitely not let her go easily. 
Before she finished it, she would probably suffer a lot. Yen raised his pace and slowly walked into the birdcage. When he squatted down, he was like a beast tamer, bringing a shadow over Lanny, heavy and oppressive. One sat, one squatted, two deep eyes staring at each other, countless feelings of affection and Lanny's resentful expression, it was worthless. Yen's long eyelashes fell down. After hesitating for a long time, he said lightly, like before, accompany me for a month. One month later, I will let you go. If he let her go, Yen would be sent to prison by her. How could Lanny believe him? You spent so much effort to bring me here. How could you be kind enough to let me go? For someone like Yen, it would be considered merciful not to confine her to a deserted island. However, losing Lanny, Yen couldn't sleep day or night. She had to rely on medication to prevent herself from looking so disheveled in and out of her dreams. It's quite tiring. He did not say anything solemn. He only took out a gun from the back of his waist and put it in Lanny's palm. If I do not let you go in a month, you can shoot me. After holding the gun and staying silent for a few seconds, Lanny suddenly raised the gun and aimed it at Yen's forehead. Without any hesitation, she fired directly. It was empty. There are no bullets in it. Yen was unharmed. You really want me to die? The profound and gloomy eyes revealed disappointment, enough to consume Lanny. Yet, she shifted her gaze onto the gun. You really lied to me. What was the use of giving her a gun without bullets? Yen, who was kneeling on one knee, seemed to be a little angry, but he forced himself not to flare up. He only took the gun in Lanny's hand and opened the magazine. When she saw a golden bullet lying inside, Lanny was stunned. If she had fired six shots in a row just now, Yen would have died. Unfortunately, Lanny only fired one shot. Yen stared at the bullets inside, and after a moment of hesitation, he closed the cartridge, picked up the gun and placed it on the glass table outside the birdcage. He turned around and focused on Lanny who was sitting in the bird cage. If you agree, this gun is yours. Lanny did not expect that Yen would actually give the gun to her. Wasn't he afraid that she would shoot a few more times after getting the gun? As if seeing through her question, Yen revealed a dark smile. Do you agree or not? Lanny did not want to get along with Yen like before, but the only way to escape was to act with him. After hesitating for a while, she nodded lightly. No matter what, she had to get the gun first. Seeing that she agreed, Yen was in a good mood. He took the key and unlocked Lanny's handcuffs on her hands and foots. Then he carried her out of the bird cage. When he passed by the gun, Lanny frowned. Aren't you going to give me the gun? Yen lowered his gaze and stared into her eyes. I'll give it to you, one month later. In other words, the prerequisite for getting the gun was that she had to be with him for a month. Lanny was unwilling. Yen raised his slender fingers and patted her cold cheek. Lanny, you have no choice. The person who had no intentions of letting her go surely wouldn't give her a choice. However, if she took advantage of his sleep to return to this place and retrieve the gun, she might stand a chance of winning. With this thought in mind, Lanny allowed Yen to carry him downstairs. Only when he went downstairs did he find himself in a European-style manner. The green grass was lingering outside, and from afar he could see the endless sea. This was a deserted island bought by Yen and trimmed and decorated. It was quite vast. When she was young, Lanny had told Yen that she liked islands by the sea the most. When she grew up, she would find a small island and spend her life with the person she liked. It would be a very beautiful thing. At that time, she really, really liked Yen and deliberately said it for him to hear. He, however, didn't take it seriously, glanced at her, and said that these young girls, with nothing in their heads, only knew about love and romance, ridiculously boring. Yen did not understand love. He did not understand it since he was a child. Even now, even if he said that he loved her, he would treat her rudely. He did not realize that this extreme love was a kind of hurt. Through the sunlight coming in through the window, Lanny looked up at Yen who was holding her. If her parents did not die and her Aunt Zuri did not take her to Baber family, then she would not meet someone like Yen in her life. She would not have to go to such a suffering life, but there would never be ifs in life. Chapter 1113 Yin had thought about the end of his life, but he had never thought of death. After putting Lanny on the dining chair, Yin squatted down in front of her, then raised his hand to touch her hair and asked her gently, what do you want to eat? I don't want to eat anything. Lanny, who had not entered the state of mind, still had a cold face. Yin's hand paused for a moment, then from the back of her head, he stroked her lips all the way. We agreed. You will treat me as gentle as you did it before. How did she treat him in the past? 
Should she welcome him with a smile and treat him gently, speaking vows of love all day long, being lingeringly melancholic and tirelessly continuing throughout the night? Should she also treat him like this now to exchange for her survival? Lanny's eyes were filled with a bit of hatred, but she forced a smile on her face. She's bread, beef, orange juice. Only then did Yen reveal a satisfied expression. His slender fingers were more like touching a bird. He once again touched Lanny's hair. This is good. She thought he would go to the kitchen alone, but instead, he carried her into the kitchen and had her sit on the clean and tidy stove. He then closed the kitchen door, leaving the two in a confined space before, with a slow and methodical manner, he rolled up his suit sleeves and began to prepare the food. He was probably afraid that she would seize a knife or something similar to harm him. The fork and knife he used were extremely short and small, unlikely to be lethal. Lanny was not stupid enough to take those small knives and fight with a tall and strong man like Yen. There was no chance of winning at all. Lanny was extremely jealous in his heart. Yen seemed to be in a very good mood. After frying the steak, he cut off a small piece and put it to Lanny's lips. Taste it, see if it's good? In the years that Lanny had lied to him, they had interacted like this. However, at that time, there was no hatred in Lanny's eyes. Now Lanny was reluctant. She opened her lips and slowly chewed. She did not say a word. Anyway, he gave it. Then she ate it. Yin was not angry. He was like a playful child. After rubbing her hair, he turned to squeeze orange juice. These foods were not on the island before, they were likely bought by Yin this morning when he left the island. In other words, after the food is consumed, after a period of time, Yin has to go out again. During this period, not only can the guns be retrieved, but it would also be an opportunity to escape. Lanny turned back and looked at the environment outside the window. There was a ship at the sea in the distance. However, if Yin wanted to leave the island, he would definitely take the ship. It was useless to her. If she wanted to leave here, she had to take the gun first and then threaten Yin to let her go. Of course, she could wait a month before leaving, but she did not believe Yin. Thinking of this, Lanny slowly relaxed. She had to let Yin take off his guard first before she had a chance to escape his sight. What Yin fed her next, Lanny lowered her head and ate. Only after filling her stomach did she have the strength to run away. With this thought in mind, the two did not start any more arguments. However, after they finished their meal, the anti-tracking device hidden in a concealed place beeped. Yan's expression darkened. He stared in the direction of the anti-tracking device. After a while, he suddenly took out phone and handed it to Lanny. Tell them not to come looking for you again. Lanny naturally knew who they were referring to. It must be Scarlett, Susan, and Mr. Jackman looking for her everywhere. However, Yen had installed the anti-tracking device and blocked the signal. It was difficult to find the specific location. However, the anti-tracking device sounded just now. It meant that the other party was cracking it. Maybe they would know her location soon. With Mr. Jackman's ability, he will find this place very soon. Why do you have to offend him? Lanny asked as he glanced at Yen. So you have to call him and tell him to come pick you up in a month. Yen sneered. Why must you want to spend a month with me? Lanny asked with a frown. I want to spend more time with you, can't I? Yen asked as she lowered her lashes to hide the tiredness in her eyes. After speaking, he took Lanny, who was sitting next to him, and pulled her onto his lap. He then tilted his chin upwards and kissed Lanny's lips. If I told you that I miss you very much, would you believe me? He missed her so much, so much that it gave him a headache, so much that he felt as if it might be easier to die, so much that he didn't know what to do to bring her back to his side. So... Could she, for the sake of his longing, please agree to accompany him for just one month? Yen, I don't love you. Lanny saw the intense love in his eyes, but she turned her head slightly to avoid his gaze. Yen's body stiffened. The pain that came from his heart spread to his limbs and bones. Even his fingertips were in pain, but he did not say anything. He only nodded. I know. This time, I won't lie to you again. Give me a month. He let go of Lanny, picked up the phone again, and placed it on her palm. A month later, he would let her go and he would stay on this island and spend the rest of his life alone, never to disturb her again. Chapter 1114 Lanny Revealed the Island Information Lanny pinched phone. After a few seconds of hesitation, she dialed Scarlett's number. She only remembered Scarlett's number. For her, the girl who was suffering from a terminal illness but almost got killed on her way to buy perfume out of gratitude for her was very unique. Scarlett, who had been sitting in the living room all night and had not closed her eyes, suddenly heard a strange phone call. She was so scared that her heart pounded. 
It was not until Lanny's voice came from inside that she breathed a sigh of relief. Lanny, where are you? Are you okay? Did Yin hurt you? A series of concerns and greetings warmed Lanny's heart. After saying that there was nothing else, she looked up at Yen and slowly opened her mouth under his signal. Scarlet, you guys, don't come looking for me again. I will be back after staying on the island with Yen for a month. It just so happens that this is the spring season. The scenery is pleasant and suitable for traveling. She didn't know which country this was, nor did she know what island it was. The only information she could disclose was that it was an island, and judging by the temperature, it was spring. Hearing her say this, Scarlet and Susan were stunned. Both of them did not understand what this sentence meant. Sebastian, who was beside her, reacted extremely quickly. He took phone and said coldly, Yen, release her. Otherwise, when I find you, it won't just be a prison disaster. Sebastian, this is a matter between me and Lanny. Don't meddle in other people's business. Yen smiled coldly. After saying that, Yen hung up the phone. Lance, who had finally gotten his position through the phone, had yet to finish reading when a red mark suddenly appeared on the screen. This bastard, his movements are quite fast. After Lance cursed, he stood up and took Scarlet's away. He looked at the number on the screen. The number displayed was unknown, and he did not know where it was called. After Sebastian asked Lance to continue to investigate according to this group of numbers, he instructed Leo coldly, it's currently summer domestically, so the countries corresponding to spring would be Brazil? Argentina, Mexico, Colombia, and other South American countries. Send people to investigate which islands in these countries have been purchased by the individuals from Asia, including those developed from uninhabited islands. With such a small area, the investigation would be even faster. Leo immediately nodded. Yes. When he turned around to do something, he saw Felix tied to a pillar. Mr. Jackman, what about him? He thought that it would be useful to tie Felix up, but who knew that Yin did not care about his father's life at all? Sebastian's gaze was as cold as snow. He glanced indifferently at Felix, who was sleeping soundly with his head tilted. Let him go and then publish a piece of news through the capital's media. Say that the chairman's son, Mr. Baber, kidnapped his second wife's niece with improper intentions. Felix, who was pretending to be asleep, immediately opened his eyes. Don't, don't. I will send someone to find Yen. I will definitely capture this unfilial son and hand him over to Mr. Jackman to deal with. Sebastian retracted his gaze and ignored Felix. However, someone came forward to untie him. Felix understood that this was an agreement. He spat in his heart that Sebastian was meddling in other people's business. However, he did not dare to show it on his face. He only nodded and bowed. After saying a few good words, he finally left Sebastian's villa. He had originally thought that since he had escaped, he would let Yen fight with Leo. However, just as he stepped into the house, someone called him and asked if he had sent someone. If not, they could report it to the people. This made Felix so angry that he had no choice but to mobilize his forces and search the entire world for that unfilial son, Yen. On Lanny's side, after putting down phone, she focused her eyes on Yen who was operating the anti-tracking device. Although he was a genius in the medical field, he was also a genius in computer. He was clearly an absolutely outstanding person in his career, but he insisted on being a pervert. Lanny glared at Yen. He was focused on operating the code. Not only did he adjust the anti-tracking device, but he also sent a fake location to Lance according to the group of unknown numbers. Seeing the word successful displayed on the screen, Yen smiled. The golden sunlight shone on his face, making him look a little proud. He closed the computer and picked up Lanny who was sitting next to him. Didn't you like to lie on the lawn and watch the sunset when you were a child? Let's go. I'll take you to see it. Chapter 1115 Those who do not obey the rules will be punished. He was very excited. He carried Lanny to the beach. He did not walk to the beach but placed her on the lawn not far away. Probably afraid that she would run away, the moment Lanny sat on the ground, a pair of handcuffs was handcuffed to her right wrist, and the other round was handcuffed to his left wrist. You said we were going to get along like we used to, didn't you? So why are you still guarding against me in this way? Lanny sneered. Don't you think that this will increase the relationship between us? Yin did not care. Lanny's face was extremely ugly looking. She was thinking to herself, she surely wouldn't keep her handcuffed even while sleeping, right? Then how would he be able to grab the gun? When she thought of a countermeasure, Yin suddenly pressed her down. There is no one on this island. Only you and I. Let's do it. Yin, I don't want to. Lanny's eyes suddenly showed disgust. 
The man who kissed her by lifting her chin, biting her lips while saying, you once told me, when a woman says she doesn't want to it means she does. I've always remembered that. Lanny was speechless. She struggled desperately and pushed him away, but she couldn't resist his strength. When her clothes were removed, the weeds behind her stabbed into her skin. It was so painful. She didn't know if it was because he felt her pain or something, but Yin held her and turned over, letting her lie on his body. Her wrist was handcuffed to his, leaving no chance to escape. His hand firmly gripped her waist, preventing her from breaking free, leaving her no choice but to let him do as he pleased. Lanny sometimes hated herself. She clearly hated Yin so much, but why did she still react when he touched her? She closed her eyes, unwilling to reveal any reaction about this side. However, Yin noticed from her slight expression that she actually had a reaction. In his dark gray eyes, when he touched such a lanny, a doting smile slowly appeared on his face. Would she fall in love with him again after spending a month together like this? Lanny, I love you very much. With this thought in mind, Yin kissed her in the eyes. Lanny turned her head, looking at the distant sunset. The golden light shone down, casting a warm glow on her smooth back. Though it should have been warm, she felt an immense coldness in her heart. What did this entanglement mean? What did it all mean indeed? The grass in her hand showed the satisfaction of the two people after the storm. Yen did not know whether Lanny was satisfied or not. He only knew that he was very happy at this moment. At night, Yen fed her some food and carried her to take a shower. The handcuffs were not unlocked the whole time and they were even tightly shackled. After lying on the soft bed, Lanny looked up and looked at Yen who was drying her hair through her drooping hair. My wrist hurts. He pretended that he did not hear her. After drying her hair, he put down the hairdryer and went to bed to sleep with her. Lanny, who was sleeping with his back to him, felt a little uncomfortable. She rubbed her wrist that was placed above her head. She had been cuffed for a long time, so it was indeed a little painful. Yin stared at her back for a few seconds. Then he took the key, opened the handcuffs, threw it aside, and wrapped her in his arms again. It was rare for Lanny to have a good temper. She obediently nodded. Her eyes were closed, but she did not really fall asleep. She only waited for Yin to fall asleep before she got up and went upstairs. About half an hour later, the man holding her began to breathe evenly, presumably asleep. Even so, Lanny gently pushed him away and seeing no reaction, she lifted the covers and quietly got out of bed. Walking barefoot on the carpet, she took one step at a time, frequently looking back. As she reached the door, she even held her breath before gently opening it, fearing Yin would suddenly wake up. Fortunately, the man lying in bed didn't open his eyes, even when she had opened the door. She let out a silent sigh of relief then stood on tiptoes, stepping on the cold floor outside. She did not even dare to close the door and moved towards the stairway cautiously, making as little noise as possible. The house was quite big. After leaving the corridor of the room, Lanny used the moonlight from outside the window to speed up her footsteps and climb up to the third floor. When she arrived at the birdcage room, she found that the door had been locked at some point. It could not be opened at all. Lanny felt resentment rising in her heart. Suddenly a cold voice came from behind her. Lanny, if you do not abide by the rules, you will be punished. Chapter 1116 He loved her so much that he was obsessed and crazy. Lanny was shocked by the sinister voice. The moment she turned around, she saw Yen standing next to the spiral escalator, staring at her coldly. At this moment, there's no sun, only the gloomy moonlight which streams in through the rooftop glass, casting itself upon Yan's half-lit, half-shadowed face, much like a devil from hell. Seeing Yan like this, Lanny shuddered and subconsciously took a step back. When his back was against the door of the birdcage room, Yan raised his pace and untied the white cloth wrapped around his wrist as he walked towards Lanny. When he came in front of her, the white cloth was just removed. When Lanny saw him like this, she thought that he was going to rape her. She was so scared that she wanted to run, but she was pulled back by him, who was very strong. He bound her hands with a white cloth and raised them above her head, his icy fingers trailing from her face all the way to her chest. The man fondled her chest, asking her, didn't we agree that I would give you the gun a month from now? What's the rush? Lanny endured the humiliation and gritted his teeth. Yen, I don't want to spend a month with you. Yen lowered his head and buried it in her neck, biting her neck hard. But I want to. The warmth of his tongue, lapping against her skin, was like being stung by a poisonous scorpion. The moment the ripple started, so did the unbearable pain. Lanny endured the pain of being bitten and wanted to break free from his restraint, but her feet were caught by him, and her body was nailed to the door. She could not move at all. 
Yen deliberately bit her while saying in her ear, you probably haven't tried sex abuse before, right? As a punishment, how about you try it once? When these two words came out, Lanny's face instantly turned pale, Yen, don't act recklessly. Those people who raped her, which one of them didn't commit sex abuse on her? As the mastermind behind the scenes, Yen treated this as a punishment, how dark was his heart? Yen lowered his head and kissed her cheek, as if he was talking to a lover, his tone extremely gentle, then are you still going to run? Picking up the gun, she obviously wants to run away with it, doesn't she? A woman who doesn't even want to spend a month with him, it seems unnecessary to be too gentle with her. Lanny was afraid of being abused by Yen. Even if she was unwilling, she shook her head, I won't run anymore. Since you don't want to run anymore, then obediently follow me back to sleep, okay? Yen said as his fingers brushed past Lanny's chest. He was familiar with her body. With just a single movement, Lanny would react. She endured the disgust she felt towards herself, as well as the humiliation he gave her, and nodded. However, Yen did not bring her back to sleep. Instead, he pressed her against the cold door and entered her body again and again. It's probably punishment. He used a considerable amount of force, roughly fucking her until she fainted and then waking her up. It's not quite sexual abuse, but it comes pretty close. When Lanny woke up, she found that her wrist was locked again. This time, her hands were locked together. It was difficult to even take things, let alone move. She sat somewhat despairingly on the living room couch, gazing at the morning glow outside the window, hoping for someone to come and rescue her. As the scope shrank, Leo quickly locked onto the three countries. These three countries had records of Yan's special plane stopping, but it was impossible to determine which special plane Yen was on. Sebastian, who had bought island information from Yen all over the world, stared at the place that was circled with a red pen. After a few seconds, he remembered what Lanny had said. The one-month deadline should be given by Yen. He seems to want to borrow Lanny's mouth to ask everyone to give him a month to settle this matter. In fact, finding Lanny now and finding Lanny in a month would not change the fact that Yen was going to be imprisoned. After all, raping, illegal detention, and looking down on the court were all not to be underestimated. Although the crime of rape had not been decided on the day of Lanny and Asher's marriage certificate, Asher had called the police at a town and had a record. Even if the court of the imperial capital did not sentence it on the spot, it would still give a fair judgment after verification. Yen must know the outcome of this lawsuit, and regardless of the consequences, he publicly beat people and kidnapped people at the court entrance. At first, Sebastian thought that Yen was extremely arrogant, but now he felt that he was doing this so that he could spend another month with Lanny, right? It was not easy for Sebastian to judge Yan's thoughts, but he could guess the other party's thoughts. He was like a trapped beast in a final game, not caring about all costs and fighting with all his might. Did Yen love Lanny? He loved her very much. Love to the point of madness. In fact, Sebastian, who had already gotten the information, could soon find Yen, but at this moment, he seemed to be a little hesitant, as if there was an ominous feeling, making him hesitate to give the order. The people in the ward all looked at him, including Asher's parents, who were also looking at the man sitting on the sofa, who was as steady as Mount Tai. Mr. Jackman, thank you for helping me find these countries. Leave the rest to me. Asher, who was lying on the bed, saw Sebastian's hesitation, and his expression gradually changed from worry to gratitude. Chapter 1117 Leave the matter of finding her to me. Asher was the person involved. Sebastian was only Lanny's superior, but for them, he had spent a lot of manpower and wealth just to help find Lanny. It was already enough to trouble him. If he continued to trouble him, Asher would feel embarrassed. When Asher's parents heard that he wanted to find Lanny himself, their weak bodies trembled. Asher, look at you now. How are you going to find Dr. Lanny? They did not object to Asher and Lanny being together, but Lanny, this child, was targeted by such a freak. Even if Asher was not afraid of everything as Asher's parents, they were extremely afraid. After all, this was their only child. Looking at his parents who were in tears, Asher's eyebrows drooped down. He felt a little guilty and patted his mother's hand. Don't worry about me. No matter how much of a bastard Yen is, he would not dare to kill. Asher's parents looked at the stubborn Asher and finally felt bitter. However, they still respected Asher's thoughts. They did not use any words to force him. They just turned around and looked at Sebastian. Though they come from a scholarly family, they are, after all, average folks. Compared to the powerful leaders of the Jackman group, they simply do not compare, placing all their hopes on him. Sebastian received the expectant gazes of the two old men. He slowly blinked his thick eyelashes and then put them on Asher. 
you have a good rest. Leave the matter of finding her to me. After that, Sebastian got up, held Scarlet's hand and walked out of the ward. Lance, who was in the opposite ward, saw his second brother leave and quickly patted Raven on the shoulder. After telling the other party to rest well, he also got up. After Sebastian sat in the car, it was divided into three teams. Leo was in one team, Lance was in the other team, and Sebastian was in the other team. Then they each took their own people and went to different countries to find Lanny. After they left, Asher took the map and the information that Yin had bought from overseas. After looking through it for a long time, he felt that something was wrong. Yin's private plane stopped in three different countries. At first glance, it really seemed like he was setting off smoke bombs to confuse them, directing them to search in each of the three countries. But on second thought, Yen, who has the ability to transmit fake locations to Lance using an anti-tracker, how could he not set off three fake smoke bombs to deceive them? Thinking of this, Asher quickly took out Phone and called them separately, but at this time, the three teams had already boarded the plane and Phone was in a state of shutdown. Asher held the map in his hand and locked the location to South America. Then according to the information transmitted back, one by one he ruled it out, and his eyes fell on Panama. On the earth instrument in Lanny's office, Asher, who had circled this country with a pen, asked Lanny if he wanted to travel to this country after seeing it. Lanny said with a smile at that time, when she was a child, someone said that he wanted to take her there, but she never had the chance to go and she would not go in the future, so she circled it to be a souvenir. Lanny's childhood was all related to Yen. It must be because Yen said that he would take her to Panama that she would circle this place around to warn her of her hatred for Yen. So, since it was a place they had agreed to go to when they were children, could they be in this country now? With this speculation in mind, Asher took advantage of the time when his parents went out to find a doctor to remove the four drip, wore a hospital gown, and hurried out of the hospital. Supporting his wounded body, he staggered to catch a taxi. After returning home to get his passport, he headed straight for the airport. Yin carried Lanny and placed her on his lap. He cut a small piece of foie gras and placed it in her mouth. I made you tired last night. Eat something to nourish your body. Lanny was extremely hungry. She opened her mouth and ate a large mouthful of foie gras. After she finished eating, she wanted to go and pick up her fork and knife. However, she was stopped by Yen. Be good, don't worry. Eat slowly. This way your stomach won't be hurt. It was as if he was feeding a little baby. He fed her little by little. Lanny, who had been hungry for a long time, was so anxious that she glared at him fiercely. When Yen saw her fierce expression, he was in an extremely good mood and even smiled a lot more. After he fed her, he took out a wet towel and wiped the corners of her lips for her. Then he carried her to the underground cinema and randomly picked an action film. He forced Lanny to finish watching it and then carried her to do that thing again. While doing it, he made her say that she loved him like before. Lanny was not happy, so he pinched her and pinched her waist until it was blue and purple. Lanny, who was in extreme pain, had to grit her teeth and say, I love you. Chapter 11 18 People He Liked When He Was Young All taught she said she loved him, there was not a little love in her eyes. But to Yen, even if it was such a lie against her heart, he still enjoyed it very much. His slender fingers caressed the hair that was sticking to Lanny's face. Regardless of whether she was dripping with sweat or not, he lowered his head and kissed her forehead. Lanny, I love you too. Yen, a person like you, can you distinguish what love is? Do you know what love is? Lanny smiled coldly. Feeling the extreme beauty after bringing her to the peak, Yen lowered his head and kissed her lips. I can't distinguish and I don't understand, but so what? So what? Knowing that he wants her is enough. Who cares what love is? As long as he keeps her by his side, that is love. Lanny fell on the soft carpet and turned her head to look at the shameful scene on the huge screen. She felt that the performance in the movie was not as intense as theirs. Her body was completely dirty by Yen. There was no place clean. No, it was from the first time that Yen did this matter to her. She was not clean. It seemed that Yen felt that there was not enough time. He carried her and did it again and again. It seemed that he planned to spend this month like this. At first, Lanny could still resist a little, but after being tormented until she really had no strength, she let him do as he pleased. The moment he placed her into the bathtub, Lanny, who had a little nausea, lay on the edge of the bathtub and retched several times, but she did not vomit anything. Seeing her like this, Yen, who was leaning against the glass door, was slightly stunned. It was a sign that she was pregnant for the first time, but Lanny did not have a uterus, so it was impossible for her to be pregnant. 
He also thought that Lanny would give birth to a child for him, and then the family of three would stay on this island and live a carefree life. He also often fantasized that if there was a child between them, the soft-tempered Lanny would also slowly accept him for the sake of the child. At that time, he would not need to force her to love him with lies. But there is no ifs. Lanny's uterus was personally plucked by him. She will never have a child. After Yan's eyes were occupied by remorse, he frowned deeply and walked to Lanny. When he squatted down, he raised his hand and patted her on the back. What's wrong? Lanny covered her uncomfortable stomach and glared at him angrily. The food you make is so terrible. It's still half-cooked. Yen was stunned for a moment. It seemed that he didn't expect Lanny to be so picky about what he made. A happy smile gradually appeared on his lips. Then can you make it for me tomorrow? Lanny turned her head and ignored Yen. He leaned close to her ear and gently coaxed her. The red braised pork you make is my favorite. Can you make it for me tomorrow? Lanny, who was holding her stomach, nodded subconsciously for some reason. Am me. For her own stomach, she couldn't possibly eat all of Yan's junk food and dark cuisine during this month. Seeing her agree, Yen was extremely happy. He held her face and kissed her a few times. My Lanny is really good. After kissing, he reached out to untie Lanny's wrist. Since you are so good, there must be a reward. I will reward you for not sleeping with this thing tonight. He threw the prop that locked her hands to the side, picked up the towel, and helped Lanny take a bath. After washing, he massaged her. His movements were very gentle as if he was caressing the most precious treasure in the world. Lanny, who was leaning against the edge of the bathtub, occasionally raised his eyes to look at the figure reflected in the mirror. The figure had an extremely happy smile on his face, as if he would be very happy as long as she obediently cooperated with him. When Lanny saw Yin like this, she couldn't tell what to feel. She only felt that her revenge had succeeded, but also not. After all, she still couldn't break up with him until now. Yin carried Lanny back to the master bedroom. After putting her on the bed, he leaned over and supported his forehead with one hand. He stared at Lanny who was lying down with his eyes closed. Under the gentle moonlight, the man who used his fingers to describe Lanny's facial features softly said, Lanny, was the only person you liked when you were young only me? This question, Lanny had answered him before, but this time, she ignored him. Yin did not fuss about it, only self-centered and recounted the past, I thought you liked that man called Riley White. Back then, she and that man called Riley had walked quite close. Every day, they were escorted by that man from school. The two often chatted and laughed, and they even asked to go out to play together. They even agreed to go to the same university. Every time Yin saw them, he would pretend that he did not see them. Zuri liked Riley very much. She often invited him to play at home, and also brought Riley into Lanny's room to let the two be alone. After a long time, Riley could actually freely enter and exit Baber family. Yin had seen it several times and the two were doing intimate actions. Yin could not bear to see it, so he went up to teach the two a few words. Zuri came out to pull the stakes, saying that Riley would be Lanny's future husband, and asked him to be more polite to his brother in Chapter 1119 I will be good to you in the future. At that time, when Yin heard this sentence, he only felt very uncomfortable, but he did not understand this uncomfortable feeling. On the day of Lanny's 18-year-old adulthood ceremony, Zuri told Yen that Lanny would go to another country with Riley tonight, and then she would give herself to Riley completely. The discomfort in Yan's heart gradually turned into resentment. He always felt that his private belongings were going to be touched by others, and he would be angry to death. He sent people to stop Riley's ship and then pulled Lanny down from the top, so that the group of people would pretend to scare Lanny. Who would have thought that the group of people would actually do it for real? When he was in the car, he couldn't see the dim environment under the tree through the thick membrane of the car. He closed the door and couldn't hear the cry for help in the distance. He only thought that his people were scaring Lanny, but he didn't expect. Recalling the past, Yan's eyes gradually turned red. It was because he was young, frivolous, and insensible. It was also the old housekeeper's emergency call that had called him away. Otherwise, how could he have noticed that something was wrong after such a long time? When he was young, he always thought that he could punish Lanny in this way, but he didn't expect that the person who was punished was himself. Even later, he dealt with the group of people, but he still couldn't forget the scene when he returned back then and saw the blood on Lanny's lower body. Thinking about it now, Yan's heart trembled. He subconsciously hugged Lanny tightly and leaned into her ear again. He said guiltily, Lanny, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This apology made Lanny suddenly clench her fists. 
She did not know what he was apologizing about, but no matter what, she would not accept his apology. As if sensing the hatred in Lanny's heart, Yen once again leaned over and lightly kissed her lips. I will treat you well. I will definitely treat you well in the future. Lanny still did not open her eyes, nor did she reply to him. She only pushed his hand away, turned her body, and looked out of the window at the moonlight. Not knowing how much time had passed, Yen came forward to hold her again. Lanny, if we can return to the day of your 18th birthday, I will definitely listen to your confession and then. Lanny rolled her eyes to the ceiling and interrupted Yen, if I return to the day of your 18th birthday, I will definitely stab you to death with a knife. The words that Yen said slowly faded away. About 10 minutes later, a helpless sigh came from behind, I'm sorry. Lanny did not reply. She only stared at the sea outside the glass window in a daze. One hour, two hours, three hours passed. Lanny saw a bright speedboat suddenly appear in the distant sea. It was driving quickly in the direction of the island. Lanny immediately guessed that Scarlet and the others had found her. A glimmer of hope suddenly rose in her heart, but she was afraid of waking Yen up. She quickly suppressed her excitement and quietly lifted a corner of the quilt and moved to the bedside. Probably due to the lesson from last night, Lanny did not dare to act rashly. She stayed at the bedside for a long time. Then she turned around and looked at Yen. She waited quietly. Seeing that the other party seemed to have really fallen asleep, she dared to get up. She still did not wear her shoes. She gently moved towards the door. Until she walked out of the door, Lanny did not dare to move. She squatted on the spot and looked at the man inside through the gap. After waiting for a long time, the other party did not come out, so she slowly straightened up. After she walked out of the manor, the speedboat also stopped. When she saw the figure coming down from the speedboat, Lanny was shocked. She did not care whether she was stepping on weeds or thorns and quickly ran toward Asher. When Asher saw that Lanny was really on this island, his hanging heart suddenly relaxed. He quickly took a step and ran toward her. The moment the two of them caught each other on the lawn, Asher wanted to hug Lanny, but she was pushed away by Lanny. Quick, go quickly. You can't deal with Yen alone. Go back and call more people. Lanny was very awake, but after seeing her, Asher insisted on taking her with him. Lanny, don't be afraid. Follow me now. Yen can't catch up. He had specially rented a speedboat to sail faster. He had planned to sneak into the island in the middle of the night to look for Lanny, but he did not expect to see Lanny running out the moment he got on the island. This was even better. There was no need to find him anymore. He could just take him away directly. Asher pulled Lanny and quickly ran towards the beach. Just as the two of them were about to board the speedboat, a gunshot rang out, followed by a bullet. With a whoosh, it passed through the speedboat at an extremely fast speed. The two people standing in the sea heard the gunshot and turned their heads to look at the person who fired the gun. Yen, who was dressed in a white shirt, raised the gun in the light and blew at the white smoke coming out of the muzzle. Then he walked slowly towards the two of them. Chapter 1120 Are You That Worried About Him? The moment Lanny saw Yen, he was the first to react. He pushed Asher away. Go! Yen would not hurt her, but not Asher. Lanny, who was afraid that something would happen to Asher, grabbed Asher's arm and pushed him onto the speedboat. After all, Yen had a gun in his hand. Who knew if that madman would shoot at Asher again? Asher was not willing to be a coward. In front of Yen, he grabbed Lanny's hand and placed it in his palm. Then he held his head high and his chest wide. He faced Yen who had already walked in front of the two of them. Yen's dark and unknown gaze fell on the hands of the two people who were intertwined. He did not understand what that uncomfortable feeling meant, but now he knew it clearly. It turned out that he had been jealous since a long time ago. If he had known earlier, he wouldn't have been able to reach this stage today. Yen slowly moved his deep gaze away from Asher and placed it on Lanny's pale face. We agreed on a month, but it's only been a day now. He used the gun in his hand to lift Lanny's chin. You! Are you so impatient to leave me? Yen, if you want to deal with me, come at me. Don't bully a woman. Asher pulled Lanny away and stood in front of her. Yen, who did not put Asher in his eyes at all, only shifted his gaze away from Lanny's face when he heard his noisy voice and glanced at Asher. Come at you. The moment his gloomy tone fell, Yen raised the gun in his hand and smashed it at Asher's temple. He punched at the acupuncture point and Asher's body directly softened. Looking at Asher who was lying in the seawater, Lanny was so scared that she hurriedly went to help him. In Yen's eyes, her anxious and flustered look was extremely ironic. He also squatted down, grabbed Lanny's hair, and let her look up at him. 
I just asked you a question, but you haven't answered me. Lanny originally wanted to continue to pretend to be weak with him, but when she saw Asher who had been knocked out, her anger immediately surged. That's right, I just can't wait to leave you. I don't even want to stay with you for a second. You make me feel disgusted, extremely disgusting. The man squatting in the seawater gradually stiffened. The blood all over his body had cooled down. The despair in his heart gradually expanded, and he suddenly sneered, being with me is disgusting, and being with Asher is happy, right? His malicious and cold gaze slowly fell on the man who was carefully held in Lanny's arms. He had never felt jealous before, and suddenly climbed up from the bottom of his heart, making him look like an evil ghost from Azura. Under the bright moonlight and the surging seawater, Yen grabbed Asher by the collar and lifted him directly from Lanny's arms. Then he dragged Asher to the deep sea. Lanny hurriedly followed. The huge wave slammed down, but the sand under her feet retreated. By the time she rushed over, Yen had already thrown Asher into the sea. Looking at the rolling tide and instantly swallowing the unconscious Asher, Lanny was scared silly. Without any hesitation, she jumped down. Her actions undoubtedly stimulated Yen even more. The gun in his hand was aimed several times at Asher who was washed away by the huge waves. However, when he saw the figure who was in a hurry to save him, he gritted his teeth and put it down. In the end, this Madden threw away the gun in his hand and jumped into the sea. He picked up the exhausted Lanny. Seeing that Lanny was clinging to Asher's clothes and refused to let go, Yin endured his anger and freed up a hand to grab Asher's collar. He dragged the two of them back to swim. The moment he returned to the shore, Yin was so tired that he fell on the beach. Lanny did not even look at him. She was extremely worried and checked Asher's body up and down. Asher was lucky. Because he was unconscious, he relaxed his body and floated up, so he did not choke on water. He just fainted for a long time and he would not be able to do it. Lanny pinched Asher and wanted to wake him up. When Yen grabbed her wrist, are you so worried about him? I'm not worried about him, should I be worried about you? Lanny sneered. Since you're so worried about him, you shouldn't mind if I make him feel more pain, right? Yen asked. When the drenched Lanny heard this, her pale face turned even uglier. What are you going to do? Yen did not answer Lanny. Instead, he grabbed Asher by the collar again and dragged him towards the manor. Yen, what are you going to do? Lanny, who hurriedly followed him, grabbed Yen's hand and begged for mercy. If you are angry, just vent it on me. Don't touch him, I beg you. Looking at Lanny, who was looking at him coldly, but was willing to beg for mercy for Asher, Yen's bloody heart fell down heavily. With a cold face he expressionlessly shook off Lanny's hand, then dragged Asher to the living room, and then walked over the stairs to the top floor. Lanny followed behind, afraid that Yen would kill Asher in a fit of anger. He did not even dare to breathe, and only dared to follow in. Chapter 1121 It was you who said love me first. After Yen dragged Asher into the birdcage room, he used four handcuffs to lock Asher's hands and feet on the iron bars of the cage. Asher was facing the birdcage. He could see everything in the bird cage. He didn't know what Yin wanted to do, but he actually tied Asher up. Lanny moved to get the gun on the table, but Yin grabbed her wrist and threw her into the bird cage. When he took out the handcuffs, he stared at Lanny's eyes and asked her, continue to stay with me for a month, or stay here with him. Choose one. Lanny looked at the red-eyed Yin, then looked at the handcuffs and shook his head at him. Yin, don't be like this. When they find me, you will be sentenced for a long time. The corners of Yan's lips curled up, and he sneered, if I cared how long I will be sentenced, I wouldn't have brought you here. He used his cold fingers to hook up Lanny's chin, which one? Since you don't intend to let me go, then tie me to this place with him. Anyway, she chose the former, so she couldn't come to this room. No matter how she chose, Yan could control her. It was better to stay here and accompany Asher. When Yan heard her choice, his heart turned cold, and the heart-wrenching pain hit him. His eyes gradually reddened. He stared at Lanny, gritted his teeth and asked, Do you love him that much? Did she love him so much that she was willing to give up her chance for survival, willingly be locked in a bird cage, just to accompany a half-dead doctor? But wasn't she the one who loved him the most, who loved him since she was little, even though he despised her, mocked her, bullied her, she loved him without hesitation. Then, how could she, after growing up, fall in love with someone else so quickly? Lanny did not answer Yan's question. She only stretched out her hands and said coldly, if you want to lock it, then lock it. Don't talk so much nonsense. It's meaningless. Between them, talking about love or not love is meaningless, even ironic. When she loved, he didn't and treated her that way. 
Now what's there to talk about, love? Yan's long eyelashes hung down, covering the redness in her eyes. She looked at the white hands. Lanny say it so that I can give up. Hearing that he would give up, Lanny did not hesitate and directly blurted out, since you want to hear it, then I will tell you. I love him, I love him very much. If not for you, I would have married him a long time ago. I love him very much. Yin chewed on these words, suddenly a smile tugged at the corner of his mouth. He laughed, yeah, if it hadn't been for me, you would have married him long ago. Then the two of you would have adopted a child, lived happily ever after. But Lanny. After a pause, he raised his scarlet eyes and looked straight at Lanny. You were the one who said you loved me first. It was you who said you loved me, and only then did I love you with no regrets. Why is it that when you say you don't love me anymore, you simply don't? This was the first time Lanny saw tears in Yan's eyes. Under the dim light, the tears flashed with a dark light, countless grievances and pain that couldn't be loved. All of them were now in his eyes. For some reason, Lanny didn't have the courage to look into such a pair of eyes. She unnaturally looked away. She didn't say a word, she looked cold as ice and seemed not to care about his misery. Perhaps his downfall was exactly what she wanted. Thinking about how Lanny's cold skin was still wrapped around his cold heart, Yen couldn't help but chuckle. He picked up the handcuffs and locked Lanny in the birdcage. He stood up and faced Asher, staring at that annoying face. After a few seconds, he took out a folding knife from his pocket. He opened the knife and walked slowly to Asher with heavy steps. When Lanny, who was behind him, saw what Yin was holding, his face suddenly paled. Yin, what are you doing? Yin used his finger to scrape the sharp edge of the knife, and under his calm and dark face was a pair of eyes full of hostility. Destroy the person you love, Dash. The next second, the knife in his hand directly aimed at Asher's wrist, and the knife in his hand fell, breaking the meridians in the middle. Ah! Asher was awakened by the pain. In his blurred vision, he saw Yan's dark eyes. Before they were completely focused, there was another sharp pain. Only then did he know that the tendons in his hands had been cut off by Yan. Asher was so painful that he could not speak. He only vaguely heard Lanny's heart-wrenching scream in his ear. Yen, Asher is a doctor. He is a doctor. He has to do surgery for someone. How can you break his tendons? Chapter 1122 You really love each other. That kind of shout that tore apart his voice made Asher slowly raise his head. Cold sweat poured down and fell on his eyelashes, blocking his line of sight. However, he still saw Lanny, who was crying so much that she could not control herself, locked in a bird cage. She was struggling to break free from the handcuffs, but she could not break free no matter what. That feeling of powerlessness made Asher slowly, slowly, slowly pull up a smile. Lanny, don't be afraid, it's okay. Asher was in so much pain and he still comforted her. This made Lanny feel even more guilty and painful that she wanted to die. She was crazy, tearing the handcuffs and her wrist was bleeding, but she still could not break free from the shackles of this copper wall. Yen looked at the couple and suddenly sneered, you really love each other. Look, Lanny cried like that for Asher. Only when he loved her to the extreme would he be like this. Yin threw away the knife in his hand and slowly walked to Lanny. He looked down at her. Lanny, how does it feel? Is it the same as him, incomparably painful? Lanny, whose eyes were red, stared at Asher's bloody hands. The light in his eyes suddenly dimmed, leaving him with nothing to live for. She did not even look at him, which made Yin angry again. The tall man walked quickly to Lanny and grabbed her face. However, even when he lifted her face, Lanny still did not look at him. Her colorless eyes seemed to be unable to gather together. It was as if she was looking at him, but it did not look like she was looking at him. It was clear that she had completely lost her mind because Asher was injured. When Yin saw that she loved Asher to this extent, the jealousy in his heart made him so angry that he shook off Lanny. He used a lot of strength. The back of Lanny's head slammed into the iron rod with a loud bang. When Yen realized that he had failed, he immediately wanted to care about her. However, Asher's voice was one step faster than his. Lanny, are you all right? Hearing that urgent voice, Yen slowly retracted his hand. Lanny, who was a little dizzy from the collision, was just about to shake his head and respond when he heard Asher cursing Yen. You traitor, you kidnapped Lanny, and now you even use violence on her. Are you still a man or not? A strange smile appeared on Yen's handsome face. He slowly turned his head and looked at Asher who was locked in a birdcage. Traitor. As he said this word, he suddenly grabbed Lanny's hand and pulled her into his arms. 
Then he raised his eyebrows and smiled provocatively at Asher. Dr. Scott, do you want to see it with your own eyes? Lanny, who was tightly locked in his arms, suddenly felt her numb heart stop and her body stiffened. She knew that Yen could do anything, if she really did do it in front of Asher. Before her thoughts could be sorted out, she was lifted up by Yen. When her body was pressed against the iron pole, he was fiercely and crazily kissed with punishment and resentment. He buried it in her neck. At this moment, in addition to Yen's heavy breathing, there was also Asher's heart-wrenching cry. Yen! You bastard, let go of Lanny. Such an intense shout made Lanny's tears surge out again, desperately struggling and resisting, but they could not resist the powerful Yen. Lanny was pressed against the iron pole, her hands were raised diagonally above her head, her pants were taken off, and then her waist was lifted up. At this moment, Lanny was like an animal that had been stripped naked without any dignity to speak of. She was just naked and be trampled on. An Asher who loved her so much was tied to a bird cage, and just like her just now he struggled to break free but could not break free no matter what. Looking at Asher who was struggling and crying anxiously from afar, Lanny's tears also rolled down like a dam breaking. Her heart that was so stuffy that it felt like it was dead. She couldn't feel any pain. She only wanted to cry. She couldn't control it. She really wanted to cry. She was like a child, crying until she was out of breath. The man on her body sneered when he heard that they were, were crying. Lanny, you are my woman. You are not allowed to cry for other men. His cold fingers wiped away the tears from the corners of her eyes and lifted her chin. If you say you love me, I will let you go. Lanny opened her pale lips like a flower. She smiled but did not say anything. She just looked at Asher, who was struggling to break free of the blood, and silently shed tears of despair. Her appearance of crying while laughing was extremely dazzling in Yan's eyes. Her deep eyebrows tightened. Yan ignored it and continued to rush in and out of Lanny's body hard in front of Asher. Asher screamed crazily from the initial anger to begging. Yan, I beg you, let Lanny go. Don't do this to her. I beg you, I beg you. Chapter 1123 Lanny gave a counterattack. Such pleas for mercy were useless to Yen. They only made him despise the person even more. Once a devil despised someone, that person would suffer even more. Yen looked like he was punishing Lanny, but in fact he was punishing Asher. He wanted to make this third party who suddenly broke into the island suffer so much that he wanted to die. At first, Lanny was still struggling, but after her heart completely died, she no longer moved. She was like a corpse, nailed to the iron pole and let Yen do whatever he wanted. After Yen finished, he slowly lifted the zipper of his suit pants. Yes, when he fucked Lanny, he didn't even take off his clothes and pants, including Lanny's. He didn't move either. He just untied her pants and turned her back to Asher the whole time. He used his broad body to block Lanny's body. He was like a beast in a neatly dressed suit, doing despicable and dirty deeds. Even more absurdly, this beast minded if other men saw Lanny's body. It was simply perverted to an incurable extent. This beast, after helping Lanny tidy up her slightly messy clothes and pants, put her down from the iron pole. Lanny, who was weak all over, fell to the ground along the iron pole without his support. Her eyes were swollen from crying and she didn't even dare to look at Asher. Asher, who was still tied up in the bird cage, looked at Lanny whose face was as pale as paper and the tears that were dried up again fell down along the cracks. After staring at Lanny for a moment, Yen turned around and walked out the door. Just as he was about to walk out of the birdcage, Lanny's hoarse voice sounded behind him. Yen, take me away. Hearing this, Yen froze in place as if he did not understand what Lanny meant. He slowly turned around and looked at Lanny, who was sitting on the ground. At this time, Lanny raised her slender fingers, wiped the tears from the corners of her eyes, raised her chin, and looked at the tall and straight Yen. Didn't you want me to spend a month with you? She stretched out her hand that was not locked. Take me downstairs. I'll make red braised pork for you. Yen's furrowed brows relaxed slightly. Do you still remember what you promised me? Yes. Lanny nodded and revealed a gentle smile. I said I loved you first. Of course I remember what I promised you. Yen had suffered from Lanny's honeyed words, but he still chose to believe her. Without any hesitation, he walked up to Lanny again. When he took out the key, Yen stared into her eyes and asked her, Do you not care about Asher anymore? I will make braised pork for you. Can you do the operation for him? Yen's eyes suddenly darkened. Lanny's fingers suddenly touched his face. Yen, I don't want you to be locked in prison for a lifetime because of killing someone. I still want to see you. 
Her unfathomable eyes only reflected his figure at this moment. Knowing that this was a scam, Yin still indulged in it. Okay. He agreed and then obediently untied her hands. Then he picked up Lanny. I'll send you downstairs first and then come back to help him connect his meridians. Lanny nodded obediently. When her gaze passed over the disbelieving Asher, she slowly lowered her eyes. Yen, I have something to say to Asher. Can you let me down first? What do you want to say? Lanny, who was nestled in his arms, raised her sincere eyes and stared into Yen's eyes. Tell him that I don't love him and not to come to me again. For some reason, Yen felt that what Lanny said was true. Then you just... Lanny interrupted him. That was because I heard you say that you would give up. So I followed your words and spoke nonsense. The sincerity in her eyes made Yen let go of his guard. He let go of Lanny and gave her a chance to find Asher to explain things clearly. Unexpectedly, Lanny, who had fallen to the ground and lost her restraint, rushed to the table at an extremely fast speed the moment she turned around. She grabbed the gun placed on the table and aimed it at Yen's chest. Without any hesitation, she fired five consecutive shots. It's unclear which shot the bullet in the magazine came from, but the only bullet hit Yen. The stalwart man's body swayed for a moment, but he still stood firm. His dark red eyes slowly raised and looked at Lanny who was holding the gun. He thought that she would deceive him like this at least for a few days and then find a way to escape with Asher, but he didn't expect that she would run away in this manner. The pain of his heart being broken blocked the blood supply system. His head was dizzy, his eyes were black, and his vision was blurred. But in order to look at Lanny again, Yin used all his strength, raised his slender fingers, and pressed on his heart that was bleeding profusely. Chapter 1124 Lanny Go When she saw the blood gradually dye Yan's white shirt red, Lanny's hands holding the gun were trembling. She didn't know if it was because of the humiliation she suffered, or because she was afraid, she was so scared. In short, she was flustered and lost her mind. Lanny. Asher's gentle voice mixed with surprise sounded in her ears. Only then did Lanny tremble in fear. She threw away the gun in her hand and looked at Asher. We are safe, we are safe now. She didn't even dare to look at Yen. She just lowered her head and rushed to Yen like a madman. She didn't say anything and didn't care if he was bleeding or not. She just reached out to his pocket and searched for the handcuffs and keys. She was so panicked that she couldn't find the way, when a hand covered in fresh blood, trembled, holding a key, and handed it to her. The bullet penetrated Yan's heart. He couldn't speak and could only stare at Lanny's pale face. Lanny's hands trembled as she took the key. She still didn't look at Yan. She forced herself to turn around and run to Asher. The moment she turned around, Yan could no longer hold on. He knelt on one knee on the ground, and his hand that was covering his heart powerlessly lowered. He looked at Lanny. She helped Asher untie the handcuffs. Then she carefully helped Asher down. When she held Asher's hands, Yen could not see the expression of Lanny who had her back to him. He only felt that her heart was aching from her actions. She was distressed for Asher. It seemed that what she said about not loving Asher was false. He had been tricked again. Yen lowered his eyes and looked at the blood that was flowing all over the ground. He suddenly felt that this was good. If he died, no one would disturb Lanny anymore. She could also live a peaceful life with the person she loved and live a happy life. However, Lanny, you haven't cooked the braised pork you promised to make for me. When Lanny helped Asher walk out, she stepped on a pool of blood. The strong sticky feeling made her stop. It was at this moment that Yen, who had fallen to the ground, grabbed her ankle. She didn't lower her head to look at him. Her eyes clouded by the mist were gazing at the big door. Dawn had broken and a bright light was seeping through the crack in the door. All she had to do was walk out and she could escape from this hell. But for some reason, her feet felt as if they were nailed down, unable to move. Yin grabbed her wrist and said two words with difficulty, Lanny, I... Tell her what? Tell her that you sent people to rape her just to scare her? Tell her that the child is not healthy? Tell her that if she doesn't remove her uterus, she will be infected to death? Tell her it's not his sloppy surgery that caused her infection, she was infected long before. Tell her that it wasn't him who threw her who was seriously ill into the wilderness. But? The person who sent people to rape her was him, even if it was just to scare her. Even if the child was unhealthy it was still him. The person who removed her uterus was also him, even if it meant saving her life. The person who did the surgery was also him. It was all because of him that she became like this. 
It seemed that at this moment, no matter how much he said, it was meaningless. Lenny would not forgive him because of these reasons. The injuries that he had caused her were substantive and irreparable. When Yin thought of this, he felt a little helpless and slowly let go of Lanny's hand. Go, Lanny. Don't worry about me. Lanny, who still hadn't turned around, tears welled up in her eyes. She didn't know why, but she just stood there and didn't. Chapter 1125 Regret, but there was no chance. Looking at the beautiful figure standing in front of the light, Yen thought that Lanny was afraid. He forced himself up and got up from the ground. Lanny turned back. Hearing his voice, Lanny could not help but turn around. She saw Yin, who had put on his coat and had a relaxed smile on his face. You didn't kill anyone, and I will be fine. Afraid that she wouldn't believe him, Yin propped up his bloody body and walked in front of her. I am a doctor, I will stop the bleeding myself. He raised his large hand, affectionate and extremely reluctant, and touched Lanny's face. Don't be afraid. Go. Lanny looked at him, stunned for a few seconds, then suddenly hardened her heart. She turned around, grabbed Asher's hand, and quickly walked out of the birdcage room. The moment the door was pushed open, Lanny, who was covered by the sunlight, could not feel the warmth. She only stiffened her body, grabbed Asher, and ran downstairs. When Asher walked out of the manor, he looked at the top floor and saw the man standing in front of the French window. He could not see his expression clearly, and he did not know if he would die. He only felt that the door to hell would not open to Lanny again in the future. After watching the couple board the speedboat, Yin thought that Lanny would look back at him, but no, never. So it's true that Lanny said that she doesn't love him anymore. After realizing this, his body that had been holding on suddenly slid down the glass. The bright red blood dyed her clothes and pants and also dyed the carpet laid on the ground. Yin leaned against the glass and raised his bloody fingers to touch his heart that had been smashed by the bullet. Lanny, my heart is broken, I can't survive, but... You lied to me once and I lied to you once, so we're even. He lifted his dull eyes, looking towards the light refracting in from the window, only to find that the light had passed him, casting elsewhere. He wanted to crawl desperately into the light, but he had no strength left, could only stay in the darkness, slowly watching his blood drain away drop by drop. The moment he felt that his internal organs were broken, images of Lanny flashed through his mind. Little Lanny chased after his butt. No matter whether he hated her or disliked her, she would always be passionate and call him Brother Yen. When he was young, the slender and elegant Lanny would hide in the corner, under the trees, in the room, at the every corner of Baber family to secretly look at him. When he grew up, Lanny would also retract her claws and lie to him. At times, she would say in his ear, Yen, I love you. Had Yen ever felt love? He had felt it. It was just a little too late. The scenes in his brain gradually went back to the adulthood ceremony when Lanny was 18 years old after a dark life. He saw Lanny holding a love letter and walking up to him with a shy smile. Brother Yin, I, like you. Can you be with me? From the third sight, Yin saw the teenager leaning against the tree and glanced at the love letter in her hand with dissatisfaction. What age is it? Why do you write such an old-fashioned love letter? As soon as this sentence came out, Lanny's face became even redder, even the tips of her ears were red. Then do you accept it or not? The young man took the love letter from Lanny and went forward to wrap her in his arms. Yes, of course. The scene came to an abrupt end. Yan's vision was completely dark and he could not see anything. After a moment of silence, he extended his blood-stained hand and wrote on the ground. However, he suddenly stopped halfway through writing. Even if someone like him died, no one would come to find him, right? What was the use of writing this? He slowly withdrew his hand. It was unknown how much time had passed, but the blood in Yan's body had completely dried up. With his last bit of strength, he turned his eyes and looked at the sea outside the window. Lanny, you still owe me a red braised pork. In your next life, remember to make it for me. Lanny, please remember, in your next life, accompany me for another month, only 29 days. As the corners of his lips slowly turned into a smile of relief, his eyes suddenly froze, devoid of any signs of life. A voice asked him from the depths of his soul. Yen, do you regret it? Yen said, I regret it, but there is no chance. Chapter 1126 He did not forget the promise he made back then. Before Yen passed away, Lanny, who was on the speedboat, turned on the automatic driving button and sat on the ground. Her mind was muddled and she had no thoughts at all. She didn't even have the courage to turn back. Asher, who had broken all the veins in his hands, endured the pain and reached out to cover the back of her hand. 
Lanny, don't be afraid. When we are safe, I will send someone to save Yen. He could see that Lanny originally didn't want to shoot, but Yen was really too much and forced Lanny to this step. Thinking of how Yen forced herself in front of Asher, Lanny felt that she was dirty. She quickly got up and walked into the speedboat. Is there any medicine on it, knife and gauze? She had to find these medical tools and quickly treat Asher. Otherwise, if he delayed the treatment, Asher's hands would really be crippled. She was anxiously rummaging through the items on the boat, appearing to be frantically searching for a tool, but in reality, even she didn't know what she was looking for. Asher's eyes focused on the fluster back. After staring blankly for a while, she inexplicably asked, Lanny, do you still love Yen? Was it because of Yen that she was at a loss? Lanny, who was randomly rummaging through things, suddenly stopped. He almost didn't hesitate to reject Asher. I don't love him for a long time. After saying these words, she steadied herself, only then noticing the medical kit tucked away in the corner, a standard supply on the speedboat. She rummaged out useful hemostatic medicines and gauze, rushed to Asher's side, and quickly stopped his bleeding. Her trembling hands gradually steadied. When we get ashore, let's go to the hospital first. Asher looked up and looked at Lanny. Then Yen. Lanny's face turned a little paler. His medical skills are very good. Nothing will happen to him. Yen, who had been praised as a medical genius since childhood, was no longer comparable to her and Asher in terms of medical skills. She believed that such a large manor must have a scalpel and medicine prepared. A person like Yen would not be willing to die like this. He would save her, he would definitely. When Lanny comforted herself like this, her heart sank desperately and kept sinking, as if something was about to be lost, it was painful. She leaned against the edge of the speedboat, hugging her knees, slowly turned her head, and looked towards the small island that had already become a dot in her vision. The speedboat quickly docked. Lanny collected her thoughts and when she helped Asher ashore she saw a sign on the side of the road. Only then did she know that the place she was in the country that Yen had said when he was young that he would bring her to travel. It turned out that he had not forgotten the promise he made back then. When the blood on Asher's wrist dripped onto his skin, Lanny suddenly came back to her senses. She hailed a cab and quickly sent Asher to the hospital. Lanny, who was sitting outside the operating room, stared blankly at the blood on her hand. She could not tell if it was Asher's or Yan's. In short, it was strange and creepy. As she was lost in thought, a pair of purely handcrafted shoes suddenly appeared before her. Her hollow and emotionless eyes followed upwards from the shoes and trouser legs to see an incredibly beautiful and flawless face. The owner of this face was looking at her with a pair of cold eyes as clear as snow, staring indifferently at her. Mr. Jackman. Sebastian nodded slightly and looked past her, looking at the operating room. Is it serious? Lanny nodded. The tendons in Asher's hand have been cut off. After saying that, Lanny looked up at Sebastian and asked him. Mr. Jackman, why are you here? Sebastian blinked his thick eyelashes. Before boarding the plane, he had an uneasy premonition that something might go wrong, causing him to hesitate slightly. Once seated inside the cabin, he took a moment to think and then realized that something was indeed off. A smart person like Yin would not release the location of the three countries so obviously. If they found out, it would be a smoke bomb used to confuse them. However, at that time, the special plane had already flown according to the route and could not be changed. They could only wait until they reached the destination. Then they found Asher's flight through the news sent by Raven. They locked the location of Panama and followed him to find him. He was already fast enough, but he did not expect to be a step late. Asher was still injured. However, according to Yan's personality, he should not let Lanny go easily. Did they escape after a fierce battle? At this critical juncture, Sebastian did not ask about the details. He only retracted his gaze and lowered his eyes to look at Lanny, who was covered in blood. Are you all right? Lanny shook her head and felt helpless. She raised her hand to wipe the blood on her clothes. Seeing her flustered expression, as if she had something on her mind and lost her usual calm, Sebastian could not help but ask, where is Yen? Chapter 1127 It was good to be able to protect her. Lanny's hand that was wiping her clothes stopped. He is still on the island. After she replied, she opened her mouth again. She wanted to tell Sebastian that she had fired at Yen, but she could not say this out loud. It was as if something was stuck in her throat. She could not say a word. Sebastian put his hands in his pockets and stood outside the operating room. After standing for a moment, he coldly ordered the bodyguards, go to the island and bring him back. When Lanny heard this, her tense body gradually relaxed. 
He brought Yen back. No matter what, they would treat Yen first. In this way, nothing would happen to him and she would be able to get rid of him. Lainey! The moment Scarlet's voice sounded, Sebastian turned to face the elevator. He just happened to see Lance rushing over with Scarlet and Susan. When he saw these three people, his eyebrows gradually wrinkled. Scarlet had not closed her eyes since she learned that Lanny had been kidnapped. She followed the long journey to other countries and wanted to follow Panama. Scarlet's body was not very good. Sebastian was afraid that she would be exhausted, so he took the opportunity when she met up with Susan to board the plane to Panama alone. Before coming, he had already warned Lance to watch over the two women. He didn't expect that he would actually bring them over. Sebastian glanced coldly at Lance. When Lance received the cold gaze, he shuddered. His clear eyes revealed an innocent and helpless expression. Who could blame him for naturally listening to women? Besides, she was just concerned for her good friend and rushed over out of worry. It wasn't as though she had done anything inappropriate. Isn't Second Master Jackman being a bit too harsh? Lance ridiculed his second brother in his heart, but his face raised a fawning smile as he greeted Sebastian, second brother, how was it? Did you catch that bastard Yen? Sebastian ignored him and looked at Scarlet, who was already in front of Lanny. On the way here with her, if anything happens, I will take your life. Now the world is peaceful, what can happen? Besides, with my skills, can I not protect second sister-in-law? Lance asked. It's good that you can protect her. Sebastian seemed to have thought of something. Second brother, what do you mean by that? Lance frowned. Sebastian no longer answered. When his indifferent eyes touched Scarlet's face that was full of worry, they gradually softened. On the way to Scarlet and Susan, Lance told them about Lanny's situation. At this moment, when they saw Lanny sitting on a chair covered in blood, their hearts suddenly tightened. They crouched down next to Lanny, one on the left and one on the right. Then they took Lanny's hand and examined her up and down. After knowing that Lanny was not injured, the two of them heaved a deep sigh of relief. Scarlet looked at Lanny for a few seconds, straightened up his upper body, and hugged her lovingly, Lanny, it's all right. We found you. Lanny, who had been suppressing her emotions the entire time, suddenly turned red when she saw the two of them. It was as if she had seen her family. She couldn't help but reach out to hug Scarlet. She didn't say anything. She just quietly nestled in Scarlet's arms while her other hand held Susan's hand. Thank you. Yen was not that easy to deal with, but they found her position in such a short time. This meant that they had spent a lot of manpower, resources, and money. Lanny felt that as insignificant as she was, the fact that so many people still cared about her might mean that her existence was meaningful after all. Lanny, you are our family. You don't have to thank me. Scarlet gently patted her back. The gentleness of her movements and the warmth of her words warmed Lanny's heart. She couldn't control herself and hugged Scarlet again. As if she was absorbing a life-saving straw, she hugged her tightly. The exhaustion of her body and mind and the torture of his spirit were redeemed the moment she hugged Scarlet. Like an elder sister, Susan pushed aside the messy hair sticking to Lanny's face and tucked it behind her ear. Her movements were very gentle and did not disturb the tranquility at this moment. It was unknown how much time had passed, but Lanny's heart was in a mess. Because of Scarlet's hug and Susan's movement, her heart gradually eased up and stopped panicking. Seeing that she had finished venting her emotions and her expression had recovered its light, Scarlet then pulled Lanny to wash the blood. Susan went to buy a new towel and new clothes. Chapter 1128 Lanny Yen is dead. After they helped Lanny wash up, they wanted to take him to the hotel to rest first. However, because Lanny was worried about Asher, he waited for the operation to end. After learning from the doctor that Asher's tendons had been successfully connected, he was relieved. Asher was anesthetized and had not yet woken up. Lanny knew that he was fine, so he got up under Susan's persuasion. Before he walked out of the door of the ward, the bodyguard sent by Sebastian suddenly called. Mr. Jackman, Yin is dead. Gunshot. Sebastian was stunned. Without waiting for the bodyguard to finish, he immediately put down phone and turned to look at Lanny who slowed down. After hesitating for two seconds, he said, Lanny, Yen is dead. Lanny's body suddenly stiffened. She wasn't sure if it was fear or something else. She felt her hand suddenly trembling in an instant, followed by weakness in her legs, making her unable to stand steadily. If not for Scarlet and Susan supporting her from both sides, she would have already collapsed on the ground. Her complexion gradually turned pale, and the steadfast back that refused to turn body was visibly crumbling. She paused on the spot for an unknown period of time. 
Only when Sebastian's cold voice sounded in her ears again did she slowly turn her head back. What? She didn't hear anything clearly, just as if the whole world had gone silent. Only the ringing in her ears in her head, a deafening roar of sadness, made her unable to hear what Mr. Jackman was saying. Sebastian pinched phone, lifted his heavy steps, and walked to Lanny. The police for now won't allow his body to be moved. If you want to see him, you can take your last look at him before they arrive. The death of the gun was related to the execution. The first crime scene needed to be blocked. In addition, the local police were also investigating the whereabouts of Yen. The body was definitely not easy to take away. Lanny was in a trance. When she heard the word corpse, she realized that Yen was really dead. However, his medical skills were clearly so brilliant. How could he? When he was young, he suffered a gunshot wound in the wild. It was an operation that he did. At that time, he could still survive, but now... Lanny lowered her eyes and looked at her hands. They had already been washed clean. There was no blood, but for some reason, she still felt that her hands were full of blood. After looking at them for a long time, she suddenly let go of Scarlett and Susan's hands. She rushed out of the ward and ran into the bathroom. She tried her best to wash the blood on her hands, but she could not wash it away. She weakly propped her hands against the edge of the sink and then raised her head to look at herself in the mirror. Her face was deathly pale, her lips devoid of any color, and there were dark circles under her eyes. She told herself that it was Yin who had caused you to become like this. If he died, you would be able to live a peaceful life for the rest of your life and no one would disturb you again. No one would disturb her again. When Lanny thought of this, she did not know why, but her eyes turned red. She raised her hand and slapped herself hard. She felt that she was cheap. Why did she feel uncomfortable? Why did she feel uncomfortable? He died. Why did you feel uncomfortable? But? Her tears were still uncontrollable and rolled down. Yen was the person she loved with all her might when she was young. She actually shot him with her own hands and killed him. Lanny slapped herself again. She should not cry for a man who bullied her from a young age and even took off her uterus. He deserved it. He deserved it. She seemed to be torn asunder, struggling repeatedly within herself. Finally, she turned on the faucet, splashing water forcefully onto her face in an attempt to wake herself up. After regaining some clarity, she pulled out a tissue and, with a blank expression, wiped the water off her face. Chapter 1129 Not Going to See Him One Last Time When she came out, Sebastian, Lance, Scarlet, and Susan stood outside the door and looked at her, as if waiting for her answer. Lanny clenched her fists and said ruthlessly, I shot him to death. Of course I won't look at him for the last time. After she finished speaking, she walked past the four people and quickly entered the ward. She sat in front of Asher's bed and waited for Asher to wake up. What did she just say? The local police officer asked Sebastian. Sebastian's cold eyes seemed to be coated with a layer of frost. He glanced coldly at the police officer. The other person was shocked by this look and did not dare to ask more. Scarlet slowly recovered from her shock. Through the glass of the ward, she looked at Lanny who was sitting in front of the hospital bed. She looked calm but was actually panicking. She must have been forced to the extreme. That was why she would personally shoot the person she loved when she was young, right? She thought that the relationship between Lanny and Yen would be entangled with hatred for a lifetime, but she did not expect that their final outcome would be to pay the price of their lives to end. She remembered the look in Yen's eyes when he looked at Lanny in the past, possessive, paranoid, and crazy. Under these emotions, there was a strong and affectionate love. Yen loved Lanny but the love he gave was too extreme and unbearable. It was just that she didn't know if this ending was good or bad. Susan was not so delicate about feelings. It was hard to tell whether Lanny still loved Yen or not. She only felt that at this moment, Lanny seemed to be trembling. She stood there for a moment and entered the ward. She raised her hand and placed it on Lanny's shoulder, giving her a bit of strength. Feeling the strength of her fingertips, Lanny gradually calmed down, but the words, Yen is dead, kept echoing in her mind. Lance did not feel much about whether Yen was dead or alive. The only regret was that Yen was also a computer genius. It was a pity that he was gone just like that. Before the police arrived at the scene, Sebastian's bodyguard trembled and called, Mr. Jackman, I just wanted to tell you that Yen wrote his last words on the ground with blood before he died, and he even held a gun in his hand. Looking at his posture, it seemed that he wanted to commit suicide. 
After hearing this, Sebastian immediately noticed Yan's intention and quickly ordered the bodyguards clean up the traces of Lanny and Asher's existence. Even if it was self-defense, he would still be punished. Since Yen wanted to protect Lanny, then he would protect her as he wished before his death. The bodyguard responded with a simple, yes, quickly ended the call and cleaned up all traces before the police arrived. Even the fingerprints on the firearms were thoroughly wiped off. After doing all this, the bodyguard put the gun back into Yan's hand. Then he raised his gloved hand and waved at the others, then quickly left the scene. Sebastian stared at Lanny in the ward. After hesitating for a moment, she told Lanny about the last words left by Yen in the matter of committing suicide. As for whether she wanted to see Yen, that was her own choice. After being stunned for a long time, Lanny looked up and asked Sebastian, what did he write? I didn't ask, I don't know. Sebastian shook her head. Lanny clenched her fists tightly and uncontrollably tightened them bit by bit. After sealing off the scene, the body would be taken away by the police and she would never see Yen again. That was good, that was also good. Anyway, he deserved it, didn't he? If he didn't break Asher's hand tendons and force herself in front of Asher's life, how could she shoot him? He was the one who was courting death. It had nothing to do with her. Why did she have to see him for the last time? Why, why? Lenny weakly raised her hands, inserted them into her hair, lowered her chin, and hit the edge of the bed. There was a terrible pain, but she didn't notice it at all. Strangely enough, she could hear the ticking of the second hand in her ear. Tick-tock, tick-tock, as if it was telling her, if it is a moment too late, it would be too late, forever. When the sound reached the last needle, Lanny suddenly straightened up and rushed out of the ward at a very fast speed. Chapter 1130 Lanny, you are finally here. Leo, who had just rushed over, saw her cousin running out like a mad girl. She quickly called out to stop her, where are you going? Lanny did not answer him. She did not even turn her head and rushed out of the hospital. Even she did not know why it was like this. There was only one voice in her heart that kept reminding her to wait, wait, wait. She hurriedly returned to the island. The moment she rushed into the birdcage room, she saw Liam sitting on the wheelchair. Philo stood next to her. Their backs blocked Yan's line of sight. The first thing that Lanny saw was the back of these two suits. The glass on the top floor shone down and enveloped the two of them, emitting a faint golden light. Probably knowing that she had come, Liam slowly turned his head. You're finally here. When Liam received the news that Yen had kidnapped Lanny, he had already gone abroad. He who was planning to conduct an operation pushed the time. According to what Yen had said in his memory, he came to Panama. Unexpectedly, he saw a friend who had already passed away. His pupils were dark red, a clear sign of distress. The heaviness in his heart made it hard for him to recover. He sat there still, staring off into space at the man leaning against the glass. Staring at Liam's red eyes after a while, Lanny raised her heavy steps and walked in step by step. When she got closer, she saw Yen sitting straight on the ground. The light was blinding. As it beamed down, it enveloped Yen entirely, making him seem like he had just crawled out from hell. His body was coated in a thin layer of gold, like a protective color. The light covering his pale body made him appear as if a god had descended from the heavens. Such a divine figure leaned against the floor-to-ceiling window. His right elbow rested on a bent knee and his thin, elongated fingers held a gun. The muzzle was pointed directly at his heart. He had frozen in this position, holding himself completely still, the posture utterly precise, without a single movement. The distance was still very far and Lanny could not see Yan's face clearly. She could only face the light and follow the dry blood. One small step, one small step, and one small step, she moved in front of Yen. The moment she stood in front of him, Lanny saw that Yan's tightly closed eyelashes projected a silhouette under the light. The long shadow covered the eyes that were full of hostility when he was alive. At that moment he had shed his thorns and cast off the gloom and darkness to reveal nothing but paled features. Yet, his deep and dimensional countenance remained strikingly handsome. The only regret was, without the flush of blood, he was like a corpse, devoid of vitality forever. Lanny, who was standing, and Yen sitting, there was a beam of light in the middle. It slowly spread from the tip of Yen's toes to Lanny's feet. The moment they connected, Lanny looked away from his face and looked at the heart under the suit jacket. Slowly she crouched down, extending her trembling hand. She opened the black suit jacket that covered his chest. The blinding crimson of blood soaked through his white shirt. Not a single spot was devoid of blood stains. The blood was dry and sticky on her skin. Lanny tried many times to tear off the clothes at the wound. What came into view was a bloody muzzle. 
Lanny was a doctor. She could tell at a glance that the bullet hit the heart, not the heart, but penetrated. She stared at the wound for a long time before slowly turning her head back. Her frantic eyes searched everywhere for the bullet, but she couldn't see it. All she saw was the spot on the wall where Yin had been standing, with a dent in it, something she hadn't noticed at the time. Her eyelashes fell down and her gaze shifted to her own hands. She who had never fired a gun before was able to hit the target in one shot. She thought her marksmanship was poor and that she wouldn't be able to hit his heart, but she never expected. Lanny's vision gradually blurred. She looked at Yin again. In the hazy mist, she found that Yen did not die on the spot, but it was the blood all over his body that slowly dried up and he died. He was sitting here and waiting for death bit by bit, feeling the approaching death, but helpless. Lanny touched the muzzle with trembling hands. It was rotten and hard, but she could still see the hole clearly. At that time, she did not even look at Yen. After firing the gun, she rushed to find the key. She only knew that he was bleeding and constantly bleeding. However, she did not dare to look at him because she was afraid. If she had looked at him at that time, would she have found that she had hit his heart? Also, it would take a long time for a person's blood to dry. If she came back at that time and saved him, would she be able to save his life? If when Mr. Jackman asked her, she told her about Yan's situation. In order to prevent her from committing murder, Mr. Jackman would also send people to save him faster. But she did not. She was only resentful that Yen had broken the tendons in Asher's hands, resentful that he had forced Chapter 1131 Yen, does he deserve to die? But now that she saw the thoroughly dead Yen, a voice kept asking her. Yen, does he deserve to die? Whose fault made his mistake? She was the one who liked Yen first, wasn't she? She was the one who pestered Yen and tried her best to get close to him, wasn't she? Was it guilty that he didn't like her, disliked her, and hated her? He inherently hated them. Her aunt was a home wrecker and the culprit who forced his mother to commit suicide. Such a murderer took her into their home and encroached on the paternal love that should have belonged to him alone. His hatred for her wasn't it justified? Speaking of grudges, they stem from the shameless actions of the elders, causing their descendants to have lifelong psychological trauma, like a shadow that follows them all their lives. If Yan's resentment originated from his elders and was then wrongly directed at her, who was unfairly placed in a situation, then her resentment in turn started when Yan arranged for her to be gang raped. Indeed, this was a vicious cycle of cause and effect. So there was a beginning and an end to grudges. Their end was that she had schemed Yan to fall in love with her in order to retaliate. Originally, he did not love her, but she had pulled him down to hell. If she did not use this method to make Yan fall in love with her, then Yan would not pester her. The end result between them might be that they were strangers, so how could they kill each other? But even in the face of the law of cause and effect, she still dragged him down into hell. Once in hell, there could obviously be no good end, only leading to this kind of outcome. However, Lanny felt that her hatred had finally eased. She could finally laugh out loud. It was not too late for retribution. Yen, it was you who deserved to die, but at this moment, she could not say it. She looked at Yen's dried corpse in a daze. She recalled the first time she saw him. She was wearing clothes that had been washed to white, carrying a dirty little suitcase. She stood in the living room and looked around at the magnificent environment. When she looked around, she saw Yin walking down from the rotating escalator. A small white suit, small black leather shoes, combed hair meticulously, a young and tender face, clean and delicate, but without a hint of a smile. Lanny came from a small county town and had never seen children of her age like this before. The child in front of her seemed to exude a sense of nobility from head to toe, with a hint of defiance and wildness in his eyes. Despite being only seven, he looked as if he harbored a lot of resentment, staring at her coldly. At that time, Zuri pushed her from behind. Lanny, quickly call Yen brother. Seeing Yan's obviously unfriendly eyes, Lanny was a little afraid, but she still timidly shouted, Brother Yen. Yen ignored her and walked into the dining room. Lanny saw that the moment he sat down at the dining table, two servants immediately came forward to serve him. Lanny had always thought that young masters were all pampered and lacked real skills until she saw this young boy of small age. He was incredibly calm, wearing sterile gloves, pushing through the crowd to save an old man who suddenly fell ill. It was then that she realized this pampered young master was not like the others. At that time, Lanny saw that Yin had a layer of brilliance. For this layer of brilliance, she risked everything to follow behind Yen, chasing after him and shouting, Brother Yen, 
Brother Yen, please teach me how to cure diseases and save people, okay? Yen mostly ignored her. He would shout at her if he got impatient. You don't have talent. When you grow up, you can learn by yourself. What he meant was that her knowledge was limited and she could not learn it because she was too young. Lanny could not understand it. Instead, she was scared to tears by his roar. At that time, Yin was impatient and helpless. He coaxed and said fiercely, Lanny, I give in. Don't cry anymore. If you continue to cry, my head will explode. Their relationship from the beginning was much like children who bickered back and forth, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but never harming each other. She wondered when did things start to take a turn for the worse. Oh, that's right. She remembered. It was Yen and Zuri who had a conflict. As for the exact reason, Lanny was too young and did not understand. She only knew that Felix had slapped him a few times, causing his eyes to turn white. He fell to the ground and twitched. If not for Yan's grandfather coming in time, he would have died on the spot. From then on, Yan's hatred for Zuri had been transferred to her. That handsome, sunny, smiling brother Yan, who was occasionally a little irritable, had disappeared. The only one left was the dark and bloodthirsty Yan. Chapter 1132 Yan's Last Words but when she found herself in danger, this little devil would still rush to her rescue without hesitation. Just like when she almost drowned as a child, it was him who jumped in to save her. Her first flutter of the heart was when she saw Yan's valiant figure in the water, and gradually she started to deeply care for him. He not only saved her life, but also protected her from school bullying, stepping forward to shield her from a baton. At that time, she would ask him, Yan, are you still concerned about me? Yen, who was wearing a school uniform and leaning against the railing, would hate her. He glanced at her and said arrogantly in this world, only I can bully you. In the past, Lanny did not understand what this sentence meant, but now she suddenly felt that Yen had liked her a little at that time, but even he did not realize it. When Lanny thought of this, her eyes suddenly turned red. He was dead, and no one would tell her the answer. She raised her hand and traced Yen's trousers to the dried blood on the ground. Those were his last words. Lanny, I am dead. You don't have to worry that you will marry someone else. It turned out that he was afraid that she would marry someone else even if he died. Because if he died, he wouldn't need to be afraid of seeing her. So he didn't save himself with this kind of mentality and didn't even call for help from her. Yes, Yen came to find her several times because she wanted to marry Asher. He was afraid of losing her, but he didn't know what to do. He could only use violence to forcibly seize her, regardless of whether she was willing or not. This was indeed very extreme. Just like many times when he bullied her and saved her, Lanny couldn't stand it and blocked him from asking for the reason. He always said that I could do whatever I wanted to do and what reason I needed. He was such a stubborn and independent thinker that no one could sway his thoughts. Just like in medical science, once he set his mind on a concept, no matter how many medical scholars refuted him. But Yen didn't understand. In terms of love, one cannot treat their loved ones in such a manner as it would only push people further away, even igniting the flames. The person being loved may grow resentment out of love. They would then hold his hand and drag him into the flames too. However, in this revenge plan that had been planned for 10 years, it was Lanny who made him, who didn't know how to treat his lover, become so extreme. If There was no if. Yin was already dead. He had been dead for a very, very long time. When Lanny thought of this, the tears in her eyes suddenly rolled down. In her blurry vision, she saw another line of words. Lanny, I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sorry for I making a mistake for the past. I love you for the late confession. Lanny tenderly touched the crooked sentences and a complex whirl of emotions hit under her fingertips. The heartrending pain tore her into two halves, one half mocking her masochistic tendencies and the other half sneering at her for killing the one she once loved the most. The sound of a wheelchair rolling came into her ears, causing her to slowly raise her head. However, the moment she lifted her head, tears flowed down her face. Seeing Lanny like this, Liam's gloomy eyes were filled with a bit of compassion. He did not say anything. He only looked away and looked at the third line. Dev, heal your legs and live on. Other than Lanny, the only person that Yen could not let go of was him. In Yen's eyes, he was not Liam, but Dev. He was his best friend. How did they become close friends? It had to be traced back to the first time they met. He remembered that Yen was about 1.8 meters tall at that time. He wore a white coat and carried a medicine chest. He came to his front and back, tilted his head, and raised his chin at him. Yen, the best doctor. 
Can you afford the medical expenses of 10 million? He introduced himself like this. He was a little arrogant and a little unruly, but he was full of confidence. However, it was this kind of ostentatious personality that made Dev, who had lost his memory, look forward to it. He also raised his chin at him. If I can't afford it, you won't treat it? Yen raised an eyebrow, a trace of a smile on his handsome face. I have to treat it. Your brother is my good friend. Yes, Yen's first good friend was his big brother, but now the order has been reversed. The person who sent away his best friend was no longer Yen, but him. Chapter 1133 No one knew the reason. Yen was a mentally ill person, but he treated his friends with great kindness. Even though his big brother told Yen to keep an eye on him, he never revealed any bad news to his big brother. He even thought of many ways to restore his memory. Including thinking that he had died, Yen would also take a few bottles of wine and sit in front of his grave, drinking with his tombstone. He would often sit for an entire day. Later, when he returned to the capital, Yen was also crying tears of joy. He completely did not treat him, who had lost his legs, as a disabled person. He pushed him everywhere and tried to cure his legs. However, at that time, because of love, Dev lost the belief to stand up and refuse Yen again and again. Dev thought that if he did not refuse Yen at that time, with Yen's medical skills, he would definitely be able to make him stand up. However, Yen and Lanny were also a bunch of complicated things that could not be separated. His own life was so broken, how could he bear to let him run around for his legs in depression? Unexpectedly, such a man who was too busy with his own affairs on his deathbed was still thinking about his leg and encouraging him to keep living. Liam felt ashamed and lowered his head. When he touched Yen's snow-white face, his eyes could not help but turn red again. Yen, I will fulfill your last wish. You have a good journey. Lanny's finger passed over the last words left for Dev and caressed the fourth line. Next life. Only two characters were written above and then nothing more. Judging from the bloodstains, it seems that he didn't die midway through writing, but rather, while writing to this point, he suddenly felt that no one in this world would come to see him. Feeling it was meaningless, he stopped writing. After all, for Yen, his father who married another woman, his thoughts were completely on his stepmother. The conflict with his stepmother even resulted in a worsening relationship with his father, even to the point of becoming enemies. His father would not care whether he was alive or dead. If it weren't for his grandparents protecting him in the past, Yen would have been kicked out of the house by his biological father and stepmother long ago. Unfortunately, his grandparents passed away by the time he grew up so he didn't think anyone would come to take care of his body when he dies. No matter how many wills he wrote, it would be useless. Had he ever thought about her coming back? He probably did. But he who had a distant view of the sea knew she wouldn't come back because she never looked back before his blood ran dry. Therefore, his last words stopped at, next life. He did not know what Yim wanted to do in the next life. Should he meet her again, or should he never meet her again? Lenny could not guess, but he was thinking if Yen liked her a little when he was young, why did he send someone to rape the girl he liked? Mr. Gatsby, do you know why he treated me like this back then? She asked, staring at Yen's ghastly pale face. Yen would never say anything about the bad things between the two of you. The red-eyed Liam shook his head. What he said the most was what Lanny liked, where Lanny wanted to go, and if Lanny had him in her heart. Why didn't Lanny call me? Did she miss him? All of this was said after drinking. It could be seen that in Yan's heart, Lanny was very precious to him. She was so precious that even mentioning her was very careful. It was just that the grudge between the two of them was too great. Liam also learned of these things from the side. After all, everyone in the circle of the capital knew that in order to take revenge on Lanny, Yan had sent people to rape her, forced her to have a miscarriage, and even personally removed her uterus. As for the unknown reasons behind it, only one person knew. That was Yen, who was sitting in front of the French window and no longer breathing. Chapter 1134 hugged him for the last time. If even Liam didn't know, then probably no one would know. Perhaps the Yen at that time was so bad that he wanted to bully her, so he sent people to deal with her. After all, he was so repugnant towards her back then. Even if he had a bit of affection for her, it couldn't outweigh the long-term hatred towards her. Moreover, his affection was something he was unaware of. Lanny, who could no longer find an answer, slowly lowered her eyes and eyelashes. She looked at Yen, who was still shrouded in sunlight. Her cold fingers unconsciously touched his face. When her fingertips touched the cold and stiff cheeks, Lanny seemed to want to hug him, but she never moved, only quietly staring at him. Aren't you going to ask who killed him? Lanny asked Liam again. 
Liam stared at Lanny's thin back inside. He wants to protect you. Then it doesn't matter who killed him. No matter how similar it was, it could not hide from Liam's understanding of Yen. It must be that Yen was too violent and forced Lanny to shoot. However, because he loved Lanny to the extreme, he could not bear to see her bear the slightest responsibility. Thus, he committed suicide before death. Liam pondered for a long time. If he were in the same situation, he would also act like Yen. Some people's love is obsessive, but it's true love nonetheless. Hence, they are willing to give up everything, even if it means their life. However, this ending, for the person who has left, might be a release. For the living, it might not be, especially for the person who pulled the trigger. So who can really define, in this chase of love and hatred that lasted for years, who is the winner and who is the loser? Liam would not blame Lanny because that was the person his friend wanted to protect. He would abide by his friend's last wish, but Lanny should blame herself. After she killed someone, whether it was guilt or fear, all these emotions would entangle her. Indeed, it was the case. When the siren came from downstairs, Lanny's fingers tightened unnaturally. She wanted to embrace the person she once loved one last time before the police arrived, but she lacked the courage to do so. Until the police went upstairs, rushed to her, pulled her up, and looked at Yin who was gradually fading out of sight, her heart suddenly hurt. She knew that the police would move his body away, and from then on, she would never see Yin again. She did not know where the strength came from, but she broke free from the police and rushed to Yin. She knelt on the ground and hugged Yin's stiff body. She held him, burying her head in his neck as she used to, but she could no longer feel his warmth, only his cooled skin and rigid touch. At this moment, Lanny clearly realized that Yen was really dead and could never come back. The man who said he loved her and hurt her was really gone. Her tears fell down like water. Yen, I'm sorry. She turned her head and gently kissed the side of Yen's pale face. Then she raised her hand and touched the eyebrows that were engraved in her bones. When she touched the closed eyes, Lanny remembered that no matter if it was young or grown up, these eyes were always full of complex emotions when they looked at her. There was hatred, there was resentment, and there was a hint of pity. Beneath that pity, what was hidden was probably affection. She didn't know how agonizing and torn he must have been at that time. After all, he despised her so much, yet he liked her. How hard it must have been for him. The careful caress between her fingers made Lanny reluctant to let go, but the police, while gently persuading her, forcibly pulled her away from the scene. In his sight, Yen, who was leaning against the window and bathing in the sun, gradually went away. Slowly he merged with the light, so dazzling that she could not see anything. Chapter 1135 Rather than not letting it go, it was better to bless. Just like that, Lanny was pulled downstairs. While she stood rooted to the ground and did not know what to do, Leo walked over to her. Lanny. Seeing her dazed look, Leo thought that she was afraid and quickly patted her shoulder. Don't be afraid, Yen is dead. In the future, no one will pester you anymore. Lanny covered the redness in her eyes and curled her lips, revealing a relaxed and bitter smile. Yes, if he dies, no one will pester me anymore. It's really great. Leo did not notice her emotions and thought that she was really happy. He quickly turned around and pointed into the distance. Miss Sales and Miss Croft are waiting for you over there. Looking in the direction Leo was pointing at, they saw Scarlet and Susan standing under the ship, waiting for her from afar. As if they sensed that she had come out, Scarlet and Susan quickly walked towards her. They rushed over at almost a trot and hugged her. Feeling a trace of warmth, Lanny also hugged the two of them. However, for some reason, even with the power they gave, Lanny's heart still felt like it was entangled by vines, sinking bit by bit. The suffocating feeling forced Lanny to breathe. However, she did not say anything. She only rested her chin on Scarlet's shoulder. Even Yan's body was transported down and placed in the car. She did not dare to look back. Scarlet raised her fair hand and gently stroked Lanny's back. When she saw Lanny rushing out of the ward, she knew that Lanny felt guilty toward Yin, and there was also a trace of indescribable emotions. This sentiment, perhaps it came from her shooting and personally killing the person she once loved, or perhaps it's the discomfort from sudden death after years of entanglement, or maybe it's... Did Lanny still love Yen? This answer was something only she knew. Even Scarlet, who could see clearly from the side, could not see it clearly. After comforting Lanny, she released her and planned to take her onto the boat. However, the moment she looked up, she saw Philo pushing Liam out of the villa. Scarlet was stunned for a moment. Then she remembered that Liam was Yan's close friend. 
If something happened to Yen, he would definitely know the news. It was not surprising that he would come here now. When Philo pushed Liam and wanted to cross Scarlet directly, he raised his hand to stop him. It was as if he had seen his family. He was polite and distant as he greeted her. He greeted Susan first and then nodded to her. He was very careful and did not overstep any boundaries. Scarlet also nodded and called him Liam. He did not say anything else. He only said a few words to Scarlet and Susan to take care of themselves. Scarlet also replied, asking him to heal his legs. After he agreed, he let Philo push him away. After all, Susan was a big sister. She was worried about Liam, who had just lost a good friend, so she hurriedly followed him. Seeing Susan comforting Liam while walking, Scarlet was relieved. With Susan by his side, Liam would feel better. After she watched Liam board the ship, she pulled Susan back to Sebastian's ship. Before boarding the ship, Sebastian walked out of the cabin. His tall and straight body bent down, held Scarlet's hand, and pulled her onto the ship. Liam, who was standing on another ship, saw Scarlet board the ship. Naturally, he held Sebastian's arm and raised her chin slightly. Liam could not hear what she said in his ear. He only felt that the husband and wife were very harmonious and loved each other very much. After all, that man high above, in order to match his wife's height, would rather bend his towering figure, lending an ear to listen closely, than let his wife stand on her toes. Even after his wife had finished speaking, he still didn't straighten up, but instead he raised his slender fingers and stroked her hair, as if to comfort her not to worry. It was just a very simple and subtle gesture, but Liam found his eyes red-rimmed. He realized, witnessing the girl he once loved fall in love with another man with the same amount of affection was even more painful than unrequited love. Liam gave a faint smile and a sense of relief gradually emerged from his smile. The woman he loved has found a man who loves her equally and that is also a form of happiness. Rather than being unable to let go, it's better to wish her well. As long as she is happy, that's enough. Chapter 1136 After Yen Died After the local police cordoned off the scene, investigated the cause of the shooting, and concluded that Yen had committed suicide out of fear of punishment, they contacted the domestic police. After the latter closed their previous case, they allowed the local police to handle it. The local police transported the body to the crematorium and cremated it on the spot. Lanny looked at Yen's body in the crematorium. Due to a reflex, when she suddenly sat up, she found herself hoping that it was all real. But as a doctor, she knew all too well that the muscles in a human body do not die immediately after death, they survive for approximately three days. When the muscle tissue feels a burning pain, it triggers a reflex action. Yen would sit up in the cremation furnace. It was just that his muscles were painful to the point of reacting. Yen was dead and would never come back. Before his death, his protection of her sheltered her from any implications. However, he himself was labeled as a rapist, in addition to being considered a violent offender for unlawful detention. After he died, he did not get a good reputation and was listed by Felix. In the future, Baber family would be no longer someone called Yen, but for the sake of their reputation, he came abroad to pick up Yen's ashes. The people who followed Felix was Zuri and the child she gave birth to at a high age. He was seven years old. He was quite young, but there was a shrewd look in his eyes. When Lanny handed Yen's urn to Miles Baber, he only took it and disliked it as a box that contained dead people. After taking it, he threw it directly to the servant behind him and did not look at it again. This was a box of ashes that should be held by a younger brother, but Miles was as cold and cold-blooded. He was not even willing to bring it back to the country. Lanny had nothing to say about others. She was the one who killed the person. How could she expect a seven-year-old child to have a good impression of Yen? After all, Yen did not treat this child well either. However, why did the corners of Zuri's mouth curl up into a smile when she touched Yen's box of ashes? She was the one who had forced Yen's mother to her death and ruined his life. Why could she still smile? When she was young, Zuri treated Lanny very well. He would often whisper in her ear, Lanny, your brother Yen is a very good child. You have to get along with him well. You have to care more about him. You have to love him more. Don't make him angry. She thought that her aunt was so good to her. She must listen to her and treat brother Yen well. She would often curry favor and get close to Yen. When she was young and ignorant, Zuri would also whisper gently in her ear. Lanny, look, the older your brother Yen grows, the more good looking he is. If you can get his love, you can live with aunt for a lifetime when you marry him. At that time, Lanny happened to have fallen in love with Yen, and her face turned red. Zuri asked, Lanny, do you like Yen? 
Of course, Lanny would not admit to the girl's heart that was hidden in her heart. She immediately shook her head and denied it. When Zuri saw it, she just smiled and did not speak. However, from then on, Zuri would ask the nanny to make something delicious and put it in a lunchbox. She would let Lanny bring it to school to Yen. She would also ask her to go in and send a towel to Yen when Yen took a shower, even if Yen did not ask for a towel. He would ask her to send a glass of milk when Yen was sleeping. At that time, Yen did not like her. He treated her in a rough way. He threw the towel directly into the trash can. The towel was thrown on Lanny's face and the milk was splashed on her body. Lanny, who was injured, did not want to do this. However, Zuri advised her to endure it. Yen would always be moved. Lanny didn't understand. She asked Zuri why she did this. Zuri poked her nose and laughed at her. Wasn't it all for you? Since you like him, I will help you. Zuri didn't seem to care. What she did was against reason. Although Lanny and Yen were not related by blood after all, they were children who grew up under the same roof. They were so familiar with each other that they couldn't be more familiar with each other. Was it really okay to push her to get close? Chapter 1137 Zuri revealed a victorious smile. When she was young, Lanny had never thought about this problem. She only felt that her aunt was helping her pursue the boy she liked. Then she had to be brave and obedient. She listened to Zuri. She always cared about Yen and always chased after him. She even asked Yen to teach her through her bad grades. Even at that time, their relationship was so bad that she dared to look for him. She believed that sincerity would make him move. Brother Yen would be moved by her and then fall in love with her. Unfortunately, he did not. Because Yen hated Zuri, he hated her too. Every time she got close, he would scold her without thinking and say that she was really Zuri's niece. She was like a fox and knew how to seduce men. It was always because of this that he told her to get away. But strangely, while detesting her, Yen would come to her room in the middle of the night. Occasionally when she woke up, she would see him standing by her side, staring at her with a complex expression. When discovered, he would glower at her menacingly, then turn around and leave. Later, Zuri met Yen several times when he came out of her room. For some reason, she suddenly changed her mind and advised Lanny not to like Yen anymore and to let her like Riley. Riley was her classmate. On the way home from school, Lanny met a group of hooligans. It was Riley who saved her and kindly escorted her home. However, this time, Zuri saw it. Zuri checked Riley's family background and felt that it was not bad. However, she did not ask Lanny to do anything to Riley on the surface. She only told Lanny that this child Riley seemed to be quite polite. He was much more educated than Yen and asked Lanny to be his friend. Lanny did not have any friends. In addition, Riley was indeed very cultured and always took the initiative to chat with her. As time went by, she got closer to Riley. After Zuri saw it, she let Riley enter the house and warmly welcomed him. After several times, when they got familiar with each other, Zuri would take the initiative to find Riley and let Riley come to the house often to play. Riley probably liked Lanny a little. At that time, Lanny could see it, but the other party did not say it out. She could not take the initiative to refuse. Then she thought of how she liked Yen and could not get the smile of someone she liked, so she was a little gentler to Riley. Later, it was Suri who instigated Riley to come and confess to her. At that time, she told Suri that she didn't like him. Zuri said, then don't refuse. The college entrance examination is coming soon. Riley, this child's grades are so good. If you refuse him at this critical juncture, what if he fails to get into the college? Wouldn't that ruin his life? Lanny felt that Zuri's words were quite reasonable, so she did not refuse. She just told Riley that when they got into a good university and talked about relationships, Riley also agreed enthusiastically. Finally, they both got into a good school. Only then did Lanny really refuse Riley and she also mustered the courage to confess to the person she liked. However, the person she liked so much sent someone to rape her when she planned to give her to him. Her life trajectory completely changed at that moment. When Zuri learned that she was in trouble, she cried to bring the criminals to justice. However, when she found out that the mastermind was Yin, Zuri seemed to have gone crazy and rushed over to tear Yin apart. The way she fought for her was still vivid in Lanny's mind. She always felt that her aunt loved her very much. She knew that she had been raped by others. Not only did she personally deal with the group of thugs, but she also insisted on sending Yin to prison. However, Yin was saved by his grandfather. Yin was not punished by the law. He was only severely whipped dozens of times. At that time, Yin did not say anything. 
He seemed to realize that he had gone too far, so he gritted his teeth and endured it all. Not long after, Suri found that Lanny was pregnant and made a fuss with Baber family. She insisted on forcing Baber family to send Yin away. Yin did not know what happened. After taking her pulse, he did not say a word and dragged her away from Baber family. He took her to a private hospital, personally performing surgery on her. As he removed her child, he inexplicably scolded her, further deepening their contradictions. What truly embittered Lanny was that after the surgery, he had people toss her, half-dead, into the wilderness without even showing his face, as if he wanted her dead. At that time, Lanny wanted to go back and ask Yin why he did this to her. She pulled the bushes of thorns and stuck out her bloody lower body. At the same time, she crawled desperately in the thorny bushes. She tried all her strength, but she couldn't climb out of the grass. She had suffered so much. It was normal for her to hate Yen, but Suri took over the nest of a magpie. Why didn't she feel ashamed of Yen? Instead, it was like a war without smoke. When she saw the enemy's corpse, she revealed a victorious smile. Chapter 1138 No one knew that she had set up a trap. Lenny couldn't figure it out, so she walked stiffly in front of Suri and asked her, Auntie, what are you laughing at? Zuri didn't hide her smile at all. Instead, she smiled and touched Lanny's hair. I am laughing. My little Lanny has finally gotten rid of this devil. She seemed to pity Lanny very much. Her movements were very gentle. She touched Lanny's cheek. All these years I have seen the pain you suffered because of Yen. I really feel sorry for you. So he died. Even if my heart will ache, this pain is not as important as your release. Zuri was very good to Lanny. No matter if it was money or love, she did not hold back at all. Even when she first entered Baber family's door, Zuri transferred all the money that Felix had given her to her card and transferred several houses to her. Who would have thought that Lanny, who was used to being poor, was already a billionaire at such a young age? In Lanny's eyes, Zuri treated Yin very well. She had always been concerned and cared for. Even if Yin was cold, hostile, and violent, she had no complaints. She did not even hold a grudge and cared for Yin. However, in places that Lanny could not see, Yin would often curse at Zuri for being different. At this time, without waiting for Zuri to explain, he would be slapped by Felix. Then Yin did not say anything. He only kicked the chair away and got up to leave Baber family. Most of the time, the three of them were in conflict. Lanny was upstairs. If she accidentally bumped into them, Zuri would also signal her to leave. Lanny felt that she was living under someone else's roof. It would be not good to get involved in their family affairs, so she would obediently stay away from them. As conflicts amongst the three of them increased, she developed a habit of not getting closer or eavesdropping, hence she was always unaware of the cause of their disputes. However, in Lanny's impression, Zuri was indeed a very gentle and kind stepmother. At least, she had never said anything bad about Yen in front of her. She had always praised this child for being smart. Even the servants around her had never said anything bad. Lanny thought that such a good person would smile happily. Perhaps she was really happy for her, just like Leo. After all, Zuri and Leo were her relatives. They were related by blood. Compared to Yin who had hurt them, they naturally loved her more. Thinking of this, Lanny did not ask any more questions. She only looked away and looked at the urn placed in the black car. Yin had already turned to ashes. No matter how many grudges there were, it would come to an end. It was just... Lanny raised her hand to touch her heart, feeling so strange. It always felt stuffy, as if suddenly devoid of hatred, not knowing the meaning of existence, unbearably uncomfortable. Yet, she was unable to control these emotions, only able to let them drag her into the abyss and walk into hell. Seeing that Lanny did not suspect anything anymore, Zuri slowly put away the smile on her lips, but the fruit of victory was caught in her eyes. Yin was finally dead. No one would bully her. No one would point at her nose, call her a mistress, and no one would go against her. Her son could also smoothly get the inheritance of Baber family, and no one would fight with him for it. From now on she, a woman who came from a small county with no education, no cultivation, and no morals, could firmly sit in the position of Mrs. Baber. No one will ever reveal her past, and no one will ever look down upon her with arrogance. As for Yen, Zuri stared coldly at the black box of ashes. No matter how stubborn, difficult, and capable he was, he still turned into ashes in the end. Hey, he really deserved it. Zuri sneered and greeted Lanny. Then she sat in the car. When the black window was rolled up, Zuri and Miles looked at each other. Then the mother and son smiled. Yin was dead. 
No one would know what she had done behind his back, including Ian himself. In this world, only she knew what trap she set up in the past, and she would never be stupid enough to reveal her secret to the public. When Zuri thought of this, she touched Ian's urn and laughed wantonly. She had never been so happy before, which made her very happy. She had been looking forward to his death for many years. Now that he was finally dead, how could she not be happy? Chapter 1139 Zuri was the best stepmother. Yan Zern was brought back to the country by Felix and his family. According to the news from the capital, Zuri was really sincere about this stepson. Felix angrily rebuked Yen for being a person who ruined his family and refused to hold a funeral. Zuri argued with Felix and said that no matter how bad Yan's reputation was, he was still Baber family's person. They had to hold a grand funeral. In the end, Felix did not argue with Zuri and handed the funeral over to her. The people who came to Baber family to offer their condolences all said that Zuri knelt in front of Yan's portrait and cried terribly. Baber family supported her so that she did not faint on the spot. The people in the circle of the capital all said that Zuri was the best stepmother, and Yen was the most ungrateful stepson. When these news reached Lanny, she was administering medicine with a syringe, her movement didn't stop, and her expression didn't change much. It seemed that she no longer had any emotions for this deceased person, it sounded like a breeze to her ears, just listened and let it go. She came back from Panama and arranged for Asher to recuperate in the hospital. She stayed by Asher's side and took care of his daily life while working normally. The work she had to do did not fall behind at all. It was no different from before. At first, Scarlett and Susan were worried that Lanny would be overly sad because of Yen, but who would have thought that after she came back, she would immediately put on her white coat and start working. Whether it was mentioning Yen or not, she was happy. It seemed that Yen was gone. For her, it was a relief. Lanny told them that they did not have to deliberately avoid Yen in front of her without him, she would not have to live in fear in the future. Therefore, she did not even offer condolences. She did not even ask where Yen was buried. When Scarlett and Susan saw her like this, they did not ask more. They only told her that if there was anything, they would look for them. As long as she needed them, they would definitely help. Lanny nodded and agreed to let them do their own things. Scarlett wanted to rush the design. Susan had to take care of the night scene. They were all very busy. Lanny had already troubled them enough during this period of time. Naturally, he would not let them worry. After flicking the needle, Lanny bent down and smiled as she coaxed the child. While the child was not paying attention, she secretly gave the child a needle. The child looked at her and smiled. When she pulled out the needle, the child cried. The parents next to her were comforting the child. Lanny also smiled and touched the child's head. She took out a lollipop from her pocket and handed it to the child as if she was performing a magic trick. The child took the lollipop and not only did he stop crying but he also obediently said thank you. Lanny touched the child's head again and then smiled and left the ward. After she walked out of the ward, the smile on her face suddenly stiffened. As the world spun around her, she quickly reached out her hand to steady herself against the wall. With trembling fingers, she felt her white coat, searching everywhere for the medicine bottle. The images of her shooting Yen to death and Yen dying while sitting in front of the floor-to-ceiling windows flashed through her mind. Such bright blood flowed into her brain again and again, making her feel a little nervous. She had to take medicine to forget these bloody scenes. After she found the medicine bottle, she poured out a pill, put it in her mouth with trembling hands, and swallowed it. After she took the medicine, she leaned against the wall and waited for her emotions to calm down. A doctor walked over. Executive Lanny, what's wrong? During this period of time, Executive Lanny had been working hard. Whether it was neurosurgery or internal medicine, as long as they needed help, she would help. Now she even came to the pediatrics. They didn't know if Executive Lanny was setting an example or using work to numb herself. I'm fine. Lanny waved her hand and let the doctor do his own things. Then she forced her tired body back to Asher's ward. Chapter 1140 Can We Be Together Again? Asher took over the treatment in time, swiftly enough to prevent any particularly severe sequelae. He has already significantly recovered, and with a little more recuperation, he should be ready to be discharged from the hospital. Seeing Lanny come in, Asher hurriedly asked his parents, who were accompanying him in front of the bed, to go out. His parents were also quite sensible. After looking at Lanny, they let the two talk and got up to leave. How's it today? Can you move your hands? Lanny walked over and sat down in front of Asher's bed. Asher looked at Lanny gently, my hands can always return to normal. Don't worry. 
Lanny took Asher's hand and checked it. Seeing that it was recovering well, she replied, it can be recovered, but in the future, I'm afraid you can't operate anymore. I stayed in the company that Jackman Group developed medicine. After a period of time, I found that compared to helping people with surgery, I am more interested in medicine. You are a very excellent surgeon. It's really a pity that you lost the opportunity to do surgery just like that. Lanny still felt a little regretful. Hearing this, a light smile appeared in Asher's eyes. Actually, as a doctor, whether developing drugs, performing surgeries, or just helping patients with rehabilitation, it's all about healing and saving lives. As long as we can save lives, there's nothing to regret. When the last sentence fell into Lanny's ears, it was as if she was pulled back to the past by something, and she was stunned on the spot. The 18-year-old Yen also said the same thing. At that time, he had his hands in his pockets and leaned against the rotating escalator, quietly listening to Baber family discuss his career direction. Grandpa Baber said that Yen was the inheritance of their medical family. He could not waste his talent and had to work as a doctor. Felix said that Yen played well with computers and was a talent needed in the financial world. He had to work in finance. The father and son argued with each other because of this matter. In the end, Grandpa Baber did not argue with Felix. He was so angry that he was half dead. Yen comforted Grandpa Baber and said to him, No matter what industry I am in, I can cure and save people. As long as I can save people, there is nothing to regret. It was also because Yen had promised Felix that he would study in the finance department in university that Felix decided to let Yen become the successor after graduation and officially enter Baber family's business field. Unfortunately, before Yen graduated from university, he committed an unforgivable mistake and sent someone to violate her. Therefore, he was boycotted by all of Baber family's people. Because of this, Baber family's position as the successor was no longer qualified. If not for that matter, Yen would not have inherited Grandpa Baber's mantle and chose to become a doctor. Instead, he would have become an elite in the financial world and lead Baber family to flourish in the business field. Lanny comforted herself. Yen was defeated by him and had nothing to do with her. When Asher asked her what was wrong, she shook her head lightly. I'm fine. I'm probably tired. Occasionally, I will be dazed. Asher stared at Lanny's face. He wanted to see something strange from her expression, but she was calm. It seemed that Yan's death did not give her any fluctuations at all. He stared at Lanny for a moment and asked, Lanny, I told you before that after sending Yin in, we will get back together. Now that he is gone, there is no longer any obstruction between us. Can we get back together again? From the day of the marriage certificate, when Lanny was taken away by Yan and sent back, she had been separated from him and had never gotten back together. Asher did not force Lanny. He only felt that the person who hindered them from getting together was Yen, so he wanted to send Yen in first so that Lanny would no longer be hurt. He could be with her again, but he did not expect it to be to the point of death. Asher felt that it was inappropriate to ask Lanny about the reunion at this time, but his selfishness made him ask. He always felt that something was quietly changing after Yen died, but he could not detect it. Chapter 1141 However, you should be sensible. Lanny lowered her unfathomable eyes and stared at Asher's wrist that was wrapped in gauze. After looking at it for a while, the corners of her lips slowly curved up. Asher, I am an bad lucky person. Since you were with me, you were either injured or injured. It's better not to continue. Hearing this, Asher's heart trembled fiercely. He did not know why, but he seemed to have a premonition that Lanny would give such an answer. Therefore, when Lanny said this, Asher was not surprised but... Lanny Yin is not here. No one will come to hurt me again. Lanny looked away and looked up at Asher, who was expecting her to change her mind. I killed someone and was violated in front of you. I will never be able to cross these two obstacles in my heart. She did not find any other reason and said it directly. In fact, when Yin forced her in front of Asher, it was impossible for Lanny to be with Asher. No one had experienced such an embarrassing thing and could still be safe and sound. They were married and spent a lifetime with each other. If it was someone else, they would probably not even dare to see each other again. Lanny was still strong. At least she could treat Asher as if nothing had happened. I don't mind. When Asher looked at Lanny, his eyes were filled with heartache. Lanny, you were just forced to do nothing. This is not your fault, including shooting Yen to death. You also missed out on it and did not really want to kill him. I have seen all of this and I can understand you. So I don't mind at all. Why are you? Lanny smiled, her eyes curved like the brightest moon in the night sky. Asher, I mind. 
After she interrupted Asher with a smile, she turned back to look at the middle-aged couple standing outside the sick room. When she saw the tired face of the couple and the gray hair on their ears, she sighed deeply. Asher, your parents are old and can't stand being tossed around. They love you so much and are so open-minded. You should think more about them. Lanny touched her stomach. Although you say that your parents don't need children, which parents in this world don't want a grandchild by their side. When your parents said they didn't want any, it's because they love you and understand you. However, you should be sensitive. Asher opened his mouth and wanted to refute Lanny, but he was interrupted by Lanny again. Asher, other than the reasons above, I still have to tell you that I still haven't completely fallen in love with you. This sentence made Asher swallow the words he wanted to say. He lowered his head and stared at his wrist. After looking at it for a long time, he unwillingly raised his head. Lanny, I know that you haven't fallen in love with me. It has always been my wishful thinking, but so what? As long as I love you, it's enough. Not enough. After Lanny rejected Asher, she raised her eyebrows and smiled at him. When I was with you before, you made me feel loved. I thought that was enough for a lifetime. I never considered that doing so was unfair to you. He loved her purely. She should still love him purely, but she could not give him. Whether Asher minded or not, it was unfair to him. Asher, an outstanding and kind person like you should be worthy of a better woman, and a murderer like me is destined to die alone. Even if the law did not punish her, she would be punished in other ways. She would never calm down again in her life. Why would she drag Asher to hell with her? Chapter 1142 Was it him who indirectly caused the death of Yen? After Lanny finished speaking, she no longer waited for Asher to speak. She directly stood up and left. Her decisiveness was the same when she fired at Yen. Lanny had never been a hesitant and conflicted person. When she decided on something, she would tell the other party and then cut off their relationship and no longer interacted with him. However, Asher knew that Lanny would not cut off their relationship like this. At least before his hand completely recovered, she would still care about him as usual. For Lanny, he was also a very important person in her heart. It was just that this importance was not as important as her lover, but it was not to the point of being estranged. Asher was too clear about what kind of person Lanny was, so he looked at her back and slowly opened his mouth. Lanny, if I hadn't gone to find you at that time, would you and Yin have been on the island for a month? Lanny's footsteps slowly stopped, but she didn't look back. She just stood there for a few seconds and then left. No one knew the answer in Lanny's heart, but Asher could see that if he hadn't gone, Lanny would have spent a month with Yen and then returned safely, just like the time when they were getting married, Yen would have sent her back. Asher fell on the bed and leaned against the pillow. He looked at the figure that stood in front of his parents, and his face slowly turned pale. Did he indirectly kill Yen? Lanny greeted Asher's parents and told them not to let Asher touch the water. She wanted to turn around and leave, but Asher's parents stopped her. Miss Lanny, we heard what you said to Asher just now. A few strands of hesitant emotions appeared on Asher's mother's gentle face. In the end, she became firm and thanked Lanny with a smile. Thank you for your deep righteousness. They really couldn't afford any more turmoil. They hoped their son would lead a peaceful life in the future, free from such tumultuous events. Ideally, he would have a child with his gentle wife, they would live harmoniously and create a serene family environment. Executive Lanny was also a very good woman. However, Asher's mother felt that Executive Lanny had loved a person as deeply as. She had even personally shot the person she loved the most. She would never be able to cross this hurdle in her life. There would be an indelible mark in Executive Lanny's heart. It could not bring her son a stable life. Even if her son did not mind, it had been a long time. If Executive Lanny had not fallen in love with him, he would be a little unwilling. If this was not reconciled, would her son not hate Executive Lanny? Once he was unhappy, how could their lives be peaceful? Asher's mother did not want her son to blame Executive Lanny in the future, quarrel with Executive Lanny, and abandon Executive Lanny. In the end, the bitter person was still Executive Lanny. Women understood women better, and what Asher's mother was worried about was exactly what Lanny thought of, so she replied with a smile, this is what I should do, and... Lanny bowed to the two elders sincerely and apologized. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hurt your son. I'm sorry I heartlessly rejected your son. I'm sorry I can't be your daughter-in-law anymore. Asher's mother stepped forward, helped Lanny up, and gave her a hug. After Lanny hugged this mother-in-law who had no fate with her, she let go of her hand and waved goodbye to the two elders. 
Then, she stepped on her high heels and left the inpatient department. When she returned to the clinic and was about to ask which department needed help, someone patted her on the shoulder from behind. Lanny turned around and saw a man in a blue suit. He looked a little familiar, but she had no impression of him. Who are you? Lanny, I am Riley. Don't you know me? The man smiled at Chapter 1143 How Could She Not Know? Hearing the other party say that he was Riley, Lanny looked him up and down seriously. He was different from when he was young. He lost his immaturity and became dignified and elegant. He was quite handsome. After recognizing him, Lanny smiled and replied with a smile, Didn't you live abroad? Why are you back now? Why are you in the hospital? Riley felt extremely familiar as if he had met an old friend, and his enthusiasm increased slightly. My grandmother hasn't been doing well recently and my mom urged me to return to the country to see her. So I hurried back I didn't expect to run into you at the hospital. After that, Riley looked at Lanny's white coat. Looking at your dress, you seem to be a doctor. Are you a doctor? Lanny nodded and didn't say anything. Riley said in the past, when you were in high school, you always muttered that you wanted to take the medical school exam. I thought you were just joking. I didn't expect you to really become a doctor. From your tone, it seems that you look down on doctors. Lanny asked. How could that be? I just thought that after what happened, you wouldn't follow Yin anymore. Riley quickly waved his hand. Originally, Riley wanted to continue, but he seemed to realize that what he said was a bit too much. He quickly stopped and apologized. I'm sorry, I was rude. It doesn't matter, it's all in the past. Lanny shook her head. Yen was dead, and the past disappeared with his death. Did you know that Yen died? Riley asked again when he mentioned Yen. Lanny's face turned a little pale, but she nodded calmly, I know. How could she not know? She killed him? Riley let out a long sigh. Although he passed away at a young age, there is a saying that is quite reasonable. Bad people will always suffer retribution. Yen had done bad things, which was why he passed away so early. Back then he bought a ship and planned to confess to Lanny on the ship. It was originally a very meaningful and beautiful thing, but Yen inexplicably rushed onto the ship and took Lanny away. After he took her away, he heard that Yen had sent people to rape Lanny. Riley regretted it until now. If he had been braver at that time and chased after Yen to resist, then Lanny would not have suffered that kind of injury. But at that time, he was afraid of Yen and did not have the courage to follow him. That was why Lanny was bullied by the people Yen sent. Thinking of this, Riley felt a little guilty and wanted to invite Lanny to dinner no matter what. Lanny did not want to go, but Riley said, Lanny, don't worry. I don't have that kind of thoughts about you now. I just treat you as a classmate and a friend. Lanny could not stand his enthusiasm, so she took off her white coat and handed it to the nurse. She followed Riley out of the hospital. When she left the hospital, a doctor called Lanny director. Only then did Riley know that the most expensive and best hospital in a town's hospital was actually opened by Lanny. He could not help but give Lanny a thumbs up. So you are not only a doctor, but also a director. You are really amazing now. When she was young, Riley was shy. Most of the time, he was so shy that he did not dare to speak. Now Riley dared to tease her, which made Lanny feel very relaxed. She did not take Riley's car. Instead, she drove her own car and took Riley to a restaurant that was not too expensive. When the two of them sat down, she asked Riley, what are you doing now? Riley wanted to treat Lanny to something expensive, but it was clear that Lanny was still the same as before. She was thrifty and considerate. He could understand, so he did not force him. After boiling the bowl and chopsticks with boiling water, he handed it to Lanny as he replied, I do research and development abroad. It is also related to programming. Speaking of this, Riley smiled and mentioned Yen again, I can do this job because of Yen. If he didn't show off that he knew how to calculate the computer in school, I wouldn't have come into contact with computers at that age because of competing with him. But it is also because of this competition that I have the current work. Why didn't you inherit your family's business and instead went abroad to do research and development? Lanny asked. Riley picked up the teacup and took a sip of water, nonchalantly saying, My brother is the heir, he will take care of the family affairs in the future. As for me, I'm free and doing what I like. After all, I don't have to manage the family business. I will still get a good share of the family's fortune, isn't that a wonderful thing? Don't laugh at me. I am only this capable. Riley laughed. Lanny had always known that Riley had a good temperament. How could he laugh at such a pure and cheerful person? You are also quite good like this. Riley was both confident and sunny. 
She raised her eyebrows at Lanny. Right? I think so too. There was a saying that men were always young. Riley was like this. Because her family environment was good, he lived a relaxed and comfortable life, which formed this kind of natural disposition. Lanny was amused by him. She just smiled on the surface, but her smile did not reach the bottom of her eyes. For some reason, ever since Yen passed away, it was difficult for Lanny to smile from the bottom of her heart. It seemed that she was carrying a heavy burden on her shoulders, which made her unable to laugh. Chapter 1144 Who was it that had remitted money to them? The food was soon served in the restaurant, and the two of them chatted while eating. As the conversation went on, they ended up talking about the events from the past once again. Originally, Lanny did not want to ask, but when she heard Riley say that the group of people who bullied her had gone out of prison, Lanny still asked, they are just hooligans. How can they still be doing well abroad? Did they do some big business? Riley picked up a dish with a pair of chopsticks, placed it on Lanny's plate, and replied, none of those people were doing any big businesses. After getting out of jail, it's as if they suddenly became rich by clinging onto some tycoon. They even all immigrated abroad together. Not only did they not do any businesses, but they also spent every day eating, drinking, and having fun. It's unknown where their money comes from. On the night of Lanny's accident, other than a few people, they lost their footing and fell into the water during their escape. They died on the spot. The others, although they were also sent to prison by Zri later, they came out to live a good life and were very rich. Where are these people now? Lanny's hand that was holding the chopsticks trembled. Riley thought that Lanny was going to settle accounts with the group of people, so he hurriedly said, they died long ago. Some died in the sea, some were killed by gambling, some were killed by cars, and some were killed by cars. Anyway, those people did not have a good ending. It is estimated that God is taking revenge on them. Riley had always felt that if one did something bad, he would suffer retribution. It was just a matter of time. After hearing what happened to these people, he did not think deeply about it. However, to Lanny, it was full of doubts. Why would they suddenly become rich and why would they suddenly die? It sounds as if someone is afraid that they know some secrets, so they bribe them and then use money to send them away. After that, they gradually silence them. In this way, they can do it without anyone knowing. Lanny lowered her eyes and thought for a few seconds. Then she looked up at Riley, who was eating with his head lowered. How do you know this? I stayed in the same country as them, and they were all on the local news after the incident. How could I not know? After getting confirmation, Lanny's heavy heart fell again. She suddenly remembered the question she had been suspicious about before. Since Yen liked her a little, why did he send people to rape her? No matter how angry he was, he could not do such a thing to the girl he liked, let alone the possessive Yen. Thinking of this, Lanny stood up and said, Riley, I'm sorry. I still have something urgent to deal with. I'll treat you to a meal next time. Riley was still chewing on something. Seeing Lanny leave in a panic with her bag, it was inconvenient to talk to her, so he could only nod at her and wave goodbye. Lanny went directly to Jackman Group to find Leo and asked him to check the bank water after the group of people who bullied her in the past were released from prison. Leo did not understand why Lanny wanted to check this. After the several rapists were released from prison, they were afraid of being retaliated by Baber family and directly fled abroad. Leo originally wanted to kill those people, but Lanny felt that they were only ordered by Yen, so they had to forgive others and did not care about them anymore. Now why did they suddenly investigate them? Was his cousin going to take revenge? Lanny did not explain much and only asked him to check quickly. Only then did Leo go to the bank. He was very efficient. Lanny only waited for a while and Leo came back with the information. When he saw Lanny, Leo had a serious face. How is it? Who transferred the money to them? Leo did not reply. He only handed the information to Lanny with a cold face. The somewhat anxious Lanny quickly took over the information and flipped through the pages one by one. These transfer had passed through many bank accounts before finally reaching the account of the few people who had been released from prison. It was obvious that they were afraid that people would find out, so they did this. But even with such a complicated and dense operation process, Leo still managed to find the source of the information of the person who transferred the money. When Lanny flipped to the name of the person who transferred the money, her face suddenly paled, and her fingers that held the information could not help but tremble. Luca Crow. That was Zuri's cousin. Zuri's original name was Ruby Derby, and fortune tellers said that she had to change her name to change her surname to become rich and powerful. Only then did she change her name to Zuri. Unexpectedly, it was as the fortune teller said. 
After changing her name, she met Felix. From then on, she was rich and powerful. Sure enough, she threw herself at the girl who came out of the small county town. She couldn't avoid it at all. However, such a rich person would let her cousin transfer money to the gangsters who bullied her. This made Lanny unable to understand. Chapter 1145 My wife is pregnant, of course I am happy. Leo, who was standing in front of her, noticed something strange the moment she saw Luca's name. She immediately reminded Lanny. That incident from years ago, it's very likely that Zuri was stirring the pot. Otherwise, it wouldn't be such a coincidence that her cousin was transferring money to this group of people, and the amount that arrived in each account is identical. Even if they had divided a few accounts and transferred them in a roundabout way, they were all about the same. If the person behind them was Yen, then he would directly open a foreign bank account for these people and operate it from the inside so that no one who wanted to investigate could find out. Only the uneducated Suri would transfer a lot of accounts and use a step-by-step -step method. Lanny was a little dazed. She relied on Leo to support her to stand firm. She grabbed Leo's arm and slowly sat down on the sofa. When Leo saw her like this, he immediately pulled out a small knife from his waist and was about to go to the capital to kill her. I'm going to get that woman and ask her what exactly is going on? I'll go myself. Lanny reached out to stop him. She wanted to ask Zuri why she transferred the money to these people. Why did she laugh when she saw Yan's urn? Why did she cry at the funeral after returning to the capital? She wanted to ask this aunt who loved her so much. Why did she have two faces? She forced herself to stand up and supported herself with the sofa. Leo was worried about her and wanted to go with her. However, Julia called her. When Lanny saw the corners of Leo's lips gradually rise, he immediately asked a few questions, it's true. Then she vaguely guessed what good news it was. Sure enough, after Leo hung up the phone, he said to Lanny with a happy face, Lanny, your sister-in-law is pregnant. Lanny's gloomy and heavy heart couldn't help but feel happy when she heard this good news. That's great. Leo was extremely happy. He wanted to rush to the hospital to pick up his wife right now, but when he saw Lanny, he quickly suppressed his excitement. Let's go, I'll accompany you back to the capital first. It was very rare for this brother to be like this, but Lanny had to be sensible. Sister-in-law has just been pregnant and she needs to your accompany the most. Go and accompany sister-in-law. I'll go find my aunt myself. Leo had already established a family. Now this family had added a new child. The role that Leo was playing now was not only her brother, but also a husband and father. He was already busy enough, so she shouldn't let him be in circles for her. Moreover, Leo had already cut off all ties with Baber family, but she had a close relationship with Baber family. It could even be said that Baber family had raised her. It was normal for her to ask. With the relationship between Leo and Baber family in this situation, it was better not to go, lest there was another conflict. What Leo meant was that when he went to the hospital to pick up his wife and go home, he would accompany her to the capital, but she refused. She only went to ask her aunt what was going on. It was not like she was going to fight with Suri. Nothing would happen. Leo also felt that Lanny would not get into a conflict with her most beloved aunt because of Yen, so he did not try to persuade her anymore. However, he was still worried about her, so he sent a few bodyguards to protect her and told Lanny that she would call him if something happened. Lanny nodded in agreement and then went to the capital with the bodyguards. On Leo's side, he went to the president's office to ask Sebastian for a long vacation. Probably because his wife was pregnant, he was a little too happy. When he pushed the door open and entered, his happy expression could not be covered with her hands. Sebastian, who was reviewing documents, saw him come in and laugh from time to time. He suddenly raised his cold eyes and glanced at him coldly. What are you laughing about? Leo, who was waiting for Mr. Jackman to ask, quickly removed his hand that was covering his smiling face and rushed to Sebastian. He was so excited that he forgot about the president's obsession with cleanliness and directly placed his hands on Sebastian's desk. Mr. Jackman, my wife is pregnant. I am here to ask for a few days off. Sebastian's eyes were as cold as snow. Originally, he was staring at the claw marks on the desk. Hearing Leo's words, he slowly moved his disdainful gaze away and looked at Leo's smiling face. Chapter 1146 Mr. Jackman did not approve of leave. Seeing this smiling face, why did he suddenly have the urge to give him a beating? Sebastian frowned and thought for a long time, thinking of the source. Leo got married later than him and actually got pregnant first, but he... When he thought of how he worked hard every night and his chances of winning the bid were not as high as Leo, he was depressed. 
He picked up the pen in his hand again and said coldly, no. Leo's smile froze at the corner of his mouth. Why? His wife was already pregnant, yet he still didn't approve his leave. Wasn't this too cruel? Sebastian ignored him and continued to sign. Leo shouted anxiously, Mr. Jackman, just let me take a leave. Even one day is good. Seeing that his president still ignored him, Leo immediately let go of his hand on the table and turned to walk to the sofa. If you don't agree, I will sit here and protest. Sebastian. He glanced at Leo, opened the drawer, took out a bank card from it, and threw it directly to Leo. Congratulations. Seeing the bank card, Leo was stunned for a moment, then waved his hand, with your blessing, it's enough. I don't want the money. Sebastian put down the pen again, stretched out his slender fingers, and took back the card. Since you don't want it, then leave it to Zed's child. When Leo heard this, he immediately took the bank card back from Sebastian's hand. No, I can't let that bastard Zed tax advantage. I'll accept it. Thank you. Then Mr. Jackman, I'm going to pick up my wife. Leo was thick-skinned, laughing and taking the bank card back. Sebastian did not even lift his head. He nodded lightly. When Leo walked out of the office, he raised his eyes that were as bright as Lucas. He looked at Leo's back and smiled. This was probably the first person around him to be a father. Naturally, he was happy for Leo, but when would his child come? Sebastian originally did not want to have a child, but when he saw Leo's joy, he was a little expectant. However, when he thought about how it would hurt when Scarlet gave birth to a child, this expectation instantly vanished. Forget it. Without a child, his wife could still suffer less. Lanny quickly arrived at the capital and returned to Baber family. Zuri was sitting on the sofa and teaching the servant a lesson. Seeing her come in, Zuri immediately shut up and quickly helped the servant up, telling her not to cry. She quickly got up and greeted Lanny with a smile. She was holding Lanny's arm, walking her to the living room while explaining what had just happened. Nami burned my dress, so she got scared and knelt down to apologize. I told her it was okay, but she was worried she couldn't afford to pay for the dress and started crying. I tried to persuade her, but she wouldn't listen, so I purposely put on a stern face to discipline her. I didn't expect you to come back before I could say a few words. After Zuri said this gently and gently, she raised her hand to Nami who was still wiping her tears. Nami, don't you see that young lady is back? Don't cry. Go back to the kitchen and help Auntie Bedell. Remember to prepare more food that young lady likes. Nami was aggrieved. She looked at Lanny but did not dare to say anything. She only nodded obediently and turned to walk into the kitchen. In the past, Lanny naturally could not see through the grievance in Nami's eyes. Now she saw through the grievance in Nami's eyes at a glance. She probably knew that Zuri's cousin had paid money to those hooligans. Only then did she see that her aunt was different in appearance. She recalled how Yen had scolded Zuri many times when he was young. However, because the other party was her aunt, she had never doubted what Zuri had said or explained. If she had thought about it at that time, could she have found a different aunt? Thinking of this, Lanny quietly pushed away Zuri's hand. She had never been so slow. After sitting down on the sofa, she directly reported the purpose of her visit. Auntie, I am here because I want to talk to you about a matter from the past. Zuri, who was about to sit down on the sofa, stiffened upon hearing these words, but sat down without showing any signs of unease. Then she smiled and asked, what past events are you talking about? Lanny took out a stack of information from his bag and put it on the glass coffee table. Why did your cousin Luca transfer money to them after a few gangsters came out of prison? Chapter 1147 Zuri refused to admit it. Zuri glanced at the information and her heart skipped a beat. She did not expect that after so many years, Lanny would go to the bank to investigate this kind of thing. However, she quickly calmed down and pretended not to know. She reached out to take the information while revealing a surprised expression. Uh, I don't know. Why would he give money to those hooligans? She held the information and frowned. She kept looking through it. Lanny sat opposite her and looked at Zuri quietly. She wanted to see some strange emotions on her face, but she did not show it. She could even sense some anger from her eyes. Luca, this bastard, how could he give money to those hooligans who bullied you? After reading the information, Zuri was so angry that she threw away the information in her hand. Her graceful and luxurious body was trembling as if she was very angry. If that bastard hadn't died two years ago, I would have caught him and asked him why he did this. Yes, Luca had already passed away. There was no evidence. Otherwise, Lanny would have asked Leo for help and kidnapped Luca. After finding the evidence, she would come to confront Suri. 
She would have nothing to say, so why would she come here to coax her? Lanny stared at the angry Zuri. After a few seconds of silence, she said lightly, Auntie, if Uncle sends money to those individuals after they get out of prison, it means that he is the mastermind behind the scenes. Otherwise, there's no reason for him to send them money. The emotions in Zuri's eyes changed slightly, but she did not reveal it. Isn't the mastermind behind the scenes Yen? When we interrogated him, he admitted it himself. How could it be your uncle? Could it be that your uncle owes these hooligans money, hence he sent them funds after they were released from prison? You know what kind of desperate acts these people, backed into a corner, are capable of. My guess is that your uncle, the notorious gambler, feared these people would come after him, that's why he sent them money. She had made an excuse for Luca, but Lanny didn't believe it. Auntie, that group of hooligans followed Yen. They are so much younger than uncle. How could uncle borrow money from them? Besides, he is afraid of being discovered by my uncle-in-law. He always gambles abroad, so how dare he involve himself with these people, especially those associated with Yen? Doesn't uncle hate Yen as much as you do? Why would he borrow money from Yen's associates? Moreover, those thugs don't have much money. How would your uncle borrow from them? Zuri was a little speechless from being questioned, but she refused to admit it. Lanny, I am not very clear about the matter of your uncle. Who does he hang out with, who does he gamble with, who does he owe, and how much he owes? He never told me. He only asked me for money every time. Maybe your uncle really has contact with Yen's people in private. Maybe it is also possible that Yen bought your uncle and asked your uncle to do something to hurt you. You also know that your uncle owed a lot of gambling debts at that time. I refused to pay him back. When he was angry, he ran to Yen and colluded with Yen. It is also possible. Lanny knew that it was very difficult to find out the reason why Luca signed the money from Zuri, so she changed to play the emotion card. And you should be clear about the matter of uncle. He relied on you to suck money in his life. If he was really bought by Yen and did something bad to me, he would definitely tell you. Now that Yen is dead, the grudge between me and him has been settled. I won't quarrel with you over his matter. I won't blame you for hiding anything. I just want to know the truth now. Suri calmly sized up Lanny. She saw that the way she looked at her was still the same as before. She respected her and had no hatred at all. Her heart moved slightly, but she still shook her head. Lanny, I really don't know why your uncle gave those hooligans money. After she finished speaking, she took a long sigh and said, Now that your uncle has passed away, no one knows why he did such things. However, for you to say he was the mastermind behind it all, I find it unlikely. After all, Yen did admit at the time that he was the one who ordered the hit. If Suri followed Lanny's words now, the mastermind behind the scenes would be Luca. Lanny would suspect that it had something to do with her, so she might as well push the blame onto Yen. After all, Yen had also had this kind of thought back then. Although it was just a scare, what was the point of her pushing the boat with the current? Chapter 1148 He had been tricked by his own son. Zuri now insisted that Yen had admitted it at that time. Yes, Yen had admitted it, but Lanny did not hear it with her own ears. At that time, she was lying in the hospital and all the news was brought to her by Zuri. Because of this, Lanny was so shocked when she saw Luca transfer money to those hooligans. But at the same time, Lanny was puzzled. If not for Yen who sent people to do it, why would he admit it? Lanny wanted to ask these doubts, but obviously, Zuri would not tell her. After hesitating for a moment, she stood up and walked to Zuri. Like her childhood, she squatted next to Zuri, put her hand on her leg, and looked up at her. Aunt, I am your most beloved niece. I have always regarded you as my mother. We are both from a small county town. We should love each other, help each other, and trust each other. You also know that Miles is still young. Miles' cousins are staring at the position of heir. Baber family is a stock system. Maybe one day these cousins will get the position. At that time, Miles' position as heir will be in danger. Although I am a town, I am now backed by a lot of power. Jackman Group can easily change the Baber family with a flick of its finger. If you trust me and tell me the truth, then I will definitely help Miles become Baber family's heir in the future. These words were indeed quite moving. It also directly poked into the depths of Suri's heart. Before Yen died, she was afraid that Yen would become the heir. He then kicked her out of the Baber family. Now she was also afraid of Miles' cousin for the sake of her youngest son. This Baber family share system was really hateful. It was just like anyone could get involved. Felix was clearly the chairman. Even if Baber family relied on all his brothers and sisters to grow up, he was still the leader. Why did others have to interfere in the position of heir? 
Zuri was so angry that her stomach hurt, but she remained calm and collected. She stared at Lanny's pure eyes and felt that Lanny did not seem to be deceiving her to tell the truth. However, no matter whether she was tricking her or not, Zuri could not tell her about this matter. On the contrary, she had to stabilize Lanny and let her help Miles in the future. She could use the power behind her, Jackman Group, to become Miles' strongest backing. Thinking of this, Zuri raised her hand and placed it on the back of Lanny's hand. She patted her gently and praised her for being sensible. Lanny, I am really happy to have a niece like you. If you are willing to help Miles, I can't treat you unfairly. How about this? When Baber family redistributes the shares, I will tell your uncle and let you join in. This way in the future, when Lanny held a share, Miles took up a large part of it. When the successor was elected, no matter what, Miles was ranked first, and no one would want to cross him. Miles, who was sitting at the side reading a book, heard this sentence, and his sinister eyes were dyed with a touch of darkness. Originally, Baber family shares had already been divided, and now Lanny added in, wouldn't that be even less? Also, if Lanny knew the truth and chose not to help him, instead went to help others, then wouldn't that be making enemies for him? Rather than taking this dangerous move, it would be better to completely cut off the path of Lanny entering Baber Group, so as to avoid endless troubles in the future. Thinking of this, Miles put down the book in his hand, took off the glasses on the bridge of his nose, and coldly looked at Suri who was showing different expressions on his face. Mom, didn't you ask uncle to send people to rape cousin? Why don't you admit it? These words completely shocked Suri. Her widened eyes seemed to say, how do you know? Miles seemed to have seen through her thoughts. He said expressionlessly, two years ago when you were arguing with uncle in the room, I happened to hear it. Two years ago, Luca did look for her and still asked for money. She was not willing to give the vampire money anymore, so Luca used what happened back then to threaten her. The two of them quarreled, but they did not expect that Miles would hear it. But Miles was only five years old at that time, and his memory was so good. Moreover, he heard it at that time. Why didn't he tell her in time? Instead, he only said it when she proposed to give Lanny shares. Did he feel that his interests were threatened? Zuri was shocked. When she saw the indifference in Miles' eyes, his heart beat nonstop and then it sank down fiercely. Because she suddenly felt that this son was so unfamiliar. It was even stranger than Leo scolding her as a mistress. At least, Leo felt that her three views were not right and blamed her for being angry at her for not fighting over him. However, the feeling Miles gave her was so cold that it reached her bones. She suddenly felt that such a person might kill his wife and mother for his own benefit, especially when such a feeling was emanating from the bottom of a seven-year-old child's eyes. Zuri was a little afraid. She wanted to get up and educate Miles. She felt that the child was only seven years old and could still be straight. However, her hand was grabbed by Lanny. She lowered her eyes and looked at Lanny, whose face was pale, eyes were scarlet, and his body was trembling. Only then did she remember that Lanny knew the truth. She quickly shook her head and denied, I, I didn't. It was that smelly brat Miles who heard wrong. He was only five years old at that time. What does he know?